Hello beautifuls, welcome back to my Chanel and welcome to the Swan Season 2 Super Cup, my loves. Why aren't you making it to the pageant? Every episode of the Swan Season 2 right here in one place for your easy, convenient viewing pleasure. <gasps> So my loves, in this season, I do look a little bit different to how I look now. It was before my facial feminization surgery. I filmed a documentary and the link is in the description box below if you want to have a little look at that. But without any further ado, let's watch The Swan Season 2, every episode. Oh, there is a man making noise outside the window, does he not know? It's time for The Swan Girls Season 2. Oh, So my loves, can you actually believe the time has come? Here we are. We have seen and closed the chapter on season one of The Swan. Well, I did it a couple of weeks ago. Although, some extra bits have come to light for me, my loves, regarding Dr. Hayworth. So, that's something I'm going to say for the end of this series. I mean, <laughs> keep your eyes peeled, girls. Ooh. The Swan season one was the absolute most bonkers show I have ever seen. It really does take the biscuit for the most quintessentially early 2000s extreme makeover reality TV style show. I mean, I know we have extreme makeover, but this was just a step further. As anyone who knows has seen my already reactions to the entire series here on the Chanel. I can't believe it, girls. Can't believe it. You can go and rewatch it if you like. Today we start season two and the Swan logo is exactly exactly the same. The packaging for the DVD is exactly the same. I have tried desperately not to read the back because I do not want to see any spoilers. I don't want any spoilers, girl. The Swan was only made for two seasons, so I don't know quite what happens in this season to basically say, you're not going to get a third one, sis. That's it. This is all you're going to get. So, I don't know what to expect. I do hope the banister makes a comeback. We didn't get to see it for the last few episodes. Mm. So get your beverages at the ready, my loves, and let's watch. The Swan is back. You're gonna be a swan. Oh my god! My oh god. goodness! Thank you. Oh! No! I just the most unique competition ever devised. The woman that will move on to the pageant is returns oh. with sixteen new women who dream of being a swan. I have 16. no teeth. I was in a house fire. I see an ugly person. Each week, two women will compete. Oh my god! The graphics have gotten up. Oh, uh. So, sorry, I always forget just how bloody intense this intro is. So the graphics have got an upgrade. We can instantly see that. I feel like the storylines in this one are going to be... Well, they're definitely going to be a lot, just judging from that tiny little, tiny little moment. Also, isn't this just the most mid-2000s thing ever? It's a cold, purple, glittery lip gloss. Gorgeous. I will be the next one. Facing even bigger one, challenges. There's nothing in modern technology that's going to tighten the skin. Lorraine is a perfect candidate for dental implants. You have the test results, and unfortunately, it's cancer. In a world without mirrors. I forgot about no mirrors! Or family. <laughs> I want to go home. <laughs> With the help of world-class experts, they will do whatever it takes. Oh, so fun and games until oh. so somebody gets a nose job. Sprint, sprint, sprint. Piss in me off. Did Greg have a transition? Where's Greg gone? Greg the coach? Maybe he understood what an absolute nefarious show this was and was like, do you know what? Time to put on a wig and escape. Bye to the old me and hello to the new. All will be transformed. Oh wow. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Love it. Oh my God. Some will make it to the pageant. The Some pageant girls. Will be crowned oh, the that's you the one girls. Oh, Rachel. Oh, I've got Good goosebumps, evening. girl. I'm Amanda Byron. Oh. And welcome to the Swan. Now, last season, our Amanda's gonna take our eyes up with that. Has Amanda been on the Swan as well? Oh, she's got a new hairdo. She's got a new necklace. I see a bosom. A world-class team of experts. Oh, Papyrus took is still back. Ordinary women and radically transformed them into beauty queens. The results were absolutely staggering. Tonight, a new season begins with oh, two unbelievable stories <gasps> this and two amazing transformations. But only one will win a spot in the pageant and a chance to be crowned the swan. That's the one, girls. Oh, I thought she wasn't going to touch it. Oh, my goodness. This feels a bit less intense. It wasn't as like, da, 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 da. One swan, girls. Wow, okay. <gasps> so first of all, this hateful Jeffree Star house is still here. The uh, It seems like they've got a higher furniture budget. Maybe Ikea was like, excuse me, we would like to swan our furniture, please. We will provide you with a Davenport and a chaise longue. Oh, there she is, Nelly Galan. What's this? <gasps> oh, the corridor. Women transform their lives. 
We rebuild and enhance their bodies. Help them overcome lifelong obstacles. And drive them to reach beyond themselves. You, madam, swan coach, you weren't, like, you shouldn't even be here. Like, all of these people are, like, professionals and doctors. And you're just like, I teach people how to get on stage and put on a crown, girls. I am playing down that, but that's exactly the feeling that I get. So, I don't really like this sort of, like, give us a saying whilst you're walking in, girls. Like, the fact that Dr. Hayworth can just say something like, we break down their bodies and rebuild them. is so, like, like, the only way to become beautiful is to go into a chrysalis and emerge, girls. That's the one, girls. Go in as a caterpillar and come out as a guinea fowl. Like what? Our program begins now. Oh, she's back. Oh, different table. Good evening, Pamela. Oh, we're looking at this way this first time. first competitor tonight is Jennifer Patton, a 30-year-old mother Jennifer. of three, struggling with the scars of her past. It's a bit poetry, isn't it? Jennifer, out of thousands of women, you've been chosen quiet. to be a swan. <laughs> oh! My name is Jennifer Patton, and I live in Mesa, Arizona. Arizona, when girls. When I was six years old, my life was <gasps> devastated by a house fire. I'm not sure where my mom was. I just know that she wasn't there with me where I think she should have been. I feel responsible. I cry a lot still about it because I feel it was my fault. If she hadn't left me, I wouldn't be this way. What? 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 Kids would call me Scarface, Firestarter, <gasps> Chicken Skin. I cried a lot. Can you imagine? Can you imagine ever looking at like a child who's been through a significantly life altering event, then bullying that child because of that? That is absolutely disgusting. I know I've said it like nearly every episode of The Swan that we have watched, but my goodness, what really happens to you as a child stays with you forever. This is. Oh, I forget that The Swan is so heavy. I was like, oh yeah, we're going to watch The Swan Girls. But it's like, I forget. It's instantly like, wow, pulls at every string in the body possible. After the fire, she became withdrawn. It upset her quite a bit. Didn't want to go back to school. I'm not surprised. It caused me to be shy. So shy that I didn't go after, you know, all my dreams. Being around my family, I actually feel normal. But if we go out, then I feel more self-conscious because I know there's other people around. Oh, God, people, aren't they awful? belong in this world oh. a little. And it makes me feel upset. Well, I never leave my kids alone or with a sitter. I'd feel that maybe the house would catch on fire. The reason she's with them all the time is because she doesn't know what else to do. She doesn't have friends that she can do, go do things with. I'm sorry, my loves, but a brow lift is absolutely not going to even be the first step on the ladder to providing some respite from this situation. No, no, no. The doctors can't take away my scars, but maybe they can fix them so they won't look as bad. Just getting nice. like my nose and my smile fixed, even those two things would totally change how I feel about myself. Okay. When I look in the mirror, I see a lot of things that I don't like. The stretch marks on my stomach, the cellulite. I don't like my body, period. Oh. I think that the swan can empower her to be more self-confident. She has a lot to share with people. And right now, she only shares it here. What Jennifer needs is absolutely not a team of, like, vampiric, vulturous surgeons who are hell-bent on lining their pockets and making vast TV ratings money. What she needs is a personal trainer, a nutritionist, and also a therapist. That will be the first port of call. And then, obviously, the thing about, like, wanting to change the shape of your nose or wanting to fix your smile, for lack of a better phrase, is those sorts of things are, you know, they do take time. Dental veneers aren't really, like, a good fix to a long-term healthy smile. But something like if you want to alter the shape of your nose, obviously, Obviously, you do have to go under the knife for something like that. I mean, nowadays we have things like liquid rhinoplasty, which is like non-surgical, which can do, you know, it can do quite a lot, but it can't like, you know, you can't really get the same results as you can from an actual rhinoplasty. I just feel like this show's gonna prey on her and tell her too many things and then we're all gonna get upset. Oh, I'm upset. I just really want this. I wanna feel good about myself for once in my life. Yes, of course. Oh, here we go. It makes me so sad. Oh, Amanda's sitting I mean, down. She's obviously very, very scarred emotionally and physically. Dr. Hayward, is it possible to erase scars like that? It is almost impossible to eradicate these scars completely, but mm. with some dermabrasion, I can improve them. And in terms of her facial features, Ooh. her nose needs to undergo a they've got a ruler on this one now. Oh, look, they've got little upwards and downwards arrows. We've really gone into like CSI investigation, enhance, zoom in, enhance, enhance, rotate, zoom in, enhance. Do they really need to do all this? I mean, like, look, targeting her nose, honestly. Of her facial features, 
her nose needs to undergo a classic reduction. She needs a brow lift as well as some lip enhancement. She I think that lift. we can just focus in on her body. Liposuction, she'll just need a simple breast lift. And she does need a tummy tuck. And her teeth, Dr. Worth. What she was that? that Eight things? Difference. What can you do with her teeth? She will need a full and of veneers. And I think that once her smile is transformed, you won't notice those scars. I think you'll look at her and see a beautiful face with a beautiful smile. And speaking of scarring, obviously. A full mouth of veneers? A full mouth of veneers from a woman who is now barred from practicing dental care. I just hope that, like, all of these women, like, after the show, I couldn't really find a lot of information about this, but I hope that their, like, teeth aren't just, like, you know, just, like, falling out of their head from how bad she was. I just hope not. The, the emotional scarring, Dr. Yanni. Oh I heard God, already have come so far as just a testimony to her will and her spirit. I just want to help her heal from the trauma. Yes, yes. yes. definitely. Yes. Let's review her plan then. Yay. Oh, here we For go. Her face, Ooh. Jennifer will have a nose job, <gasps> lip augmentation, fat transfer to her cheeks, and abrasion of the scars on her face and neck. Right. Right, so she's going to have... Okay, so Jennifer's going to have... Gosh, look, they've got procedures, image, image one, image two, image three. Gosh, the budget's a bit higher on this one, isn't it? We've got nose job, augmentation of the lips, fat cheeks, fat cheeks, fat transfer for the cheeks and the under eyes. Ooh. Fat transfer for the under eyes? Maybe that's something I should consider. And dermabrasion of the neck and face. Now that doesn't sound as, you know, bonkers as we've heard previously. I mean, that is still quite a lot. They haven't mentioned her, her brow lift there though, actually. That's interesting. For her body, she'll have breast augmentation, liposuction okay. in four different areas, Ooh. and a tummy tuck to help remove scarred skin on her abdomen. How are they planning on, like, feeding this woman in recovery? If she's had, like, all of this work done to the front of her body, she's going to want to be like this. And then, like, brand new teeth as well. Like, ugh. How on earth they just don't become, like, supremely malnourished while, like, trying to heal from all these surgeries and then being forced to go in the gym is bonkers. Also, did we see the gym person in this room? Did we, did we, have they just, like, eviscerated the coach loud? Like, no, no coaches anymore, no. Jennifer's dental transformation will include extensive tooth Crowns. reconstruction, zoom bleaching, veneers, and cleaning. For her fitness transformation, Jennifer will be put on a 1,200 calorie day diet. Of course she will, because she's a toddler. a day at the gym. Okay. To help Jennifer... At least we then got told how many hours to, uh, per day at the gym. But I mean, like, 1,200 calories per day whilst also doing two hours of exercise. I mean, she must be so far below her, like, calorific need for the day. You know what I mean? Because if you're already putting on someone on 1,200 calories and then you make them do two hours of exercise, depending on what that exercise is, if that's cardio or if that's, like, weight training or whatever it is, resistance training, let's say, that's going to pull her under by, like... Maybe another, like, potentially 500 to 600 calories. So is she, is her body really only going to be getting, like, 600 or 700 calories per day? Can you imagine? I feel like that's what caterpillars eat. Confront the emotional scars from her traumatic oh, house yes. fire. She will undergo weekly therapy and coaching. And our next... I'm sorry, how can weekly therapy or coaching help her undergo therapy from suffering the trauma of the house fire? How, how can, how is it, like, is Dr. Iani, like, specialised in treating with specific traumas like this? Like, things that are, things that are both physical as well as mental? Is she? I don't feel like she is. I must admit, I don't already like starting at a 10, my loves, but today we are starting at a 10 and going all the way to 100. Stupid. Competitor tonight is Kimberly oh, Wilburn, up. a mother Kimberly. of four who struggled to balance the devotion to her kids with the need to look after herself. Here she is. Kim Kimberly is struggling with the balance of looking after her children and herself. I don't like that sentence. I don't like that sentence. That does not fill me with confidence, my loves. That could be a production like, oh, we need to come up with a storyline. Or it could be like, you know, more nefarious. Kimberly? You've been chosen to be a swan. <gasps> Hello, Kimberly. Okay, good. <laughs> Beauty, here I come. <laughs> I mean, you already look stunning. My name is Kimberly Wilborn. I live in Cleveland Heights, Ohio. I am 37 years old, and I have four children. I'm a full-time mom. My childhood was a very unusual childhood. Oh? I don't know my father, and my mother gave me life but she really did not raise me. I was raised by my godmother. She died when I was 14 years old. I remember that day. I walked in her bedroom and she was dead. Oh, at 14. Why couldn't my life be a little more stable? 
Oh, so. sis. And I felt like she was my only somebody, and she's gone. I just live with a different friend every year until I graduated high school. <gasps> somebody was always willing to take me in, thank God. I was so determined to graduate from college. I wanted to prove I was good enough to do whatever I decided to do. I met Juan when I was 22, we got married. I just have to butt in there on Kimberly because her story is actually quite resonating with me. The idea that like you had someone taken away from you at a young age in which like kind of effed you up a bit. If I'm being honest, it kind of effed me up a bit. I actually feel like there's going to be a handful of people that are watching this uh, this video right now that are going to be able to sympathize with Kimberly and honestly see themselves in this. And I feel like... I feel like a brow lift is not the way to even address this situation, as I mentioned earlier. You can see how, like, when production find these stories of people, it's almost like the industry itself can continue growing and moving forward because you, you would think, oh my goodness, I suffered with something similar to Kimberly. Maybe I should look into cosmetic surgery, which may be something you may not have looked into or thought about before. You might have thought about something a bit less drastic at first, you know what I mean? Like the first port of call on the ladder rather than going all the way to a tummy tuck and a brow lift. I wanted to have the family I never had. Having children physically has taken a toll on me. Since my second yeah. child is born, it does. I've gained about 60 pounds. She has oh, cravings goodness. for specific things that can be very strong. It'll almost be like a drug addict wanting that donut or that pasta. I really hate my arms. They're very flimsy. Oh, there's, the, there's that coach woman. I do actually want to say that sugar should be treated as a... No, maybe not a class A drug, but it definitely should be a scheduled substance. A lot of the problems that we find with health in this day and age can be absolutely 100% attributed to how much sugar we have as a Western diet. It is obscene the amount of sugar that we eat on a daily basis. Hidden sugars, sugars that you never even really think about. Like, it is... It's unhinged. It's unhinged that we have this drug, like, constantly available in all food sources. It's bonkers. I really hate my arms. They're very flabby. They wave in the wind. Wave my in boobs the wind. used to be up here. They're down there. I have oh, this ten camera shot. tops with the tags on them that I look at. Sometimes I try them on, get disgusted, take them off. Oh, but that is It's very job. painful to wake up in the morning knowing that you have a beautiful figure underneath a bunch of flab. I just oh. want to be me again. I can understand that, my love. I've struggled with my weight. Well, Dr. Yanni, Kim has had a really tough childhood. I mean, how's that going to affect her throughout the program? Come on, what have you got to say? Somebody comes from that kind of tragic, chaotic wow. environment. It's really natural for them to build up very strong, tough walls to help them to survive. It's really going to be difficult for her to feel safe enough to be outside of the walls. Relatable. Dr. Dubrow challenge with Kim is that she needs a pretty aggressive tummy tuck, breast lift and breast augmentation and some wipe yes. In well. addition, she needs a lot of facial surgery to refine her face. We'll do procedures to remove the fat, the cheeks and chin, and even their eyes. What about a diet and fitness plan? For Wait, what was that? We'll do, what was that? So she's only getting... She's having refinement to the face. That's interesting. So she's having fat taken out of the cheeks and from the under eyes. All right. Okay. All right. I must admit... I'm not quite as upset as, as I, was, I thought I might be about that. I thought they were going to give her very Eurocentric features there. I didn't didn't see it going like that, if I'm honest. Maybe I jumped the gun a little bit. But I was just like, judging from all the awful things that we've seen so far, I was a bit like, oh, what are you going to say? But okay, come on then. What about a diet and fitness plan for her, Debbie? Well, Debbie. she's got a lot of weight to lose. She's going to have to do a lot of cardio. And I'm... Greg's transition went really well. He's called Debbie now. <laughs> Relatable. She's gonna have to really attack the lower body as well. So, do you okay. think she's gonna be pageant ready in three months? She has a lot of potential. Oh, pageant. She has so much potential. Yeah. Let's review her plan. Pageant. Kim's swan plan will begin with liposuction to her chin and cheeks and an eyelid lift. For her physical transformation, Kim will have breast augmentation, tummy tuck, and extensive liposuction. At the dentist, Kim will receive Zoom bleaching, Da Vinci veneers, and a deep cleaning. For her fitness program. Oh my goodness! I think Kimberly. I think Kimberly might be getting the least surgeries that we've seen out of anyone so far. The facial surgeries were really limited, which is kind of like exactly perfect, really. This show has a tendency to over-prescribe procedures, and I'm quite glad that they're being quite reserved because no, like realistically, when you go to a cosmetic surgeon for work, if you want more than one thing done, it is up to them to make sure that you get the least amount of work possible to achieve your outcome that you want in a 
way that is well-rounded and a good meeting of the middle between your ideas and what they can provide for you. Nothing that's going to take you further than maybe you want to be or harm you. While it's still shocking, I'm not quite as disgusted as I thought I might be here. And Kim will spend two hours a day at the gym focusing on weight training to define her body and cardio to help her lose weight. A 1200 calorie a day diet will help boost her metabolism. She will also receive coaching and therapy to help her overcome the pain of her troubled childhood. Okay, expert. She's not going to be able to overcome that in like three months. I'm absolutely sorry. 12 sessions is going to be the first port of call to looking at the keys to even accessing the locks of the mind to even figure out what to even talk about first, my loves. That's what three months will be. Sounds like a lot of work, so let's get started. A lot of work. Get over Coming it. Next, Ow, peace. No. When the swan continues. Oh, the swan girls. Oh. It's morning in LA. I've got gout. Three month long swan program. In and the bay. Is ready to begin healing oh, look, Airbnb. Emotional scars. My life was devastated by a house fire. Kim is hoping to restore her really? body's youthful look. Having children. Physically. Why do they? Are they just going to constantly. Also, what have they done to you here? Is that a filter? Oh dear, Snapchat is shaking, girls. I have a feeling for Jennifer's story, all they're gonna keep doing throughout this entire show is just using that soundbite of, I was in a house fire. Like, I'm not sure how I feel about that. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Obviously, that's really the point of her entire life story that they want to highlight on this show. I don't know how I feel about that. I'll come back to it at the end, maybe. Her body's youthful look. Having children physically has taken a toll on me. Every reflective surface it has been treated. Oh, here we go. Oh, about treated with what? Nothing has been left to chance. Oh, oh my God. What about cutlery? Spray the TV. Our competitors will not see their results until the final What's all reveal. Wow. The reality of the program set. Wouldn't it just be easier to take the mirrors out? Although, no, I suppose if they're like renting an apartment or something or in an apartment complex, you wouldn't be able to just like rip out the mirrors, would you? But like. That's in early for both our swans. Security. We have to check your bags, okay? A oh. routine security search reminds Kim of what she'll be giving up. You gonna take my cookies? While Jennifer learns she'll be making sacrifices of her own. What's this? Yeah, been with the kids almost every minute since they were born. And now it is your time and you deserve it. There's no turning back. The program begins now. Well, okay, that didn't happen in season one. So they've clearly searched them because in the, one of the last episodes, I think it might have even been the last like com competition episode of season one, there was found with a mirror girl. Shocking. Can you imagine girls? So clearly they've shown us there then that man just like entering the room and being like, security, I need to take away your cookies. You awful woman. Like how awful is that? The, like if someone was just like, I'm going to take away, I'd be like, oh, do you know what? Stop doing all that. Get over yourself. I hate people of authority. <laughs> oh, I hate the concept so much of being told what to do. Oh, I hate it. All right, here we go. First is this the Kim different place? Is a visit Where's with this? a plastic surgeon. Kimberly used to have a great body and sort of a bad life. Now she has a really good life. And it's time for her to have a great body as well. So let's talk about your tummy. So you've okay. had some kids. How many yeah. kids have you had? Four. Okay, so the audio in this episode this is terrible. Involves some loose skin. Mm -hmm. Okay, the way we do that is we do a tummy tuck, mm -hmm. lift yes. the skin, pull it down, remove the excess. Yeah. All of this skin with stretch marks will be gone. Oh my god, oh. like fine. We'll do some liposuction on the thigh area, mm -hmm. the inner thighs, and mm -hmm. the knees. But most of this is going to be done by you Perfect. in the gym. Let's talk. What? See, the weird the Good heavens. The weird thing about the way that he talks about tummy tucks is almost as if he's like, and the, you know, the, all the bad areas just disappear. They disappear forever. They don't actually tell you that you are left with a scar just beneath the bikini line from hip to hip. A long scar that's kind of like dipped a little bit like that. And it is a long, grueling recovery process. All of your skin has to like reattach to the muscles. You could then have to like build your core strength back. Like, it is a lot. And even then, if if you decide to have more children in the future, there could potentially be complications from having a tummy tuck surgery. None of that is mentioned in this consultation and put on TV for people to fully understand the complexities of a surgery like this. It's just easily glossed over and it kind of does make you think that, oh, I've just got some loose skin, I'll just pop, get a tummy tuck, yeah, really easy. When actually, it's like a deeply considered procedure. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, it's not meant, um, by me saying all this, I'm not meant to put you off it. I'm just meant to, to give you a better understanding of like what it is that you might be doing or what it is that you might want so that you can actually more accurately understand 
the idea that like you can't just go on a show, get all this work done and be like, oh, and 20 minutes later, she's all healed, ready for the pageant. Do you know what I mean? Like there is a process and not every single person that has it is going to be mentally fortified enough to go through with this procedure or any procedure for that matter. Let's talk about your face, okay? Mm -hmm. We can mm -hmm. take some of the skin off here, take some of the fat off here, the fat here, and that should really improve the contour of your face. Ah! Did you see that? Did you see that? We have to go back. Do you see that? This monitor is green screened. Look, it like wobbles as the camera moves. Look. It really improve the contour. It's green screened, face. girls. Because what is he showing her on that? What is he showing her on that? Just like herself blinking. Like, what is that? That will really improve the contours of your face. Will it, Dr. Dubrow? Also, why are you trying to change her eye shape? I do kind of feel like that's a bit nefarious. Has she asked for that? Has she considered it? We just don't know, do we, girls? While Kim's transformation is underway, Jennifer is taking her first step towards her new self. Oh, a zipper has an interesting look. Garden. At times, she really, really looks beautiful. And you can almost see her beauty coming out. Nice to meet you. What do you mean, at times, she looks beautiful? Sir? Stop it. Stop all that immediately. Maybe you look beautiful when you're in your coffin, girls. Time for a brow lift. Because he's a vampire, you see. Dr. Hayworth. Her eyes tell stories. You've got a lot of experience and sadness in them. I see that you've had some major scarring, obviously. You're going to remove her eyes? I'm sorry. I fire when I was six. I was fire when you were six. You I know all this. just dermabrade this, which is a sander. Apart from that, your nose deviates towards your right. What we want to do is to take out your hump, make the nose smaller. Now let's look at your tummy. Ooh. What I want to do is take out all this extra scarred abdominal skin. The most frustrating aspect with Jennifer's transformation will be her scars. She's going to have a huge improvement, but it will not be absolutely perfect. Jennifer mm. has learned the limits of her surgery, while Kim is discovering that she has some limits of her own. Oh, just, I need to take a little break just before we listen to some nutritionist be like, No, girls! 14 calories a day! This is the sad reality when it comes to scarring. You can't really ever truly 100% remove scarring. You can really reduce it. But I feel like, I think actually in this case, maybe a different professional would be actually quite helpful to Jennifer as well. Because obviously when she goes to the pageant or whatever they're planning on doing, when she goes to the reveal, she's going to have a full face of makeup on, isn't she? So why not bring in a professional makeup artist? A professional makeup artist maybe with uh, some level of special effects understanding and like color balancing understanding to like really teach Jennifer how she could necessarily improve some of the looks of scarring for like spe specific things like photos or events or you know I don't know interviews or anything like that it's, it's weird that they haven't thought about adding someone in like that I don't know I feel like that would be immensely beneficial in this situation because not everyone is going to be versed with like what kind of products work really well for those sorts of things. Do you know what I mean? Do you guys understand what I'm saying there? I'm not trying to insert myself and my body of experience being a makeup artist into this equation, but I just feel like it would actually help, you know? Delphine, nice to meet you. And I'm your nutritionist. Oh, now you're hello, going to be Delphine. on a 1200 calorie diet program. You're going to be eating Who five times woman? a day, breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack and dessert. That's not the right food for me. Anytime I have to eat anything like this. I mean, carbohydrates, I have a problem with. I'm giving you smaller portions of healthy carbohydrates mixed with protein and fat. I'm not making this where you're feeling deprived. I don't feel deprived. I feel in control when I don't have those things. Problem if you were in for control, me, you would not be weighing what you weigh. Listen, Kim, you've got 35 pounds to lose. So we are changing your habits. If Can you don't I change that? your attitude, Kim, you are not going to be losing the weight. Okay. I think Nutrisystem is just the help she needs. I'm rooting for her. I want her to do well. She's not a nutritionist. Delphine Carroll is not a nutritionist. She is a Nutrisystem consultant, which might as well be Pyramid Scheme member. I cannot believe that they have not sent her to a nutritionist. They have sent her to a consultant for some company. That is appalling. I get the feeling that in that section, they tried to make Kimberly out like she was like, I can't eat all that. Stop making me eat all that. Bloody like, if you don't eat this, you're not going to lose the weight for the pageant, girl. That's not acceptable. You are not a nutritionist. They need to bring in an actual nutritionist to understand. And if someone is telling you, I can't eat those foods, you need to understand a medical background of why that might be. This woman is not a, a doctor. She's not a doctor. What are you doing? making medical decisions for someone. Why are you not a dietitian? Hemst. I think we've got a new enemy in this series. Right, Delphine? I'm going to do an investigation on Nutrisystem. Come where are they now, season two? Hmm. I want her to do well. 
but she's going to be a challenge. No, you want to sell well, Kim is Nutrisystem. reluctant to follow the nutritionist's advice. No, Jennifer this is, is not a nutritionist. what the dentist has planned for her smile. Mm. Hi, Jennifer. Jennifer needs extensive well, dental fake work. People. Right now when she smiles, she has broken teeth. She has teeth that are infected. She needs root canals, mm. extractions. Woman. She basically needs a full mouth reconstruction. Mm. First thing I'm going to do is take away all the gum tissue. Okay, let's pull out that broken tooth. Sherry Worth loves, loves to remove gum tissue. It's her favourite hobby. She's just like, oh, I see your gums. Do you know what would look nicer? Don't have any gums, girl. Annabelle, the orthodontist, consumes gums. Really wants to come out. Yeah. It wants Slide to come out. Lower temporary it? veneers on. Yeah. Jennifer, we are finished. That was Jennifer quick. I bet that was like 14 hours. Permanent veneers. Then when she walks into a room, she'll be noticed for her smile and not her scars. And Jennifer is off to a great start, but her most challenging procedures still lie ahead. Right, okay. Solemnly looking it's over the, the Oh, the moon girls for both of our swans, and Jennifer okay. calls home looking for comfort. Mom, what? Oh no. Yeah, oh, that's not comfort. Mom. Oh, baby. Oh. I want you. Oh. I love you, honey. Mommy be home soon, okay? I miss you. I miss you too. Oh, what a hateful child. Me up. Yeah, I don't say that because you're going to potentially be away from that child for another four months. Oh, do you know what? If I had a child at home and I'd be like, right, mummy's going to call. Please don't make her feel sad or annoyed or upset that she's done all this for herself because you're not going to see her for four months. I mean, I know they are children, so you can't really explain all that. But you know what I mean? I just feel like that's not very helpful. Like, I would provide so much sympathy and support for my significant other if they had decided to go through something like this. Yes, I know that I don't like this show. Yes, I know that I have my problems with the extensive amount of surgery they undergo in one session but if i was with a significant other and they wanted to after they'd listened to my concerns and decided to anyway there is no way i'd be like i miss you please come home mommy loves you mommy wants you home now that would just tear them up oh oh i know that you can't teach children that but like i don't know i'm definitely in my feelings this episode can you tell my loves oh i just ow ow my kids and hear them crying and Wanting me. After See? a painful conversation with yes. her son, Jennifer has trouble sleeping. Well, of course. But Kim is still awake. Oh. Tomorrow I go to surgery. I'm very excited about that. Ooh. I have not been able to wear, wear this hateful my top. midsection bear in years. Ooh. I have no problem with pain for the sake of being fly. <laughs> no problem with pain for the, the sake of being of fly. That's quite cute. finally arrived and Jennifer is ready to Here begin her physical transformation. The oh. biggest challenges today are improving the Jennifer's scars and also changing her nose. These are going to be the key surgical changes that are going to make Jennifer pageant ready. Good morning. I'm just so excited. Pageant. I know when I wake up, I will no longer have this nose. Boy, your nose is yes, really you'll have a different nose. Inside. And we make every effort possible to straighten it a little bit of the dermabrasion in and around your scars. And then your tummy tuck. You're a very beautiful girl. You can Cute. almost see it popping out at certain angles. Oh, I don't like the way he says that. That's so grooming. Do you know what I mean? To be like, you're a very beautiful girl. You can almost see it popping out at certain angles. Surely that second clause basically means, oh, but you are an argo though, aren't you? Yeah, I can see it if I was going to do all my surgery to you, girl. Like, it's very, that's a backhanded compliment. I don't like the idea of a surgeon being like, Oh, you look beautiful, but I do think you need more work. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's not, that's not a compliment. That is not a compliment. Will you stop driving that hateful car? It's going to be great. Okay. You excited? It's going to be great. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jennifer, for seeing you cry. I have just seen that he has drawn in your hairline. If you notice here up the top in her parting, you can see that he has drawn with a uh, Sharpie. Now, if you remember back to uh, the Where Are They Now I did for season one, and Belinda in her article said that she was left with scarring in her hairline that, they, that she wasn't told about. Why is he going to make an incision directly down where she has her parting? That doesn't seem very professional to me. Do you know what I mean? No hair will grow back through a scar without a transplant surgery. So... Not so sure about that. Also, what is he planning on doing to here? Why is, what, is he going to like... Oh... It's going to be great. Okay? okay. You excited? Oh. oh, I hope... No. I'm going to first of all Beautiful. start off with her tummy tuck. Oh. By cutting out all the loose skin at the same time, I'm going to cut out all the burn scars from her abdomen. Oh, my I goodness. I am preparing the sites to be dermabrated. 
especially around her neck. So Damn I'm going right to help it. polish some of these unsightly scars. Now I'm trying to do the nose job on her. Okay, This okay. rhinoplasty is going to play a pivotal oh, they role blurred in it. terms of her facial transformation. They actually blurred her nose being operated on there. I'm, well, I will also have to blur it, but they they blurred it there, which must mean that either it was too graphic for TV or something different has happened with production. Maybe Fox was like, sorry girls, it was too graphic on the first season. We lowered the hump here, we refined the tip and Ooh. raised up her septum. Tappa, tappa, tappa. Tappa, tappa, tappa. After I wonder what all these assistants are doing now. Case, I am thoroughly satisfied with the result. And I hope that Jennifer is too. Okay. I think you're going to place in this one. Number one. Is it? A what? good attitude goes a long way, but the road ahead won't be easy. Meanwhile, Kim is eager to bring back her youthful figure, but okay. has a new request. Kim oh. has kind of decided at the last minute to do her nose. And she's very specific about how she wants it to look. No pig snout, no pinch, no eagle nose, no gorilla nose, no Michael nose, okay. no brandy nose, no packing, no pain. Let's get it done. Let's do it. Right. First off is a Tony Wait, what? What was that? Sorry. <laughs> Hang on a minute. So at the last minute, she's decided to have her nose done. Do you think potentially they advised her to have her nose done and she refused it and now she's changed her mind? I feel like that's more likely what happened. Right, let's go back and listen to that exactly. So she said, No pig snout, no pinch, no eagle nose, no gorilla nose. What's an eagle nose and what's a gorilla nose? Oh, I see. Okay, an eagle nose. Oh, so that's a specific type of nose. No packing, no pain. No packing and no pain. No packing? First off, is a I thought you always had to have packing. We're going to start by making a long right, okay. incision all along the lower abdominal area. The goal is to make this whole abdominal wall flat as can be. Okay. Kim now has a six pack. It's up to her in the gym with diet and exercise whether we're gonna see it or not. Now, let's oh. tackle that nose. The challenge with Kim's nose is to decrease the width of the bridge here. We're gonna go ahead and put this implant in her and I think this is gonna give her the contour that she requires. It doesn't make her pig nose, pinched eagle nose, gorilla nose, Michael nose, brandy nose, and hopefully won't have any pain. Hopefully won't have any pain? Right, this hopefully? Looks really nice. Let's close this and we'll be done. I've not actually come across a, a nose implant before. I guess that's what, you know, um, people that have had like multiple nose surgeries. I feel like that's what then they start to do is because obviously they've taken away too much. They start to add in structures in order to create that uh, stability, should we say. But I've never just, I haven't heard of uh, this happening before. So this is fascinating. I wonder, oh, I think it's time for the first. I wonder how this will turn out. Kim's surgery went off without a hitch, but we'll have to see how she does during recovery. Why are you freaking out? I'm <gasps> scared. I'm not going to be able to Coming up on The Swan. He said that have left me. Wow, they're really going hard in this episode, aren't they, my loves? Really going hard. Do you know, they always get to this part in the episode. How far are we? We're almost halfway in where they're like, oh, we just don't know if they're going to make it through. Like, what does that mean? What does it mean if we don't know that they're going to make it through? What, they just like die? Like, what? It doesn't make any, like, why is the editing so like, oh, and then we just had to leave them outside in the garden. They live in the woods now. Like, what, what? Oh, it's very strange. Kim made it through her panic attack, but she still faces a challenging recovery. And they put it on TV it's to hard. humiliate you. I get a headache. Nose hurt. Surgery is hard. I can't sleep at night. While Kim struggles to overcome her pain, Jennifer's recovery is off to a good start. Do you know what they also don't tell you? They don't tell you how you have to sleep at a 45 degree angle or even in a chair for two weeks after surgery. When I had my hairline done, I could not sleep flat. I had to get specific pillows and sit in a very specific way like this and sleep like that. And I'm gonna have to do it again when I get FFS. It is quite a grueling process because you then don't get to have like a full night's rest for weeks. So you just feel tired, exhausted, irritable and argumentative because you're in pain. And what does this show love to do? Make the contestants out like they're just ungrateful, 
assholes because they're like, I am annoyed that I'm in pain. When in fact, it's actually a normal part of the healing process to be put in very like convoluted positions that just annoy you. And it just bubbles up and you get very stressed. Like surgery and the recovery process is very stressed. And your doctors and people around you should be there to actively make it as pleasant and as plain sailing as possible. This show does not do that. This show exploits you at your worst possible moments. Oh, it's gross, girls. All right, here we go. Oh my God, you're gonna be one of the prime contenders for this pageant. Are you excited? Yeah. Despite Wiggling the black her and arm. blue and the sort of unsightly appearance, everything came together better than I expected. Hopefully okay. with the dermabrasion, Jennifer's scars will heal nicely, but only time will tell. I'm kind of scared, I'm interested but I'm to see her nose. everybody that I look good. Oh, her lips look nice. Jennifer's recovery is moving forward, but emotionally she's taken a step back. Since well, she course. arrived, Jennifer's Healing. been fighting the battle of missing her family. Have you mailed me anything? Um, I'm mailing you a card tonight. Oh, useless. I'm like, and why isn't anybody you're not writing? I've been here a month, you know? I want you. I know. I love you, Colin. Bye bye. Mommy, mommy. Mommy. That was horrible! That was Absolutely horrible. Oh, that's awful. My God, what, like, what is it with these husbands and partners? Like, oh, okay, yeah, you know, it's difficult. But why are they putting in the bare minimum effort? Maybe not even that. The bare minimum you can do is write a lovely card to say, we miss you. We cannot wait to see you when you get back. You're going to be so strong. We are so, we're all behind you. We're all support. Even if you don't feel like that, even if you don't feel like writing, always give your significant other support because you're meant to love them. None of these men in this show seem to love their significant others and it drives me insane because it's like has has the has the male psyche really improved in 20 years since this show aired has it because i struggle to believe it as girls i really start to come across in these shows like i hate men i absolutely do not hate all men i realize that all men are, are not like this realistically it is just a very specific culture of men that benefit so much from patriarchy that they can't even see when they are being fools. Do you know what I mean? When they're being embarrassing, when they're being like, not really adults. And it drives me insane. And it's those men I'm particularly pointing my wand at and saying, die. <laughs> I'm not really, but. I really miss my kids and I really miss my husband. Apparently he's not missing it's you though. really hard, it's terrible. How, can it, how hard. hard can it be to write a card for God's Jennifer's sake? Jennifer's loneliness could hinder her transformation. Will she be able to focus on herself and not her family? Jennifer's loneliness may hinder her transformation. But you know what you could do, production company? You could set her up with a video from her family like we did with Tanya. Or you could, you know, invite someone out to speak to her. Or give her a little bit extra time on the phone or something. Do you know what I mean? Not just be like, oh, the loneliness. Well, she's gone to live in the woods now because she was too lonely. She didn't make it past the transformation now. Meanwhile, our swan oh, coach the is prowl. checking in on Kim. Oh, she's it gonna seems she's hunt having Kim. sticking to the program. I'm a little oh, concerned dear. that you're not letting the professionals do what they need to do. It started Which, with the nutrition. Show me a professional. Dr. Yanni told me that you're having some issues in therapy. What gave her that idea? I need more information. Mm -mm. I don't want to talk about it. You don't want to talk about it? No. Do you know how defensive you get whenever you hit a hot spot? I know that you probably think I'm defensive. This is a trust issue and this is about really believing that these experts are here to help you and letting them help you. Mm. I've also heard you've been complaining in the gym. That's totally not true. I don't complain at the gym, I honestly don't. I'm working out in a freaking girdle. That's not cool. We are. I'm this complaining. <laughs> Let me pull up That's right. Hey. So when you say I'm complaining, how do you think I would feel Honey, about that? it's tough love. It must be very painful to walk through the world having to fight everybody. <sighs> I am so sick of this narrative. I am so sick of this narrative. So sick of this narrative. You'll see, I did the same thing when it was with Ebony. Beautiful deep skin women are given this bloody narrative of they are just angry, aggressive, uptight, annoyed, yet no one is showing them an amount of like loving and warmth. 
I'm going to say this to you guys because this absolutely, this, think about this in the entire world. Personally, for me, I don't believe that the phrase tough love even exists. I think that you can't shout at flowers to make them grow. You need to give them every single piece of love and encouragement and nutrition and like nutrient and time in order to really like blossom into something beautiful. You can't just be like, why aren't you growing into a gorgeous plum tree? Why? Why haven't you given my family nutrients? Why? Like that doesn't work. It doesn't work. Like sometimes people just take a little bit more time to become more comfortable and talk about things in therapy. This is the idea of like, if she has had to really like be defensive because she's had a troubled childhood, do you not think it's more appropriate for somebody who's perhaps got the experience with that instead of being like, why aren't you talking about it on camera for the nation to see? Why? Well, well there must be something wrong with you. You must be complaining. You must be really angry and aggressive. No, I'm the expert here, girl. Eat the Nutrisystem. Like, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. Anyone who is a professional therapist or a professional doctor or a professional nutritionist in my audience will know you can't just treat your clients like that because it doesn't get anywhere, does it? No. Oh, I'm all hot and bothered, my loves. Maybe I should take my jumper off. Maybe I shouldn't because no, not so. I'm just tired of being misunderstood, Nelly. I'm sick of it. Why do you feel misunderstood? Because people are seeing me as something I'm not, and it's pissing me off. Kim has a strong will that's helped her get through some tough times, but she has to realize that others can help if she'll only let them. You're not a professional, Meanwhile, sis. Meanwhile, Jennifer is having an emotional setback of her right, own. Right, okay. Oh, God, here we go. Jennifer's mother left her alone in a house fire, and she's got a lot of unresolved anger that I'm helping her work through. So we're going to put it on TV. I forgive her. Have you given yourself permission to get angry with her? I guess I'm too nice. I want Jennifer to release that anger towards her mother through a role play. What you did to me, was it okay? This is not you appropriate for TV. Me. Jennifer is making progress in therapy and has taken the first steps towards restoring her self-esteem. That is not appropriate now for TV. Now coach is stopping by to offer Jennifer a helping hand. Oh, Nelly could just go in the bloody fountain and become a swan. Why aren't you making it to the bed? Really a little gun shy about going out on stage. Am I right? If I go to the pageant, I don't want my friends or family or anybody to say, oh my God, look at all her scars. These scars are preventing you from living life. I don't want to live that life anymore, and that's why I'm here. I don't want to be insecure and shy, so... I don't think it's that you're shy. You know what I think? You're hiding. No! I'm sorry, what is this whole thing that these shows love to say is that like almost like being shy isn't a real thing, like it's not a legit thing. I am deeply shy. Being shy is an actual thing that just some people are. Oh, it's obscene. And it's time to not hide anymore. You have to wear your scars like jewels. Okay, that's the nicest thing she's ever said. Why do you cry when I say that to you? Oh, this pianist. Know, right. Now it's up to Jennifer. She'll have to face her fears before she can move on to the pageant. Do you know, in this day and age, in this timeline that we exist in now, there are ways of making scars appear much more beautiful if you are bothered by them. I know that scar tissue can be quite difficult to tattoo over, but I know that there are also options to look at in terms of body modification if you really wanted to take away from the scar or take away the scar's power onto you and transform it into something more beautiful that isn't just you have scars and you have to accept that you have them. Obviously back in this day and age though, back in like 2004 or 5, whenever this, this particular episode would have aired, I think like full body tattoos and like neck tattoos especially would not have been like as common as they are now but now with like the rise of like the alternative influencer and the rise of like body art as a movement i feel like if she wanted to like wear makeup that just turned them into beautiful flowers or even got tattoos that were like beautiful like elegant flowers how gorgeous would that be not everything always has to be hidden in this day and age and you certainly do not have to feel that because you are shy that you are hiding. I do not like that. I don't think that's... Wearing the scars as jewels is the nicest thing that Nelly has said. Right, here we go. Oh look, the lake. Lake Placid! Meanwhile, Kim is still struggling with the programme and a surprise visitor is checking in to offer emotional support. Oh! Oh! Hang on! Is that Cindy girls? Oh, how are you? Oh, they told you I wanted to meet you. Oh, oh look. look. Cindy from the first season of the Cindy Girl became her own obstacles to play second runner up in the pageant. I 
her that Kim was having a bit of a hard time with the SWAN program and so I'm here to help encourage her. So how are you? Oh, how that's you quite nice program? actually. That's hard. It, it is hard. I think of myself as a person who doesn't care about what people think or what they mm. say, but mm -hmm. then I, <laughs> in reality I do. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's hard for us to take other people's help. Sure. I mean, I'm really happy to be here. I mean, I haven't even gotten through it yet, so, you know, the verdict's out on if I will get through it, but... Um, and you will. And you know how oh, you're going to yeah. get through it? How? With a positive attitude. Oh, they've convinced you I have a bad attitude, too. Oh. <laughs> Cindy, she just boosted my spirits. I'm really like on top of the world right now. I do not like this editing Kim that you're giving, that they're giving track, you, but sis. The pageant is quickly approaching. Mm. With only one Ooh. month remaining until their final reveal, both swans must What's focus this? on their goals. Oh! Jennifer entered the program hoping to heal the physical scars that have destroyed her self esteem. I want to feel good about myself for once in my life. Will she be able to gain the self-confidence she desperately needs and build the body she's always this is different. before time runs out? Oh, Hard work, but I'm getting closer to the pageant. Kim started her journey determined to... They're talking about pageants body. now, have you noticed? I just want to be me again. But was sidetracked by her quick temper. Pissing me off. Sidetracked. she's in a race to catch up. How far am I from my goal weight? 17 and a half pounds. Oh. Will she be able to lose the weight? But I can do it, you told me. And keep a positive attitude to complete the program. Why are they telling her that she... Oh. The countdown begins. Who will make it to the pageant? Positive attitude. Next That's on so... The ah! It's... Personally, I really don't like this way that they're, like, trying to enforce that Kim doesn't have a, a positive attitude. I feel like... I don't know. I'm a little bit concerned about that, shall we say. When the swan continues. The swan goes. <laughs> oh. <gasps> are we here? Jeffree Star's house? Welcome back to the swamp. Now it's been Ooh, a the month since she's got a spotlight. Kim and three months since they've looked at themselves in a mirror. Well, Ooh. the long wait is nearly Cartier over. Bracelet. In just a moment, we'll see the results of their transformations. But before the big reveal, let's get some final thoughts from the team of experts whose job it was to transform these women. Oh, there's less people experts. here this time. Kimberly had some turbulent times adjusting to the program. Dr. Dubrow, she was very, very specific about what she wanted and what she didn't want. How did that turn out? Well, it's actually That's... nice in plastic surgery when a patient has a specific idea of what they want and don't want. Oh my goodness! That's the most sensible thing he's said so far, and the only thing, the only time I think I'm ever going to agree with Dr. Dubrow. It really does help when you go to a cosmetic or a plastic surgeon to have a, a quite, a, quite a strong idea of what it is that you want, and absolutely the things you do not want. Because at the end of the day, they kind of are like a crossover between an artist and a scientist and a doctor, and it is their job to work with you to a goal that you are both confident and happy with at the end result. You know what I mean? But despite her list of do's and don'ts, I think she's going to be pleased with her results. Yeah? Dr. Yanni, how I is she think? in therapy? Kimberly came from a place that was very self-protective in order mm. to survive. Our mm. job was to get to the emotional part of her, and she has a tough time being vulnerable that way. I think mm. she got good insight, but it was hard for her to open up. Well, so that the nothing then. So no, no progress. Moments, okay, All right, are we ready, everyone? Here she is. Everybody Kimberly shush. Kimberly Wilburn. Oh, here we go. Oh Manservants, open the gateway. That's the one, girls. Oh, wow. I love the hair and the smile. The makeup artist did beautifully. Ooh. Oh, she does look gorgeous. A lovely necklace. I like this burgundy yeah, colour as well. It's so good to see you. I Come with me. It. Let's have a chat. Okay. <laughs> Talk to me. Yeah. You look so hot. How you feeling? I feel Sorry, I just have to say, doesn't this go to show that like minimal, minimal, minimal amounts of surgery, if you're going to go for that option, can actually provide quite a drastic outcome. It's not about how many procedures you have, it's about how those procedures are done. That is my firm opinion, girls. And sometimes a transformation in the gym and, you know, a nutrition plan that works for you is going to also give you a brilliant outcome. I feel great. 
Yeah? Yes. Did you see this butt? Oh, I can see it. Oh, there's not a lot. There's not a lot of it left. Okay, all right. Okay, you look absolutely incredible on the outside. How do you feel on the inside? I mean, Dr. Yanni just, you know, talked to me about some things that I had to come to grips with about my childhood, and it's helped me to feel better about not only where I am, but where I've been. Mm -hmm. I feel so, I don't know, like, like a wound has closed. I feel whole. Well, Kimberly. That's you know what I'm gonna say next, don't you? Little soundbite, yes. isn't it? Okay. Here we go. Is there a hateful shoe? Coming? I can't see any shoes. You know what's behind it? Yes. The gout well, you mirror. Haven't seen for three months. Yep. Oh. A mirror. Mm-hmm. Alrighty. Now, in a moment, I'm gonna ask you to step up to the curtain and let me know when you're ready. We'll let you see yourself for the first time. Okay. Off you go. <gasps> Here she goes. Oh, she's got a slight train. My goodness. The glamour girls. Illuminati girls. Right. Here we go. Oh, the curtains have been reinforced with steel. Keep out the vampires. <gasps> Come on, Kim. Kimberly, this is the moment you've been waiting for. You ready? How's she gonna react? Oh, come on. Come on, girls. All right, I'm ready. Goodness, straight for the nose. Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look how little I am. Oh. oh. She does look really little, doesn't she? Oh. Damn. Her <laughs> husband's gonna be insane. Insatiable girls. Oh, faint on us. Oh. Wow. Oh. <laughs> Bad girl. Oh, darn it, bro. <laughs> You're awesome. You're truly really awesome. You know, I was actually kind of surprised Kim looked so extraordinarily good. I mean, I knew she looked good. I knew she healed well. Surprised? She looked much better, even than I thought she was going to look. Oh, my God. <laughs> Nellie, thank you. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. When I saw Kim, I thought... Va 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 boom! I thought Diana Ross and Mahogany. She looked gorgeous. Wow! Out through the chimney, girls, we've got scouts. It's Jeffrey Star. Right, I'm going to pause it there just to just to digest what has happened. So, first of all. What a gorgeous personality does Kim have. The way that she went around and thanked all the people that have had like a positive effect on her life. And the fact that this show gave her an edit where she was just like this negative person. Oh, that that's kind of more annoying than anything else. I feel like her result there was actually almost what kind of like is the most like genuine result that we've seen the genuine reaction that we've seen in that sort of like sense of like almost like she felt like she was beautiful on the inside but wanted the outside to look slightly different or something like that and it sounded more like there was a, an overwhelming sense of relief that that over that like came over her do you know what i mean it wasn't like pure unadulterated joy or like shock it was like a wave of relief if that makes sense do you get that feeling let me know what you think about like kim's transformation below because that's how I, that's the like emotive feeling that i got oh, all right right come on let's see jennifer now that's the one girls right here we go oh twinkle twinkle little swan who's we got just gout kimberly's big reveal now will she advance to the swan pageant Let's meet her competition, Jennifer Patton. Competition, Experts. stop it. Jennifer came to us with scars, both physical and emotional. Dr. Hayworth, what were your goals with Jennifer? Well, my goals with Jennifer were twofold. Number one, I wanted to improve upon her disfiguring burn scars. And number two, I wanted Did you to improve have to say her disfiguring? nose, brow, and lip appearance so that it would give her a sort of essentially exotic look. And Dr. Yanni, we... Why does Dr. Hayworth love this concept of, like, giving people a sensual and exotic look? That's such a, like, weird... Like, what does that even mean? What does that even... More sensual and exotic. What does that mean? What does it mean, girls? Oh, must we consult the soothsaying teeth of Dr. Annabelle Sherryworth? 
And Dr. Yanni, we know that she had a lot of issues from her childhood. Oh, what did she accomplish sake. in therapy? Nothing. Jennifer had some Three really months. difficult emotional and physical traumas that she had to work through in therapy. Mm -hmm. She tackled the issues head on, learned how to confront people, express her feelings, and she's not hiding anymore. She's shining. Well, we'll unveil what, so she's all better? I don't believe. Moments, but first, I want to show you the Jennifer that we met three months ago. Okay. When I was six years old, my life was devastated by a house fire. I can't imagine. Kids would call me Scarface, Firestarter, Chicken Skin. Okay, right. Well, ladies oh. and gentlemen, it is my honor to present the brand new Jennifer Patton. Come on, Jennifer girls. Oh, man servants, open it up. Let us see. Ooh. Hand on the hip. Oh, what a lovely dress. Oh, wow. They're a lot more vocal now, aren't they? Screaming. Oh, wow, her nose. She looks considerably different. Hey Come with me. <laughs> Jennifer, I can safely say that for the Being first time in a very long time, I'm speechless. You look absolutely out of this world incredible. Thank you. How are you feeling? I'm excited. It broke my She's heart really when I heard tall. your daughter say that you thought that you didn't belong in this world and that made her sad. If she was here right now, what would you tell her about the new mom? Just that I, I don't have to hide anymore. I can't wait you know, just to go somewhere with them, not hide. Oh. Well, Jennifer. This is going to be emotional, you know girls. Because behind that curtain over there, there's a mirror. The Illuminati mirror. Now, I'm going to ask you to step up to the curtain oh. and let me know when you're ready to see the new you. I like both of their hair in this you one. It's so much better than they've done previously. <sighs> Take a few deep breaths. Just deep body waves. Gorgeous. Come on. Come on, Jennifer. Oh, oh here we go. Illuminati girls. Da, 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 da. Her profile is very, very, like, aerodynamic. Is that the word? I'm not sure. Ow! Okay, Jennifer, this is it. Are you ready? Oh, is she gonna yes. punch it? Biff! Oh. Oh. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Oh, she's so overwhelmed, isn't she? Oh, this is... Someone go up and give her a hug! I'm speechless. I told you you would be. I don't like anything. You're shaking the whole thing. Yes, she's clearly overwhelmed. This poor girl. Do you believe it? No. Oh, I don't know, you know. It's not like anything. Like I even imagined. What's the favorite part of your transformation? My teeth. Yeah. <laughs> and my nose. Well, you know what? There's a couple of people behind you that just want to say goodness. huge congratulations to you. Oh my goodness. I feel very different about this one. Oh. It was so immensely satisfied with the way everything came out. Not only did she come out great, she came out spectacular. Oh, Jennifer reminds me of a phoenix rising from the ashes, walking through that fire and just flying. That is a horrible analogy to make. Horrible, horrible little girl. Oh, the swan girls. Right, let's just talk a little bit about Jennifer's reveal there. That was totally different feeling to Kim's uh, reveal. I feel like Jennifer is not just, you know, one of these people that they're just like, oh, you're shy, we've got to fix that you're shy. She genuinely feels like an introverted person. And I feel like it would have been nice if someone was up with her there holding her hand as she did that, because clearly she got so overwhelmed by that 
that moment of the reveal, I didn't get like a joyful feeling from it. Clearly she was happy with, well, was she, was, is it clear that she was happy with her transformation? I don't know if I can even say that, but it definitely felt like she had just like so much emotion there and was just like struggling to kind of deal with it in the, in the most intense fashion ever. I feel weird that that was recorded because that felt like a very private moment of like a welling up of emotion that I feel awkward having watched. Let me know what you think about Jennifer's reveal there because that was that was very strange. Right, who's going to go to the pageant? Here we go to the pageant. Welcome back to the swan. Now, Where's the banister? It's been a night of dramatic reveals. Now we'll find out who our judges in consultation with our experts have chosen to go to the swan pageant. Oh. Will it be Jennifer or will it be Kimberly? Oh, here we go. Gentlemen. Oh. Reveal. Oh, there's another door. The gates of the beyond. Oh! Come on, girls. Oh, they're very solemn. Hi, ladies. How are you doing? Yeah. Okay, the time has come. That was kind of strange. First of all, congratulations, because you both made such incredible transformations. You should be proud of yourself. But right. only one of you can move on to the pageant. Both of their makeup was done really nicely. Swan. That's the one, girls. With that title, oh, hateful show. Worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. Or fake universities. Been evaluated on beauty, on poise, and of course, poise. overall transformation. Poise. Stupid. This envelope contains the name of the woman who will advance onto the pageant. Oh, a different envelope. It was gold last time. Okay. Good luck to you both. Tonight, the woman that will move onto the pageant is. <laughs> Oh, it's got a wax seal. Who is it, girls? Homest. Jennifer Patton. Hmm. Jennifer made it to the pageant, I think, because of how committed she was to doing all the work that she could do. She rose hmm. to every challenge. Jennifer made it to the pageant because she worked super hard. I mean, from someone who was hiding to someone who's mm. come out of her shell. I mean, she deserves all the credit in the world. She did make quite an intense transformation. Oh. She hasn't said very much, but like, Tell me about overwhelmed. Tell journey for you. What's it been Here like? Go. It's been remarkable. You've been it's saved been from the pageant. Ride, and I'm glad to be a part of it. Well, Kimberly, before we say goodbye to you, mm -hmm. there's one very special person who's uh, extremely anxious. Is it a Fabergé egg? Okay, mm -hmm. A puppy, girls. Three months, but it's time. Three months. Come over here with me. Gentlemen. Oh, Disney girls. Who's it gonna be? Oh, husband. <laughs> I can't remember your name. So beautiful. Kimberly looked more beautiful than what I imagined. Uh, she looked like a dream. Oh, oh I'm so cute. Like a dream. Gorgeous. Thank you. Oh, she's deeply excited for the children. At least she gets to see the family. She looks like, yeah, like a movie star. Oh, wow. Oh, look at these she eyes. does look like a movie star, you're right. I've done a lot of emotional and physical changing since I've been here. I've come to grips with a lot of things in my past that may have been hurting me. And I think that was just, you know, something that was definitely oh. needed. You miss me? I miss you too. Oh, I feel quite emotional, girls. Uh, Congratulations, oh, that Jennifer. child's like Bannister. Oh, you must be so proud of yourself. What do you think your husband's gonna think? Doubts. I don't know. She's like <laughs> so overwhelmed. I can just Poor thing. Well, you know what? The next time we see you, we'll be up on stage. Stage. The pageant. The pageant. Get ready, okay? Well, next week the transformations continue as two more women compete for a spot in the most unique beauty pageant ever devised. Oh, have a Who little will kiss. Be named the Swan. Go on. Have a little kiss. If Go you on. want to be on oh. the Swan, call oh. 800-535-7936. Or log on to fox.com slash swan for more information. What? They were casting for a Next third season? No, swan. no, stop. They were casting for a season three of The Swan. That's really interesting. I wonder what exactly was the catalyst that said, no, we're not having any more swans, girl. So, my loves, I'm going to push away my laptop there and take out my ohenga. Um... I have a lot of emotions about this. I, do you know, I haven't reacted to one of these in about... 
must be what, about five weeks now, four or five weeks. My goodness, I... Over that time, I kind of forgot just the amount of, like, emotions that you go through in one episode. Like, I could not film, like, oh, nearly knocked over my drink. I could not film, like, more than one of these episodes per day because literally it's so overwhelming. The amount of, like, the roller coaster that you go through. I really did not like the edit they tried to give Kimberly here of being, like, this angry woman. I thought that that was totally uncalled for and unnecessary. Of course, when you go through surgery, you're going to be, like, a, like, annoyed by everything because you're going to be in pain throughout your healing process. And then the feeling that I got with Jennifer's reveal was just like, I don't know, just overwhelming. Like she she barely said like four or five words at the in the end segment there. And I just feel like, I feel like this kind of a show and the fame that she might get from this kind of a show is not beneficial. It's not beneficial. If we think back to um, Kathy Rickers, when she gave that interview to the Chicago Tribune, and it was like, she really struggled with people like coming up to her in the street and being like, I can't believe you do all that to yourself on the show. The whole negative press around this show and like the negative aftermath. I just don't, f I don't know if Jennifer's like, I just don't want them to, I don't want Jennifer to feel bad. That was difficult for me to say. Let me know what you think about what we have seen today. We didn't see much of the banister and then we only saw one shot of a hateful shoe, so I'm a bit disappointed on the hateful shoe front, my loves. Oh, is my microphone in the right position? Oh, I don't know if it was. How funny. Oh, today I'm feeling business goth, girls. And the reason why is because I've had a little bit of unravelling happen this week in my personal business life, shall we say. So my Monday's video was not able to be put live. So that is why today we are getting another episode of The Swan Girls. And I guess you'll just have to wait for that very specific collaboration with Roly until I sort it out with YouTube. Susan got me again, girls. So, my lovelies, the last time we watched an episode of The Swan, the contestant Jennifer actually commented in the comments and just gave us a little bit of, like, backstage tea, behind-the-scenes gossip about what actually happened. You can go back and read that comment if you want, my loves. But I thank you so much for Jennifer for reaching out, and I cannot wait to share a little bit more of your story in the Where Are They Now, I hope. So, my lovelies, we are speeding through this season like there is no tomorrow. Now, I'm guessing, judging from everything that we have seen so far in this entire series, this entire bonkers from start to finish series, girl, that we might see something a little bit more dramatic. Today, I have my Poop Soirier Max here, ready. Ooh. Mm. Which reminds me, I am always asked in the comments of my videos what I am wearing on my face and what I am wearing on my body. This top is from Attitude Clothing. I have absolutely no idea where this jacket is from, but it is a fitted blazer with rose gold, uh, uh, oh, I was gonna say decolletage. That's not what this is. What's that? Buttons? <laughs> On my lips today, I am wearing a brand new purchase that I made from Beauty Bakery. It is the liquid lipstick they do, what they call lip whips, in the shade Midnight Truffles, which I think is so good. So, my lovelies, we will put in the ohanger and I will see you in conference room three. All right, that's enough waffling from me. I don't know what's happened to me today, my loves. I'm out of practice of filming, but let's watch the Swan Girls. Is it going to be a scandal, girls? She was the first contestant to go to the Swan pageant. Jennifer went Tonight, to the pageant. Spot number two is up for grab. Who will go to the pageant and who will go home Host will go to the, the pageant swan. home good evening i'm amanda barham and welcome to the swan oh should we have a pause is amanda she appears to be in a neck brace <laughs> i hate this papyrus font but they love it look at that disgraceful right is she wearing a hateful shoe i see a large toe so perhaps only show where ordinary women are given the once-in-a-lifetime chance to turn themselves into beauty queens. Now, so far this season, two women have made... Is she wearing a fence post as a corsage? Although I do love a bit of, like, black detailing on black. Black on black on black, love it! Radical transformations, and one has been selected for the Swan pageant. Tonight, two one has more been women selected. will dramatically change their lives forever. Did she give the game away? Oh, the banister! Only one will move on with a chance to be crowned... The That's the one, girls. Bannister. Oh, we can't leave out the banister, can we, girls? No. Uh, uh, I feel like I need to conduct. Uh, scandal. Are you going to be the swan girls? Good evening, expert. Now, Ooh, our first straight into it. This evening is a woman named Gina Davis. Now, Gina lost most of her hearing as a child, <gasps> but she feels that her disability is not what's holding her back in life. So let's take a look. Is it a brow lift? Oh, hello. Gina, you're a We've swan. We've accosted you. Gina, you're a swan. <laughs> <laughs> they're so, the context is so strange for that. Like, they're not saying, Gina, you're going on the swan. It's just like, Gina, you're a swan. The prophecy is true. 
I would put a meme in here of you're a blah blah, but we're not talking about her anymore. I can't believe it. Oh. My name is Gina David. I'm 38 years old, and I'm from okay. Daytona Beach, Florida. Daytona girls. I've been oh, deaf since I was three years old. <gasps> my mom's not sure what caused my deafness. Oh. It could be from birth mm. or when I was sick with <gasps> pneumonia. I took her for past. Really? I had no idea that you could have deafness from pneumonia. My goodness, my loves, make sure you look after yourselves and your loved ones because it's in the air at the moment. And found that oh, her one ear isn't was that the Annabelle doll? And found that her one ear was totally deaf, but she had 10% hearing in her good ear. 10%? Wow. And when people would treat me like anybody else. Exactly. Go, when Gina. I was school, the kids were really mean to me. In the bath, the kid in the bath seat would throw chewing gum at my hair. Oh my they god! Would me, death me, oh. retarded, dumb. I would go straight to my bathroom, close the door, and cry, and cry, and cry on my bed. Oh, Nelly. I said to myself, why do they do that to me? Oh! What did I do wrong? Oh, Jaina, girls. I'm getting actually quite emotional here. I can't do that. I've got a business meeting. Right, so what we need to do, everybody, everybody come around. Everybody gather close. Gather in. Have you got your ear pods in? Have you got your oh, hang up? You... Come close to the screen. What we're going to do is sacrifice those children. That's what we're going to do today, girls. How dare. How dare. How dare. How dare. The damage that we suffer as human beings in childhood is absolutely unacceptable. Look, a single tear has fallen. The people with children in my audience already, I'm sure you are already like brilliant parents, but it's the ones that don't ever listen that are just like, oh, just make sure that your children are not being awful to people with things that they can't change. Because I don't even know what the word is. What is the word? There is absolutely no reason, reason, no excuse for bullying this woman. That is absolutely unacceptable. Categorically. No. Gosh, how on earth am I going to title this video? My goodness. I swear every episode gets more and more shocking. And we haven't even started. When I'm not a bear, I'm mad at the building. She's got gorgeous and piercing When I look eyes. in the mirror, I feel handicapped because I don't feel confident with myself. I can't stand my nose. Oh. I have no chin. I would like to lose some weight. Oh, relatable content. She's very shy to show me her body. Oh. My husband and I have been kissing each other for 10 years. What? Really need like... Haven't kissed for 10 years? Oh my goodness, I don't quite know what to say. Haven't kissed for 10 years? Is that a plot point by production to be like, Oh, look at these two people, they haven't kissed, girl. Is that a plot point, do we think? Or could that like... I don't know. Just like, why would she f willingly share that information? I feel like someone like, where was the last time you kissed? Have you kissed three? <laughs> like production gremlins do. Like a roommate, and I, I hate Living it. like roommate. The thing is, my husband has anger management problems. And he calls me names. <gasps> I hurt my feelings. Oh no! And I think to myself, why am I here? Oh no wonder why I you haven't kissed him. To stand up for myself. I want to prove that disability when I stop my dream to come true. Oh my goodness, we have a lot to unpack there, my lovelies. Um, your incapability to control your anger is not an excuse for inflicting that on others around you. I know there are people in my audience that have experienced anger from their significant others, or ex-significant others, I should hope, that has caused them mental health scarring. I'm in the same boat, my loves. I've felt the same things. That, I have no time for people who can't manage their anger. Yes, there is medical reasons why that might be, but you are more than entitled to say, you're dealing with all that. You do not put your hands on me. You do not insult me. You do not belittle my value in this world. Goodbye. Oh, you know, Gina's story really, really affects me on, on so many different levels. Dr. Diani, need to speak to you about Gina. No, no. She has learned... She needs an actual therapist. ...the bullying when she was little to withdraw from conflict. So we need to teach her effective communication strategies, help her stand up for herself, be assertive, and basically demand to be respected. Do you know, the one thing I always find with Dr. Yanni is she says what we want to hear. She's like, we're going to do this, 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 and this. I never hear a how. Do you know what I mean? Unlike with the surgeons, they kind of explain briefly a little bit of it, like how and why things are done to the face or how they're planning on like moving things. Especially in Extreme Makeover, they when they like to put like the, the free jaw in like the hand and just like wiggle it about, but they explain why they're doing that. Whereas in this show, there's no why. There's just... 
this is what we're gonna do off we go girls it's like but how are you going to give her the techniques to take this back from this bizarre collection of individuals in this like bonkers house situation how are you how is she going to take that into her real life moving forward you know what i mean like what are the techniques what are you actually doing dr dubrode what's your plan for her she has a lot of physical challenges in terms of her body, we're going to do breast augmentation. We're going to do a tummy tuck. Of course, tuck. Of course you are. In terms of her face, she needs a chin implant. She needs work done in her eyes, her lower lids. Got probably the most difficult nose I've ever seen. Dr. Worth, how do you think we can help her? Her smile is an integral part of her transformation. People are staring at her to figure out what she's saying. I'd like to give her a nice, big, white, beautiful smile. Big, that sounds like she wants to give her big teeth to me. But did you see her smile? Let's go back to Gina's smile. This is a good set of teeth. Look how healthy they are. They're aligned quite well. I mean, I'm not a dentist, so don't take me for it. But if she, if Dr. Sherry Worth goes anywhere near this woman with veneers, I'm going to flip this table, girls. I'm going to have a fight. Yeah, potentially this woman would benefit from something like the Philip Zoom situation and maybe like a couple of checkups. But I bet you Sherry's going to be like, we have to burn away the gums, girl. Set the demons free with burnt gums. Maybe I've jumped the gun a little bit there, but we will see later, won't we? Yes, quite. Let's review her plan. All right, the plan. Gina's Rotate plan the lady. Gina's plan several procedures, starting with her face. She will have a nose job, brow lift, chin implant, brow lift. liposuction under her chin, fat transfer to her lips, and LASIK eye surgery. Uh, 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 uh. Right, we're just going to have a little look here. Fat transfer to her lips. So, when Dr. Dubrow was talking about her eye shape there, and he was like, her eyes, they need a lot of work which I don't really think that they need a lot of work. Like a lot of work to me is like six or seven procedures over the course of like five or six years. She has gorgeous space between her eye and her brow. Maybe the brow lift would be good. It will just give her excess scarring in her hairline potentially though. He said earlier that her lower lid needs a lot of work. I haven't seen any of this. Have you? Like what, what are they talking about? Lips and LASIK eye surgery. For her body, she'll have breast augmentation, a tummy tuck, and liposuction on her hips. Why don't we start dentist, with new Gina lingerie? Will have zoom bleaching, extensive laser gum recontouring, and deep cleaning. She will didn't I say? Didn't I say? Didn't I say? I swear that Dr. Sherry Worth, she burns the gums and sacrifices it into the wind. Good heavens. We'll also get Da Vinci veneers. Why? Why is she getting For veneers? For this transformation, Gina will be put on a 1200 calorie a day diet and <sighs> concentrate on toning her muscles to lose 10 pounds. What? She's going to put on a 1200 calorie a day diet and doing muscle toning with the concentration of losing 10 pounds? So what's the point of the 1200 calorie a day diet? I mean, what's the point of the 1200 calorie diet anyway? But like in this situation, like what is the point? And I also don't like the fact that in this show, when they say 1200 calories, they don't share their diet plan with you. Apart from that Nutrisystem woman, are we going to see her? I should hope not. And we also never really hear like what cardio they're doing. We get little snapshots into the gym, but I feel like a huge part of the transformation process in this whole show is done in the gym, but they don't ever like share the importance of that. They're just kind of like, oh, your brow lift and you're done, go. Pageant swan queen. To move past a traumatic childhood, she will undergo weekly therapy and coaching. It's not enough. Okay, team, our next competitor tonight is a 34-year-old police department volunteer who, after years of obesity, has been left with a body that diet and exercise alone cannot fix. Let's okay. meet Laurie Arias from Corona, California. Laurie, Corona. I've got something really important Hello, to Laurie. you. You're going to be a swan. Oh. So, oh, you're going to be a swan, girls. We're giving you the swan plasty. So I do actually want to share something a little bit uh, that I already know about with Laurie. Um, there is a lot of post-show interviews with her. There's a lot of post-show uh, content on the internet and content surrounding her about her experiences after the swan. I will be covering them in The Swan Season 2. Where are they now? But I'm not going to be going into them in this episode. We're just going to be watching this episode. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> I hate looking at myself. I'm 34 years old, but I think life's taken a toll on me. I have always had very low self-esteem. From being told that I was worthless as a child, my mother would tell me I was fat. Everything I did was wrong. And that made me eat, it really did. Okay, so there is a beautiful phrase that I really like, and that is, mother is God through a child's eyes. And the idea that the creator of you, who's brought you into this world, mistreats you in any way, shape or form is disgusting. Disgusting! Ah, 
absolutely disgusting. I'd hide food in my pillowcase. The highest hide food in the pillowcase. Reach was 265 pounds. My husband was my first boyfriend. Two months later, we were married. Oh, he that's never a bit saw quick. me without clothes on. One Two months. I had had enough. They just lowered the fat and worked out. Losing the weight. That is incredible. Quickly, I didn't realize that there would be so much hanging skin. It looks like I'm melting. It's like an empty bag. When I look at myself in the mirror, I see an ugly person. My husband thought my weight loss was great. But then everything went bad. We found out he had a bad liver. My husband died on November 2nd of 2002. He is my soulmate. I love him so much. I just remember just laying there just, you know, this is, this is, no, 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 no. This is one of those things where it's like, okay, this is a makeover show. Remember everyone, this is a pretty extreme makeover show, but this is a makeover show. We don't need production to be like, can you go into the room and look like you're deeply missing your husband? Like lay your head against the bedpost as if it's the four poster bed of your marriage has crumbled. Like that is so nefarious and disgusting. Oh my gosh, Laurie, my lovely. If you are out there and you see this, I am sending you all the love. This show is really trying to make it out as if like everything you do will never work out. And it's just like, oh gosh, it's so heavy, isn't it? Gosh, maybe I should put a, a TW in this video. Wondering why. You know, thank God we have our, our kids. They've helped me so much. <laughs> I'm gonna miss you too, baby. Oh, cool. Family guys. I want to have high self-esteem, finally. Such a sad story. Come on then, story. vultures. It's almost like a cruel twist of fate that she was left with all that excess skin. Dr. Hayworth, can you get rid of that? Lori bears the scars of extreme weight loss. And these can only be reversed with a facelift, tummy tuck, breast augmentation, and also an inner thigh lift. Okay. We're really talking about is a full body lift. Every part of her body has been stretched out. These will a full body lift. A full body lift. She needs a full... She needs a full body lift. All right. Okay. All right. I do understand for excess skin, the only method you can really do to, like, return it to what it was before or any of those statements that we are going to hear is through surgery. Oh, Dr. Hayworth looks like he's crying. So while I do understand that, I do think it's a lot to go through in one session. We have to remember that these people are going to be put through so much in one thing that it's like... You're putting so much stress on the body. These, sh like, transformations should take a little while to do. And the idea that this is all done, wrapped up, you're back home within four months is like... It's like everything in this show should take, like, a decade to do. And they've compressed it so far under so much, like, intensity that I just don't know how anyone can come out of the other end of the show and feel, like, stable. Do you know what I mean? These will probably have to be done in three separate stages. The uh -huh. only thing that's going to get her through this is her dedication. Do you think she's tough enough to survive Three separate stages? Well, I think so, because the fact that she lost all that weight on her own shows me that she has a lot of discipline. Dr. Yanni? And what does she that mean? Her husband. What does that mean, Nelly? Discipline for what? What, do you, what, what, what? what, for the pageant? Discipline for the pageant? For the pageant? This is for a pageant? Hmm. So she's got to really release some of the pain from that past. Okay. How? Let's see her plan. With you on television in front of everyone. Lori will undergo more procedures than any other swan. She'll have a full facelift, nose job, brow lift, upper lip lift with fat transfer, and upper and lower eye lift. She'll also have photo facials to even out her skin tone. Wait, 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 hang on. She's going to undergo more procedures than any other swan. I don't like this. Okay, so we've got full facelift. I mean, how many procedures is in a full facelift in one go? Full facelift, nose job, brow lift, upper lip lift, fat transfer, upper and lower eye lift, and a photo photo facial. So that's eight already, and we're just on the face. A full body lift, including thigh, buttock, and nipple lift, as well as breast augmentation, tummy tuck, and liposuction on her knees. At the dentist... <sighs> plus six, so we've got, hang on, we've got eight, so pl eight plus six, uh, 14, 14 procedures so far, 14 procedures so far, and then what, hmm? This lorry will have bleaching, upper and lower gum tissue recontouring, and deep cleaning. She will also get veneers. <gasps> veneers! That's 18 procedures so far. I'm pretty sure we saw someone in the first season with 21 procedures, though. But I mean, I suppose some of those are like upper and lower. You could count that as like two separate procedures, but like... Still 18 procedures. It's just so much. She has already lost 120 pounds and she will Incredible. be on a 1200 calorie a day Nutrisystem diet to take off the last 10. 
To heal from the death of her husband, she will undergo weekly therapy and coaching. To heal? To heal from the death of her husband? Let me just pick that phrase apart because that is a loaded sentence that I feel like I can maybe shed some light in. So I lost two people very close to me in the last 10 years. Um, I'm still grieving. I think grief continues forever, actually. I don't think you ever really heal. You just learn coping mechanisms to understand that the memories you have with them have to go back into the box at the end of the day. They have to go back into the box. If you hold on to them too tightly, it just makes you very, very sad. How is Dr. Ayane going to be like, oh, you're cured after three months of once a week therapy? Okay, expert, sounds like a lot of work. So let's get started. Okay, great. Not for you though, Amanda, you I just caress banisters. Oh, the piss, trend. that's the one, girls. Right. It's day one of the three month long da, 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 da. swan program. Laurie is here to move on from the emotional scars of losing her husband and get rid of the excess baggage left over from losing 120 pounds. They do have some very interesting ways of editing this show, don't they? Especially when they're like black and white, but something's in colour. It's, it's very like, well, it conjures up a specific film in my mind that used that to show how uh, hurt people can be from massive things. So that doesn't um, bode well, does it? It looks like I'm melting. Beautiful. Her competitor Gina, who is Hello, pair, Gina. is looking to heal from childhood teasing. Well, I really just go. They will call me retarded. Oh, awful. I want to prove that it's a bill when I start my dream to come true. Beautiful. I like the color taken of away all oh, the mirrors. Oh, goodbye mirrors. No mirrors. Oh, wait, 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 wait. This is the first time we've seen it where they, they've actually taken off the mirrors. They haven't covered them up. I don't know why this is so, like, revelationary to me. Revelations, go! Thou shalt not pay retail. But for some reason, I always thought that they just covered them up, but they've actually taken them fully off the wall here. Can't wait to see my... There they have! Different. That moment is still months of hard work What's away. That? Welcome to the Swan program. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. Laurie's first step is a visit with her plastic surgeon. Okay. I'm feeling a little anxious this morning. Of course. Just to get things started. Hi, Laurie. Dr. Hayworth, how are you? The vampire is in. First three stage surgical transformation. No. Three stage. We have to deal with all the after effects of morbid obesity. She's lost so much weight that she looks at least 20 years beyond her true age. We need to go for a total facelift. You might imagine that your belly is uh, one of your main issues, huh? It is. This is going to be her difficult tummy tuck. I'm going to be Difficult. removing excess skin, leaving a small incision around her pelvis, and repositioning the skin around her belly button. Okay. Above all, this is going to be Ooh. a real challenge for both you and I. Okay. Basically, Lori's surgery is a... Wait, is that the first time that we've heard any of the doctors kind of explain how challenging it might be? It was just that tiny sentence, but like, a tummy tuck by itself, just healing from a tummy tuck, is a long procedure so many things have to happen like blood vessels have to reconnect muscles has to reconnect fat tissues have to reconnect like there's so much going on in a tummy tuck in terms of healing that they are quite extensive and like your whole front is numb so i didn't hear about any of that in that consultation did you which is an interesting choice by production why would they leave out all of the negative things, or maybe not negative, maybe negative is the wrong word. All of the things that aid in a decision, shall we say, and only be like, oh, you just popped to the doctor, yeah, you get it cut off, all done, back to work, girls. It's not an accurate depiction of what a consultation is for surgery. Total body lift, and that's a lot of surgeries. Body lift. The challenge for Lori will be in her recovery, but if she can make it through this, this will be one of the most dramatic physical transformations ever seen on the swan. The thought of having everything fixed is still sinking in. And it's the best thing that's ever happened to me. A positive oh. attitude is a must as Laurie will undergo more procedures than any other swan. Oh, they're really going to milk that, Meanwhile, aren't they? Gina just make merch. just how difficult her surgical Gina transformation goes. will be. Okay. The challenge with Gina today is that her face is extremely <laughs> uneven. And to bring out her beauty, we're going to have to make her face a lot more symmetrical. Extre how how rude. are you? Extremely I uneven. Your nose may project a little too far, so we can set it back and bring the tip together. The way that I don't like that the doctors on this show speak about bodies is if, like, who decides too far? Do you know what I mean? Like, your nose sticks out too far. Where is the line of too far? Where is that? Do you know what I mean? That's the one thing I don't get is that, like, all of the ideas of beauty in this show are specific 
to just these two men. These two, these two men's idea of what beauty is. That's all it is. Beauty is so varied and so different across so many different types of people, places, cultures, lifestyles, and it makes no sense as to why we're all these women are subjected to one idea of beauty, and it depends on the luck of the draw of which surgeon they get as well. Gina has a flat bridge of her nose and her tip cartilages are split apart, so I'm going to sculpt her nose to balance her face. Well see? See? Imagine if he'd have said, instead of saying like, oh, your nose sticks out too far, instead of being like, what we can do is we can rebalance how the nose looks with the face. To me, that is a positive way of saying, like, there are things that we can do, you know? There are things that we can do to help. Rather than if she said no there, would she be like, oh, maybe my nose does stick out too far? Do you know what I mean? Imagine if you'd gone for a consultation with a doctor. I've gone for one and I've come back, come out of it feeling awful because it was one of the worst consultations I've ever had. Happened in 2017, hated it. And I left so deflated and feeling gross about myself that it took me another year or so to book in with another doctor to get another consultation. And I felt so much better after the second one because I was like, oh, this is a professional who understands me. I just, there's so much in language that I think people especially who have struggled with themselves and struggled with their body image and struggled with maybe a, a disability of some sort, it is up to a doctor to approach that language in a way that makes sense, is firm, but understanding. I don't get this from this show. Well, I think the problem with your chin is it could use a little implant to give it a little more definition. See, Does that's that sound a great like something sentence. you want. Yeah. Okay, I've good. I've been this that was great. I will not worry about what other people think. Oh. Gina is looking forward to her new confident okay. self. The finishing oh. touch will be a beautiful smile. Gina's oh. mouth is the focus of her face. People have to stare right at her mouth to understand what she's saying. Mouth because the color of my teeth. Okay, well, let's get started. We're going to remove oh. some of the infected gum tissue and then prepare upper and lower teeth for veneers. Oh, why? She has you lovely didn't feel teeth. anything, did you? My nose. Good. Gina's transformation is on track. Now Laurie takes her turn in the dental chair. That would have taken hours and 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 hours, and hours to do. So the idea that they're just like, oh, zzz, zzz, buzz, buzz. Bitch, all done. Like, that's not correct. Okay, so you know this back tooth back here. Needs. I don't think that one's going to make it. I'm just going to take it out. Oh, don't trust no, you, girl. I'm just going to take it out today. It won't hurt. Oh, is it numb enough? It's really numb, yeah. But I want to get the infection out of there. It's just one little tooth. I don't trust you. <gasps> oh, there we go. Lori is shaken after having her tooth removed, but this is only the beginning of a long list of procedures in her plan. Oh, gosh. Right, okay. See, the thing about dentistry is, I guess, just from seeing pictures of someone's teeth from, like, when they're smiling, like, uh, like, you can't really get a full idea of what's going on in their mouth. So I can understand that maybe if someone comes into a dentist chair and there is some problem going on that, you know, after investigation, they're like, actually, we need to take this tooth out. I can understand that fear and shock of suddenly being like, oh, I thought you were doing something else and now we're taking out a tooth. I can understand that. But Sherry Worth has been, I keep saying disbarred. Disbarred is not the right word. It's like, had her medical license revoked because she was over-prescribing things. So why wouldn't she have over-prescribed this on the show? Do you know what I mean? Twinkle, twinkle, little earth. Laurie walks in for her first stage of surgery with a lot on her mind. I'm really nervous this morning. It's all hitting me right now. Good what was morning, the shock Laurie. How are you? Fine. Nervous. Scared. Yeah. So let's get started. <gasps> okay, well, let's Doodle mark pips. the face first. Oh, they love these unflowering shots, don't Before they? Before stepping into the OR, Laurie looks to her children for comfort. Oh, come on. Hi, Miho. Hi, Mom. Hi. Hey. Oh. I miss you. We're very close. Since my husband died, it's only been the three of us. So that, what a lovely phone call that was. Wasn't that so much better? than what we've seen before, where it's just like, I don't want you to get cheek implants because I won't recognize you, girl. And then they go into surgery crying from like nefarious men. This was, that was a lovely little phone call. I think that that was great. The, I think the idea with this show is they try not to put in as much of the nicer stuff because they, they, they need the drama. The drama is what keep people watching. So that conversation could have gone on for five or 10 minutes of just being like, we're here, mom. You know, we love you. We'll see you soon kind of things. But we only got, hi, mom. I love you. Bye. Like, do you know what I mean? So nefarious production again, Gail. Here we go. Nice big deep breath for me. The surgery that we're going to be doing on Lori is basically total body reinvention. Today I'm going to embark on the first of her three stages with okay. a rhinoplasty, a lip augmentation with lip lift, a buttock lift, and finally an inner thigh lift. A okay, lip Lori, lift. Here okay. Here we go. Right. We're going to start on her nose. 
Everything. So interestingly enough, I'm actually quite familiar with the concept of a lip lift because it's actually quite often a procedure done in facial feminization surgery, which is what I will be having next year. However, I am not getting a lip lift because I actually have a nice little space between my nose and my lip. I quite like how it looks. Maybe in the future, you know, that might change, maybe 10, 15 years down the line, depending how I feel about it. But I'm, I'm quite familiar. So the way that they do it is they take a little section out that's the shape of the underside of your nose and your top lip. And then they take that section out and they stitch the top lip to the bottom of the nose to give that little like pronounced curve like that. And it's a really simple and easy procedure. It can even be done in like, I think it only takes like 45 minutes or something like that. It doesn't take long at all. Everything came out really, really good with the nose. Mm -hmm. The most challenging and risky of today's procedures are the buttock and inner thigh lift. Raise Wait, didn't he say she had the most challenging nose he'd ever seen? But he was like, oh, actually, it's all gone very well and we're moving on now. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> are they trying to go with the storyline of like, she's so difficult. Oh, look how difficult it is. And the doctors have to say, oh, my God, this is the most difficult work I've ever done. And then they're like, actually, it went very well because I'm very accomplished and I'm a great doctor. Is that what they're trying to make them say? To make them sound almost more authority? Almost sound like they have more authority than they, they do? I don't know. We, the, for some reason today, because we've had a little break from it, the, the sentences that I'm hearing, I'm so like, really? Someone said that? Do you know what I mean? These procedures are only reserved for the most extreme cases oh of weight goodness. loss because of the excessive scarring and the high risk of infection. Okay. But you've been giving tummy tops You're to everyone. Done. You're all done. You're waking up. Surgery's oh over. Laurie has made it through her first stage of surgery. Wow. Two weeks later, she gets prepped for stage two. I must actually say, before we listen to stage two, this season is a lot less graphic than the first season was. Like, they're actually blurring a lot of the stuff that goes on underneath the knife, so I can actually get away with blurring a bit less. That's kind of interesting because maybe either the time slot of when they were showing this on TV changed, or the network was like, you, you can't show a breast lift in great detail. No, I'm sorry, girls. I don't want to be confused with my mother anymore. She's 53. I'm 34. Today, Laurie's second stage is going to involve an upper and lower eye tuck, a endoscopic brow lift, and then a traditional facelift. Okay. Well, we're starting the facelift now. And there's some rather important nerves. One false move can paralyze her for the rest of her life. Yes. Open your eyes for us. Hey, there you go. Hi, hi. Are you married? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> She's in good spirits now, but she'll have to pull through a difficult recovery before she can go on to the third stage. See, I know it's all very funny to see people like, oh, that's quite funny when they're like a little bit high when they come out of surgery. But in a show like this, to use that as like a plot point being like, oh, she has the hots for Dr. Hayworth. Isn't Dr. Hayworth gorgeous? Oh my God, Dr. Hayworth. <laughs> Feels a little bit naughty because she wouldn't have been able to give consent for that to happen, you know? Hmm. And it's very different, I think, when you have your own footage of yourself being loopy girls when you're out of it and you put it on the internet. I'm just gonna take the pageant. Sorry, girls. This She's gonna take the pageant. This is just what Laurie will need to make it through recovery. Oh. Meanwhile, right, come on then. Gina is nervous as she prepares for her physical transformation. Oh, the clothes. I'm trying not to think about the pain. Mm-hmm. This is a really difficult nose. Stop telling her that! She has some basic asymmetries that really make it difficult to establish a center of beauty on her face. Her orbits are at different levels, her eyelids go down at different angles. A lot of difficult surgery to do today. Before beginning, Gina looks to her husband for support. <gasps> An interpreter is assisting him in the conversation. Oh. Hello? Hello? Gina says to David she loves him and that she's going into surgery. He, he said, okay. And is there anything else that David wants to say before we hang up? No, no that's it. Bye-bye. Bye. He didn't say I love you? I told him that I love him. Oh. Um, I should have. Can you just tell me that he left me? Oh. Gina is taken into the operating little... room without the support she was looking for. My little heart's breaking. Oh, that's really sad. I mean, all we can kind of think about it there, maybe it was something was lost in translation, but also like, that's really sad, actually. We have to start an IV for you. IV. Gina, I'm gonna ask you to straighten your arm best you can. Gina's lost one of the major senses we all take for granted. Under anesthesia, 
She's lost complete control of her normal environment. That can be very scary. Yes. You're doing great. No. Uh, it's going to oh, no. be okay. No. After a stressful morning, Gina's finally ready to begin. Oh, this is so too we'll much. So we'll start with breast augmentation on Gina. Okay, Gina has perfect mid-C's, and we're going to move on to the facial surgery. How is she going what to really be able to do is... So she speaks with American Sign Language. How is she going to do that after having, like, breast augmentation? Because you can't really, like, lift your arms up very much. She's going to feel really alone for a little while, and that's quite frightening to me. Oh, I hope that she has someone with her at all times, because if they don't, if they haven't allowed someone to be with her at all times, that is cruel rebuild the bridge which may not be possible if there's not enough cartilage inside the nose this is the hardest nose i've ever done yes we that heard the, the first time i've ever done Flat. i'm hoping she heals really well because i don't want it to hold her back from the pageant hoping. and i'm cautiously optimistic nose okay nose okay okay sure. she can move her okay. arms that's great right. Very okay good. I'm going to be beautiful. She's not having a problem moving her arms, actually. I thought she might. Next on the swan. Oh. The roof blew off as the house was flooded out. Gina is forced to make a heartbreaking decision. What? You want me to come home? <laughs> and will Lori's difficult transformation... This is the most challenging. Tell me, Tuck, I've done. ...push Lori over the edge. What? I want to go home. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> How will it affect their transformation? Find out next on the swan. What more can we say, everybody? What more can we say? If I didn't laugh, I'd cry. My goodness. Okay. Wow. All right. The drama is pumped up to 11. There's a natural disaster in this episode. <laughs> right, here we are. There's boats on the lake. Clinical Hi. aesthetic How treatment. Are you? Go. Gina's doing amazingly Gina. well. She doesn't oh, have good. any pain, so, so far, so good. Gina's recovery is ahead of schedule. I'm oh. Great right now. <laughs> She's doing phenomenally well, but the life she left behind is being destroyed. The hurricane force winds. Oh my goodness. Really up on the grid. Power is going out quickly. It is something out there. Hurricane Francis has ripped through her town in Florida, and she has lost contact with her husband and young son. Oh no! No reactor. Ah! Cricket through. Gina can't reach her husband, but finally gets through to her mother. <sighs> Your roof blew off and uh, the house was flooded out. My house was flooded out. Gina's home has... Why did they put an echo on her speech like that? That's a bit rude, I find. But I remember when Hurricane Francis happened. I actually remember, like, watching the news about it in 2004. Wow. My good I bet there are still some people recovering from that hurricane now. That is a lot to deal with. Oh, she must feel awful being so far away from family at that point. Gosh, frightening. Stained extent. Isn't weather insane? Weather is absolutely insane. ...of damage and her family has been relocated. Do you, do you but they're want fine. Me to come home? No, you stay there and finish what you're doing. That's very important to us. Okay. I love you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That sounded like a, a positive, strong <laughs> message. Oh, Gina. <laughs> Oh! I don't have any tissues for you, lady. I wish I could help her, but my mom, she want me to stay here. She want my dream to come true. Oh. While Gina faces a difficult decision, oh. Lori heads into her final stage Gosh. of surgery. Until my stomach is gone, I don't feel it. My transformation will be complete. You okay? You know, sometimes before this is bed, heavy. I pray to wake up different, but now this time I will. Lori's final stage of surgery will include a breast augmentation, a breast, breast lift, as well as an extremely challenging tummy tuck. What I'm doing now is okay. starting off with the breast augmentation. Oh, here we go. Yes. Okay. The breasts, I must say, are absolutely perfect. Oh! Now I'm starting the second challenge, breast. and that is her tummy tuck. Okay. This is the most challenging tummy tuck I've done <clears throat> in terms of just the sheer excess amount of skin I have to deal with. Okay. It's like making a real billowing parachute into a tight form-fitting dress. Is that what it is? Is that what it's like, Dr. Hayworth? Or is it more like giving a surgery to someone who's requested it? Is it really taking a billowing parachute and making it into a dress? Is that really what it is? Imagine. Thank you for calling me a billowing parachute. Oh. 
Lori's stomach is done now. It went very well, and already, immediately after surgery, you can see a tremendous improvement. Okay. Lori's had more surgery oh. than any of the other swans. Now it's just a matter of her body healing in time before the pageant. While Stop the pageant. While faces a grueling recovery, Gina remains conflicted about returning to her hurricane-ravaged home. I'm so glad that my family's okay. But I'm far away from them. Yes. It's very hard. Yes. The swan has sent a surprise visitor to help get her back on track. Hi. Oh, hello. Oh, my God. Merlene, from the first season of The Swan, yes. is the daughter of deaf parents. She dealt with her own struggle to stick to the program, but okay. ultimately persevered and made it to the pageant. Tell me about what's going on at home. Okay, 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 okay. This is the one time in The Swan that I've actually thought they've actually really thought about how to make Gina feel more comfortable here. Obviously, we haven't heard the conversation, but my goodness. I feel like the extra support, I'm actually really thankful that, that they've decided to really pay attention to Gina's needs, Gina's specific needs. So let's have a listen, shall we? What's going on at home? Big hurricane? Um, my roof was collapsed in the house and it was flooded. Oh. And I really wish that I could help them to, like, to clean up the mess of from course. the storm. Of you can course. go home now, take care of them, still be in the same spot you were when, before you came here. But the short time you have here to take care of yourself, you can take care of your family for the rest of your life That's when true. you get home. Today's Marine taught me a valuable lesson that I need to think about myself, and that's what I'm here for. Gina. Oh! I don't know if I was in this situation that I would listen to anyone saying, stay away from your family who's experienced a natural disaster. I don't think I would listen to it. You could, production could put anyone in front of me and I would be like, no, my family need me. No TV show is worth that to me. So I feel like that's a bit nefarious, actually. Now, listening to that conversation, it sounds like Merlene was invited, yes, to make Gina feel more comfortable, but also to reinforce what the production wants in terms of, you need to stay and complete the pageant. Do you know what I mean? Hmm. Gina has rededicated herself to the program. Meanwhile, the effects of three stages of surgery have taken a toll on Laurie. I'm not surprised. So this pain, it takes your breath away. Yes, Desperately that is Desperately missing home, Laurie calls her children. Oh, please answer. I hate it here. I want to be with you guys. I want to be with you too. I want to go home. I wasn't going to do this, but it's, I can't control it anymore. Laurie has reached her breaking point. She's packing up to leave the program. I'm killing my dream. Oh. But love is so much more worth it. Oh. Now I'll get to see my kids. Uh oh. Lori is cutting her transformation short. She calls her sons <sighs> looking for support in her decision. I know you can do this. Just a little bit longer. <laughs> Just pull through. Whoa! To be with them, it's what made me feel like I wanted to go. But it's what's giving me strength. What's happening? Gina and Laurie are What? What was that roller coaster? It's like I've just been on the smiler. What was that? That was like, uh, she's leaving, uh, she's coming, uh, oh, uh, she's staying. What was all that about? That was really the ugh. All of that in like 20 seconds as well. What an interesting plot point to put in the show. Surely that would, surely Laurie in that situation would have taken a while to come to that decision, no? It still has a long way to go to complete her inner transformation. I feel like I'm missed. Oh, I hate Because it. you feel rejected? I've had this feeling all my life. Will she gain the confidence to earn herself a oh. spot in the pageant? Oh. Lori came in hopes of moving past the death of her husband and losing layers of sagging skin. It Gosh. looks like I'm melting. She endured three grueling stages of surgeries and a round of final touch-ups. A round of final? In the very, very fine lines that we can't get with a facelift. But will she complete the program? And who will make it to the pageant? Interesting that they just kind of glossed over what filler was there. I feel like filler can do some amazing things to the face. I mean, obviously, within reason. A lot of the problems that people are experiencing here with, like, aging around the eyes if they want to correct it and such, filler and Botox can be a first port of call rather than, like, going all the way to a facelift. Do you know what I mean? So that's really strange that they just glossed over that. Like, it's not a, an important part of the cosmetics world. Oh. <gasps> 
Oh, are we already here at the what pageant? The oh, that is... It's been a month since oh, we've seen nice Jenna and Laurie and three months since they've seen themselves they've in a mirror. They've got hue lights. And believe me, a lot has changed in that time. Oh. Now, in just a moment, we'll finally Pleasant. see the results of their transformations. But before we do that, let's check in with the team of experts who devoted their time to transforming these this women. This has gone rather swift. Experts. Who's that lady in the grey? Now, Gina came to us with deep emotional scars. She's been severely hearing impaired since she was a little girl and also had an extreme lack of confidence. Can we just talk a little bit? I know she's recapping exactly what we've just seen like 19 times in this show. If there's something about the swan, they love a recap. I just want to say, I love this cut on Amanda, this cut of this dress. It's so beautiful to show this like little bit of clavage and this little like sparkling silvery diamond necklace is so cute with the little point on it. It's a bit of me, this outfit. It's a little bit of me. Dr. Yanni, how low was her self-esteem? Dr. Ian. Extremely low. She had no idea how to stand up for herself, and she also didn't have any idea how to connect to other people. And I think throughout the course of the program, she learned to find her voice and love herself as much as she's able oh. to love others. Oh, we don't need these... Dis oh, bleh! We don't need these weird little puns. She learned to find her voice. You wouldn't have said that about any other contestant, and we all know why. Nellie, Gina's home was destroyed in the hurricane in Florida. I mean, how did she cope with that tragedy? Her commitment to the program was outstanding. She not only Let's ask the swan coach who knows nothing about anything how to deal with a natural disaster, shall we? Yes, come on. Come on, swan pageant lady. Tell me your wisdom about Hurricane Francis. She only stayed. She really soared in the whole program. Well, we'll get a look at the new Gina in just a moment. But first, let's take a look back at how she looked three months ago oh, and fill you in on oh, a look, dramatic another new development that happened just a couple of days ago. A development? But I really just go, the kids were really mean to me. I would go straight to my bedroom, close the door, and cry, and cry, and cry. When I look in the mirror, I think some coarse I eyelashes feel would look lovely on I don't feel confident with myself. Right. What's Gina the development? endured a gruelling three-month program, and just a few days ago, <gasps> she Who's transformed that? in a way she never thought possible. Oh God! Davis, what did she do? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. You have very little hearing in that left ear, and unfortunately, you have a severe to profound hearing loss in the right ear. The next step is to try a new hearing aid. <gasps> this is what makes the huge difference in helping you hear better. The hearing aid is now on. How is the volume? I mean, for the first time in my life, I can hear my own voice. Oh. I'm so happy. You know, I'm ready oh to Oh my come. gosh. I'm so happy. Why wasn't this the point of the show? It's such a great moment for Gina. And now they glossed over that like it was nothing. Why didn't? Why wasn't that a bigger section of her story to be like, we're going to do as much as we can to try and help you here? Now it gives me great pleasure to introduce... Gina Davis. Oh, come on, Gina. Manservant, open the door. Oh, I see blonde. That is a horrible hairstyle. Party wig. Okay, gorgeous, sparkling. Gina, Gina, what have they done to your hair? What is this? What is this? It's like someone put a Dyson Airwrap in your hair, but just sort of let it go and do its own thing. They could have made you look so gorgeous with a Hollywood blowout, like bloody Dr. Sherry Worth in the background. They did you dirty with this hair, but I love the colour. Okay. Ooh. Pretty in it's it's the dress reminds me a little bit of the Hunger Games dress. See, that's much nicer. The hairstyle they gave her there in this aftershot is much nicer than whatever this mess they gave her for the ru for the reveal. Ow! God, what is the styling on this show? You She's got a lovely smile. It, oh, it's so good to see you. How are you? Oh, is it because they're extensions? Come with me. Let's have a chat. Oh, Gina, I'm so thrilled for you. How what do you is feel? What is the hairstyle? I feel great. Would any hairdresser in the audience watching this feel happy with this woman's curly hair leaving your salon? Tell me about how much your hearing has improved. For the first time in my life, I can hear almost everything. It's the main thing, the best thing in my life. Don't interrupt her while she's You're speaking. so inspiring, Gina. It's incredible. You haven't seen yourself for quite a long time. Okay, Gina, in a moment, I haven't seen a hateful shoe curtain. yet. Oh, yes, I have. And when you're ready, come on then. We'll let you see the brand new you. Okay, good luck. Da, 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 da. Amanda's got a perspex heel on. Oh, she's going to do a pole show soon. Come on, girls. Hugh Lamp. 
curtains above the gout. Curtains reveal the gout. Come on then. Come on, Gina. Goosebumps, girls! My nose! I got a chill! My pee! Python! Oh, Sherry's been possessed again. Wow! Oh, look at my tummy! That was a lovely reveal. I look like a movie star. My head is gonna flip. <laughs> Do you remember, Gina? You used to be embarrassed to smile. No more. No more. I'm not gonna stop smiling ever. Oh. <laughs> I should hope not. And you also said that your disability would never stop you from making your dreams come true. <sighs> My dream came true. Oh. <laughs> There's a few people behind you that oh. want to say a big, huge congratulations. <laughs> Guys, come on. Thank you. Oh. Gina, oh. I just She's become the swan. Over. She went from a mousy person to this beautiful, confident star. I'm just because you're a vulture powerful. talking about mice. Gina presented a very difficult situation because her face and her body are so uneven, so asymmetrical. I was really able to get things more balanced, and the result is nothing short of amazing. She's beautiful. But she was beautiful before, beautiful after. Wow. The swan chimney girls! Hey. Don't spoil anything for me just yet. Oh my goodness. So can I just first digest what Gina just revealed there? That level of emotion, relief, happiness, um, like, almost excitement, actually. It was like an overwhelming sense of euphoria, almost. Like a, a euphoric scream of excitement. I feel very different about that than almost nearly every other reveal we've seen. Every other reveal has had a slight, like, to it. Whereas this has been so positive. Such a wonderful experience to have that. I feel negatively about this show, but I would say not having done any research on how, how Gina is after the show, that that really had like a defining positive impact on her life. Let me know what you guys think about that uh, that section that we've just seen in the comments, because I'm a little bit like, ooh, jiggly girls. Here we are, the swan. In through the window, okay, I got out. Saw Gina's amazing reveal. And there's one more still to come. It's her oh, competition, love all these sequences and sparkles. Excellent. Come on, Laurie girls. Laurie came to the Swamp program having been through quite a few ups and downs. You think Dr. She's Haywood, a swamp. she's had more plastic surgery procedures than any swan yet. Considering the circumstances, how did she do? I think she handled it extremely well, and I think the results speak for themselves. And Dr. Yanni, did Laurie buckle down and do the work in therapy? You know, I think Laurie shed as much emotional baggage as Dr. Hayworth helped her shed excess skin. Oh, and by the time God's she was sake. finished, she had dealt with some of the issues from her past and emerged on a very different level than which she came. I don't believe she's you. She's been through so don't. much, but she's made it here tonight. And before we bring out the new Laurie, let's remind okay. you of what her life was like before she came to the swamp. That's the one, girls. I oh. have always had very low self-esteem. I didn't realize that there would be so much hanging skin. Well, it's been a long, tough road, but she made it. And here she is, okay. Laurie Arias. Come on, Laurie, girls. Reveal, manservants. <gasps> oh! That's so great. Oh my God, no. Wow. So good. Once again, they've given her a little bit of a wispy fringe, though, I must say. But have you noticed all of the people that are like in the background, these culty people, that cult go really wild for one contestant? They're like, yeah! It makes no sense to me. But I would put a little bit of a bet on to think that maybe they're trying to hype up the audience to be like, oh, yeah, she deserves to go to the pageant or something. Do you know what I mean? Right now, I predict that Laurie will go to the pageant. That's what I'm feeling. <laughs> Hey, 
Okay. Really zoomed Ooh, in good to see you. I'm name. great. Come with wow, me. She looks so different. Laurie, though. you are one hot mama. How are you feeling? Great. Yeah? yeah. Describe to me the Her Laurie hair is a year ago and the Laurie today. Styled very specifically. Laurie a year ago was self-conscious. So I think the reason why she has a fringe going up here and down here. And then like, if you notice, there's like a piece, of, there's like a strand of hair stuck all the way down here. I think that's to cover fresh facelift scars. That's what I think. Laurie, a year ago was so oh, her lip about lift. everything. Oh, I'm more confident. That's huge. How do you think you're going to feel when you see yourself today in the mirror for the first hair. time in all this time? So oh, excited. wait, no. Is it extension? I really am. Are you okay. ready for that? I am. You sure? Good. Because, Laurie, as you can see, there's a curtain over there. Mm-hmm. And you know what's behind it. Yeah. There's a mirror. Gout. Okay. Now, I'm going to ask she you to step to the curtain, and whenever like, you're ready, overwhelmed. we'll pull back the curtain, and you'll be able to see the brand new you, OK? You ready? I am ready. OK, here you go. Oh, that's a hateful shoe. What a horrible length dress as well. Give her something glamorous, long, gowny. Why are her arms covered? Why has she got fringe on everything? All oh, the lampshade's gonna get you, girl. Come on, Laurie, reveal. Laurie, it's time. Are you ready? Magic. Yes, I am. Illuminati girls. Come on, then. See, and that, that lighting is oh hateful. Oh my god. Whoa. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. <laughs> That's Thank a horrible length dress. Me horrible. Stop me off. Oh. You know, you once said. <laughs> Do you want to look in the mirror one day and see a person who loves themselves? She should have Amanda's dress on. Yeah. Well, what do you see? Oh, oh my God. Oh, I, I know I won't be lacking in confidence anymore. <laughs> I should hope not. Oh, my God. What's your favourite part of your transformation physically? You weren't really you know, pressing her. There's no tummy bulge there. <laughs> so thin. I know. I got, you know. I know. <laughs> What are the kids going to think? Oh my god, they're they're going to freak. <laughs> this is wonderful. This is this is more than I ever expected. I bet you're glad you stayed now. Yeah. <laughs> There's a couple of people behind you I think that want to tell you how fabulous you look. Yeah. Guys. Lori's had an incredible hmm. body transformation. She's had a total blah, blah, body blah, lift, blah. a total facelift. She literally looks 20 years younger. She does look amazing. She's definitely got this like when glow. I, saw Lori, I was absolutely proud and amazed at how far she's come physically. <laughs> Stunning. Out through the chimney, girls, let's clap the lady. She doesn't have scars. Okay, let's pause. Let's think about Laurie. Let's 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 see there. So I think just from how much we've seen of Laurie in this show, I feel like Laurie is an introverted person. And I feel like she was quietly, like, happy with the reveal, but also, like, trying to maintain a level of inner strength that was, like, not to lose too much composure, which I very much associate with as an introvert myself. I wonder if maybe... So there was a thing in the last season after reading that some people had had two reveals because their first one, they were, like, a little bit shell-shocked about it. I wonder if maybe this was a, a second time reveal where they had to, like, really like, ask her questions to, like, pull more information out of her so that she would give more sound bites to the to the show. I wonder if that's the case. I don't have an overwhelming positive feeling from that, but I still have a positive feeling. But let me know what you think. Let me know what you think, because I'm a little bit, I'm still not quite, like, I didn't get goosebumps. I didn't get like an emotional overwhelming feeling. I got very like solemn strength, if you know what I mean. Let's see who goes to the pageant, girls. That's the one, girls. We are Swan. Welcome Swan back Lake. to Swan. Now, it's the been lady a night of, of dramatic reveals, and we'll so find out again, who girls. our judges in consultation with our experts have chosen to go who to the Swan the pageant. Will it be Gina, or will it be I Laurie? I was going to say Jesus, Before then. Will it be out, Jesus? Take, Very good. Very good, yes. Right, come on, then. Open the gateway to the beyond. Here they are, girls. Oh, breasts. 
Oh, we're off, girls. What do you think, ladies? How are you doing? Oh, hateful shoes. Well, I just want to say that you both made absolutely incredible transformations. So congratulations. <gasps> okay. But only one of you can move on to the pageant with a chance to be crowned the Swan. Okay. Right. Who's going to be girls? With that title comes cash and prizes worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. <gasps> You've been evaluated on beauty. Right, who's it gonna voice, be, girls? And of course, on overall transformation. Hi, in this Jenny. This envelope contains envelope the name of the woman who will advance to the pageant. That woman! Good luck to both of you. Okay, right, come on then. The woman who will move on to the pageant tonight who is it? Who is, is it? Who is it? Who is it? Oh, that's a nice necklace. Oh, that's also a nice necklace. Home! Gina Davis. <gasps> oh, spooked! Fully spooked! Gina made it to the pageant because she overcame incredible obstacles. She looks amazing on the outside, has really changed on the inside, and I'm so happy for her. Oh, I my... think Gina has found her voice through the course of this program. Okay. She's comfortable in her own skin and with other people for the very first time in her life. I just want to have a little analysis there for a moment. I know I've jumped the gun a little bit, but so when they were like for Laurie, we have to now I have to go back on what I said earlier and be like, OK, so maybe they're not doing that. Maybe they're doing that for the person who's had like the most struggle or something like there will be a reason they've decided to make people cheer more for one over the other. But another aspect of the editing in this show is they always make one of them look a bit negative. One of them's like, no, I'm not doing this or I'm leaving, blah, blah. blah. And then, then that one doesn't go on to the pageant. So confusion, girls. I am confusion. Gina, congratulations. Will you please stand over there while I say goodbye to Laurie? Laurie. Oh, do you get to see your <laughs> cabbage eggs? Can you this experience to me? Horrible. Last three months. Beat. Oh, God, it's been too hard. But I've you're been... feeling a much better person after it all. And oh. I'm feeling way better now. Fantastic. It's been too hard. Oh, but you are feeling like it's been a positive year. You do feel like a better person, yes? <gasps> Laurie snatched Amanda's wig. Yeah. I get to go home and be with my family. Come over here with me. Gentlemen, reveal the eggs. Fabergé. Oh, oh. everybody's here. <laughs> oh, it's so beautiful. Oh my goodness. I feel Four really months. good because I know that you know this will change our lives. It just doesn't look that much like my mom anymore. I was really shocked when I saw my mom because she looked beautiful and terrific. <laughs> oh, friends are here. Oh. I feel much better about myself today. I'm more confident. I'm stronger because of all the stuff I had to go through. Those are quite some cheekbones I've got. <laughs> That's different. Oh. <laughs> I think if Roly went on this one, I would be one of the friends that just came in and was like, Oh, it's so good to see you. Are you wearing a hateful shoe? Oh, oh touch me in the beds. <laughs> Gina, come here to me. Oh, I'm oh, sorry, Gina. You don't get to see anyone. Girl. How are you feeling? I'm so excited. I can't believe I'm going to the pageant. You're going to the You're pageant. You're going to the pageant, you better girls. believe it, because the next time we see you, we'll be up on that stage at the beauty pageant. Well done. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, next week, the transformations continue as two more women compete for a spot in the most unique beauty pageant ever devised. Who will be named? That's wrong. You want to be on the Swan? Oh. Call 800-535-7936. Hello, I want to Fox. be the Swan. Oh my gosh, okay, right. I have had enough, girls. I've had enough for today. Okay, my lovelies, I'm going to push away my laptop and take up my Ochinger there because that was an emotional episode. This is the thing. I just can't bear the idea of possibly ever filming two Swan episodes in one day because they are so, like, draining. I feel like I've been through, like full body exercise or something after watching these shows because it's just emotion, 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 trauma, 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 pain, 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 emotion, 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 excited, death. Like, it's just so much that I'm just like, ugh, what am I meant to do? What am I going to do now? The rest of my day, I'm just going to be thinking like, wow, what did the show do to these poor contestants? My goodness. I am quite surprised that they went with uh, Gina going to the pageant. And the reason why I say that is because back in the day, shows were not accommodating at all to anyone who was differently abled or disabled in any way. 
So the idea that they are going to put her on stage where potentially she's going to be talked at by people very far away is very like, I wonder how that's going to work because they these shows, these kind of shows were notorious of not being like hugely welcoming. Although I must actually say they did seem to go out of their way for Gina in this episode. And I'm so thankful that they did because it felt very much like someone was listening to her needs. But I do still feel it kind of bit weird that uh, they got Merlene to come on and be like, why don't you stay here and not go and see your family who's just experienced like a natural disaster to me that's a bit dodgy i'm not sure i like that because you couldn't keep me away from my family if there'd been a natural disaster my loves nothing doesn't matter what's happened to me unless i'm in a hospital recovering i am there do you know what i mean well my loves um i wanted to talk more about laurie's story at the end of this series because it is quite a um there's quite a lot to the story i think and i feel like it deserves a lot more space to talk about in its own, not in its own video, but in its own section of a larger video encapsulating all of this. So my loves, let me know what you think about what we have seen today. It's been definitely a journey, definitely our journey. Are. And you know what? I think I'm going to go for a nice walk and listen to my new book. I do actually want to say to you guys, thank you so much for the love on my last video. It meant a lot to me to make something like that. And I do it every year, but I feel like this year, or should I say 2021 was a big year for me on the YouTube sphere, so to speak. So thank you so much for all the love on that video. Without any further ado, my loves, I think today it's time for another episode of The Swan Girls. Why aren't you making it to the the absolutely bonkers plastic surgery reality TV show in which two women, self-confessed ugly ducklings according to production, are pitted against each other in the most bonkers plastic surgery transformation competition reality TV show that's ever existed. And I cannot believe that I have said that sentence again because that sentence shouldn't even exist. In my eyes, it should not exist. This is not a case of women wanting plastic surgery and going to their surgeons and talking backwards and forwards about procedures that can or can't be done or perhaps shouldn't be done over the course of a year or so and taking multiple different opinions from different consultations with doctors. That is not what this show is. This show is about pressuring women into a specific idea of beauty according to two plastic surgeons. That's fun, isn't it, Gales? That's what we all want, yeah. So, my lovelies, the last episode that we covered of this was quite, quite a lot. We saw Laurie, who got the most plastic surgery of any contestant ever on this show. And, oh, my goodness me, there is a lot to that story that has been untold thus far. And we will be going over it at the end of the series in a The Swan Season 2 Where Are They Now video that I will be making. So, my loves, without further any... Without further ado, make sure you've got your beverage at the ready. It's time to spill some hot tea. Is it hot tea? I don't suppose it's scalding because this was 2004. Maybe some nice steeped mulled wine for it is winter still, apparently. But it is the most mildest winter I've ever seen, so... Let's pop in the Ochang and let's watch The Swan Girls! I've got that bloody awful song stuck in my head that's like... Tonight on The Swan Girls! The Swan Girls! Oh, straight into it! Amanda! Oh, she's wearing a rather boudoir attire, don't you think? She's going to be like, mm, time for the boudoir show, everybody. Satin sheets makes for a splat. <laughs> Good heavens. Don't think Susan will let me say that. As so far this season, two women have qualified for the most two. unique beauty oh, pageant bosom. ever devised. Tonight, two unbelievable stories oh, look and at that two ring. more amazing transformations. But only one of them will the win banister. a spot in the pageant and a the chance pageant. to be crowned the swan. The banister. Oh, I thought she wasn't going to do it. <laughs> I've got a scandal girl. Nelly scandal girl. Transformation. One swan. It's Rachel girl. The swan. Now, Ooh. our first competitor has struggled with her weight her whole life, oh. which has ultimately taken its toll on her body. And I would like to see Amanda's outfit here, but on my screen here, she is just merged in with the shadow of this cabinet, this television cabinet. So as far as I can see on my screen, she's just an amorphic floating woman going, mm, the pageant. <laughs> Only one will make it to the pageant, girls. Which has ultimately taken its toll on her body. And now she needs help from us here at the Swan. So let's meet Erica Moore. Erica, Erica. hello. You're going to be a swan. Oh You're going to be a swan. Prepare your wings. What? Oh my god. Oh my god, that is so awesome. I'm gonna be transformed. Oh, oh my god. My name is Erica Moore and I live in Le Center. I need to pause that for a moment because I don't quite know how I 
I mean, I sort of understand that maybe production has gone in here and been like, right, we're going to say this thing to you because obviously there's a house in the middle of nowhere and there's suddenly a camera crew. Like, you're going to know that it's there for you at this time, you know? So I feel like it's a bit acting is required. But the idea of some man in the background just going like, yes, yes, mate, oh, yes, when there's there going to be a brow lift, it's just... I don't know, that, that's very strange to me. Very strange to me, but all right, let's peep at her through the reeds. Is this reeds or wheat? This is wheat, isn't it? And I live in West Center, Washington. Washington. I've been through so much. Oh, oh what's People it gonna be? People tease me because I was adopted with my mom being Japanese. It's very obvious that I'm not their child. She's very petite and small. But you are their my child. My mother could never understand what it was like to have a weight problem. Genetically, she will never be like a fashion model, and I don't think any cosmetic surgeries will change that. I was always the... I mean, there's being blunt, and there's you'll never be a fashion model, and no cosmetic surgery will change that. Um... I think this is one of those things where it's very of its time. Parents back in the day were always very much like, if you don't fit what I think you should be, then there may be a problem. But I don't like the idea that she's been bullied for being adopted. Like, there are so many kids in this world that are already here that need loving families and loving environments to grow up and flourish in. Personally, I'm child free, but I absolutely would always adopt before having my own if that was ever something to be in my future. I feel like it's it's really sad. People bully people for this because like, what is this? The child can't change that. What can the child do about not having parents? Like what? Spoiler alert, the answer is nothing. I was always the, the oh, chubby okay. girl. I stood out from my class. I was always big and I was always teased. By the end of high school, I really had no confidence. And that's when I found myself in an awful relationship. Oh. My ex-boyfriend is my black cloud. <gasps> he devastated her emotional- Sorry, I know this is a really emotional moment, but how beautiful is this shot? This is the most artistic thing I've seen on the swan so far. How gorgeous is this shot? I mean, I know she's, they've asked her to sit on this ledge and be like, oh, can you be mournful about your ex-boyfriend who is the black cloud of your life? But like, how beautiful is the contrast here? The idea that these trees are just like going like this against like this gorgeous, I guess it's a sunset. It could be a sunrise. I guess it's a sunset. That is a gorgeous shot. And I'm really sorry, Erica, which is, I've just lambasted your talk about this disgusting man. He devastated her emotionally he oh. devastated her financially and my life was just a roller coaster and Not he is responsible for it oh she ended up weighing 240 pounds <sighs> with no money look at nelly i was getting bigger and bigger and the stress was it was killing me i didn't realize how much weight i had gained until i went shopping with my mom went to the dress this is such a story that I can really relate to. This idea of like being in a bad place in your life, whether that's due to somebody else being in your life that's being abhorrent in it, or your mental health or something like this, and being like, I had no idea how much weight I gained until I until like a moment happened in your life, and you're like, Oh, this is the reality. I literally had this moment in 2016 and was like, oh. I need to do something about this. I reckon there are people in my audience here who who can really sympathize here with Erica because I know that I absolutely am. And it's a, weight loss is a long process of like making consistent yet small at first, healthier choices about what you decide to spend your calorie budget on if you can think of it like that. Whereas I don't think this show is going to do that. I think this show is going to try and do a quick fix. And I'm that's my preparation fingers being like, no, I don't like it. No, stop. No, stop it. Stop it, girls. Went to the dressing room. I saw the size of the pants in between my legs. I was now a 22 and I just, I lost it. Right then it hit me. I needed help. It took me two years to lose 90 pounds. <gasps> I was working out every day, but that I is incredible. don't feel confident about myself. 90 pounds in two years. That is absolutely incredible. That is such a brilliant achievement. 100% Erica has focus and determination on a goal that she has. That should be celebrated and not thought of as like, oh, it's not coming off fast enough, girls. Why aren't you making it to the bed? Healthy weight loss is slow and consistent. Everything in this life is slow and consistent, really. If you want to be absolutely great at something, it takes patience and consistency. My self-esteem is... Is, is very low. But Erica, you're so Looking pretty. in the mirror and still seeing that big girl looking back at me. Now when you lose a lot of weight, your boobs, they sag. Mm. My stomach, of course. Mm. A lot of times to mask the hurt, my mm. personality shines 
but really on the inside, I'm dying. My world around me is crumbling. I want the pizzazz. I want, I want the wow out of life. I want to be somebody. That is mental health speaking there. That is a mental health... I was going to say the word crisis. I don't think crisis is quite the right word in this case. But I feel like it's a mental health um, situation that would benefit from being addressed by a professional and not something like the swan. Now, I understand that, like, these people have all applied to go on the swan and hope that this fixes the issues that they have in their life. But it is up to the people of authority in this situation to also explain that... This isn't a, a quick fix. Quick fixes don't work. Like, the, the road to recovery on any sense of that situation is a road. It's not just get off the bus and there you are. A brow lift, a breast lift and some veneers at the bus stop. Absolutely not. Right, come on, vultures. Okay, Cult. well, Erica's major issue, obviously, is her weight. And Dr. Hayworth, she's dropped 90 pounds, a lot of weight. How do you think we can help her? Erica's weight loss has left its permanent damage upon her body and... Her weight loss has left permanent damage on her body. I really don't like that phrasing. That kind of a sentence does not pay homage to the incredible journey that she has been on. That almost says that it is a self-choice damaging process that she has undergone. And that is not the case at all. It should be celebrated. Plastic surgery is the only way to correct that. She New needs skin, an yes. plasty and some strategic total body liposuction. She has a face that looks more like a, a 40 year old woman. I would do a mid face lift and an endoscopic brow lift, nasal surgery, brow and a chin implant. Oh my god. She was actually a very beautiful girl underneath all this. What about you, Debbie? You can do. How far underneath, Dr. Hayworth? Are you talking about the sinew? Are you talking about her buckle fat cavities? Are you talking about the very marrow of her bones? Vampire. What about you, Debbie? You Hello, can do Debbie. so much with liposuction, but after that, you have got to hit the gym hard. Why do we keep having these shots of Nelly? Just like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm a swan. For that, you have got to hit the gym hard in order okay. to get rid of the rest of it. Yes, you know that's sensible. What worries me sensible. about Erica, though, in the tape, she's blaming mm -hmm. others for her life, and she doesn't seem to have a real sense of mission. Yes, I totally agree with Nellie that she's looking oh, outward do you? for the reason for the way. You totally agree with Nellie? Well, we should ask for your papers back, shouldn't we, realistically, Dr. Lynn? Because... Why would you ever agree with a swan pageant beauty coach about anything they're saying from a psychological point of view? Why would you do that? I'm really on fire today, girls. I do not like this episode so far. No! She's looking outward for the reason for the weight gain, but in truth, it's probably something going on within that we need to explore in therapy. But that's not what Nelly said! That's not what Nelly said. She was blaming other people for her downfalls. She wasn't blaming other people at all. Erica didn't once say, it's his fault or their fault or her fault. She was in an abusive relationship, so you can't just be like, well, you're just useless at doing all that, because that's not what happened. Well, it sounds like you've got a lot of work to do. Do you think you can give her the wow and the pizzazz well, that she's, like she's looking a brick for in wall. just three months? Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Okay, well, let's see her plan. Oh, come on, then. Erica's Ooh. plan features several Scotty. procedures. She'll have a brow lift, mid-face lift, course she'll have a brow lift. with fat transfer, chin implant and liposuction of the chin and neck. Right. For her body, Erica will have a tummy tuck, breast augmentation, and liposuction in four different areas. Oh, again, we're doing breast augmentation and a tummy tuck. It's just like, no wonder why they can't move, because they're just going to be like, oh no. The idea that then they're forced to diet and exercise whilst recovering from like the, f the full front of the torso being operated on is just bonkers. It's just bonkers. I know that recently, in fact, on the last episode, there were a couple of people in the comments actually that said that they'd had a, a tummy tuck or a cesarean of some sort. So something that involved cutting the abdomen open and it was like a long arduous process to heal. Anyone who's done any research on a tummy tuck will know that it is like you don't make this decision light. This is not a just a like oh yeah pop in for a tummy tuck all done. It's one of those things that needs to be done and then recovered from before you have any further any further operations. And there are so many complications that can happen with a tummy tuck that this show does not talk about in the slightest. One of them, a very big one, happened to Laurie. We'll go into details about that in a future episode. Erica's dental procedures will include zoom bleaching, okay. multiple crowns, da Vinci veneers, and gum recontouring. I don't think da Vinci would like to be associated with these veneers. Should we ask him? Bring out the Ouija board, girls. I really like your veneers. For her fitness transformation, Erica right. will be put on a 1,200 calorie a day diet and work out of the gym twice daily, six days a week, concentrating on cardio and high-repetition weight training. Okay. To help release her old body image and become independent, 
Erica will undergo weekly one, therapy. And one coaching. hour of therapy. And experts, our next competitor tonight is a 30-year-old military wife who's struggling to change her life but needs some help from us here at the Swan. Also, Me Erica was 24. That is so young to be doing undergoing this much plastic surgery. Christina Azuna. Right, Azuna. Azuna. You've been chosen to be a swan. <gasps> We've accosted you on this running track. I can't oh. believe it. I absolutely can't believe it. This stuff doesn't happen to me. Oh, thank you. <laughs> My name is Christina Ozuna, and I'm from Silverdale, Christina Washington. Christina girls. My husband Washington. Michael is in the Navy, and I have an eight-year-old daughter. Oh. As a child, I didn't feel like anybody invested in me emotionally. My parents got divorced, and my dad left. It bothers me that my own father didn't accept me. So how are other people that aren't even related to me supposed to, you know, be accepting of oh, me? Oh, gosh, this child storyline is so intense, and also for it? my husband, our relationship suffers when I don't have confidence in myself. Sometimes I feel like I'm not good enough for him. And I met his parents for the first time. It was heavy. And when we got home and saw these family pictures, I thought, this is the fattest you've ever been. You don't even want to be in family pictures because you don't want your family to be embarrassed. To be. Okay, so we have a theme for this episode and the theme is obesity. How can we plastic surgery away obesity? Is that what it is? Oh, Christina, go. I decided that I wasn't going to spend any more time oh, being fat. She's got a CD player. Sorry to interrupt, but look, look, I look. I remember doing this when I was in high school. So in her front pocket here, you see that large disc that looks like she's carrying a frying pan with her? That is a CD player. Back in the day, you had to carry full CDs and a CD player in your pocket if you wanted to listen to them. Do you remember the, like, six-second anti-skip technology that did absolutely nothing at all? Ridiculous. I wasn't going to spend any more time being fat. Total, okay. I've lost 30 pounds. Hmm. I hit a plateau That's and I amazing. can't lose any more weight. She's more self-conscious now that she's lost the 30 pounds than she was when she was weighing 180 pounds. I don't want my husband to see me without my clothes on. I'm too embarrassed. Oh, look at him. He's like, <laughs> delicious. The saddlebags are my biggest things that I hate. You have an incredible at. body. I feel like people are staring at me. Oh, do we need to do this hateful Zoom in a bikini? Well, it's not a bikini, it's a one piece, but still. Thinking, doesn't she know she looks horrible? And not a loving hand from anyone extended to Why her. Why does she think she looks okay in that bathing suit? Do you know what I, the irony is? The irony is, I bet the production team were like, oh, you've said that to us. Now what we're going to do is ask you to be in a bathing suit, really uncomfortable getting out of a pool so we can zoom in on your bum, girl. What are the storyboards for this episode? It's like, people in production have to draw, like, storyboard ideas for each episode. Do they just, like, pluck ideas out of random air and just be like, right, zoom in on this bit, girl. Yeah, that's right. I've cracked the code, oh, girl. girl. she's got a degree. What I'd like to gain by going through the SWAN program is to be a good mother to my daughter. To show her what it feels like to have good self-esteem. Because those are things I just don't know how to teach her at this oh, point. Oh, I, oh, that feels like a planted sentence because... In my mind, okay, plastic surgery is a part of life. I am pro-plastic surgery. I, I say it's a part of life. It's not a part of everyone's lives. It's a part of very specific people's lives. I am pro-plastic surgery. You have a problem with something or you don't like the way that something looks, you can go to a doctor and have things changed by millimeters to improve the way you feel about yourself and your position in the world. That is absolutely fine. But when it comes to using that statement as you want to show your offspring that by going undergoing plastic surgery you can become happier with yourself does set a dangerous precedence because then it doesn't become plastic surgery about for your benefit it also sets an example to the young impressionable more young impressionable minds around you that plastic surgery is the only way to happiness and that is not correct plastic surgery is one of the many tools available to us as humans that allows us to take steps towards a journey of happiness shall we say plastic surgery on this show is almost seen without risk at all and that's not the case. It's not the case for me. It's not the case for anyone. Undergoing plastic surgery is more often than not an intrinsic part of being trans, for example. And I would hate the way for people to think that the only way to achieve happiness is by having plastic surgery. For me, it's going to enhance my happiness and my state in the world. It's not for everyone and it doesn't have to be for everyone. But if you want it, there are definitely better ways you can go about it than a competition reality TV show. Those are things I just don't know how to teach her at this point. 
Oh. oh God. Hey, Dr. Yanni. Oh, she let's give her a mummy plastic. Model. How do you help her to get some self-esteem going? We've got to help her get past that shame and self-criticism. So we've got to help her walk shame? into a place where she cares for herself. But you know, there's a red flag on that tape. I mean, the husband what? says that she starts working out, she lost weight, and then she feels worse about herself yeah, exactly. than when she was heavier. So I'm concerned for you, Debbie, and I think you and yeah. I have to really work together because to me that's a glaring red flag. I think... For what? What are you going to do, Nelly? What are you going to do to be like, oh, that dress doesn't look very nice on you, actually? Uh, you and I have to work together. What do you do, Nelly? You are an executive producer on this show. What do you do? What do you do that is in any way beneficial for people's mental health? What do you do? Without liposuction, you won't be able to spot resist Lipo. those areas. So she right. really needs a lot of liposuction. The outer thighs, the inner thighs, mm -hmm. the abdomen. We're going to do a nose job. And open up her eyes with a brow lift. Do some liposuction of her chin. Take some fat out of her cheeks. I think she has... I've said it once, and I've said it again, and I've said it eight 18 times, but like, does it, do, are they getting like paid per the hour for brow lifts or something? They're like, we need to do more, do more for everyone. Everyone gets her brow lift, girls. All of the production team have brow lifts. Liposuction of her chin, take some fat out of her cheeks. I think she has incredible potential to look yeah. amazing. Does she have dental issues? She is going to need a full mouth reconstruction. I see a lot of decay in her mouth just from the video, oh and those big spaces are going to take a lot to close. I think three months is enough time to have her strutting her stuff in a bathing suit at the pageant. Oh, yeah. yeah, definitely. So. No, well, deeply no. Know. Right, oh wait, oh, come on then. Oh. Christina's swan transformation cool. begins with her face. Face. She'll have a nose job. She's got a lovely nose. Brow lift, lip Why augmentation, laser hair removal, and several photo facials to even out her skin tone. For her Why body, Christina job? will undergo breast augmentation and extensive liposuction. Oh, just put her in better bloody underwear, for God's sake. In six different areas. At the dentist, Christina will need a full mouth reconstruction. She'll have zoom bleaching, multiple extractions, and laser gum and bone recontouring surgery. Laser bone recontouring. That's a new one, girls! Annabelle needs the bones! To get her body into pageant shape, Christina will be on a 1700 calorie a day diet oh. and spend two hours, six days a week at the gym. Oh. She'll need cardio and weight training to boost her metabolism. Weekly. Right, hang on. So she's on more calories than everyone else. I wonder why. I wish they would give like a reasonable understanding as to why they go on a, like, if they're going to use these numbers, like 1700 calories, 1200 calories, tell us why they are that level. Like, what's the, what, what is the, the, what's the goal, like, weekly? I don't know. I don't even know what I'm asking. What is the, like, weekly goals for these people to undergo? Like, this show is so vague in its description. It just kind of shows you the before and after. It doesn't really show you the how. It shows you snippets, but it doesn't really, like, give you any juice see bit details that would actually help you understand why maybe that's because they don't want to like overwhelm their viewers and just want to lure them into a sense of like oh if you go to dr dubro he'll do this for you girl oh very easy uh no. Therapy and coaching will help Christina gain confidence and improve her self-esteem. Will it though? I okay, don't expert. think. Okay, sounds like a lot of work. So let's get started. What is this sounds like a lot of work? Let's when get started. What are you going to do Amanda? <laughs> Ow! The Swan Girls! For Christina and Erica, the 12 week long swan program starts today. Is this a different apartment complex? Wow, nice. Christina is ready to regain her self esteem and get her body into pageant shape. Oh, I feel like people are staring at me, thinking, doesn't she know? She looks horrible. That's so awful. Her competitor, Erica, Ooh, hopes denim to jacket. her body and grow into a secure, independent woman. Secure? And I want the pizzazz out of life. You're not going to get that with a brow lift, sis. Time for a brow lift. Oh. Three months. Right, I can handle it. Our swans quickly discover rule number one. Our swans. No mirrors. Oh, oh God. gosh. No mirror. Wow, no mirrors. Not even a reflection anywhere. It's going to definitely take some getting used to. I think that's Dear Erica, so barbaric. Welcome to the swan program. You've already taken big steps just to get here. We hope you will be ready for the night of your life. The swan pageant. I'm gonna be in a pageant. Now the hard work begins. Erica Moore, girl. Which reminds me, I managed to pick up this book. Aren't you clever? <laughs> Thank you, it's been brilliant. From the deep, dark depths of the internet and it took six weeks to get here and I absolutely forgot I bought it. This is The Swan Curriculum. Create a spectacular new you with 12 life-changing steps in 12 amazing weeks. The official Swan Handbook by Nelly Galan. Life coach for the Fox's Swan. I... I'm going to read sections of this in the Where Are They Now? Because this is diabolical. The fact that this is a book that exists is 
absolutely abhorrent to me. And seeing that little binder there that she had with her name on and this on the front reminded me about this book. Okay, here we go. A visit Erica with her plastic surgeon kicks off Erica's transformation. Doc Erica shows the ravages of massive weight loss. You do need surgical help. There is a lot of loose skin here. Mm -hmm. You've got a sad face around your belly button. Need. Need is a very interesting word to use here because need implies intrinsicness. And I don't like I don't know if I like what that explicitly states. He could have said it will help you achieve what you want. But need? I don't know. Breast is quite a bit lower than the other. Breast. You have Mommy's true breast. breast droop. Breast droop? I'm going to be giving you a tummy tuck, liposuction of your hips and thighs, and a breast augmentation. But you have a lot of asymmetry and a lot of droopiness around your mid-facial area. Oh my god, that was a bit Happy handed. Look at that. Again. Oh. I'll do a mid-face lift, brow lift, and chin augmentation. Oh, my heart's going. I'm so excited. That is a lot I'm of work. A second chance. That is a lot, a lot, a lot of work to have in one go. A mid facelift, which means that all of this area is just going to be like. I'm getting a second chance. A second chance. Across town, Christina is anxious as she begins her dental transformation. Oh, I Christina. Hate my teeth. I Ooh. smiled my mouth closed. You don't but some people do, I do. Yeah. Christina's mouth is a big issue. I think she's gone through years of neglect with her teeth. I have to do just about a full mouth reconstruction on I her. I have to put blush right under my eyes. I had to extract three teeth and prepare <gasps> all the other teeth in her mouth for crowns and bridges. Great, that's awesome. Christina needed extensive dental surgery, but when we're finished, she won't be afraid to smile anymore. Oh. Are you okay? Are you okay, sweetie? Are you all right? Are you okay, sweetie? Recovers, Kim, would you stop taking pictures of yourself? Your sister's going to jail. Erica learns the role diet will play in her weight loss program. Oh, look who it isn't. This woman even looks like an MLM. If you describe to me, like, what, what someone who works for an MLM looks like, you see this woman, this woman looks exactly the kind of person you'd be like, if I saw this woman on the street, I'd be like, she works for an MLM. That's a lot. So you're going to need to lose 30 pounds. MLM. Oh, my gosh. On the Nutrisystem program, you will be eating five times a day, but it's probably going to be a much smaller portion than you're used to. Are you up for this it? This bowl of wheat. I have to lose 30 pounds. It's going to be a problem for me, but not only am I going to lose 30 pounds, I'm going to lose more. I'm going to win the pageant. I won the whole thing. Erica is confident she has what it takes to master the SWAN program. Mm, okay. Meanwhile, okay. Christina sizes up the work she has to Angel do at the gym. Is that the first time we've seen that? Is that the first time we've seen what gym it is? Angel City Gym. Oh, my God. Quickly, let me look it up. Is it still in business? Angel City Gym on Facebook. Health and wellness in the city of Angels. Last updated in 2016. Ah, With only one photo? How many reviews? No? Can't see the likes? Can't see the photos? No? Rating zero. Oh, that's good, isn't it? Well, interesting that it's taken until episode four of season two for us to find out what gym they're in. I'm going to challenge you at this high intensity level. The trainer is absolutely insane. Sprint, sprint, sprint. The trainer is insane. It is really intense. Keep going, keep going. I need you to increase the cardio. Yeah, Can you imagine 30 minutes of this? No, not really. I need you to lose 30. Why are they trying to make it out like it's this really shocking thing? It's like... None of these shows have done anything to make exercise appeal exciting to a wider audience. Do you know what I mean? People get very bored of things that they don't like very, very, very fast. Cardio can be a really grueling process to some people. Other people thrive off it. For me, I love going for walks and really processing what I'm going to be doing for my next week, my next videos, my anything creative that I want to be doing, any book ideas that I have, any product ideas that I may have. I'm always thinking about those sorts of things. And then if I'm not thinking about any of that, I have an audiobook to listen to or my favorite music. Nothing about that is explained in this show that you can make things exciting for you. I mean, I know this was back in 2004 and as we saw earlier, she just kind of had her headphones on with her CD player in her pocket, but like even a cassette player would have worked back then. So that's kind of strange. I mean, do you want to win that crown? It seems like Christina expects the plastic surgeon to do all the work for her. But if she doesn't hit it hard in the gym, her body is not going to be pageant ready. I have not seen an example of that, Madame de Bithria, at all, anywhere in this show. Have you seen that she expects other people to do the work for her? No, she is there in the gym with you doing the workout now. Look, you can tell her hair is sweaty. She's been really working out. And the idea that then her trainer's just like, well, she thinks that she's not going to blah. Like, don't talk about people like that. Stop it. Christina is starting to resist her swan regimen. 
Meanwhile, Where? Erica has some tough decisions at the dentist. Storyline. Hi, Erica. Ooh. Follow Sherry Today into for the Erica, we're going to do a thorough cleaning and then prepare her teeth for veneers. My veneers? Mm hmm. Yeah, I decided I didn't want those. <gasps> okay. You came here to work on yourself, and your teeth are a big part of your transformation. Do not force her so to I have veneers. Take a couple minutes, and I want you to make your decision on your own. I, I just gotta think. About okay. It. All right. Okay. Thank Thanks. Thanks. She doesn't want veneers. Good. But we're gonna film you thinking about it. I would like to talk to my parents. Yes. <gasps> no. Afterwards, she's gonna do it. <sighs> Who was that? Who was that woman in the room? Who was that woman? woman blah, 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 blah. I cannot believe she had a moment of like, I don't really want to have veneers. Like none of the explanation in this show about like the upkeep of veneers, the fact that you need to have them done every sort of eight to ten years if you keep them in really good condition. It's so strange that oh, this is a repulsive photo I've got on the screen right now. I feel a bit sad about that moment because I almost felt like we were going to see a change in the paradigm and we haven't. There's a lot of decay in your mouth, and I'm really glad that we were able to take care of that for you. Yes, I'm but glad the Erica veneers went don't with the do veneers that because it's the only long-term solution for the decay. I didn't expect this one program to be this hard. Erica has faced her fears at the dentist. Meanwhile, Christina learns what her plastic surgeon has in store for her physical transformation. Ooh, good to see you. Satin. We're gonna go ahead and change some things. Your nose. Right, okay. It's quite twisted, isn't it? This is very, very tricky. What was that? Did you hear the boom in the background then? Your nose. It's quite twisted, isn't it? Boom! It isn't it? This is very, very tricky. So I'm gonna do a full nose reconstruction on you. Then we're gonna do chin liposuction and take some of that fat and transfer it to your lips. Well, let's talk about the body area. Okay. Now, Flasha. we're gonna go ahead and do breast augmentation, right? Right. What size do you wanna be? As big as I can go without looking ridiculous. Okay, well, what size were you thinking? Um, a double D at least. Mummy's got breasts. Good heavens. Whoa, that's big. <laughs> We can certainly make you a double D. Uh, we'll have to think very carefully about that one because it's just very big. It's definitely something I've thought about for a long time. Okay. For your body, wow. we'll do a- Wow! Okay, we were never talked about any of that, but we've never seen a situation like that in this one before. If she's thought about it for a long time, that kind of gives me a bit of confidence that it's something that she genuinely wants. But to go to a double D is, is quite, um, that's quite, quite a change, I suppose. Breast augmentation. Then we'll do some liposuction to your abdomen, thighs, and knees. Right. I think we have an overall knees. plan. It's a very good plan. Lipo your knees. could be very painful this and actually quite difficult shot. to recover from, but I think she's going to be incredible when we're done. It's, all of this surgery is quite difficult to do and actually going to be quite a struggle to recover from. But I'm confident that... Bla Shut up. Oh. <laughs> surgery day has finally arrived surgery for goes. Erica. I'm really excited oh, to get this sprayed. new me, this new look. Okay, Erica, we have a lot of work to do. All right, here we go. Oh. You're going to wake up the swan? Yeah. That's a screenshot right there, isn't it, my loves? Gonna wake up a swan? Yeah. A swan. A swan so plastic. The, the fact that you just so easily say you're going to wake up a swan. Like, it's a bit like, like, in that state, if you've got a bit of, like, I don't know, morphine in your system, a bit of, like, anesthetic going in, and they're like, we're gonna make you a swan. I would immediately think, like, oh, don't give me feathers. Weird. It's so weird. I hate this ringling ding ding bitch. So I can start off with the liposuction of the back. <gasps> Ooh. Carve the turkey okay. girls. Ooh. One breast is completely different than the other, and matching them poses a real conundrum. Conundrum? Oh goodness! Got some himmel. And she looks excellent. Oh, now we're about well, that to was easy. Her facial transformation. So I'm going to put a chin implant in and to provide her with a more graceful, like to see dare I say, swan-like neck. A swan-like neck? You're going to give her a swan-like neck? You're going to give her a swan neck? I don't think. Absolutely perfect. Now I'm happy. Oh. Came out great. Honey. Today everything oh. went well with Erica. Thank you for taking such good care of me. She's got oh. a great attitude. She's got a great oh, transformation. And now let's just hope she has a great healing. Oh, a great healing. Meanwhile, Christina is experiencing pre-surgery jitters. Of Hi, course. Christina, how are you? Which is normal. And I didn't know I was going to be so panicked about it, but like I'm having panic attacks about it. Now let me Wait. ask you. What's happened to her under eyes? She didn't have this before. What's happened here? Now let me ask you a question. You seem a little uh, nervous, sort of down today. 
I just, I'm not looking forward to the recovery. All right. Do you have any final questions for me? Mm -hmm. Please extend sure. this. Sure. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's go ahead and do this. Okay. 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 Very good. I do not have a good feeling. It looks like we're gonna have to break your nose a little bit on the left. Oh. This is an unbelievably fascinating nose. It has a completely bizarre, crooked, snake-like shape to it. A snake nose? Who's this coming into my home? Voila, nose is done. Okay, now it's let's do voila. it. It's voila. Nice. Oh, God, goodness. Use the dice symbols. Okay, so we're finished with the liposuction. I think it went very well. Okay. We're gonna start Christina's breasts. Start the breast. Because we're using Started a large implant, we're gonna lift up a large portion of the muscle, so there'll be a lot more pain. <gasps> oh, interesting. So they're going underneath the muscle here. They've never mentioned really, apart from I think Dr. Hayworth did when he talked about the breast pocket that he was putting an implant in, but we've never really heard like, is it over the muscle, under the muscle, around the muscle? All right, okay. Hmm. Truly a work of art. Okay. Okay, your surgery went great. How do you feel? <gasps> Remember, it's going to be worth it, okay? The next few days may be incredibly difficult for Christina. Christina. Her body's gonna be killer, that's for sure. The rest will depend on her attitude, how hard she her works. attitude. Next on The Swan. The Swan Girls! Right, come on then. Come on then, swans. A swan neck. Ludicrous. When we met our competitors, Erica was enthusiastic about her swan plan. Yes. Not but... only am I gonna lose 30 pounds, I'm gonna lose more. I'm gonna win the pageant. But had difficulties in the dentist chair. I didn't expect the swan program to be this hard. However, she continued with the program and came out of surgery in remarkably good spirits. So there wasn't a storyline. Christina has been having doubts about the Swan Regiment. I need you to lose 30 more. As pounds. of all of us, this trainer is absolutely insane. She went into surgery feeling anxious and concerned. Yes, and which came is normal. Out facing a painful recovery. How do you feel? Remember, it's going to be worth it. Okay. Two days. Why use that language? Why be like a painful recovery? Yes, you've given this to her. You've given this painful recovery to her. So like, equip her better to deal with it. I don't know. Like what? What does that even mean? I'll grow up the swan. Into her recovery, Christina is having a tough time. Oh, two days after surgery. Okay. okay. Still very fresh. Uh -uh. Day three. I'm a lot of pain right now. Yeah. I'm irritated. Because you're in pain. <sighs> Normal. I don't like being the weak one. Christina is struggling to overcome her discomfort. Meanwhile, Erica's healing is right on track. Wow, look at you. Hi. You look beautiful. Thank you. Erica's healing well, but she has a lot of work left to do in the gym, and I hope she can stay motivated. While Erica that was continues weird. to improve, Christina's recovery is complicated by her refusal to follow the doctor's orders. Christina, what? you're not wearing the chin strap. No. When did you stop wearing your chin strap? Uh, about two days ago. Christina has a lot of swelling in the neck. If you bleed into the neck because you haven't been compressing it, that could turn into scar tissue. So why hasn't be irreversible. Been, why hasn't someone You're been there all the time with a complication? Her. You've got a swollen chin, nodules from where blood is accumulating. Nodules. I did my part and she's not doing her part. Oh, Two weeks angry. later, Christina returns to Dr. Dubrow for a checkup. So you're wearing your chin strap? I am. So you didn't just put it on five minutes before you got here? No. Yeah. Christina, I can tell you haven't been wearing it. I'm trying to prevent from having to inject you with steroids, which can have problems in and of themselves. So you have to wear this, okay? Oh, look at that, look at that nurse in the background. She's like, you bitch, you bitch. So you have to wear this, Ooh, okay? okay? If you don't wear this, you've got a problem. You do have to wear your compression garments after surgery. Like there isn't really a question about that. They are deeply uncomfortable and they pull on your hair and they pull on everything. They like give, give you like headaches and like everything feels like tight and horrible, but you do have to follow your recovery regimen. Regardless of what, whatever nonsense exercise they're making her do, she does have to follow the, the correct compression procedure. This is not a done deal with Christina. I don't know how she's gonna turn out now. So wear this. Oh, this Christina's is a storyline, isn't it? defiance has put her physical transformation in jeopardy. Meanwhile, it's time for Erica to work on her inner transformation. Do we think Erica's going Erica to the pageant? Erica has trouble making decisions without her parents' approval. She needs to grow up, and in order to do that, she must first work on issues she has with her mother. 
she is 24 though. Like 24 is still not a full adult. You don't fully understand reason and consequence until you're at least 25, 26. So she's still got a couple of years of like adult settling to do first before she's like a fully realized human being. The person you are at 26 is usually the person you are for the rest of your life. And the things about you that you question after 26 don't go away, sis. I'd like to try a role play exercise where Erica oh. has a conversation with her mother. Role play? I never really felt that loved. <gasps> I always oh. felt like I was gonna let you down. I didn't feel like I was smart enough. This or is pretty horrible. enough. All I ever wanted was to have you tell me that you appreciated me and that you believed in me. Oh. I know what I need to do and I need to do it on my own. <laughs> I need to grow up. Erica is making progress. Meanwhile, our swan. I hate the idea that they filmed therapy to put it on TV. That's such a deeply personal moment that is now broadcast to millions of people at the time that this aired. That is such a questionable choice by production. I don't really know how they would have solved that being such a questionable part because therapy was deeply needed for every single person on this show. And I feel like once per week for three months is not enough, A, eh? but also, the fact that it's filmed means that they can't ever fully really let their guard down. So is this therapy actually worth anything at all in the long run? Meanwhile, our swan coach checks in on Christina. Oh, here Christina. we go. The goose girl. Why are you making it to the planet? I'm extremely concerned about Christina. I've been hearing from several of the experts that she's resisting her swan plan. Why is it that I've heard that you're not enthusiastic about the program? There's stuff that I really need to be doing at home. There's something I really need to show you. Oh, my gusset hard work. It is going to be strange and different and hard and- What was that? Was that a question from production? Should we have a listen to that? Will you stay committed? Will you stay committed? Will you stay hard committed? Work. It is going to be strange and different and hard and so yeah, I'm definitely willing to do This that. feels very propaganda. What do you feel in that moment that you don't feel now? I want you to really look at what you do with commitments. Post-surgery blues. Post-surgery blues is actually real and it does exist. This woman has just had life-changing surgeries and a lot of them. Give her a few weeks to adjust to this new life. Like for goodness sake, she can't just hit the ground running. It's so obscene. Bonkers show. Why is it that you did so many things to sabotage your well-being? You didn't wear your chin strap. You have to wear this, okay? <laughs> if you don't wear this, we've got a problem. You lifted your arms and caused problems after surgery. <gasps> They're gonna yell at me. He didn't commit in the gym. Yeah, Can you imagine 30 minutes of this? Well, that doesn't oh, look no like voice. not committing. You cheated on your diet. I don't feel like I cheated on anything. Your commitment is not here with me right now. I think I finally got through to her, and you know, she has time to turn this around. You gave her one hour. So that was a really strange interaction there. That was literally Nelly being firm with someone for a full minute and only letting her respond once. And the one thing that they televised that she said was, I didn't feel I was cheating. And now you've gotten through to her. Like, that whole segment is such a strange thing to air. That was so, like, telling off a child. I'm not sure I... I'm not sure I like that. I'm not sure I like that at all, how this has been edited. I mean... From this, from that segment, I get the feeling that Christina maybe wasn't as committed as she could be to this proceed this program. But then, like, this program asks so much of you that it's so... Ugh, I lose my words, girls. I've lost me with the swan, girls. With only one month remaining until month, the final reveals, both swans must focus on their goals. <sighs> Christina arrived determined to tone her body and boost her confidence. And? What I'd like to gain is oh. to be a good mother to my daughter, to show her what it feels like to have good self-esteem. That's such a weird things sentence. I just don't know how to teach her at this point. But battled a bad attitude and lack of commitment. Christina, you're not wearing the chin strap. No. Following a visit from our swan coach, Christina that's surrendered swan. to the program and is now giving it all she's got. Oh, that's a convenient storyline, isn't it? It's just like after she had a visit from Nelly, she fully committed to everything we've ever asked her and more. That's really weird. It's almost like maybe she was having a slump from post-surgery and then felt a bit better after that slump had moved past. Ooh, trying to get a storyline, are we are? I know what you're doing. I know what you are, production. This is where the competition start. Will she be able to make up for lost time and earn a spot in the pageant? <sighs> Erica entered the program with hopes of revitalizing her body. She struggled to make her own decisions. 
like to talk to my parents. Forever gobsmacked. Forever gobsmacked. And underwent extensive surgery no. to remove excess skin, but hasn't yet reached her goals. I've got that string bikini hanging in front of me like a Twinkie on a stick. We have 18 pounds to lose. Will she be able to lose the weight? Goodness. We are running out of time. The countdown begins. Who will make it to the pageant? The pageant! Everyone will make it to the pageant, girls! Oh! Oh! Next up. Look at that vicious shot being like... The pageants. Every game of gout. That was like, oh, Jeffrey Star's house. Here we are, girl. Oh, disgusting. Welcome back to the Swan. Bannister. Now, it's been a month since we've seen Christina and Erica. And I hate three this months since they've seen themselves in a mirror. Talk a about mirror. anticipation. <gasps> in just a moment, we'll finally see the results of their transformations. But before we do that, let's check in with our team of experts. Oh, let's not bother. The clock with these women. Ooh. Experts. Christina came to us embarrassed about her physical appearance, but the biggest problem was committing herself fully to the program. Nelly, why do you think she had such a huge problem? Blah, 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 blah. I know nothing about home. anything, so blah, blah, blah. She their lives and controlling their lives, but she never fully surrendered to the program. It was very tough. And Dr. Dubrow, how is she as a patient? Christina was a tough patient. We had to work really hard to help her follow through with the program. But despite that, I think her results are amazing, and I can't wait to see her reaction. Well, it was a rocky road, but she made it through. Here oh, she gosh. is, the brand new Christina Ozuna. Christina goes. Manservants, open the door, clap her. Oh, a priest? Use the 40 volume peroxide. Good heavens. They've given her so much volume at the side of her head. That doesn't make any sense. Why is there no volume up here and all the volume is here? The spaniel ears, girl. I do like the colour though. The colour is very gorgeous and glamorous, lady. Look at how much better that lingerie is. Gorgeous. Oh my lord. Christina, you look absolutely This is an interesting awesome, dress choice. She? <laughs> Let's have a chat. Woo! <laughs> Christina, tell me honestly, you had a very, very difficult time on the programme. Who's used all of the Tresemme? Look at this one straggly hair extension at the back underneath. What has this hairdresser done to you? Why do you have one 24-inch hair extension and the rest are like 18? Who's put, emptied a whole can of Tresemme into your strands? What is this? What is this? Who styles hair like this? Hairdressers in the comments. What is this? What do you call this style? What is this? Oh, they have done her dirty. What was the most difficult part for you? Sitting in the dress, hairdresser's you know, chair. Away from your families. Mm. And I remember in the beginning that you once said that what you wanted to take from the Swan program was to be a good mother, and that you wanted to show your daughter what it's like to have good self-esteem. Cosplaying playing a scarecrow with his hair. I feel like I've taken time away from my family and things that were going on in my life to try to work on me a little bit. I do not get well, positive vibes. Well, Christina, the time has come because, as you can see, there's a curtain. Behind it, there's a mirror. This hair is so okay. bad. Now, if you what would, have they done to you? Head up to the curtain for me and let me know when you're ready. Okay, good luck. Oh, this Thank doesn't you. feel good, girls. I don't feel good. Illuminati, cursed. Ooh, the duvet. Oh. Christina, girls! A French tip. Okay, Christina, are you ready? No. Yes. No, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I just... <laughs> oh, I don't know. Oh. oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Is it good? Is it? Is it? I don't... You say you can't believe it, but it's true. How do you feel? I just, I can't believe it. I said to you earlier on that you had a really tough time on this program. Be honest with me now. Having seen yourself, was it worth it? No, I hate you, slap. Your husband is serving in the military and at the moment he's on a submarine. No. You think he'd be proud of you for coming such a long way? Yeah. What about your daughter? She has yeah. a bosom. I think she's gonna love mommy's new look. <laughs> this isn't a new well, look, sis. Do you have anything to say to a, a certain gang of people behind you? Um, no. Well, yeah. Go to prison, all of you. 
I'm really happy with Christina. She resisted me at first, but once she finally gave in, she got completely great results. Are you shocked? Oh my God. I can't believe how different she looked when she walked through those doors. Her I, style was fabulous. I'm she really shocked. Absolutely incredible. This is like difficult. Um, it's a toss up between the boobs and the teeth. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Through the chimney girls. I need to go to the hospital now. The swan! Right, I need to just have a quick moment there. I have a very stern emotion of uh, with that reveal. I don't know what the language uh, translation of uh, is, but I did not feel positive from that transformation reveal. Do you know what I mean? I feel like maybe this might have been one of the cases where they had to like refilm it or something, or maybe didn't refilm it and they just left it at that because I feel like that was not Every single thing that she responded with was like a leaded question. It was like, and how do you feel? What's your favorite part? And and tell us, don't you have people to thank? Like, those are all like leading questions. Like you're pulling like answers from someone rather than just letting them be and explain how they feel. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. I don't feel very positive about that. That felt very, I don't know. Maybe they put these women on something when they go to the reveals because how somber did she seem? And like, nervous and small that's the word i think for that emotion is i felt like when she revealed herself she felt small oh i don't like that all right let's see the other reveal oh here we are Part de. well we just saw christina's big reveal will she advance to the swan pageant now it's time to meet i her honestly don't know erica moore competition Experts. erica came to us looking for the wow and the pizzazz out of life so pizzazz, dr hayworth how do you think she'll react when she sees herself i implanted well, pizzazz erica's coming to the end of a long and arduous personal journey arduous. i'm satisfied with the results and i think erica will be very pleased with her final surgical transformation and what about her progress in therapy dr yanni erica came to the program very dependent and almost childlike i think she's leaving a beautiful young woman okay well we'll get a chance to meet the new erica in just a moment Okay, it's time. Okay. Here she is, the brand new Erica Moore. Erica Girls, reveal! Open the hair. Ooh, I see long hair. Oh. Oh, not a wispy fringe. Lovely hair colour, though. Hi. Ooh, confident, smiling, pink. No volume again on top. Ooh, I like that bustier. Again, they were a very other. loud we to her. Speak to you right now. <laughs> Erica, I have three words. What was that? <laughs> Come with me, let's have a chat. I really need to speak to you right now. <laughs> That's very like leading your best friend off the dance floor to go to the bathroom to have like a deep, meaningful conversation immediately about a boy that's in the vicinity, doesn't it? That's exactly what that felt like to me. Erica, I have three words. Wow, wow, wow. You look absolutely out of this world stunning. It's been a very, very emotional journey for you. How, How do you feel to have like finally that? arrived here tonight? I feel amazing. Of course, this is the first time that you've actually been on your own, really, away from your family. I mean, do you feel like you've grown up a little bit? I think I have done a lot of growing up, and I'm ready to go home and take on this new womanhood. I know who I am. I remember you Pageant said, answers. I want to be transformed. I want to be beautiful. Well, you know that the time has come. As you can see, there's a curtain and behind why did it. They, why are they trying to be like, oh, have you grown up into a gorgeous woman now? You've achieved womanhood. Let us put you in this Barbie pink dress. Interesting styling choice if you're trying to sort of like evoke more mature vibes from someone. I don't know about that. Take a few deep breaths. To the gout step mirror. Step up to the curtain. <gasps> and when you're ready to see the brand new you, let me know, okay? Illumina, okay. say girls. Who's that man in the back? Good luck. Right, here we go. Da, 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 da. I've got gout. I've got gout. I've got gout. I've got gout. Oh. Ooh. Cartier. Cartier. Okay. Oh, not eyelash in the fringe. The you've been waiting for your whole fringe life. in the eyelash. Whole ready? life? It's a bit much. I'm ready. Erica go. <gasps> Shaking. I'm beautiful. Oh, okay. Wow, that is quite a tan as well. Love it. 
Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, I can exhale now. What's going on inside your head right now? Look amazing. I know. <laughs> They're so perky. Wait. They gave her a facelift at 24 years old. This woman is 24 years old and they gave her a facelift. A facelift at 24. Is that even ethical? Erica, do you remember that you said that you were just sick of being the big girl? Look yeah. in that mirror right now and tell me what you think. So we gave you a horizontally striped dress. I'm not the big girl anymore. Oh, those lips are hot. <laughs> she does have good lips, yes. You are hot. Oh, stop. You also said that you wanted the wow and the pizzazz out of life. Something tells me you're going to get that. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> we have a couple of people uh, behind you that would probably agree with you right now. Guys. Thank you. Oh, my. you. I love you. When Erica walked through those doors, her smile Ooh. was so radiant, and I felt so good about it because she went through such a tough time to get there. I'm so happy with the results of Erica's transformation. I think she's independent, autonomous, and able to hold her own for the very first time. Autonomous? Right, let's talk a little bit about Erica's reveal there. I feel completely different about Erica's reveal than I did about Christina's. Erica's reveal kind of felt a little bit more like a, a weight had been lifted off her shoulders, so to speak, in a way that kind of lifted her spirits. I did not feel like Christina's spirits were lifted. Do you know what I mean? So that, I felt like I could just breathe out and just like enjoy her seeing herself and having this reveal. The weird thing about this show is that in certain reveals, I don't agree with this show overall. I don't agree with the concept of this show. I don't think it really should have been made. I think the, the concept should have been something quite different. But that doesn't mean to say that I don't sometimes get some amount of like wholesome vibes from the reveals. Like some of the reveals have gone so swimmingly well that it just goes to show that like some level of work can really bring that little bit extra out that people really want. And others it's like, oh no, this, this has not fixed anything. If anything, this has in a way made the situation so much worse than it was before. Whew. Okay, girls, right. Who's going to the pageant? The swan. The swan, girls. Welcome back to the Swan. Ooh. Now, it's been another night of dramatic reveals, I hate and this it's time dress. to find out who our judges, in consultation with our experts, have decided to send to the Swan pageant. Who's Christina got the most poise, girl? Erica. Before we bring them out, let's take one final oh, look at their piss. Piss. gentlemen. Come on, girls. Reveal the women. Ooh. Oh. Oh, she looks much better. And look. Oh no, still hey, cris crispy curls. Okay. okay, I just she's want to say congratulations first of all because you both look absolutely stunning okay. and you've made the most breathtaking transformation so you Breasts. should be proud of yourselves. Okay, But right, okay. only one of you can move forward to the pageant and could be... Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but would you look at Erica's hair extensions here? Who has done this? Hairdressers. Would you be happy if somebody got hair extensions at your salon in your chair and you gave them this and let them leave with this? Would you? Be crowned the swan. That's the swan, girls. Right. Oh. Along with that title comes cash and prizes worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. All fakery. Oh, look They've at that been breast. judged on beauty and poise and, and overall poise. transformation. Breast. This envelope contains the name of the woman who will advance who has the, breast. the pageant. <gasps> breast. Breasts. Bosoms. Breast. This is a very booby episode. Good luck to you both. Right, who's it going to be, girls? The name of the woman... Oh, the cello. ...will be moving on to the pageant is... Is... Host! Come on. Oh, oh, we knew it, girls. We knew it. Knew it. Oh. I'm really sad Christina didn't make it to the pageant, but the truth is she didn't surrender to her internal transformation. Surrender. She wasn't totally focused on herself. Surrendering is not usually a good option for anything. 
I'm so proud of Erica for making it to the pageant because I think it's one of the very first things she's ever done totally on her own. This is the longest hug we've seen. Okay. I think maybe. Congratulations, They both Erica. really needed support. Can you please stand over there for me while I say goodbye to Christina? Come here, girl. Oh. Okay, talk to me. Tell me what the biggest lesson that you've taken from this whole experience. It's been a long, rocky road, right? Oh. What's the biggest lesson? Don't forget about yourself. Can we take it that you're a healthier, happier, more beautiful person leaving here tonight? Amanda, Definitely. believe your eyes, sis. Well, before we say goodbye to you, there are a few special visitors who are very anxious to see you. It's been three long months. And Christina, it's time. The three witches of the we'll forest. Gentlemen. The Void. <laughs> Hello! Is this the... Ch oh, it's the child! When I first saw my niece, she looked oh. incredible. She oh. looks very happy. Her body looks awesome. She looks happy? Oh, Fabergé eggs for everyone. This music does I something to me. Incredible. I've got goosebumps. I, first, I noticed her teeth because I knew she was really wanting to get her teeth done, and they just look awesome. Almost didn't recognize her at first. She looks beautiful. I feel good because I felt like um, even when I didn't want to, I stayed. And I wouldn't have known what this felt like if I hadn't. So I feel stronger. To me, congratulations! Oh, speechless. You are speechless. going to the pageant. The pageant goes. How do you feel? So, so ecstatic. Words can't describe. I believe you. I believe well, you. Congratulations! We will see you at the pageant. Well done. And next week, two more women will undergo the transformations of a lifetime in the quest to be crowned the Swan. Guinea Fowl. Next week. No, stop it. I absolutely not. I am going to push my laptop away from me there. Take my oh hanger out and just say, I did not believe a word that Christina was saying then. I felt like she was fed words by production because her body language was so closed off, shut down and sort of like in almost like a survivor mode rather than actually speaking words that she believed. How did her friends say she looked so happy? I Got many vibes from that reveal, and happy was not a single one of those, my loves. Oh my goodness, I feel a bit tortured watching that. I don't, I personally am not like hugely like intuitive when it comes to body language, but like that was not a positive, well rounded experience for Christina as it was for Erica. Do you see what I mean there? That was very stressful to watch. I'm not entirely sure how I believe about that. I hope that we aren't setting a precedence for 2022 that leaves us feeling like that. Please let me know what you think about what we've seen today in the comments box below because that, my loves, was a lot. I mean, Erica's reveal there seemed so much more bright and sparkly and like excited and exuberant for the future. I did not get the same vibe from Christina for, the, for her reveal. My goodness. And the nonsense that Nelly was coming up with in this episode. Oh, get in the bin, Nelly. Get in the bin. Merch available now. <laughs> Hello beautifuls, welcome back to my Chanel. You may notice something different about the setup. Yes, the little pigeon, chicken, feathery, duck women lamps are, well, they've gone to live on the farm. No, they haven't. <laughs> They haven't gone to live on the farm, but they have gone into hibernation for a short while until I have my brand new setup when I move and find a way to incorporate them back into my lifestyle, girls. But please say hello and welcome to the new lamps. Uh, these are Hue Signies, which sounds a little bit like Signet, which is an excellent segue into baby swans because today it's another episode of That's the One, girls. So, my lovelies, an interesting development has happened since I did the last episode of The Swan. So, Laurie's son got in contact via the comments on that video. And Laurie herself actually commented on that video as well. So, I want to say a huge thank you for them for sharing a little bit extra of their stories. I will pop that in the Where Are They Now at the end of 
this series. Interestingly enough, another contestant called Marsha actually dropped me an email explaining like her whole experience with the Swan program as well. Now, I don't know which episode Marsha is in. I assume it's coming up because I don't think we've come across her so far. I just want to say that today is episode four, which means we're, I think we're like halfway through this series, which is a little bit like bonkers really because it feels like it's happening so fast for some reason. Ugh. So my lovelies, with trepidation and like nervousness and sort of excitement, let's get on and watch today's episode of The Swan Girls! Season 2, episode 4. Right, in go the- oh hang out, oh, that was the wrong one, for goodness sake. Come on like Sarah, how long have you done this for? for goodness sake, girls! And if you're wondering where my hoodie is from, it is by Manier de Voix, and it makes me feel like necromancer, but also sporty. Like a sporty necromancer. <laughs> Alright, that's enough of that. Let's watch The Swan Girls! Tonight, on a special edition of The Swan. You're gonna be a swan! <gasps> two sisters try out for The Swan, but only one makes the cut. What? Or so she thinks. Your sister's gonna be a yeah. swan. And so are you, Gina. What? You're what? gonna be a swan. <laughs> Does she know? No, it's a secret. <laughs> I'm gonna be a swan. <laughs> oh my god! For the first time, two sisters will go through the swan program. Hey, are these girls? Cat, I'm. Wait, wait, wait. I didn't think that this show could get more and more dramatic, more and more like. Bong diddly onctious girl. So there's two sisters are gonna go through the swan together, like, but they don't know each other as the swan. Like, oh, you're a swan. Oh, oh my goodness. Sopping gussets, girl. Gonna be able to recognize each other. But only one will join Jennifer Patton from week one, Gina Davis from week two, and Jane Erica Moore from week Erica three. Go. To take spot number four in the Swan pageant. Yes, it's you halfway. Have to leave their incredible transformations tonight on a special edition of the Swan. Oh, my good God. evening. What's I'm this? Barm and welcome to What's this? It's like a horror setup. Like, oh, it was Amanda in the library with a book about the Swan Girls. Why aren't you making it to the pageant? Smack. So, so much has just happened. How many seconds are we in? Fifty-eight seconds in, and so much has happened. Right. Okay. Let me digest for a second. So, a shocking twist of fate sends two sisters to become a swan. That sounds very much like the plot of a like a children's book or something, doesn't it? Like one sister went off to be a swan and the other didn't know, so she became a swan too. Very the Brothers Grimm, isn't it? Oh, she's so good. <laughs> you clever. Thank you. It's been brilliant. Right, so here we are. I feel like this looks completely different. Is this does, it, does this setup look completely different? I don't ever remember them being like curtains behind the the swan logo, and there's like a chaise lounge and this spotlight of just like Amanda. I oh, I'm quite interested what she's wearing this week. Look, I like this like high neck spike situation. That's an unusual cut. I don't even know what that cut of dress is called. Let's have a all right, Amanda. Let's go to a special edition of the <gasps> sequin. Now on each episode of our program, two women undergo radical transformations and compete for a spot in the pageant. Tonight, for the first- I just wanna say, I just wanna say, there's been an influx of people recently being like, But you hate cosmetic surgery! You've had cosmetic surgery! How can you say you hate it? And I just want to say, I do not hate cosmetic surgery. I am pro plastic and cosmetic surgery. What I am against is pitting women against each other to lose and feel worse at the end of it because they didn't make it to a pageant. Do you know what I mean? That's where the problem lies. The problem lies in reality TV. It doesn't rely on getting surgery, my loves. This time, we bring you two sisters on a show that takes the term sibling rivalry to a whole new level. Oh, for God's two sake. Two sisters, two amazing stories, and one of them doesn't know that the other is a part of the Swan program. It's a surprise like no other, as we get one step closer oh. in the quest to crown the, the Bannister. Oh, go on. <gasps> I feel robbed! Oh, that was a bit much, wasn't it? She didn't tickle the banister! She didn't caress the banister! The banister was not caressed. There were no banisters caressed in the making of this film. <laughs> Team of experts, girl. Implant, fitness, cosmetic, amazing transformation. <gasps> one swan. That's the one girl. Rachel, the swan. The swan. The swan girl. Good evening, right, panel of experts. Ooh, now, this? tonight, for the first time, we have two sisters competing in the Swan program. Yes. Jabro, do you understand the word sister? Yes. Oh, I could make a James Charles joke there, but I'm absolutely not going to do that, am I? Hmm. Let's start off by surprising the younger sister, Carrie. Now, bear in mind Carrie. that she has absolutely no idea that her older sister oh. will also be selected. Oh. Watch this. Oh. Dr. Hayworth is like, yes! Placenta. My sister's the one that told me about the... Placenta? Is there a place in America called... Let me go back. Placenta. Placentia? Placentia? 
My sister's the one that told me about the audition. She's my sister, my best friend, and as sisters, we tried out together. Carrie goes. I have a surprise for you. You're gonna be a swan. No. What, what, my... what was the, what was the little like, why did they put, why did they put a cut here? Have a look at this. Why did they cut it here? I have a surprise for you. Why did they do a, why did they do a cut there? Why did they do a transition cut there? That's so weird. And the noise of like, boom, as if like time has passed or something. But she's clearly like, she knows what's happening. You're in her front garden. She's leaving the house and she's like, <gasps> Not a swan, girls. I kind of loved like the little bits of like acting in this because it's so sweet. I do like that. That is quite sweet, I suppose. You're going to be a swan. No. What about my sister? If she doesn't want me to do it, I can't do this oh, without her. Oh, goodness. I need to know that she's okay with it. I know that my sister hasn't been chosen, and I have. Oh, the drama thickens. Oh. I'm so proud of you. From the very beginning, I wanted it for both of us. You go there and you kick butt. And I don't want my hurt. Gina, go. Because I want her to be happy. Oh. Anything I've ever done, big or small, if she didn't do it with me, She's there talking me through it. It's oh, gonna be hard. Lovely. It's gonna be very hard. Don't you just love like supportive sisters? I swear there's just something so like gorgeous about that. I've never had that experience, but it is such a like, I don't know, I look at like, I know that like not every sisterhood is like supportive <laughs> because some of your older sisters have been tormenting you, my loves. But it just seems like such a like lovely bond. And I sort of wish I could partake in that, but I suppose I'll just have to have Roly, won't I? And that's the Darjeeling. So the plot is thickening. Carrie thinks that Gina knows, but she doesn't know, but she does. No, wait, that's not it. Let's continue. When I first started high school, everything was great. I was very active. Gorgeous. I was a dancer and a cheerleader, and I was happy with myself mm. and how I looked. All of a sudden, I show up my sophomore year as this woman. I was 16 years old with double D. Oh my god, do we need, oh, for goodness sake, did we need this shot? She could have just said, I showed up as a woman and I had, you know, large breasts. We didn't need this uh, almost like an upskirt shot of your bosoms. Like, how dehumanizing is that? Like, she's just saying that she's like, oh, it's a bit of like a thing. And they're like, mm -hmm. make it more of a thing. Production is so wheezy. What a wheezy little weasel. Although weasels are actually quite pleasant. Bosoms. And it ruins everything. Dancers aren't built this way. So I had to drop out of a lot of things. It's something that you love and it's like being taken away from you and you can't control it. I do find it like really heartbreaking that there is. Sorry, if you could hear that, suddenly there was like a, a robotic machine reversing outside going like beep. Beep, my favorite rave song. I do actually want to say that it is really quite sad that um, there are just some industries that are like, no, what do you mean you have a body type that's slightly different to what we used to? You'll never have a career in this academy. I do hate that. I absolutely hate that. I think that it's such a lot. Like, if people want to do it, what is the harm in doing it? What is the harm in involving more people? What is it? Like, oh, it's so, it's so frustrating because I have felt excluded from things that I've really wanted to do on the basis of my body type, on the basis because of my history. Just, it's just so like, but I really wanted to. And you're telling me that I can't do this because you're just gatekeeping. That's all it is. Boils my piss, girls. Um, the number one thing that made Carrie insecure as a teenager was her breasts. Carrie is definitely isolating herself because of her insecurities and uses me, I think, Wait. as a crutch to lean on. Is that her mom and I share an that... office? Yeah. It's a little box. It's just my desk and her desk. Oh, look! Look how, like, early 2000s this is. Look at that computer monitor. Oh, some of you Gen Zs and Gen Alphas don't even know what that is, do you? A CRT monitor which flickered like this and you had to kind of, like, perform a ritual and hope that it would connect to your computer in the morning. I like to work outdoors. She's doing an unboxing video. Work with dancers or cheerleaders. Or... But <sighs> because my chest is so big, it hurts my back. It gives me headaches. I physically can't. Can you stroke this whilst looking at the time? I gained a lot of weight, and that makes you feel worse about yourself. Oh, being and there, And it really this. ruined how I feel about the but... body. <sighs> I want to start over and I want to be comfortable mm -hmm. and uplifting, healthy. Uplifting man with guitar music. And I know that being a swan can do that. Well, that's debatable. Being a swan will make the outside look nice. Hey, well, but will it actually help? I assume you'll be performing a breast reduction on her. Disproportionate large breasts can negatively impact upon a woman's self-confidence, mm -hmm. and Carrie is no exception to that rule. 
okay, that single sentence that he said there is probably the one time that I'm going to be like, actually, that's quite good. Yeah, you've said something very much that's like appropriate for people to hear who want to have a breast reduction. But a breast reduction brow lift combo is not necessary, girls. Not a two for one. Time for a brow lift. Oh. <laughs> She needs total body liposuction, and total hopefully this will jumpstart her total transformation. I immediately regret complimenting Dr. Hayworth because total body liposuction, total body liposuction. What would really benefit her is if you got her a coach for a year that helped her with her nutrition and an exercise routine that would make her feel alive, girls. Someone that could easily hold her accountable, be a mentor, but also play a supportive role, which is something you kind of need when you're going through a new fitness routine. Full body liposuction, get in the arga. Hello. She's got a lot of interesting work. Work that needs to be done on her face. What do you mean? Endoscopic brow lift. I perform a rhinoplasty on her, and we have to excavate her beauty and bring it to the surface. Oh, excavate your own pussy hole, Dr. Hayworth. Right, so let's think about what they've just said. She needs an endoscopic brow. Like, let's go back and look at her face here. Now, if she was a client that came to me and wanted to sit in my makeup chair and have like a fun piece of makeup done for her. So she has a fold in her eyelid, which makes anything like graphic liner or anything that's like big and bold kind of a little bit difficult. So keep everything narrow and upswing. A little bit of wing at the outside, maybe even like a little tiny bit of like adult style glitter. A little bit of a red lip with this blonde hair, like curl it out like that, she will feel like an instant bombshell. Little bit of bronzer, little bit of blush, maybe a tiny little bit of highlight here on the nose. Doesn't even really need contouring. Absolutely stunning. And because she's wearing glasses, maybe give her a nice upswing pair of glasses. Instant fashion icon. But no, she needs a brow lift and full body liposuction, of course. And Debbie? She's not gonna have her sister and her mother, so I'm hoping that she's gonna find that strength within her. Put them in a box and throw them away? Herself, because I'm gonna need her in the gym six days a week and working hard, because she's got a lot of weight to lose in a small amount of time. Dr. Yanni? And that that's not good. That's, how could anyone say that and be like, this is a really well-rounded opinion that I have formed? No, a lot of weight loss in a short amount of time leads to a destabilized homeostasis, which means that you'll have things like increased cravings. Your body will go through several different types of inflammatory responses, which may lead you actually to putting on more weight in the end. So let's not, let's, let's not beat around the bush here. I'm absolutely not here for short-term fast weight loss. It is not sustainable for your body and it should and it's not sustainable for your mental health you'll become like a horrible person and everyone around you'll be like will you stop being so grumpy and angry all the time and you'll be like no I'm and that's what you'll do so always be prepared that weight loss is a long journey but it's a journey that takes multiple little stops along the way as well it takes views in off the vista it pops to little shops and has a peruse like you're here for a long time don't fuss too much about it. Set a reasonable, achievable goal and the, and the weight will fall off. And more importantly, it will stay off if you want to lose it. Dr. Yanni? This is a huge step for her to be independent and separate instead of being enmeshed with both her mother and her sister. Oh, is this the storyline they're going for? place of being independently confident and getting a sense of autonomy. Well, Carrie said she... I didn't really get a sense that she didn't have a sense of autonomy there, did you? I mean, I've only seen her for like eight seconds, so maybe there is, but let's see. Well, Carrie said she desperately wants to start over. Do you think we can help oh, her? absolutely. Let's review yes. her plan. Right, okay, come on then. Carrie's swan plan will begin with a nose job, brow lift, lower eye lift, lip augmentation, liposuction to her cheeks and chin, and LASIK eye surgery. For her body, she'll... I must admit, this show keeps making me think about doing liposuction for my cheeks. Like, whenever I smile, I've just got all this, like, chub here, and I'd like, just a little bit of reduction. Just a little bit. Just a little, little tiny bit. Just a little tiny bit. Bit more of a flatter profile. I would love that. So, mm, if you see me on the swan, girls. For her body, she'll have breast reduction and liposuction in seven different areas. <gasps> seven. Carrie's dental plan will include gum tissue recontouring, bleach... I want your gum tissue. Da Vinci veneers and deep cleaning. Goodness For her sake. fitness transformation, Carrie will spend two hours a day, six days a week at the gym, focusing on weight training to define her body and cardio to help her lose weight. Okay. A 1,200 calorie a day diet will help boost her metabolism. No. To help Carrie build... How will a 1200 calorie day diet boost metabolism? That's such a myth. What you taught you have a metabolism. So there are different sorts of medicine that you can take to boost metabolism. But metabolism is such an odd 
like in back in like 20 years ago almost 18 years ago let's just say it was such like a, a sort of almost not really a new science but a science that hadn't really like explored all of the metabolic pathways in the body so the idea that they're saying that like diet restriction increases metabolism isn't strictly true not in this case anyway it can induce starvation to help carrie build her self-esteem and learn how to become an independent person okay she will undergo weekly therapy and coaching oh weekly okay then it's time to let <clears throat> Carrie's sister in on the surprise that she has also been selected for the SWAN program. All right, here we go. Surprise. Now remember, Carrie has Gout. absolutely no idea that while she's driving away, her sister Gina is going to be given the news. Take a look. Hi. <laughs> oh, that's an awkward pose. Where is she going? Bye. Your sister's going to be a SWAN. Yeah. And so are you, Gina. What? You're going to be a SWAN. <laughs> Does she know? No, it's a secret. Oh <laughs> no, it's a secret. Doesn't that sound like an overlaid voice? I don't know. That doesn't sound like she's actually there saying that. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I'm going to be a swan. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've been my sister's protector for a long time. I think it'll be nice to just have the chance for both of us to work on ourselves on our own. Yeah, okay. That's quite, yes. Having a big chest ruined a lot of things for me. You know, I was 12 years old getting hit on by 18-year-old guys. I was still a child. I wanted to be a child. After I quit gymnastics, I was about 14, I started gaining weight. And that changed everything. By the time I was in college, my sister and I were both struggling with our weight. We each weighed over 170 pounds. We could barely fit into triple D bras. Just to be able to go buy a button-up shirt, it's almost impossible, and it, it hurts. We've had a lot of hard times. I bury all my problems by keeping busy at my job. I don't have time to think about me or how I feel. I just keep moving. My goodness, isn't that a scarily relatable thing? I think so many of us actually like distract ourselves from our issues that we're going through or potentially deal trying to deal with them by literally being like, all I do is work. I work all the time. That's literally what I'm doing right now in my life. Maybe I should, um, maybe I should visit Dr. Yanni. Yeah. Right now, I'm wearing a 38 double D. What is that audio? It's not easy to find any bigger than that. The other thing that I'm really self-conscious about is my stomach. I wouldn't want to wear a bathing suit even if I could. It doesn't feel good. Oh, oh I must say, that uh, that belly bar is looking like it's hanging on by a thread, my loves. I, as Roly would say. Ugh. I would probably take that out and have that redone. It doesn't look like it's going to keep for much longer. If I could. It doesn't feel good to feel disgusting. You disgusting. can't have a good relationship with someone until you feel good about yourself. I'm not even comfortable being intimate with my boyfriend, so. I'm hoping that through the SWAN program, I can fix just a few things that have really, really hurt me my whole life. Okay. And I'm just so thankful to have this opportunity. See, everything that she said there is not like, it's not, um, what's the word? It's not, it's not like, it's not over the top in any way, shape or form to want to actually like yourself. It's not unreachable. It's not this grand thing that's like, only the swan will help. Do you know what I mean? Self-love is almost a lifelong journey. I think that sometimes you can be in love with yourself and sometimes you can fall out of love with yourself. Sometimes it's like you've had an argument with yourself and you're just a bit like, oh, I don't really like this anymore. And then like two months later, you might be like, that was an interesting slump. We're out to dinner now. It's a lifelong process process of learning to live with yourself and I feel like something like the swan is more predatory in its approach to the issues instead of actually trying to deal with the root cause which you know sometimes there is plastic surgeries that can deal with root causes it deals with a lot of the symptoms it doesn't actually get rid of or address even begin to address the initial issue Dr. Dubrow, what's your plan for Gina? But at the same time, you can't self-love away large breasts, so I fully understand that. Well, as opposed to her sister, Gina has a lot of contour problems and loose skin in her abdomen. We're actually going to do a tummy tuck and really tighten up that skin. Really? But she needs a breast reduction just like Why? her sister does. What makes it tricky here, and I'm sure you'll agree, Randall, if we reduce them to what level? Because if we reduce them to, say, a target size of a full C, and then they lose 30, 40 pounds, they're going to end up a small B or an A. So I'm, I'm going to under reduce on her face it's really all about contouring and fat removal just like with her sister do a brow lift a buckle fat cheek fat excision liposuction corner of the jaw the chin they're gonna look like twins what was that something on the jaw cheek fat excision liposuction 
corner of the jaw, the chin. Oh, liposuction on the corner of the jaw or chin. I thought he was saying that he was going to like contour her jaw. I was like, wow, we've never seen that before. So while I understand that Dr. Dubrow there has said like he needs to under reduce so that uh, the extra weight loss can like reduce their size of their breasts. That does feel a little bit of like a... I don't know, a questionable thing? Maybe this is quite normal with breast reductions because I've never had ones and I've never had a consultation for one, so I don't quite know how they go. But from an outsider perspective, is it right to always assume that someone is going to be able to lose the excess weight to get down to the size they want to? Or should you just give them what they pay for in the first place? I suppose that's a question definitely for... A consultation and I guess that's why we have consultations to be honest to find out like where the surgeon and you meet in the middle So I'll be interested to see how that plays out. Are they gonna look like twins? When I'm not doing <laughs> Gina's nose, Randall's doing her sister's nose. Yeah, and Carrie will need a little bit more lip work I already think that uh, Gina already has very very full lips It'll be very interesting to see how this sister performs in the program because she's used to taking care of others And this is her turn to take the time for herself. What do you think Lynn? You think she'll be able to do it? I think this show is an appalling discussion Grace Nelly because unless you send both sisters to the pageant which I don't know they might do this is the swan after all they are going to they're going to send one of them and they're going to deem one of the sisters more beautiful than the other with a better transformation etc blah 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 and it's going to create a rift between them or potentially it could I would hope that it doesn't but that's what this show does. I'm concerned that neither of them have ever really felt like they've been on their own. And so one's used to being the parent, the other one's used to being the child. I think they need to do some healing and some differentiating. We've seen I Harry's get plan. That vibe. Let's review Gina's plan. Gina's swan plan features several procedures, starting with her face. She'll have okay. a flare lift, liposuction to her cheeks and chin, and several photofacials to even out her skin tone. For Gina's <laughs> body, she'll have a breast reduction, tummy tuck, and liposuction in eight different areas. Oh, eight! At the dentist, oh, G no, eight different areas. Gosh, she's going to have a lot of recovery, a breast reduction, tummy tuck, and lipo in eight places at once. That just sounds like hell on earth to me. You would not, like, I have consulted for liposuction, and I feel like... Even one area of liposuction, like the healing that is needed for it and to make sure that actually like heals in the way that it's wanted to. It's it's so delicate. It's such a delicate procedure that like, oh, scary girls. How can you ensure that all of these surgeries are going to heal the way they should when you have so much work done in one? Like you're just going to be fully ban bandaged. How are you going to, how, how are they going to be able to fully heal properly if you're fully bandaged? Like... Are you putting 100% effort into everything? Or are you dividing that 100% effort in healing across multiple different injuries? Because that's how the body kind of works. Gina will receive Zoom bleaching, Da Vinci veneers, of and da Vinci. deep cleaning. For her fitness transformation, Gina will be put on a 1200 calorie a day diet and spend two hours a day at the gym, six days a week. Okay. Gina will undergo weekly therapy and coaching to help her tackle her insecurities and learn how to focus on herself. Okay, expert. Learn. Like learn. Learn how to focus on herself. How is she going to learn? What, Nelly's going to come in and be like, think about you first, girl. Gold star for me. Okay, expert. Sounds like a lot of work. So let's get started. This is a horrible okay. room they're in. Horrible. It's the first day of the three-month-long nice. Swan program. For yeah. the first time, we have oh, two we sisters Black and white. competing. Carrie has no mm. idea Gina is even here. Yes. Carrie right. is ready to regain her cheerleading figure. Dancers aren't built this way. It's something that you love. It's like being taken breath. away from you. Goodness and build her self-esteem. Who commissioned this, like, black and white work? Who commissioned this? Who who did all that? Was it necessary? You're really trying to lay on this, like, oh, she's sad in this one. And in the mirror, her life is all colourful. Or it could be if she won the swan, girls. Gina is hoping to finally Miles focus on away. herself. I've been my sister's protector for a long time. And learn to feel comfortable with her body. I'm wearing the 38 Same double shot. D. It's not easy to find any bigger than that. Every reflective surface has been treated. Ooh! Weird. No mirrors. Okay, we need to search your bags for uh, contraband items. Oh, for goodness sake. The routine security check reminds Carrie just how serious the no mirror rule is. I've got a mirror on here, so I'm gonna take this one. Oh, I forgot that was in there. As Gina enjoys a moment alone, Carrie realizes that for the first time she is going through a major life experience without her sister. I just wanted to have a moment there and just be like, who were these men just like pilfering through their belongings? I do feel a bit like, I don't know, it just kind of makes me feel a bit uncomfortable. It's not the TSA. Like, 
this is just a TV show. Like, stop pilfering through all the things. Well, they found that small mirror, I suppose. But like, I'm gonna have to take that away from you. Well, I hope you put it in a box and I can keep it afterwards because those sorts of things are expensive, girls. Or so she thinks. Please promise that no matter how hard things get, you'll remember that I'm here praying for you. Oh. And I'll always be your biggest fan. You are the best sister a girl could ever have. It's hard okay, that she's not your swan way. butt. Carrie well, little did, little did she know she was across the road. Are you taking the pace? Carrie and Gina are ready to begin their transformations. Right. Your success in the program is dependent upon your total commitment. Ooh. There's no turning back. The program begins now. I'm so excited. I'm so ready. Ready, girls. Oh, where is this where they're staying? Gina's first step toward getting the body she wants is a visit to her plastic surgeon. Okay. Gina's a really cute girl, but oh, her body poses some challenges. You have a lot Shut of what up. we call contour regularities of your stomach. We could do liposuction, okay? But I'm concerned you still have a lumpy tummy. The other approach is to make an incision down here and do a tummy tuck. That sounds perfect to me. Okay. What's the number one thing that bothers you about your body? The number one thing that bothers me is my breast. Okay, what size are you right now? I'm a 38 double D. So probably what we should do is put you into the lower D range, knowing that when you lose the weight, that'll put you into the C range. I like that plan okay, a lot. I like that plan too. If she gets in shape and if she sticks to the plan, I think she'll be pageant ready and ready to win. When the thing with these kinds of operations is like, well, it goes back to what I said earlier. Do you want something that you know for sure is going to always be the size that you like? Or are you always going to be teetering on that edge of, if I lose a bit more weight, they'll be a bit smaller? Do you know what I mean? Because the swan is only like four months. Is that really like accounting for her life in five years time, in 10 years time? And that I find is the problem with this show. It provides like uh, instant fixes to potentially longer term problems. Hmm. My sister sees the new Gina. I think she'll be shocked and probably just as excited to see me and my changes as she is to see herself. Oh, the sister's surprise sweet. reunion is still months away. Mm. Now it's Carrie's turn to learn Ooh, what's in store for lime. her physical transformation. Top. The size and shape of Carrie's breasts give her this top heavy appearance. It can we just have you look at this document folder really quick, not read anything and then go, yep, that's it, knock, knock, hello, time for your brow lift. The size and shape of Carrie's breasts give her this top heavy appearance. It makes her look shorter and stockier. Your breast size is your most troubling yes. thing. Do you have bad back pain? And neck, neck too. Neck pain, mm -hmm. shoulder pain. Yeah, and I get headaches. Okay. okay. Why don't I have you stand up and let's have a look at your breasts here. I'm gonna give you a breast, breast. reduction and that'll give you a lot of relief from the pain you're having. And so if we get to a mid C, that's gonna make you happy. So happy. C, mid C's. She's on the verge of looking masculine. And I need to feminize her face. Look how full your face is here. It needs definition. Yeah. We have to get- How is this woman on the verge of looking masculine, Dr. Hayworth? What? Is this what masculinity looks like in 2004? Give your nose a waist and just make it delicate. Okay. Uh, sounds good. Look forward to see you Thank soon. Thank you. Okay, bye. I'm a little nervous. more nervous than I thought I was going to be. Just do it. I don't want to know the details, but I'm so excited. It Harry is serious. Is ready to begin a challenging program. I think there is definitely something to remember that like when you have these ideas of your surgery at home, like for example, when I go for FFS, I was like at home just like, oh yeah, wouldn't it be nice to have FFS? Now I'm actually going through the process to have it done. I know for a fact I'm going to get, as soon as I step into that doctor's office and have my like pre-op consultation, I know that I'm going to be like a little bit nervous and a little bit anxious and I know that the reality of the situation is going to set in. It's one of those things where you have to like remind yourself why you're doing something. Meanwhile, Gina faces her oh, here she is. the nutritionist. Oh, no, not a nutritionist. Scale. Lies. Actually, this reminds me. So in the UK, in order to be like a professional nutritionist, you need to be a registered associate nutritionist, which actually the initials are A-N-U-T-R. A nutter, girls, you need to be a nutter. I don't think that this is the same in America and potentially it wasn't the same in the UK back in 2004. I am always dubious of someone that says they're a nutritionist that isn't registered because like, you, you aren't, are you? You're not, you're lying. No say, stop trying to get me into a multi-level marketing scheme. Pyramids, go. 147.6. Why was that like, <laughs> boom? <laughs> and I'm only five foot four. <gasps> Tiny. What kind of lunch would you Although I'm only five eat? six. French fries, cheeseburgers, and my biggest downfall is soda, real soda. I basically just live on fast food, oh, I love okay. it. Yeah, you're mm. a fast food I don't know how I'm gonna live without it. <laughs> what you're gonna need to do, Tina, 
All right, so without paying any attention to this, like, Nutrisystem woman on the go with that hateful... Look at the size of that collar. My goodness, she could take flight. One of the first things that you can do to have an impact on the way that your body looks and the way that your body feels is by cutting out junk food. I know that sounds really intense, but literally, buy a nice cookbook. Look at a couple of recipes you like on YouTube. For, for example, there are so many beautiful and incredible creative chefs here on YouTube. I've learned so many things from Sauce Stash. I've learned so many things from Emmy Made in Japan, from the Bosch Kitchen from Sorted Kitchen. Like, there are so many that you can look at to just be like, let's have a look at different meals. Now, I know back in the day, we didn't have access to social media and things like that, but cookbooks have been around forever, not just in health food shops. And I feel like deep down on some, like, cellular level, we know that fast food isn't good for us. It's, it's like a pleasure centre here. Fast food gives us pleasure here and just problems everywhere else. <laughs> what you're going to need to do, Gina, is eat five smaller portions throughout the day. There's no soda. No. I don't think I can live without it. While Gina has her work cut out for her following the diet, Carrie is having some pre-dental jitters. I have a few concerns. Okay. Okay. About the veneers. Uh -huh. If one breaks, they're pretty indestructible. Even if I'm like... Lies! I want your gum tissue. That is it, she is a liar! Lying Annabelle, liar, liar! Pantaloons in the bin, girls! You've got gout in the argo! Good heavens. That is not true. The idea they're pretty indestructible. No, they aren't. No, they aren't. Veneers are not indestructible. They're pretty indestructible. Even if I'm like a little clumsy and I fall down a lot. Do you fall down and hit your teeth? Well, no, but, you know, I just mean I'm a clumsy person. And I gotta think of all these possibilities. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't think Carrie has- Don't laugh. Don't laugh at your patient when she's expressing serious concerns about a procedure that's like known to cause complications 10 years down the line. You need to get them replaced. You just can't have just like veneers. Like, you don't have one set of veneers for the rest of your life. That's not how it works. Horrible little girl. I don't think Carrie has anything to worry about. So we're gonna go ahead and prepare her teeth for veneers. I think she has a lot to worry about actually. I'm sculpting your gums with the BioLace oh. laser and they look beautiful. I can't imagine how gum sculpting feels. Like, imagine, like, trying to heal from gum sculpting. God, she really does want your gum tissue, doesn't she? The healing process must be, like, so... Has anyone here in the comments ever had gum recontouring? That sounds like it would be so... Like, the, the healing process would be so, like, painful. I'm really prone to mouth ulcers, and I feel like they would just be, like, one giant ulcer for me. Not having that. Not having that at all, girls. I'm out. Oh, I'm really talkative in today's episode, aren't I? We'll do a zoom bleach and get your teeth really white. Zoom. Or is that it? Buzz, buzz. It's got one desire. So let's open up. Let's start the race and sparkle up this place. Buzz, buzz, bit. And now I'm preparing your teeth for the news. Everything went good. I've been thinking about the pageant the whole time, and every day you want it a little bit more. Carrie's transformation is on track. Okay. Oh, here we go. The night before surgery for both sisters, oh, Carrie is eager to share her excitement, but she doesn't realize her sister Gina has a big day ahead of her as well. Oh. Hello? Oh! oh Carrie, what's up? I have surgery tomorrow. I'm gonna be worried about you. <laughs> Don't be, I'm, I'm doing good. You're not nervous? Not yet. Once I know you're out and you're okay, then I'll feel better. I miss her very, very, very much. I that was an interesting thing there. So I'm guessing she obviously had a mobile phone back in 2004 because if she didn't, how would she like call her landline? Unless they like put into put in a number for her and said, Carrie will be at the end of this line, girls. How did that work? Okay. I do love seeing a sisterly bond though. It is so refreshing. Considering that all we've really seen so far on this show is them like trying to call a boyfriend and they're not answering, trying to call a husband and they're not answering, trying, trying to call their family and their child's just like, Mummy, come home now! It's like, oh God, <laughs> it's so emotional. I miss her very, very, very much. I think Gina's more nervous about my surgery than I am. Hmm. She's probably just nervous in general. The day oh, of pillow. surgery has arrived for both yeah, of our sisters. Pillow. Gina's a cute girl, but with some body recontouring and a breast reduction, we can give her the body she's always wanted. Okay. Are you psyched for this? I'm so psyched, I can't even imagine what it's gonna be like. Okay, good. As Gina okay. enters the OR, Carrie is ready to be prepped for her surgery. Oh! You're already a pretty girl, and all we need to do is to just enhance. I don't think Wait! I'm gonna... Wasn't he saying, like, her face is so masculine, blah, blah, blah? So is she a pretty girl or is she masculine? Because, like, to me, those things are very much interchangeable. But to these doctors, why? No. They're apparently not. They're ridiculous. Miss this body at all. Wait, was he drawing in her hairline then? Enhance. Look! I don't think I'm... Look! Look! All we need to do is to just enhance. 
drawing in the hairline, which means he's going to make an incision in the hairline. Something that, if someone told me they were making an incision that close to the front of my hairline, I would be like, mm, I don't think actually. Maybe we don't need an endoscopic brow lift and maybe a direct brow lift would be better. Really I mean, it's still now. your body. I feel like I'm on nip tuck. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, nip tuck, that's a throwback. <laughs> we're gonna here we go. With some <gasps> I'm just here. Oh, hoovering the turkey again, girls. I don't understand! To refine what she has. Oh my Carrie's liposuction went very, very smoothly. We're gonna down. I don't, I have quite a strong stomach actually for watching surgeries, but for some reason, watching liposuction really makes me go like. I don't know, it makes me go all like, heebie-jeebies, girl, because it's just so, like, it seems like such a violent activity. Like, it's so, like, jiggly and, like, like imagine just picking someone up and just, like, shaking them like this. That's the kind of, like, thing I get. I'm just a bit like, I don't want to, I don't want to see it now. Do the lower eye surgery. Lower eyes. Oh. I'm taking out the fat pad that hides underneath the cheekbone. Buckle fat removal. We're trying yeah. to go and bring some highlights to her face. Carrie's oh. surgery is Mac. running smoothly. Meanwhile, Gina's facial transformation gets underway. Okay, so I've said it before, but genuinely, this on this season, it's been so much less gory than it was in the first season. Like I had to do so much blurring in the first season. On this one, I have had to do like practically hardly any, and that's such a weird feeling because did the network step in and just go like, please stop being so gory. You're frightening people away from getting more plastic surgery, girls. Like, is that what happened? Weird, weird concept. Okay, so we're gonna take the fat from inside of Gina's cheeks and help define her cheeks a little bit more. To really take her to the next stage. God, they cut up all of that sentence, didn't they? Okay, guys, let's get the breast and the stomach done. All right, let's do it. Booby tummy. To really make her look great in a bikini and get her into the pageant, we need to touch up things and do some nice sculpturing on the sides. Do you know what? In this one, I can't possibly ever forget about the pageant because it's every other word in every other sentence. It's just like, oh, for the pageant, bikini breast reduction for the pageant, brow lift for the pageant, pageant, pageant. Whereas in the first season, I just kept forgetting that this was about a pageant. Be I think it might be because the contestants know about it this time that it's just so like a prevalent like storyline arc is the pageant girls. This is what's called a skin only tummy tuck because we're not tightening up the muscles at all. Oh. Well. Gina's surgery is over. Oh. We finished up in one stage. Oh. It'll be interesting to see how her surgery compares to Dr. Hayworth's surgery on her sister. I want to know about my sister. I'm more worried about her than me. She's my baby sister. Oh, Carrie, very sweet. Can you hear me? <coughs> Carrie? Oh, Sweep stop. my hand. Hi, you're just waking up. Oh, Sweep stop. No, stop. Carrie, can you hear me? Stop. Carrie had some trouble coming out of anesthesia, so until we do some further testing, I don't know if it's going to be possible to perform her breast reduction. Coming up on the... What did we just watch? What was that? That was scary. Absolutely terrifying. Obviously, it's fine, because, like, why would they be, like... Why would they have aired the episode? Do you know what I mean? Like, clearly, she was fine. But all oh, that's scary. Like, it's scary. Isn't it vulnerable? Because you're waking up from something that's so, like... Your consciousness goes somewhere. We don't know where it goes. It just goes away. But like waking up from that is really oh 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 oh. I'm so glad. Like why didn't that oh. complications go? Oh, it's the next day, girls. Dr. Is Hayworth she fine? Pays Carrie a visit to discuss what went wrong. Okay. Carrie, how are you? Uh, great. How are you? God, big change from last night. I know. You had some trouble waking up last night. Right. What happened? You yeah. were like really sleepy, and then when you started to fall asleep, then your oxygen saturation would drop. I knew I had snoring problems, but that's all I knew. I think Carrie has a breathing disorder when she's asleep, so this could make putting her under anesthesia and performing her breast reduction too dangerous. I'm going to have you see one of her doctor specialists. Okay. Carrie's surgical plan is now on hold. Wow. So they actually ha so she has like a an issue that potentially wasn't spoken about before this. See, that's something that's so like in consultations to go under anesthetic like they should really ask those sorts of things. Like, have you ever snored? Do you snore? And then like you need to you need to provide extra information about why that might be. Scary. I think it's one of those things that people don't assume that like snoring can have a problem when it is that you're going into like anesthetic and things like that. Every you might think that like everyone snores, and I guess everyone does. Like, do you snore fully on your back, like, <laughs> or are you like on your front, like, <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Like, all of these things do impact how your body behaves when it is under sedation. Meanwhile, Gina faces a difficult recovery of and her, her own. And her sister didn't know How this. You're not feeling so well now. I don't know. Where are you in pain mainly? 
My face hurts and then the incision on my tummy. Of course, it's a lot of this work. will be worth it. It doesn't smoke in tummy. <laughs> Hearing Dr. Dubrow say that it looks great makes me feel really good. It makes me feel really confident. Don't rub it like Gina's this. feeling better about oh. her recovery. Well, that was easy. Meanwhile, Carrie begins her sleep testing, anxious oh. to learn if she will be cleared for surgery. I have to get this breast reduction. It's the one thing I've wanted my whole life. It's what I've wanted for 10 years. Carrie will be monitored overnight to determine if she has a breathing disorder. Having all this stuff hooked up. Well, they're really hitting that dustbin for effect, aren't they? Like, boom, boom, boom. She's getting a test at the Sleeping Centre Girls in the bin. Gosh, the, the editing on this show never ceases to amaze me. Like, how could you make, like, finding out information about how you sleep, like, into the most dramatic thing ever? Hand it off to a reality TV producer. That's how. The breathing disorder. Her lips look incredible, Having all though. this stuff hooked up to me makes me really nervous, but I'm willing to do anything to get my breast reduction. After a fitful night, Carrie awaits the results of her testing. And? Oh. Hello? I've got your results from the sleep apnea happy. clinic. OK, and? You are cleared for surgery. Oh my god, thank you so much. But that's, that only applies to sleep apnea. Like, she, we, we all saw her struggle to wake up from surgery. So what does that mean? Does it mean there's potentially more investigation needed? Or are they just like, you're cleared, let's do it again! Even though it might not be sleep apnea that's causing this problem. What? Okay, this is a bit nefarious now. So we can go ahead and get your breast reduction tomorrow. Thank this you, feels, Dr. Hayworth. This feels a little like bit like sunk cost fallacy heard. or something. I can't wait to start my new life. Mm. Mm. Finally, huh. it's actually happening! Carrie is ready for her final surgery and I bet calls everyone... her mother to share the news. I bet everyone in this operating room is going to be like, oh my goodness, please don't have a complication waking up, please. All those assistants that were like, <gasps> trying to get her to grab her hand and stuff. My goodness, that is terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. I'm so excited. This is the big one. This is what you've been waiting for. Yep. So then someone will call me afterwards? Yes. Uh, make sure they know to call my cell phone. Even when I eat lunch or anything, I bring my cell phone with me. I know, Mom. Oh, Sometimes I good. think that she doesn't think I can handle it because she has to be there to protect the baby. But hopefully this will show her that I can do it and maybe she'll look at me more like an adult. A little oxygen on you as you're starting to drift off. Okay, now I'm starting the final stage on Carrie, which is the bilateral breast reduction. This is an operation that's complicated because one false move and you can kill the nipple. Kill the nipple? I think they look very good. What a huge change for Carrie. That's perfect. You have beautiful breasts now. Nice. Oh, this is so fun. I'm winning the pageant. <laughs> I'm taking it all and I'm bringing it home to my sis. Oh. Carrie's in good spirits, but the delay in she her surgery know. means she has a lot of catching up to do. Meanwhile, Gina is facing a challenge she never anticipated. What's I this? I thought the program would be difficult, but there's so much more to keeping this secret. I had to tell Carrie that I was going to Mexico so she wouldn't ask me about my mom and how everything was going at home. Hello? I haven't talked to you in forever. I know, way too long. I know. How's it Are going? Are you feeling good? Yes, I'm feeling really good. Everything okay. Is okay? Mm hmm How was Mexico? It was so awesome. Ah! I don't want to tell you a lot about the trip either because I've got cool pictures. Yes. <laughs> it's getting harder and harder every day. I'm even covering from... Sneaky espionage! Suddenly it's become the spy who went to Mexico on the Swan Girls! My dog, Roxy. Are you at home? Yeah. Is Roxy around? Yeah. You wanna say hi to her? She is. I don't know if she'll respond. Hold on. Okay. Who is Roxy? Okay, talk to her. Roxy! Oh my goodness. Roxy! Oh, this is horrible. Is she sleeping? No. Oh, she's not responding. Gina's struggle to keep the secret has distracted her. Oh! Gina and <laughs> Okay, that's the one little sense of like moderate humor we've seen. So she's trying to talk to a, a Yorkshire Terrier, but the Yorkshire Terrier's like, no, because it's actually not really there, girls. Oh dear. Harry are one month away from their final reveals. Right, one and month, a girls. Surprise reunion. Carrie entered the program hoping to regain her cheerleading figure. Her dreams were almost cut short when she had difficulty coming out of anesthesia. How terrifying is that? Carrie. Terrifying. Carrie completed her surgeries, but the delay has taken its toll. 
technically I'm two weeks behind. Will she be able to make up two for lost behind. time and get into pageant shape? Oh yeah, just nod at her, yeah. Gina yeah, came it. determined to reshape her body. My stomach is just all bumpy. And concentrate on herself. Gina, where's your focus? <gasps> but was overly concerned with her sister. I'm more worried about her than me. <laughs> she faced her problems. You focus a lot of energy on others. But I'm here to really encourage you to stop doing that. But can she? F Why are you sitting on the nice comfy couch? And she's like, on the naughty step. You guys are in a crisis. I'm on my way. Which sister will take off the weight and who will earn a spot in the pageant? Next. Right. Oh, are we here? Jeffrey Star's house, although not anymore, is Welcome it, girls? Welcome back to the swan. Now, Ooh. it's been a month since we've seen the Bravata sisters and three months since She's they've seen themselves in a mirror. Bannister. Now, remember, neither Carrie nor Gina realise... I really like this dress. It's so pretty. I just wish it was, like, floor length and very impressive. It's just a bit like cocktail shimmies, which is fine, but a gown, please. ...is that they're competing against each other for a spot in the pageant. And Carrie doesn't so have many a clue layers in that the Gina hair. is part of the Swan programme. Okay. But before their big reveal, let's check in with the team of experts who yes, radically let's. transformed these women. Yes. Ah! Oh, what's that up there? They have changed it. Is that a set? Can you see up the top here? There's just like blue all the way along. Like it's just like one sheet of like, I don't know, backdrop. Carrie came to us encumbered by a large chest and a weight problem. Dr. Hayworth, she came across some complications in the early stages. How Who did she that deal woman? with that? We uncovered some potentially dangerous medical conditions during Carrie's first surgical stage. However, she handled them as an adult and emerged with a dazzling transformation. What did he just say? He just said we uncovered some medical concerns. But we weren't told what they were, were we? we? We we didn't see like, oh, she's gone off and had several different tests to get to the root of it. No, she went to a sleep clinic one night and then they were like, yes, she's fine, girls. At least that's what we were shown. It would be interesting to know if there was more than that or if there's more to this story than that or if that literally is just it. That is a weird little segment to put in there just to be like, almost like, oh, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. She can have lots of surgery. It's fine. Do you know what I mean? Mm, nefarious girls. Nelly, how do you think she's going to react when she finds out that her big sister Gina is on the program? Well, you know, she's been obsessed with the fact that Gina didn't get to be on the show, and she just is so upset she didn't even want us to mention her. So I can't imagine what's going to happen when she realizes she's been here all along. <laughs> she's going to freak. <laughs> It'll be a shocker. Everyone laughs. Well, we'll see how the younger Bravata sister turned out in just a moment. Here she is. Please welcome the brand new Carrie Bravata. All right, here we go. Open the door, man servant. Oh! She's a blonde woman on the go. Look, floor length. Yes. Oh, gorgeous. Wow. Okay. Okay. Wow. Oh, that's such a nice underwear set as well. And they, the hair doesn't look oh hateful. Oh my lord, how are you doing? <sighs> incredible. Yeah, and you Nervous. look incredible. Come with me. Wow. Okay. Carrie, I honestly she, can say... Oh, she suits being a blonde. She absolutely suits being a blonde. I think being a blonde and having a little bit of like a tan skin really suits her very beautifully. And they haven't like done her dirty with this hair either. It's hair extensions, but they're blended really nicely and they're styled really well. There's still a lot of layers, but you know, it was a very of its time. I can't believe Dr. Hayworth called her masculine. That you look absolutely nothing like your former self. What have you done with the old Carrie? <laughs> She's out. She's gone. And you're very close to your family, I know that. How have you coped without them over all this time? What really helped is just looking forward and knowing that they were supporting me and that they were just as excited as I was. Okay. What do you think they're going to say when they see you? I don't My know goodness, you're anything. blonde! They're going to cry. I okay. know it. I'm not going to make you wait any longer. Okay. Because behind that curtain, there's a mirror. You're shaking. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited and nervous and every emotion. Well, in just a moment, I'm going to ask you to step up to the curtain. Then I'll ask you if you're ready. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, here and we go. And when you say yes, we'll pull back the curtain. You'll be able to see yourself. Okay? Okay. Okay, Carrie. Off you go. Good luck. <gasps> oh, Illuminati girls, Illuminati girls. Approach the mirror. The curtain budget on this show must have been in the millions. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, Carrie. Right, this oh, is your oh. moment. Are you ready? Oh! Let's do it. Come on, Carrie girls. You can do this. Yeah. 
punch. Oh my god. This is so incredible. Oh. That is such a good reaction. <laughs> I love it! I love it so much! <laughs> oh my God, is right. Keep looking. <laughs> What's going through your head right now? I can't believe how small this thing is. <laughs> What about oh. your sister Gina at home? I mean, when you get home to her, what's she gonna think? What about Gina, girls? I, she's not gonna believe it. Mm. This is her dream to see me like glamorous. You have yourself to thank for that, Kerry. You really do. And all these people. Exactly, <laughs> and all these people. So come on in, guys. I was really happy with Carrie's results. She represented one of those quiet but really dramatic transformations. When Carrie walked out, I thought, who is that supermodel? She just looked magnificent. <laughs> wow. I'm quite speechless about that. Oh! The swan! I didn't know that the... Look, if you look here, I didn't know that this foyer is like white marble. Did you know that it was white? Never! I'd never thought that it was white. Isn't that weird? Never. But let's talk about Carrie's reveal. So, in stark contrast to a lot of the reveals that we have seen, I got such overwhelmingly positive results from that. Yes, she was stunned, but it was stunned in a way that's like, almost, you know, like when you get like a, if you really like surprises and someone has surprised you for a birthday party and you get that kind of like overwhelm of like, <gasps> but then like you're smiling and you're like, I can't believe it, it's me! Like that kind of feeling. I did not in any way, shape or form, get like a negative vibe from this at all. If anything, I think that she really seemed to enjoy the process of the transformation. And can I just say, like, she really suits being blonde. Not everyone does, but I think that it just really worked for her. And I feel like that long blonde really added to the transformation. If you go to from a medium brown hair tone to like a level eight slash nine warm blonde, like that's so much more of a dramatic makeover than getting a brow lift. Do you know what I mean? Okay, let's see her sister. All right, here we go. Jeffrey's town. Although it's Britney Spears' house now, isn't it? She bought it. We just saw Ooh. Carrie's big reveal. Runway girls. Did she know that her competition tonight is her know. big sister, Gina? Right, here we go. Experts. Now, Gina came to us with a, a caretaker personality. She never really seemed to find time for her own needs. Dr. Yanni, how did therapy help her gain a perspective oh. on her new life? Gina made a dramatic transformation throughout the process. Did she? We didn't therapy. see it once. She learned how to take care of herself to the extent that she was able to take care of others for the very first time in her life. And Nelly, how, how did she cope hiding that big secret from her sister? It was very difficult because she's so close to her. But I think in the program, she really embraced taking care of herself for once in her life. Well, we're going to get a look at her transformation in just a few moments. But first, let's take a look back at the woman who secretly joined the SWAN program three months ago. I find it really, really weird. Like, it's just, I'm just thinking about it there. Just all those people standing in that hallway, just like standing next to each other, having to like shoot lots of lines and stand there more and shoot this line over here, stand again. Like, just a really weird concept, isn't it? Like, because usually panels of experts are like sitting down behind panels. It's really strange to just see them all collected in, a, in like a foyer. Just had a moment of clarity there. How weird was that? Okay, well, it's time. Right. Here she is, the brand new Gina Bravata. Come on, Gina girls. <laughs> Man servants open the door. Oh my goodness. Wow, that is some like James Bond villainess hair, isn't it? Look at, that, look at that fringe. That's not wispy, that's heavy. Oh my lord. How are you? I'm great. Come with me. Let's get a chat. Is that a wine-coloured dress, Burgundy? You, know, you look black. like a completely different person. I feel like a completely <laughs> different person. She looks Talk very... To me. Tell me about... This styling reminds me a little bit of, like, Real Housewives of Boopity Boo. Do you know what I mean? The last three months. What has been the biggest thing that you've learned? Just that I matter, that I need to actually put as much time into caring about myself as I do about everybody else. And that's quite a nice how thing to How difficult was it to, to keep a secret from Carrie? I don't know how you did it. <laughs> well, Keeping she was sequestered. It was very difficult to have phone conversations with her and write letters to her. It was nerve-wracking, uh -huh. but it was exciting. 
Well, it's been okay. three months since you've seen yourself in a mirror. All right, here we go. Are you dying to see yourself tonight? Don't say I dying. Am. I'm, I'm very excited and a little bit nervous, if I'm going to be honest. Yes, of course. <laughs> that's okay, that's okay. I mean, it's been a long time. Well, Gina, see that curtain over there? There's a mirror behind Look at it. those curls. She's been at the Dyson. Can you step up to the curtain for me? All right, come on. Oh, we've started. This music isn't right. No. They just repeated it. Oh, Illuminati. I've thrown me off, girls. Illuminati. Oh, from the back. Okay, Gina. A bit of... This is it. Are you ready? Right. Come on, Gina, girls. Oh, I like her Rich. false lashes. That's, that's, they're quite nice. Shocks you so much. I'm little. I know. <laughs> I didn't think I'd ever be little. What about Carrie? Do you think she'll recognize her big sister? No. I think oh, we've got the die. reveal, haven't we? I forgot. <laughs> Gina, what's your favorite part of your transformation? I think my chest. It was oh. a source of a lot of pain for a long time, and now I like what I see. <laughs> And these guys here want to congratulate you too. Well done. Thank you. I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw Gina's figure. From where she was to where she is now, it's outstanding. I thought it's quite the transformation. She that? looks like the beautiful girl next door. Natural, beautiful, fantastic. But don't put them against each other. Don't make it a competition. Oh, we're going out the chimney, girls. Britney Spears. I just want to say there, actually, just after these two reveals that we have seen, these two reveals are almost like the best possible scenario that a reveal could happen. The second sister's reveal kind of was a little bit like, oh, when she's like, it's not me. I don't, it's impossible. It's not me. There's a little bit of like telling that sentence of like, is, could this potentially be a problem? But overwhelmingly positive responses from both of the contestants, which really go very against what we've seen previously for some contestants. Some contestants have been like, they've left me feeling horrible after, after watching their reveals, because you can see this thing that it's like, the, 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 the swan isn't the answer. And it's like, oh, Scary. It's a bit scary, but I'm so glad that, that those two positive outcomes there really make me feel like this show isn't quite so bad after all in terms of the transformation aspect. It's the competition that's always been the issue for me. Right, here we go. Oh, somber music. Welcome back to The Swan. Now, right. it's been a night of dramatic reveals, but there's still more drama to come. We're about to find out which You're of the Bravata sisters our judges in consultation with our experts have chosen to go to the pageant. Now before know who it's that be. happens, Carrie will finally discover that unbeknownst to her, big sister Gina has been part of the Swan program all along. I bet when this aired back in the day, people were losing their minds watching this live. I bet they were like, I can't wait for the reveal! It's a scandal, girls! I bet people were just creaming, girls. I'm going to cream. Now joining us once again is Carrie Bravata. Okay, come on. Carrie, girl. Gentlemen. Oh, I'm all, like, bothered. This is a... What's that? Some leaves. Oh, very beautiful. Blonde. Just... Hey, Carrie, how you doing? Great. Welcome you. back. Thank you. Oh. It's been three long months, Carrie, over the Swan yes. programme. I bet you're really anxious to find out whether or not you've been selected for the Swan pageant. I right? hate that this isn't anxious. done with men. Okay, well, men, the wait is men nearly men over. Well. Okay. okay, it's time to meet your competition. Has Amanda had a haircut since the intro? <laughs> Oh gosh, here Gentlemen. we go. Does she know? Oh gosh. Oh my god! <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh! I'm gonna cry! <laughs> You're so good to me! 
Oh my you goodness. You didn't tell me you were here. My God, I see oh. you. Turn around. <laughs> I'm gonna fall right now. Okay, girls, I'm come tall. on back to me. Right oh I'm not surprised. God. Okay, stand beside each other for me. Obviously, now you know the big <laughs> secret has been that Gina's been with us the whole time. The whole time? Yeah. The whole time? <laughs> Do you have any idea how difficult it was for her to keep the secret from you? And I can usually read you so well. I kept saying, like, she can read my mind. She's going to know. No idea. I can't believe you kept this from me. <laughs> yeah, shocking turn of events, go. Isn't it? However... I just need to sort my eyes out. <laughs> Oh, that one got me that did. I don't think I've cried yet on this one, but here we are. Okay, let's continue, shall we? <laughs> Gina, you had no idea that you were going to be competing against Carrie for a place in the Swan pageant. <sighs> don't make them compete. How does that feel? It's Rubbish. hard. It's hard Rubbish. because everybody else, I think, has that, like, want to knock out their competition. And in this mm -hmm. case, it's a whole different scenario. Now it's on. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's always on, uh -huh. but... God, yeah, it's but hard. there's it's... nobody I would rather... Well, and, and who and who can lose? Look at look I at know. us. I know. Well, That's at... a good way to look at it. I'm so a happy very good for way. both of you, but it is time now. As you both know, individually, you've say. made the most incredible transformations, and you must be proud of each other and yourselves. Yes. But not according to our judges. <laughs> but, like I say, only one of you can move on to the pageant. I'll make it a, a double. chance to be crowned the Swan. Make it a double. Go on. Go on. Treat yourself. Make it okay, double. You've been evaluated on beauty, on poise, and of course, overall transformation. Oh, come on, girls. This envelope contains the name of the Bravata sister who will move on to the pageant. <laughs> the pageant! Best of luck to both of you. Oh, good luck. Love you. Love you too. The name of the sister that moves on to the pageant is. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh. been my driving force this whole time. I really thought for when a second there. When walked through those doors, she really made me proud. She had come such a oh. long way from where she first started. Oh, shut up. Mm -hmm. oh. You better be right there in the front row. Of course. Goodness. You see both of them reunited as women who have grown. It was a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Congratulations to you both, because you both look incredible. You know that, right? Here tonight to congratulate both of you ladies. Oh! Let's stand over here. Wait! Oh! Gentlemen. In a shocking twist of events. Open the tarot card doors. Oh, is it all ever bread with one? Oh, oh mummy girls! <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh. oh, I'm just flabbergasted. I just can't believe how, what a wonderful job everybody's done and how hard they worked and how tiny they are. Oh. <laughs> how bonkers. Oh Absolutely bonkers. <laughs> oh, God, look at it. They looked phenomenal. I mean, it was beyond oh, wow. anything I ever expected. His voice is very like movie trailer <laughs> in a world oh, where the God. swan becomes a swan. I came here. Oh with the idea of the pageant in mind, and it was a very big dream for me. But getting to at least still go and support her in it will be really exciting. Wow, well, that has certainly mean. been one of our most emotional shows ever. We will You're see Carrie the pageant, and next week the transformations continue as two more women compete for a chance to be crowned the Swan. What? Well, my loves, I'm going to push my laptop away and take my ohinger out here and just think like, wow, I feel so emotionally drained after that episode. Okay, this episode had lots of interesting points that I still feel are quite like important to talk about. So, breast reduction sizes. Is it always better to do a smaller reduction with the idea that potentially your client is going to lose extra weight and do the rest of the work or not? unsure about that let me know what you guys think about that in the comments box below because i don't know some people might look at that as like you're not delivering on your promise of what i've paid you for and other people might be like that's a really great idea and it will inspire me secondly the idea of this like shocking twist of events a sister lies a sister becomes a swan the other sister also becomes a swan they reunite in floods of tears which was true as i mentioned earlier i just 
couldn't imagine this show getting any more like bonkers than it already did but that was wild what a wild experience that was and the fact that they were like are you going to make them look identical i am glad that they didn't try and make them look identical because the i that that doesn't know that that feels I don't know if that would sit right with me, but my goodness, those reveals, I felt so positive about those reveals and like, like almost like a, like a tension that we were kind of like expecting to happen because whenever I watch one of these shows, I always expect, kind of expect the worst. I always sort of think, oh, is this going to be like a moment that's going to be more shocking than the last because, you know, you just don't trust TV production from early 2000s. But those reactions and those reveals were some of the nicest ones that we have seen, and I'm, I'm, I'm fully shocked about that, to be honest, in a completely different kettle of babies. Well, my lovelies, let me know what you think about what we have seen today in today's episode, because Carrie and Gina, it was shocking, girls. What an episode. That's all I can say, my loves. Oh, you know when you're having one of those days where your eyebrows are just like, you ain't my mother. Yes, I am! Hateful. And we're on a new lens. <laughs> Hello, my lovelies. How are you doing? I feel like I haven't filmed for ages for some reason. I've said that a few times the last couple of weeks. I don't know why, but... <laughs> well, my lovelies, it is time for another episode of The Swan Girls. And today, I believe it's episode five? The energy in the studio today, my lovelies, is a little bit strange because finally I am living by myself, which means I can make as much noise as I want and be as loopy as I need to be. And also not speaking for a little while does send you a little bit loopy. So in the last episode of The Swan, we saw two sisters battling out to become a swan girls and um interestingly enough i didn't think that it was possibly the most shocking episode that we'd ever seen it actually almost dare i say it felt slightly wholesome so i have absolutely no idea what to expect today my lovelies but because we've already had one wholesome episode in the entirety of the swan i highly doubt that today will be wholesome or lovely or anything of the sort are you ready my loves so strap in strap on <laughs> Get your beverages at the ready, pop your ohanger in, and let's watch The Swan Girls! Why aren't you making it to the pageant? Tonight on The Swan. Cinnamon, you've been chosen to be a swan. Oh my god! Cinnamon Smith is a cop and single mom looking to bring out her feminine side. I feel sometimes like a failure. Oh, you're like, gorgeous. Who would want me? But can she handle being away from her children? I hate to be away from you for a long time. And face the demands of becoming a swan. I look like a monster. <gasps> And Patty Shadowan is a widow looking for a second chance. I want to come out the oldest, but the prettiest and sexiest. Oh. But a life-threatening diagnosis. Oh, no. the test results, it's cancer. <gasps> Makes her time at the Swan more crucial than any other contestant so far. My family's counting on you. Okay. They need me. Who will join Jennifer Patton from... Stop. I have to just say that. Oh my gosh. Can you imagine finding out that you are getting like a, a life-changing medical diagnosis on TV? Like that doesn't seem like it should be allowed. You know what I mean? But also, can we just say cinnamon and patty? Cinnamon and patty. Cinnamon and patty. The producers thought, why don't we pop cinnamon and patty together? Cinnamon patty. All right. Okay. Tonight on The Swan. That's Good the evening, one. I'm Amanda Byram and welcome Ooh, to The Swan, the only Amanda. show where ordinary women get the once in a lifetime chance to become beauty queens. I'll be quiet! Look at this kind of like pirate wench brown nightgown ensemble. And she's got her hair behind her shoulders today. Oh, she's feeling her shoulder fantasy. <laughs> Decolletage, host. I'm so shocked with how far this episode is already going to go. I literally just said, I just said, we've had a wholesome episode. It's time for an off the scale episode. And it already feels like it's going to happen. Right, what's she going to tell us? Tonight, we bring you two unbelievable stories. But... Only one oh, woman will be chosen to join the lucky four. Who What's have that all... painting? What's that painting in the background? Who's that? Can you see this painting? It's just like, woman with basket in the 40s. The 1640s. She never looked nice. She looked like art. And art wasn't supposed to look nice. It was supposed to make you feel something. Who have already reached the pageant in hopes of being crowned the swan. America's next top swan girl. Why aren't you making it to the banner? Oh, no. What is this? Touch the banister. Touch it, I say. Uh, 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 uh. It's so dramatic. The swan. The swan. The swan girl. 
Okay, experts. Oh, didn't Our even finish the bell. Tonight the is bell? a police officer from Philadelphia. Here's Cinnamon Smith. Philadelphia is. Cinnamon, you've been chosen to be a swan. I'm oh, what strap work, <laughs> girl? No. -uh. Oh my God. Woo! A cinnamon swan. This is the chance I wanted to start my oh, life over. Is that the part? That's good. Oh man, I'm so happy. My name is Cinnamon Smith. I live in Philadelphia. Okay. I'm 31, divorced. I have three kids. I'm a police officer. Cinnamon and I are assigned to. Uh... 31, divorced, has three kids, and a police officer. That is a lot for 31. Like, I am over 31, and I am none of the above. I do have a degree, though. Uh, now I just make videos on the internet while <laughs> holding glasses. <laughs> Fantastic. Isn't life just funny? Right. Officer Drew Hell, Cinnamon's partner, girls. Cinnamon and I are assigned to uh, the bike unit. Cinnamon the is a very unit. tough individual. She doesn't give up. She's a fighter. As long as I've known Cinnamon, I've Beat never seen Beat you with her bicycle. Makeup. What you see is what you get. As a child, I was kind of tired. I bet she's not seen you with any makeup on either, sir. That is such a strange thing, isn't it? The expectation of women to like... It doesn't matter what role you are as a woman anywhere in the world. It's that there's this expectation to always be like, well, why aren't you wearing light makeup to be like a bicycling officer? <laughs> Like, why aren't, like, sir, why aren't you in a full red lip and 16 pairs of eyelashes, right? My breast augmentation. What you see is what you get. As a child, I was kind of tomboyish. I never felt real feminine. I guess I have a bad attitude about myself in that area. Why? I got married when I was really young. I just need to say that there's a bad attitude in that area. What do they mean by that? That feels like a real segmented sentence. Like... It's fine to be a tomboy. I just want to think about that sentence again. What was it? Hang on, I need to rehear that. What was it? I was kind of tomboyish. As a child, I was kind of tomboyish. I never felt real feminine. I guess I have a bad attitude about myself in that area. I'm, I'm still not sure I quite understand what that means. Does that mean that potentially she had a bad attitude towards being feminine as a person? Is that what she means? Maybe that is what she means. Which, you know, you don't have to be hyper-feminine either in this world. Like, you don't... Like, beauty is not the rent you pay to exist in this world as a woman. It absolutely is not. Like, you are under no obligation, my loves. No obligation. If you want to be a tomboy and you want to be, like, roughing it up the trees and what other tomboys do, you do that, my lovely, and you show them. Because you don't have to wear a lash and you don't have to wear lipstick in order to... Enjoy life. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise either. I got married when I was really young. Even on my wedding night, I just never felt sexy. My marriage started to fail, I guess, when we didn't have that fire in us. Oh. We lived in oh, separate she rooms is. and different lives. I felt rejected by my husband. Oh. We divorced after 10 years. 10 years? I felt sometimes like a failure. Like, who would want me? Oh. That's relatable, isn't it? Uh, I'm just out of a pretty much a 10 year relationship myself. And sometimes there are those thoughts of like, oh, nobody else wants me. I'll never meet my Ryan Fox heart, if you know who that is. <laughs> never ever. No, oh, woe is me. And I feel like this quite a lot at the moment. Highly relatable content. Didn't realize we'd be getting personal and emotional here on the Chanel today, my lovelies. Little bit spooked about that, shall we say. Also, it's just been Valentine's Day. So it's always rough around Valentine's Day, isn't it? But I mean, that is a hateful tunic. I really saw my body change with my children. Okay, you guys want some macaroni and cheese? Yeah. I started to eat what they were eating. I'm the heaviest I've ever been in my life. I just wear this grandma nightgown all day. Wait. Wait, hang on. Oh, nutrition was such a like, nobody knew anything about it in 2004, did they? Right, okay. Let's say that again. So she said, I'm feeding things for my children and I started eating what they're eating and I was putting on weight. Surely we shouldn't be feeding children lots of food that makes them gain lots of weight? Okay, do you guys want some macaroni and cheese? Yeah. I started to eat what they were eating. I'm the heaviest I've ever been in my life. What does that mean? And I just... I've started to eat what they were eating. I'm really, like, focusing on language today, my lovelies. Language. So, is there, there's, there's a big question mark to me in this. So, I started to eat what they were eating and now I'm the heaviest I am in my entire life. What, like, is that sentence... Should that sentence make you kind of go a bit like... Oh, maybe different nutritional approaches are needed. Mm. Nightgown girls. When I look oh, in the look mirror, at that vanity. I always go right to the bad. My nose, oh. my mustache, I get chin hairs. My thighs are the biggest they've ever been. I mean, I could pick apart so many features of my body that I don't like. When I come back, 
These shorts better not fit me. You After I finish the swan program, I'd like to feel more confident about myself. My ex-husband. I think this is the whole thing that I have to remember when we watch all these things. That they're like, everyone approaches this show and wants to feel happier in themselves. Wants to feel a lot more like accomplished in life. Wants to feel a lot more confident. That is not a bad idea at all. I've never once thought it was wrong for a woman to go on this show. I think that this show in itself, at its core, is predatory. Because it doesn't provide that. It doesn't provide you confidence boosts. It provides you like... Tearing down to build them up doesn't usually work. In fact, you're just causing long-term mental health issues in people for a lot of it. So it's like, I know a few of the contestants have reached out and said, it's changed my life for the better. And honestly, that is excellent. But I feel like it hasn't for everyone. And we do have to understand what that means. My ex-husband is coming to pick up the kids. It's finally hitting me that I'm not going to see them for three months. And it's just... That is wild. It's like, wow. Yeah. I'm going to miss you guys. Okay? Fully understand. I didn't think it would be this hard. I didn't. Bye, Ronnie. Bye, Sage. Ronnie and Sage. I really need to do this for myself, so I feel more like a sexy, vibrant woman. A sexy, vibrant woman put on an electric pink wig. What are you going to do to make her go from tough cop to sexy, vibrant woman? Well, I think Cinnamon's a really good candidate for the swan. She's got some body issues, I can see. So we're going to do a breast augmentation, a tummy tuck, and some liposuction. What do you think of her nose, Terry? You know, it's a really difficult nose, so we need he to set it back. We need to refine the tip, and really make it balance with the rest of her face. We need to open up her eyes, do a brow lift. She really of has the Of course we have to do a full brow lift. Of course we do, girls. Like, do we, does she need a brow lift? I do sometimes feel like sometimes all these contestants need is like brow refinement. Just like visit a brow specialist and have like your brows nicely shaped. I feel like that's all they need. But then again, of course, I am looking at it now in 2022 vision. Oh, 2022 eyes. Whereas back in 2004, did, we didn't really, was eyebrow threading a thing back in 2004? I mean, I don't think in the UK it was, but obviously in 2004, I wasn't really like conscious of these sorts of like beauty beauty treatments. I imagine that threading's been around for like thousands and thousands of years. So potentially in other places in the world, it's been, it's been like really common use. But in the UK, I don't think it was. And by extension then, possibly not also America? Hmm. Eyes do a brow lift. She really has the potential to do extraordinarily well. Okay. Dr. Worth, what's Cinnamon's dental plan? When she smiles, you see- I'm going to eat your gun to you. So what I'd like to do is do some veneers on her front teeth and get rid of those big, puffy, infected gums and give her a soft, feminine, beautiful smile. Oh, she did have Debbie, some gum issues. She's there, used she? to working out so tough. I mean, she comes across so masculine. And I really want to streamline her and get her a lean, feminine body. So she is the swan I want to mean? see in lingerie at the pageant. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. let's review her plan. Lesbianic galan. Begin with a nose job and brow okay. lift to soften okay. her facial features. Okay. For her physical transformation, she'll have breast augmentation, tummy breast. tuck, and liposuction. So she's got a tattoo there. I wonder how this is going to affect the tummy tuck situation. I know that they can do like beneath the, the panty line. I wonder how far down her tattoo goes in terms of like, will that cause a like a disruption to the tattoo? I've never thought about the idea of like, obviously if you have tattoos and you have to have surgery, those tattoos are going to get like, I was going to say jiggled. Oh, you know, they're going to get like moved about a bit. Jiggled. Breast augmentation, tummy tuck and liposuction in four different areas. All right. Four. OK, At that's the dentist, not the most extreme we've ever seen. Bleaching, extensive tooth reconstruction, Da Vinci veneers to and tooth reconstruction. Tooth reconstruction? What's tooth reconstruction? Oh, I don't know. Is that fillings? It's tooth reconstruction fillings. Is that the fancy word for fillings? Da Vinci veneers and a dabbing deep cleaning. cleaning. Date for her girls. fitness program, Cinnamon okay. will spend two hours a day at the gym focusing oh. on weight training to define her body and cardio to help her lose weight. A 1,200 calorie a day diet will help boost her metabolism. Cinnamon will also Lies. receive coaching and weekly therapy to help her work through the... She has a really, like, ethereal look about her. Honestly, I feel like with a little bit of, like, feminine soft makeup, she could look so otherworldly. Oh, I've just beaten you. So otherworldly and like vaguely threatening in a way that like I model my style after. Like, look at these cheekbones. They are sharp cheekbones. Even her ear shape is quite nice. Honestly, a bit of highlight contour and like an upswing eye. Boom! She's going to be an elven woman on the go. And weekly therapy to help her work through the pain of her failed marriage and build up self-esteem. OK, experts, let's meet our next competitor. She suffered a lot of loss in her life and she is ready oh to feel and look alive again. Here is Patty Shadowan. My name is Patty Shadowan. I'm 42. Oh. 
I'm from New Caney, Texas, and I'm a computer technician. Oh! I met my husband, Lyndon. We were both Houston police officers. And oh, is this a police so officer cute. He was like the hero. When he was 36, he oh. was diagnosed with a brain tumor. I was devastated. We had uh, small children. In the next three years after that, he stayed in the hospital most of the time. We spent a lot of time together, and in 1999, he didn't make it. Oh, I should have been awful. vibrant and young and beautiful and uh, enjoying my kids. I didn't get to do that. 32 is no age, is it? I didn't get to do that with my kids. That is so heavy to put you on a show where they're just going to be like, a brow lift and a tip refinement. Like, that's so... That is, there's so much going on there that needs to be like helped with in terms of like under, oh, I don't even know where to even begin. Like when I've lost people close to me, it's like you, you can't remember them constantly because it's so upsetting and so overwhelming sometimes. The pain and the grief goes so deep that it's, it almost feels like you're going to be swallowed whole for it forever. She needs to see a special counsellor and seeing Nelly Galang once a week to be told you need to put a chin strap on for the pageant is not going to do it, is it? I feel like I lost 10 years of my life. I haven't had a pretty smile in a long time. I wear a lot of padded bras, so of course I would love to have an enhancement. I really want my eyes fixed. When I talk to people, my eyes do this all the time. I feel like I've actually gotten lines of stress and frustration. You're only young once. You just once. big eyes, my love. And to get that back, uh, I, I need to be beautiful again. I feel like I lost the time that Jeez. was the most precious. She was down and out, I guess you'd say, when I met her. This man's voice. Meeting Stan was one of the best times of my life. Wow. This girl needs a little charisma in her life, something like that flame again. He just brought life back to me and my kids. He Is that his actual voice? That is so intense. That deep rumble is very like, she pierces when she fights. <laughs> She pisses when she farts. Sometimes she shorts. Booty rocking cow girl coming to my barn. <laughs> Sometimes she shorts. Sorry, everybody. This is a serious episode. No laughing. No. Come on now. Get your things together and leave. No. <laughs> he just brought life back to me and my kids. He introduced them to the outdoors. <laughs> if I feel better about myself, then I feel like my family will feel better about me. And I want my kids to see me feel that way. I need to feel beautiful again. Yeah, that's Have not a, a really horrible great time. And come back a beautiful spot. Oh, he does seem lovely. That's what I want to do. That's good. Oh. Okay. Well, was he possibly the first least hateful man we've ever come across in this show? Like, he seemed very supportive. He wasn't like, yes, boobs, yes, you're on the swamp. He seemed relatively like calm and collected and just like happy for her which is so rare in these shows well right, dr debro patty is 42 but she feels a lot older than that what's your plan with overlaid her? she's the oldest competitor so we're gonna do a facelift we're gonna do a breast augmentation liposuction of her abdomen and her body and we're gonna do a rhinoplasty she has that eyelid retraction issue it's hard to bring the eyelids down in a good position so we're actually gonna get a specialist involved in that particular problem really? so okay. i hope it looks great she really deserves it. Oh my Dr. Yanni, how do you help her get over the loss of her husband? Cancer shook her world and she- Get over it. Get over it. This language is not acceptable. Cancer shook her world and she lost her family, she lost her youth, and she lost her husband all in that span of time. So in order for her to start to move forward and embrace the present, she's got to really release some of the pain from that past. Well, she deserves it, of course. Uh, I love her. I mean, Let's review right. her plan. Okay. Oh. Patty oh. Swan transformation okay. begins with her face. She right, will have eight. a facelift to give her a more youthful look, as well as eyelid refinement, a lower I mean, eyelid, and laser guy surgery. For her body, Patty will have breast augmentation and liposuction in five different areas. Five. For her dental transformation, Patty will receive zoom bleaching, gum sculpting, Da Vinci veneers, I want your and gum tissue. Cleaning. Oh, there we go. Look, veneers, Patty more veneers. Two hours a day at the gym, focusing on high repetition weight training to build muscle and tone her arms and legs. Mm. To help Patty come to terms with the death of her first husband. Stop rotating her whilst you're talking about that. She's not on a 1200 calorie a day diet. That's interesting. She is she the first person that we've seen this series that has it? Gosh, it's been so long since I started this series. I can't even remember what the first couple of episodes were. Okay, interesting. And we'll put a peg in that. Da? And regain her youthful spirit. She will undergo weekly therapy and coaching. 
Okay, not good expert enough. sounds not like a lot of work. So let's get started. Okay, great. Right, here we go. Oh. Los it's Angeles. Day one of the day three month ice. long swan program. Patty hopes Best to overcome thing. the tragic death of her first husband and turn back the clock on her aging body. I hate the language. Like, don't You're say all this. Once. Her aging and body. I feel like I lost 10 years of my life. Cinnamon is eager to shed her tough cop image and become a sexy woman. I really need to do this for myself, so I feel more like a sexy, vibrant woman. Did they really have to chroma key out that macaroni cheese, did they? Was this necessary? Yeah, yeah, make it look really bright yellow, yeah. Woman. Both she's masculine, she eats macaroni cheese. Formations, and they won't see themselves until they're oh, the mirror is, is... <laughs> Oh my God, really no mirror. No While mirror. Cinnamon is eager to start her new life. Are some weird men gonna come and inspect your belongings? <laughs> She struggles to let go of the life she left behind. Myself she hasn't left it behind. Very much in no time frame of being apart will ever change that. Nothing Aww. will be easy. Early on, both our swans learn the rules of the program. I will go to therapy once a week. I will stick to a strict diet. Security check. Oh, here they are. And Cinnamon finds herself on the other side of the law. Oops, not the sugar. <laughs> <laughs> oh. My goodness, I don't know what just happened there. What was all that about? What was all these sh bags of sugar? What's this? Oh, Oops, not the sugar. <laughs> Honey? Oh, no. Bags of sugar. Busted. But can they stick what? to the program? Yes, I will. It all begins now. Well, she just investigated for contraband as a policewoman. Oh, the contraband being sugar and honey girls. It's a weird segment, isn't it? A weird, like, just a random man pilfer through your belongings. Oh, <laughs> there are bits of sugar. <laughs> What's in this slot over there? Let me see inside this slit. Oh. Disgusting. Stop doing all that. Patty's transformation starts right. with a trip to her plastic surgeon. Oh. Patty's the oldest swan and wants to look more youthful. So my oldest challenge is to swan. see how I can make her look 15 years younger. 15 years old. Right, so the two goals are to soften your face and maybe turn back the clock a little bit. So I'm really fascinated about this because have we, I think the last time we saw a facelift was with Laurie, I believe. But this is almost like a different situation. This is a facelift instead of like um, excess skin. This is a facelift for age. So who's this little blonde lady here now? I wonder how this is going to turn out. <laughs> uh, what's happening? I can't wait to see how this turns out. <laughs> we should probably go ahead and consider doing an actual facelift on you. I really need it. You don't want to think about it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Patty well, talks about her eyes get bugging out. I'm actually going to call in an ocular specialist to do a special kind of procedure that will lower the eyelid position. <gasps> Let's talk about your nose. I have a cyst. It's getting larger. Okay. We'll certainly take this cyst out and then refine the tip a little bit. So let's oh talk about God. your body, okay? All right. I think for your body type, a mid to full C would probably be the best thing that would go for you. Thank right? you so That's much. That's what I want, a mid to full C. The oldest, C. but the prettiest and sexiest. Patty's off to a That's great sweet. start, but Cinnamon begins the program with a dreaded visit to the dentist. I believe I have more fear of the dentist than the plastic surgeon because of the experiences I had before. I got caps um, when I was like 21, mm -hmm. okay. and they look like fake teeth. Down here, we need to clean up this infection. Oh. You have some decay here. Cinnamon hasn't been to the dentist in 10 years, so it'll be interesting to see what's underneath her crown. Oh, dear. Open really oh big dear. Open really big Open really high up underneath here. But when I take these crowns off, you're going to hear breaking noises. I can really say they're horrible, but these are horrible. Oh, no. When I got Cinnamon's crowns off, I was shocked to find her teeth and gums in such poor condition. This is what's underneath your crown. So what I have to do is get rid of this infection right here. Oh my here. God, I look like a monster. Oh, oh God. I, I want really you to see nice where teeth. we're coming from. <laughs> but you know what? They're gonna be they're gonna be so incredible. You're not even gonna remember any of this, okay? This is horrible. Okay. Watch. This poor woman. Cinnamon's teeth are damaged from years of neglect. It wasn't easy, but we prepared her teeth and put on temporary veneers. Cinnamon's barely made it through her first dental procedure, but there's still six more to go before her smile is pageant ready. Six dental procedures. Okay, so I always feel like dentistry is one of those things where I don't necessarily feel like it's purely cosmetic. I mean, unless you want to get like veneers and things like that. I say this all the time. I've said this in so many of these episodes. I feel like dentistry should be an absolute right. It shouldn't be one of these like extra things that were just like, oh, if you don't look like blah, 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 blah. Like it feels like you, that you can die if you don't have working, functional, healthy teeth. Do you know what I mean? So the idea that it's just glossed over is this idea of like, oh, well, you choose about your teeth. Like you just choose. Like, no, we need to have like, 
genuine actual care for teeth. Finding a dentist in the UK at the moment is so stressfully difficult because our NHS has been defunded over so many years that the only real option you have now is to go private. And the idea that that's the only option that a lot of us have means that people are going to be neglecting their teeth, not through choice, but because of through circumstance. It, oh, it, it drives me loopy, girls. Absolutely drives me loopy. Dentistry is one of those things where it should be a fundamental right of paying taxes and being part of society. Part of those taxes should go towards being able to keep your teeth. Like, that's- Surely I'm not insane saying that, girls! Paddy's struggling too. It's only week one and the separation from her family is already taking a toll. What are you doing? I am missing you, girl. Oh. No. <laughs> you gonna be okay? I'm just really depressed and <laughs> I'm really lonely. Oh, it's you a lot, isn't it? Okay? I love you more than life itself. I love you too, buddy. Bye. Love you. That was lovely. Also heart wrenching, but a lovely it's phone call. I miss my family. It's been a hard day for Patty, but her greatest challenges still lie ahead. Oh God, the light. Turn the light off in the horror film. Boom. Hello. The next morning, Cinnamon's eager to find out her surgical plan. Right. Cinnamon's Cinnamon. a police officer, so she wants and needs a lot of feminization. Her I'm muscles are in ready. shape, but she's got a lot of body fat. And right now, I think she feels very masculine. Like what do we She's a police officer, so she's she's, she's got a manly body. <sighs> Oh, all right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, I'll hold my tongue. Hold my tongue. Liposuction will really improve your abdominal contour. So we can go ahead and do liposuction here, inner thighs, and maybe some knee liposuction. Okay. This knee is a little bit loose. So no. tummy tuck would remove all this skin and you'd lose this. That's okay. Because I want to um, get a new swan tattoo back here. So <laughs> I want to have nice size breasts. Wait, Black hang on. Breasts. So that was, that was said so far. So is, is her entire tattoo going to be removed then, I guess? Interesting. Okay. And she wants voluminous bosoms. Mummy's got breasts. Like, like C or D's. Large C's. Large C, small, small D. Yes. Okay. Isn't that a bit big for a police officer? Hey, they'll have to order me a new bulletproof vest. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about your face, okay? Yeah. The nose is projecting too far this way. So we're going to set it back. And actually, the tip has a couple of little ball-like structures on it. Maybe we'll narrow that slightly. Whatever it takes, I'm willing to do. I've seen other officers that are more feminine than me, and I wish I could be more like them. So now my dreams are going to come true. That's a weird... That's a weird sentence there. Like, she wouldn't just say that... Um, well, maybe she would say that unprompted. I don't really know Cinnamon that well, obviously. I've only just seen her for, like, a minute. I wonder if that was production being, like, how do you feel you compare to other female officers or how or feminine officers or, like, how do you compare to other women in your industry or anything like that? I wonder if there was some sort of strange line of questioning that was along that way and then she felt the need to be like, I've seen other police officers that are more feminine than me and I want to be like them. My dreams come true. Hmm. It's been a challenging week for our two competitors, oh. but the most difficult stage of the program is about to begin. Right. After a restless night, Patty Hell. arrives ready for surgery. Patty basically has two issues we want to solve today. We want to make her body sexier and set back the clock with a mini facelift and a nose job. Okay, so Patty, are we ready? I'm ready. Oh. Another big breath in and out. Let's start with that breast augmentation. We're okay. giving her a full C, and it'll go a long way towards giving her that younger body. And now, onto the face. Oh, boy. This is not a simple nose. Well, there's a slow-growing mass here in her nose, so we have to remove it and figure out what it is. So we remove the uh, little specimen, and we'll <gasps> send it off for analysis. Okay, change of plans. I'm calling off the rest of Patty's surgery for now because the cyst turned out to be deeper than I thought. So until I know more, I'm going to postpone her facelift. I don't want to alarm Patty till I know more. Patty? Oh, no. It's Dr. Dubrow. Your surgery's over. Patty's but... transformation has been put on hold. All she can do now is wait for the results. Poor Patty! Oh my goodness. Okay, that's a bit much. I feel like that's way too much to be putting in this show. First of all, okay, I've been for surgeries. I'm going in for a surgery soon. And any amount of, like, body surgery, you need to have a blood test beforehand. The wonderful thing about a full blood test is that usually you'll be able to find out anything mysterious that's going on with your body if there is anything mysterious going on with your body. For example, any underlying conditions or anything that you haven't noticed about your body or any sort of anything, any little hints about something. I am sure 
that they should have done a blood test to find out if there was anything going on underlying there. The idea that they just fully went into surgery with no, like, pre-op anything. Like, if you've got a slow-growing cyst anywhere, surely before they go, oh, breast augmentation, they should do investigations and biopsies first. No? First port of call. Am I wrong to say that? I'm not a doctor, I am also not a medical specialist, but I have done biochemistry in university in which we could diagnose blood issues. Things always show up in your blood. But I must actually say there, it wasn't diagnosis on real patients, it was just model patients. Cinnamon right. surgical plan is set. Now it's okay. her turn in the OR. Cinnamon's a cop, so she's really a woman in a man's world, but that's all gonna change today, and my goal is to feminize her body. So we're gonna do skin only tummy tuck, mm -hmm. liposuction, then we're gonna go ahead and do your A breath. woman in a okay, man's right. world. I mean, aren't yeah. we all? <laughs> okay, let's start the liposuction. Oh, here we go, shaving the turkey. She's really going to help get cinnamon, the feminine shape she wants. Shave the turkey, girls. I don't understand! Oh, what is it about liposuction? It makes my whole body go like <clears throat> Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do breast augmentation. Okay. Breast augmentation went very nicely. Let's tackle that nose. We've got to set this nose back. I just can't believe they do this much work all in one go. Like, it just seems too much. Too much, girls! Could you imagine going to a surgeon in this day and age and, and wanting to pay for all this to happen in one go? They'd be like, this is not happening in one go. What are you talking about? We've got to set this nose back and refine the tip. Not easy. Ooh. All right, let's close this and we'll be done. Oh, okay. Hi, right. this is Dr. Dubrow from The Swan. I'm your mommy's doctor. Oh. Hey, your mommy's doing really great. Go ahead, say something to her. Oh, uh, I love you, Mama. I love you, too. Okay, bye, Mama. Cinnamon's boosted by the sound of her daughter's voice, but oh, she that's... still faces a difficult recovery. Oh, yeah, and you've done it to her. It's been okay, a long wait right. for Patty, but the test results are finally in. Oh. Hi, Patty, how are you? Hi. This is so, awful. There's something I have to tell you about. All right. We have the test results from the lesion we took off your nose. What's with the music? And unfortunately, it's cancer. Oh no. Oh, did you need that no. dubstep drop then, did you? Oh, this is awful. Telling someone on television, awful, so awful. So did you get it all out? Well, no. <gasps> so, we have to go back in and take some more out. Huh. The fact that her husband died of a brain tumor from cancer, and now she has cancer, is really scary. <laughs> and she's away from her. She's away from her family. Can't contact them. She's no nowhere near her children. Nowhere near her husband. Nowhere near her support network. She's just here on a TV show, and you've just told her in front of an audience, basically, for ratings or for a pissing pageant. This is... How you doing? How do you I think? I this to my family again. I've already been through enough. Oh, I'm counting on you. Oh, yeah. You can. My family's counting on you. Okay. They need me. I know. Oh, my goodness. It's never easy to deliver this kind of news, but I'll do everything in my power to help her. Oh. oh, really? I bet that was an... I well, bet we... they used that as, like, an advert trailer for this episode. I bet ev up until the week that this episode was airing, I bet they were like, oh, we'll use that, yeah, we must put the swan on there so that everyone knows that this touching moment between Dr. Dubrow and patient is on the swan. Now Patty has decided to break the news to her husband oh, no. and places a difficult call home. I got some bad news. What? No. The, the thing on my nose... Yeah? It's cancerous. Oh, honey. So it's not good. Don't tell the kids. I don't want my kids to know because it would just devastate them. It's like uh, reliving the past and it's just been very upsetting all day today. But this is the best place for me to be right now. 
The future no, is it's uncertain not. for Patty, and she must face it on her own. I do actually want to say here, don't always go to cosmetic surgeons for things of this sort of medical nature. For example, I know one of the ex-YouTube influencers, Mikey of Glam and Gore, uh, had a botched nose procedure because her cosmetic surgeon tried to do a medical procedure on her as well as, you know, a cosmetics procedure. So keep that in mind and be careful, my loves. Oh, goodness me. That was quite heavy, wasn't it? Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Unaware of her competitor's challenges, Cinnamon arrives for a post-operative checkup. Okay, Hi, come Cinnamon. on, Cinnamon. Hi. How are oh. you? I'm tired. So your face is pretty swollen. We did a lot of work on your nose. I think it went very well. It wasn't easy. That's a lot of bandages. Do I look like the beautiful swan yet? You're halfway there. It's all fun and games till somebody gets a nose job. Cinnamon's a strong woman. She's got woman. a nice sense she's of humor. She's a fighter. And if she can keep this positive attitude, it's going to make her recovery a lot easier. You're tough. That's true. I love it. Yeah? Well, yeah. Is it? Wait till you see me in the gym. Cinnamon's physical recovery is progressing smoothly, but Patty is emotionally devastated and struggles to accept her diagnosis. <sighs> Jeez. When you're dealing with cancer, no one really knows. Doctors can be optimistic all they want to, but you never know. The word cancer is extremely scary for Patty. Her former husband died as a result of it, and now Patty finds herself facing the this very same This is not issue. allowed. We Did should not be doing any of this. I had like a cyst. It's been there for about two years. Should have taken care of it in the beginning. I do blame myself. I really do. Whenever you find yourself yelling at yourself in your head or scolding yourself. Shift it around and say, you know what? I did the best I could and that's all I can expect of myself. Just learn, but don't regret. This is a very difficult time for Patty and she really needs all the support she can get. I can't cure her cancer, but what I can do is help her let go of all the guilt and fear she's been feeling around it. I don't like the idea that we're putting cancer adjustment therapy on TV for a contestant that kind of hasn't agreed to any of this. Do you know what I mean? Like, I could she possibly have had informed consent about, like, finding out about an underlying condition like this serious on TV? And now they're just like, oh, yes, well, we're not going to show anybody else's therapy, not for the last few episodes, but because yours is for this. We really want to get those ratings in, girl. Come in, talk about all the problems. That does not sit well with me at all these tv shows this i always forget just how intense the swan is patty's taken the first step toward healing emotionally <sighs> meanwhile cinnamon's struggling she's been missing her family since the day she arrived i have a lot of different feelings i'm happy to be here but i'm i also miss my children i'm so happy to talk to you oh i love you i love you baby I'm sorry. I just I hate to be away from you for a long time. Emotional and I miss the kids. I just miss them so much. Oh, you're so swollen, poor thing. I had to put their pictures away because it hurt me to look at their faces. I felt so guilty. Oh, Cinnamon's did we need to film you doing all that? Oh, resolve. awful Can TV she stay production. committed and complete her transformation? Meanwhile, it's the moment of truth for oh Patty. Okay. She now faces her toughest day in the program. It's nail biting time for Patty. She has basal cell skin cancer. Yes, so I refer her to a specialist, Dr. Hung, who will attempt to remove all the cancer. The way the process works is you keep removing cells until all the cancer is gone, even if it requires removing most of the nose. <gasps> There's a little fair amount of carcinoma here, so we're going to have to take some more out. Out. <laughs> well, Patty, we, got, we have our results back. Okay. So, with good news, everything is out. <gasps> Yay! And after the so second time? Yes. <gasps> wow! So, cool! So that's, that's great. That's awesome. Oh, my goodness. The Swan what program. What a pissing roller coaster! Health. I mean, I'm cancer free. That's remarkable. That That's a godsend. You should not have to go on a reality TV to get basic medical care. I was ecstatic to hear that Patty was cancer free and I can't wait to get on with the rest of her surgery. Wait, two weeks later, she's back in surgery again. Which she's really looking forward to. And we're gonna lower her upper eyelids to get rid of that bulgy, popped out look. Very difficult and finicky job. This is the man to do it. Who's, who's this man? Why have we not spoken we're to you? We're hoping to lower eyelids approximately two millimeters to make them look less buggy. 
two millimeters. So it finished. Eyelid. Everything Lowering. went great. Yeah. Congratulations. Well done. Two millimeters. Patty's been through so much. I'm really proud of her for making it this far. It's been oh. a long journey for Patty. Now her recovery can finally begin. Oh. Meanwhile, Cinnamon Gosh. is still feeling lonely, but a surprise package from home might just provide the encouragement she needs. Serious music. Oh, mail for me. I think this is a, VA, a video. There's no oh, look, card. a VHS. Hey, to Cinnamon, how you doing? Hope all is well. Oh my God. Her police issue boots just weren't going to cut it during your reveal, and it. Is this green screened onto this off TV? Because they did say something like they sprayed the TVs with deodorant so that they couldn't see their reflection. Do you remember that? Another interesting development in the storyline, I think. The police issue boots just weren't going to cut it during your reveal. And in fact, you never had high heels. So guess what? There's a little something to help you during your reveal. Oh, oh that's so nice. Oh, my God. Oh, at least God. she's seeing it like this. I feel a bit weird. Wow. Fancy. I would feel so weird if someone at my, like, workplace just sent me a pair of heels to be like, we always see you in boots, and we know how much you hate everything else. So here's a pair of these hateful shoes. I'd be like, don't. But okay, maybe she does feel like that's nice. For me, if someone did that to me, I'd be like, no. Fancy, fancy. Oh, there's no way I can walk in these. Yeah, I might hurt myself. Big... Harry cops got me high heels. <laughs> I thought she was going to say something my else. Partner has lifted cinnamon. Oh, actually, <laughs> I spoke too soon. That's not the most hateful shoe I've ever seen. Is that a black sparkly bow on like an open toe stiletto? Maybe three and a half to four inches high. That's not hideous. Absolutely, I take it back. Did cinnamon spirits? Yeah. I determined that these heels are not my hideous. last obstacle to make it to the pageant. That, why did, oh, there's only one month. That was a bit America's Next Top Model. Oh! We're already Welcome here! Welcome to the swamp. Jeff now, it's Star. been a month since we've seen Cinnamon Ooh, and Patty. The banister, finally. And three months since they've seen themselves in a mirror. The long wait is nearly over because... Does, just the, does the decoration budget just keep getting higher and higher and higher per episode? I swear, like... I, every time I see this scene, I, I pick out something new. I had no idea these banister... What are they even called? Banister support rails? Are shaped like... What? There's a candle. It's a candle, girls. There's a... I don't even know. Abstract Picasso. I like it. Just a moment. We'll finally see the Ooh. results of their transformations. But before the big reveal, let's catch up with a team of experts dedicated to helping these women. Ooh. Experts, <laughs> Cinnamon came to us as a tough cop trying to track down her feminine side. Dr. Dubrow, what was your goal? She came to us as a tough cop trying to track down her feminine side. Oh, they love a pun, don't they? Why don't you say, oh, she grew wings and laid an egg because she became a real swan on the nest. The nest, girls! Dr. Dubrow, what was your goal with her? There were two goals with Cinnamon. Cinnamon became a tough, masculine police officer with a long, over-projecting nose. So the goal was to set back her nose and turn her... This is so strange because wasn't there, isn't a Patty also, like, an ex-police officer? So why are they sort of inferring that, like, if a woman becomes a police officer, they're automatically masculine? This is such weird language. Through a tough, super sexy cop. And what okay. challenges did you encounter with her mouth, Dr. Worth? Cinnamon was a very challenging patient. She not only had severe decay and infection in her mouth, but she was very afraid of the dentist. She actually had a panic attack in my office. Dr. Sherry Worth, or should I say Sherry Worth, doesn't blink. She she doesn't blink. Whenever she speaks, she never blinks. If you, you watch this, you watch her now. She's just like, I'm gonna eat your gum tissue. Oh my god, I look like a monster. She worked hard to get through that, and now she has a natural Oh, one smile. blink. Well, we'll see the new Cinnamon in just a moment. Well, right, team, here, we go. here she is, the very arresting What's Cinnamon that? Smith. Arresting. Immediately in prison, Amanda. Oh! Oh! Oh, I'm confused. She was blonde, but then she wasn't. She's kind of blonde. Highlight, blonde, bronze. Wow. Oh, they did you... They did you dirty with that eyelash placement. They couldn't have just like, oh, a little bit. What's with the really heavy side fringe? Why is that so heavy? That fringe is far too heavy. Why is it curled in underneath, underneath the, the cheekbone? What is this? Lovely lingerie, though. That is quite a wow. exotic dress, isn't it? Thank you. Oh, my lord. Thank you, Amanda. Oh, how you doing? <laughs> Come with me. Oh, oh look at that cinnamon. slit. Oh. You look 
hot. Probably shouldn't say feeling? that. I feel so feminine. <gasps> oh, <my God. laughs> oh, the wait's nearly over, but what was the hardest part of the last three months? Although I don't like this fr- what is this fringe? This section of hair that's like this big. But aside from that, I don't actually think like the hair extensions are really bad here because if you do highlights with hair extensions, it is infinitely harder than just doing like a single color extension process. I don't think they look that bad here. Yeah, you can see a few of the layers, but it's not like, I'm not like, oh, it's awful girls. Maybe they've changed the hairdresser. Being away from my children, that's the hardest part. It's been a journey but it's worth every minute of it. Cinderella only had a fairy godmother. <laughs> I was blessed with a fairy god team. I feel so loved and so She's encouraged away with words. to be a woman, that it's okay to be strong and smart and soft and beautiful. Yes. It's okay, I'm gonna yes. combine the two. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yes, yes, I agree. Didn't need to do it on the swan though. I really though. want you to see yourself, Cinnamon, because you look incredible. Okay, Cinnamon, behind Where'd that go? curtain there is a mirror. I'm going to ask you to step up to the Here curtain we go, and then we'll let you see yourself for the first time in three months. How are you feeling? I'm ready. Here you go then. <laughs> Good luck. Oh, Illuminati girls! All right, come on. Oh. The curtains to the gates okay, of hell! Simon, this is it. You ready? Come on, Cinnamon. Don't wake you can... me if this is a dream, Amanda. Do this. I'm ready. Oh my God! That's an ugly mirror. Oh, wow. Well, Officer Smith, who is going to be the sexy oh cop on the God. block now, huh? I never dreamed it would be like this. Congratulations, oh, Cinnamon. Wow. She looks incredible. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Thank you. Oh, oh my God. Thank you. Oh. Thank the results of Cinnamon are nothing short of fantastic. Her body, her face, it's all come together to make one incredibly beautiful woman. I don't even look like the same person. Cinnamon came she here as a tough true. cop, and now she's leaving as this glamorous feminine woman. See? No blinking. Wow. Okay. Wow. Okay. Wow. Oh, that's a new fountain we haven't seen before. Well, my loves, I just want to quickly interject there and just say that reveal was so positive. Again, it feels like the last few reveals, I think, have been very, very positive outcomes. Like, because of that overwhelming, like, emotion, like, I am so happy and screaming and crying, feels so much more overwhelmingly positive than, for example, a couple of the other reveals that we have seen, both in season one and season two. That was amazing to watch and i bet back in 2004 when people saw cinnamon's reveal just then i bet they were like yes 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 because uh, that's exactly how i felt right then isn't it weird how reality tv just ignites these really strange emotions like this episode has been such a roller coaster from start to finish right let's see patty Well, we just saw weird. Cinnamon's big oh. reveal. Oh. Will she move on to the swan pageant? The pageant! Time to meet her competition, Patty Shadowan. Experts. Patty, Patty lost her first husband to a brain tumour, and then when she was on the swan programme, she found out that she herself had cancer. Oh. Dr. Dubrow, how do you think she handled Awful the programme? Awful luck. The swan programme in and of itself is really difficult. Given a diagnosis of cancer on top of that makes it nearly impossible. She handled it so beautifully. We brought two other specialists to help us cure her cancer, and she just looks amazing. And what about in therapy, Dr. Yanni? How did she deal with that? Well, naturally, that kind was of... That a, was that a face of emotion there from Amanda? Maybe being like, oh, hang on. Is what I'm doing and saying ethical? Well, naturally, that kind of news is terrifying and devastating, and it really became her primary focus of treatment in therapy. Okay, well, in you the said moment, absolutely we nothing. Has come through quite a lot. Ladies right, and gentlemen, oh, come it's on. my honor to present the very lovely Patty Shadowan. Come on, Patty girls. You deserve to feel gorgeous and lovely and beautiful. Oh! Interesting 
dress choice, but wow, she looks so oh, glam. Oh, one hot sexy mama, how you doing? Fine. Mm. Come with me. All right. Oh, my lord. Patty, this must be a very powerful moment for you, is it? Yes, it is. It's been a really rough road for me, but I had a lot of friends take my hand along this road, and we tackled a lot of challenges, but we did it together. I have a healthy new life and a magnificent new look. Oh, yes, Ooh. you do. You look absolutely incredible. Well, Patty, I know that you came to the program wanting to oh, look younger. Yes. You do? <laughs> <laughs> do you, you feel it? Oh, tremendously. I'm excited. I, just want to I say can't also, wait to get on with my life. I, whatever the eye procedure was she has done, she had done, has really made a big difference, hasn't it? It looks like her eyes are a lot calmer, if that makes sense. Life, I feel like I've been given a new beginning. Oh. Okay, well, I can't wait for you to see yourself. I'm sure you're very, very anxious. Yes, I am. Okay, well, Patty, I can tell you that the time has finally come. Oh, come because on. Because behind that curtain, there's a mirror. I'm mirror? just going to ask you to step up to the curtain, and when you're ready, we'll let you see yourself for the first time in three months. Okay, you're squeezing hard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Patty, off you go. Good luck. Paint, 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 paint. Illuminati, curtain, budget, Ikea, deliveries. Come on, come on, Patty, go. Come on! Okay, Patty, hideous this is your moment. Are you ready for it? I'm ready. <gasps> oh, the Matrix. Oh. My nose, it looks so good. Look at that smile. <laughs> I can't believe I'm 42. <laughs> well, girl, you're looking a bit more like 22 than 42. Oh, have another look at yourself. What wow. is your hubby gonna think? He's gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. My nose looks great. I was so worried about that. I'm, yeah, That's I'm not amazing. surprised. Wow. Tell me what your kids are going to think because I know you said that you wanted to be able to teach them lessons about life. Do you think you I'm can exhausted. do that? I'm exhausted. Oh, I know I can. They're going to be so happy. They just, you know, they want the best for their mother and, you know, they just want to live again. And we deserve that. We certainly do. The sound bites being played over and over again. Thank you. Oh, oh, guys, come on in. So exciting. Oh. Well, that's the too. Dr. Goodbye. Amazing. Really happy with Patty's results. She came a long way through a lot of obstacles. Yeah, she, she looks really amazing. Did. Thank you. Patty was devastated and terrified when she received her diagnosis of cancer, but she faced it bravely, and I think she grew a great deal because of that. Wow. Da, 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 da. Out via the chimney goes. No, shush. So, I just want to also there, stop there, and let's talk a little bit about Patty's reveal there. Similar level of, like, a positive outcome. And I feel like she looked really genuinely happy with herself. I will say, the one thing I did notice is she kind of left the mirror a little bit quick, if you know what I mean. Like, if I'd just been through this process and that was the first time I'd seen my face, I'd be, like, obsessing over every little piece of detail possible. But she was kind of like, oh, it looks great, it looks great, I really love what I'm doing. And then she went to leave and Amanda sort of, like chaperoned her back to the mirror. Do you know what I mean? I wonder if there's anything in that. Let me know what you guys think about that sort of reveal there in the comments. But overall, I did get a positive feeling from that. So, all right, should we see who goes to the pageant, girls? Why aren't you making it to the pageant? The Swan girls. Oh, here we are. Welcome swan. back to the Swan. Goose. We've just witnessed two life-changing reveals. Yes. Now we'll find out who our judges in consultation with our experts have chosen to go to the Swan pageant. Will it be cinnamon or will it be patty? And here they are now. Oh. Gentlemen. Gentlemen. Open the gate. Oh. <laughs> oh, look. Glamorous blonde women on the go. The real housewives of bloody blah. Okay, well. That's a loud door slam. Look, as usual, absolutely incredible. Oh, I like that gloss. That's glossy lip. But. Only one of you can move on to the pageant I... with a chance to be crowned the swan. I don't know who it's going to be. No idea. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Along with that title 
comes cash and prizes worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> You've been evaluated on beauty, on poise, and on and overall Twiggy. transformation. I have the name of the woman moving on to the pageant in this envelope. And it says... OK, ladies, this is the moment you've been waiting for. Oh, here we go. Are you ready? Da, da, Good luck da, to you both. Da, da, da. Oh. The woman moving on to the pageant tonight is... is... <gasps> here we go. <there>, da. <laughs> Cinnamon Smith. <gasps> Cinnamon girls. Why am I clapping? It's an awful show. I think Patty didn't make it to the pageant because her focus is truly on her home and she's ready to be embraced by her family. Oh, yeah, at least she gets to see her family. Sure. Oh, my goodness. I think Cinnamon made it to the pageant because she has an incredible outlook on life. She works so hard in every avenue of the SWAN program. Well done, girl. Can you do me a favor and stand over there? Just oh, yeah. Just want to say goodbye to Patty. Oh. That is such a strange Patty, segment this in this been show. an incredible wow. life-changing experience for you, hasn't it? Yes, it has. It's been unbelievable. I, you know, it's a healthier me. I have a new life ahead of me, and I'm excited to get started with it. Well, good for you. Thank you that so much. That lip color works so well and on you. And there's a few people that we have here today. Oh, but, uh, stop it. I'm going to brand sob. new Patty. All right. Okay. <laughs> Come over here with me. Gentlemen. She's just an amazing lady. And I forget just, sounds like that. The show has changed her in so many ways. I can see it in her eyes. Beautiful girl. Graveliest voice I've ever heard. Oh, and the babies. That's pretty cool. I've got well, goosebumps. When I first bumps. walked in, I was like, oh my Swan god, bumps. I thought it was Pamela Anderson. <laughs> Pamela Anderson. I was so oh. happy. I was like, surprised. And her teeth looked so pretty and white. Thanks for coming. You're welcome. I feel like I have a crown of my own. I have a whole new life ahead of me, and Aww. I'll be healthy and now beautiful. I have a wonderful family to spend time with, and that's what I'm going to do. Come here, girl. Oh, 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 I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Oh, and so you should be. You're going to the pageant. <laughs> to the pageant, girls. Congratulations, Thank we're you. so proud of you. Thank you. Next week, the transformations continue as two more women compete for a spot in the most original pageant ever devised. The most Who original? Who will be named the Swan. Original? <laughs> original? Where there's original? Well, um, all right. We've got some things to talk about, girls. Well, my lovelies, okay, I'm gonna push my laptop away, take my, oh, hang it out, and just be like, my goodness, what an absolute roller coaster of emotions this has been. I feel like my eyelashes are gonna come off because everything is covered in moisture, girls. So, first of all, I got to talk about Patty's incredible journey throughout this entire three month process. Imagine going on TV onto a makeover show, finding out you have like a health condition that's potentially, you know, quite serious. And then they're treating it, but also going like, we just don't know, are you gonna make it to the pageant? It's impossible to make it to the pageant. Oh, the SWAN program is very difficult as it is, but impossible when you get a further diagnosis. I don't know how I would feel if I got a diagnosis of something that life changing on TV. I don't know how I would feel after that. I don't know how Patty feels. I don't know how at all. I don't know how I would feel. My goodness. How would you feel if you got that news on TV? It wasn't live TV, but like you're in a, you're in a place like far away from your family with doctors you don't know. Far away. Like, I don't know. It just, that doesn't sit well with me. I don't, I'm just really shocked to think that, was, was, was there no testing? Was there no blood tests or nothing before going into surgery? Or am I missing something here? Let me know what you think in the comments box below, my love. Right, but Cinnamon's story. Cinnamon, this story of like, well, she's a police officer, but obviously that makes her a man, girls. Like, that was a weird, very strange storyline to go with. Because I didn't feel like she was particularly masculine. But then... 
Maybe I have a skewed opinion of what is and isn't masculine. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think about Cinnamon's story as well here. Um, we're gonna see her again in the pageant, I guess, which is only, what, two episodes away now? Why aren't you making it to the pageant? Nelly Galan will not see me at the pageant, girls! And with that, my lovelies, as you may be able to tell from the clue that is the title of this video, Titles are not a clue, Luxaria, get a grip. It's time for The Swan Girls! Another episode of the most bonkers reality TV plastic surgery show that, that has ever existed. That has ever existed, let's be fully honest, my love. The absolute content of this show is off the scale. In the last episode, we followed Cinnamon and Patty to some pretty dramatic reveals. You guys let me know in the comments as well that certain types of cancers aren't as threatening as others, but then some other people chimed in in the comments to notice that saying somebody is free of cancer after the doctor says that it's fully removed does not necessarily mean that you are cancer free in certain places around the world. For example, I think there was a comment from Canada saying that you need to have gone into remission for five years to be called cancer free. So it is kind of strange that here, on the swan, we saw that storyline. It does kind of make me even more question the integrity of the producers of this show and of the ethics of this show, realistically. It's kind of shocking. Kind of shocking, my loves. And to segue from that into something a little bit more lighthearted, you guys have noticed this as well, that Amanda has not caressed the banister in the intro of the last three episodes. I think we can all agree on there might have been a breakup between Amanda and her banister. Can you imagine I've just said that sentence? Amanda and the Bannister. It does definitely sound like a children's novel gone very awry somewhere, doesn't it? I don't know how I'm gonna tell my family and my friend. Hickory dickory dock, Amanda's <laughs> the Bannister! <laughs> Also in the last episode, we didn't hear a peep out of Dr. Hayworth. It's like he had vanished miraculously. No, I can't say that. <laughs> it's like he had vanished last episode and didn't do any work on either of the contestants. Now, and we can only really speculate as to why that might be. But my loves, today, are you ready for another episode of That's The One, Girls? Honestly, I don't know if I am. I hope that this episode is not as much of a roller coaster as the last episode because these are pretty exhausting to film, as you can probably guess. As you guys probably understand that they are pretty exhausting to watch as well. <laughs> well, my loves, are you ready? Get your beverage at the ready. Pop your ohringer directly into its little ohringer hole. Ohringusi. Oh, I can't say that. Oh, disgusting. And let's watch The Swan Girls, season two, episode six. Tonight on The Swan. Good evening, I'm Amanda Byram and welcome to The Swan. Amanda. The only show where ordinary... Is it pink or is it beige? Morris or Givon? Wow, okay. This is a little bit, uh, is it Mother of the Bride? Is that the kind of style this is? Well, maybe it's not quite Mother of the Bride. Maybe I don't really understand what Mother of the Bride is. What is that? Transvestite of the Bride? I swear, every time we see this room, this foyer, it gets busier and busier. How many things do we need in this foyer? Well... The only show where ordinary women get the once-in-a-lifetime chance to become beauty queens. Tonight, we bring you two unbelievable stories. Oh, but only just like one every woman episode. will be chosen to join the lucky five who have already qualified <gasps> for the The painting in the background has changed. Has it or is it the other one next to her? All the angles are different and the lighting. Look at that man. Haunting man. It was man in the foyer with a swan girls. And hope to be crowned the, the swan. swan. Are you going to caress the banister? Are you going to caress the... Yes! She did it! She caressed the banister! She did it, girls! Uh, uh, uh. Oh, swan! The swan girls! That was a lot. Good evening, Knocked my hip out. Well, our first competitor this evening, Delisa Starr, is a military... I hate the fact that they call them competitors. It's so disingenuous. Plastic surgery should never be a competition. How many more times do I have to say that, Amanda? I wonder if Amanda Byram is proud of being involved with this specific show. I wonder if any of them are now, actually. I wonder if now, because times have changed and we think that perhaps making women compete in a, a beauty pageant or whatever they call it, extraordinary beauty pageant, you know, ordinary looking women, blah de blah de blah. I wonder if any of the people involved with this are proud to say, yeah, I was involved with the swan, yeah. Well, our first competitor this evening, Delisa Stas, is a military Delisa veteran Stad. coping with her failing marriage. <laughs> Delisa, you've been chosen to be a swan. Oh my God, are you serious? <laughs> My name is Delisa Stiles. I'm you have 32 a years old. Face. 
if oh colony if dr dubrow suggests that she needs a brow lift here well we can have a fight <laughs> time for a brow lift oh. i'm 32 years old i grew up in east texas and east I'm texas a captain in the united states army reserve go i think a lot of times i get misunderstood because i'm who's this man if they just like bought in one of the assistants or interns and be like can you just pretend that you're doing like army training yeah go just one man just training one man in the reserves like i think that was a little bit like for the cameras do you know what i mean to be like yes she's really manly oh she's so manly she's got a 48 inch dong girls she needs to be a swan like what is the angle they're gonna go for here i can already in fact i don't even need to ask i can already see it because i'm protecting against that inner self-doubt and that nervousness and it comes off as this just overbearing confidence begin raising your upper body forward to or be would you ever say that to a man would you ever say oh you've got overbearing confidence to a man would anyone ever say that to a man there is this real like um is the word duality i don't know if it is a real double standard that's the word i'm looking for if a woman in control and in charge says that something has to be done and her subordinates do not want to do it and they are male they will often call her a bitch for suggesting so whereas when a man is in charge people will look at him and be like oh that's a strong leader that is yeah he's he's a strong leader you wouldn't turn around and be like that man's a bitch and i hate that double standard i think it's disgusting just let women be powerful they're not bitches i don't feel confident in who i am or how i look I often have said that I'm, I'm built more like a man than a woman because of the thickness of my frame. You just have an athletic After build. Storm, Don't have... nod! Don't nod! Oh, I've pissed it up now, girls! Janice Dickinson! I must issue an apology there. I got very excited and very into the storyline there and immediately felt the need to somehow change the file I had open without ever actually exiting the program and opening a new file. Don't know how that happens. Anyway, yes. Nodding. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're so manly. Yeah. Stop it. After Desert Storm, I had sun damage, large blotches on both cheeks and on my forehead. And I would try to wear more makeup, and it's just gotten worse and worse over the, the years. The army left you with sun damage? I've had a lot of hardship just really recently, all coming at once. You've got such a cute little face. My cute husband little, and like, I have been features. separated and back together and separated. And there are some days that I think I'm okay with this. I'm coming to terms with it. I've accepted it. And then I'll just crash. This show does like to make out as if, like, uh, a marriage coming to an end is, like, the worst failure you can ever imagine. And it seems to put all the blame on the women in the relationship. It's such weird language that they use. A failed marriage. No, it's a successful divorce. I feel like a lot of people get married way too young and realize that as they grow as people from their 20s to their 30s and beyond, potentially, that they are no longer on the same page. And that doesn't mean the marriage has failed. That means that it's time to start a new chapter. Failed is a very strong word for this. There's no such thing as failure, just successfully finding out ways to not do something. I'm going to cream. Oh, this pianist is getting played. And now I'm kind of left oh. on my own. Oh. I lost interest in her because <gasps> we, we weren't as active because she wasn't comfortable with her body. When I take my clothes off, that's the first thing I see is my stomach. I mean, there was times that she would gain weight, maybe 20 or 25 pounds over where she wanted to be. I felt like he was more, and... more critical of my body. We didn't have the emotional side of things. Well, now we can't have the physical side either because he's not physically attracted to me, so we don't have anything. <gasps> oh, I... that little, like, chin wobble there, that is horrible and heartbreaking. I, the thing is, I'm in two minds about this, and, 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 and how'd your horsey scales? Let me actually tell you about why I'm in two, two, about why I'm in two minds about this. I firmly am in the, in the camp of, if there is something that you don't want to be in the relationship for, amicably come to an end, but do, there is no need to insult people to stop a relationship. Like, you are an adult, you are more than capable of just saying, I do not think that we are seeing the same things anymore. I do not think that we're on the same page. You can be honest, but you don't have to be deeply cutting. There are ways of saying something such as, I'm no, like, the physical attraction has dwindled because of weight gain. There is absolutely things you can say for that. But also, in a way that's like, why don't we join the gym together? Why don't we make time together for each other? Because you aren't no catch either, sir. <laughs> He's already dead. And this is where the double standard comes from. 
Do you know there is a statistic that if a woman or a wife gets ill, that her husband is like four times more likely to leave her than the other way around? This is the study on partner abandonment and it is linked in the video description. Men were six times more likely to abandon their female partner. Isn't that like disgusting? Absolutely disgusting. But I mind feeling lonely. And yeah, I do. Loneliness is a horrible feeling. Okay. Right, come okay, on then, Annie, vultures. What are the keys to her transformation? I think she has to make a decision about what's good for her. It sounded like she was talking about something that he was choosing. You know, he's not attracted to me anymore. He might want to move on. She hasn't made a choice. Dr. Dubrow, she's a mm. tough chick. Dr. Iani actually made a good point there. She hasn't made a decision, yeah. If someone is like, I'm not attracted to you, sis, do not, do not try and fawn over them because you are giving them power and you are giving them far too much power than they deserve. And that power can in men sometimes manifest as conceitedness and arrogance so be careful i must also i must also say that in these videos i am not a misandrist by any stretch of the imagination i like my men i like my men to be adults about situations so we say though because a lot of the guys that we seem to come across in these shows don't seem to be well-rounded men. I don't know if I'm quite articulating my thoughts there as I would like to, but I do actually want to put it across. I do not hate men. I do not hate men at all. I am firmly androsexual. I just think a lot of the patriarchal expectations of men need to be changed, should we say. Dr. Dubrow, she's a tough chick. And as she calls herself masculine, what's your plan for her? A brow she's lift. She's a handsome woman. The goal is really to make her a pretty woman. Gonna do a brow lift, a mid facelift, and some lip work, but her body has what about this woman's face needs a brow lift? A brow lift. A brow lift. Her eyebrows are going to be on her ankles by the time. They've gone all the way around back, around her head, down the lower back, into the ankles, girl. <laughs> That's how high her eyebrows are going to be. Really? A brow lift? A brow lift? Why? A mid facelift and some lip work. But her body a has masculine issues as well. So I'm going to do a breast lift, a really tight tummy tuck, and a lot of liposuction. She has so a lot her, of pig How is her body masculine? She, it's, it's, she's a product of her job. If she's doing the army work, she's going to be a bit more, shall we say, athletic and stronger than a woman who's not in the military industrial complex. Should we say? Hmm. 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 Pigmentation issues on her skin. We can do a series of photo facials, which will actually completely remove and even out her tone. Really? Okay. It should look amazing. Now, I'm, Debbie, okay. how That's do you get her that could be done. more feminine? She's so bulky and masculine, so I really need to lean her out. And her diet's going to have to change as well, because that's a big part of it. Mm. Okay, then do you have hope for her? Three months is a short time. send her to that nutritionist. Yes, absolutely. Let's review her plan. Okay. Delisa's swan plan includes several procedures, starting with her face. She'll Her have face. a brow lift, mid face lift, lower eye lift, fat transfer to the lips and cheek folds, Ooh. and several photo facials to correct the sun damage to her face. I'm really excited to see how the fat transfer to the lips and cheek folds turns out. Have we seen, we, I suppose we have seen like fat transfer to the lip before, but I have personally considered also getting fat transfer into my nasolabial folds because at the moment I get filler here, but I would like something a bit more permanent that has the opportunity to like settle into the skin a little bit more. So I'm interested to see how that turns out. And I actually do think that the photo facials will, uh, create a, an outcome that she'll be very excited about. For a more feminine body, Delisa will have a tummy tuck, breast lift, as well as liposuction of the inner thighs. At oh! the dentist, Delisa will receive- Is that all we've- Sorry, there's only one liposuction happening? Okay. I'm quite surprised about that, because usually the way that they were talking about her body, it sounded like they were going to do like a full body 19 area liposuction treatment. So I'm really surprised about that. Both upper and lower retainers to correct upper her and teeth. Lower she will also undergo zoom bleaching and deep cleaning. Okay. For her fitness plan, Delisa will be put on a 1200 calorie a day Nutrisystem diet and will spend two hours a day at the gym focusing on cardio and muscle toning. Okay. Delisa will and undergo how, weekly therapy and toning? coaching to improve her self-esteem and work through it's her not problems enough. in her marriage. Work through? Okay, you mean just put him in the bin? Our next competitor. Confidence Lorraine building Norris, a 38 exercises. year old court clerk right. from Michigan. Court clerk? Oh. Lorraine, you've been chosen to be a swan. Pizza! I oh, I want pizza. I'm shocked, really shocked. Oh. I'm not just nothing. I will be something. Sis, you're not nothing. My whole life I felt like Cinderella before the ball, before the fairy godmother. I was totally abnormal childhood, so... It was just me and my mother, and my mother did not know how to raise me. 
but I was terrified. Being called names and, and loser and you'll never amount to nothing, and it makes you feel worthless. It makes you feel oh like, my God. like you're nothing. I love her because she's my mother, and I know she didn't, didn't know me better. That's not true, sis. That's not true. A mother should never behave that way. That is disgusting. It's really hard to go to school and try to fit in and be normal. Because at home, it was so bad. Dr. Iani is not qualified. I hated it. She was like a teenager living in hell. They would just pick on me, throw stuff at my head, call me names. It was really tough. Why? Why? Why are they like this? Why is why is like why is school like this? How is this allowed? How is no teacher allowed to just be like beat, beat up the bullies, beat them out? Because you could never get away with that in the real world. Why in school do we let children get away with actual like crime? Punish those children. I was all alone. She was a gorgeous girl. Her mother didn't take her for all her dental exams. I have dentures, and I had to get them because we couldn't afford the dental costs of things, and that was very humiliating. I remember them taking them out one by one, and just knowing, oh my god, I'm 25, I have no teeth, so it's horrible. Oh my gosh, I've that never, is I've never ever felt pretty. I just look like a guy. I feel like I look stocky. I had four kids, and... Sis, you do not look like a guy. You do not look like a guy. It is one of those things, though, where teeth do give, like, a structure to your face. So I think once she has, like, implants, as we've seen earlier, that she's going to get, I think that her face shape will look so much more harmonious. And I think that's actually not a cosmetic procedure to want to have functional teeth. And you shouldn't have to go on something like the swan to have functional teeth. Ridiculous. My stomach's all blown out. If my husband tells me I look good, I don't believe it. Even on my own oh, wedding look. day, I felt ugly. When I give her a compliment and she just totally pushes it away, it upsets me because I'm really serious. I think she looks good in what she's wearing, but she really doesn't believe me. I worry about, will he still want me? Is he still going to love me? Is he going to find someone younger? Because I think, how could you really want to be with your wife? She's fat, ugly, flat chested. And when you feel so uncomfortable in my own skin, I can't stand it. I hate it. Oh, that's relatable. Feeling so uncomfortable in your own skin that you hate it. Oh, sis. Oh, Lorraine. Oh, this is a heavy episode, isn't it, my loves? This is really heavy. Lots of things that we can, um, well, I find myself relating to. Masculine body, hating your own skin. What was that face? Dr. Did you see Worth that? She... Dr. Worth, she lost all her teeth due to decay at such an early age. Have you ever seen a case like this? That is very rare, especially at that young age of 25. I'm going to be doing a full mouth of implants on Lorraine and giving her a set of teeth that will never move again, that will look beautiful, and she'll be able to function with. It will change her entire life. Well, Dr. Hayworth, will getting her teeth done first affect your surgery on her face? The lower half of her face below her nose is similar to an 80-year-old. I'll need Dr. Worth to make a temporary set of teeth that I can use as a guide. To an 80-year-old? So you work closely together? Absolutely. We'll Definitely. have to work as very close partners here. I'm going to have to do a corner lip lift, correction of witch's chin, and finally body work where we'll be doing... Witch's chin? Sorry, is that a legitimate thing? Hang on, let me just... I'm going to Google correction of witch's chin. Oh my god, it actually is correction of witch's chin. It's an actual procedure. It's actually known as chintosis. Witch's chin. Gosh, we really love giving things awful names, don't we? To really just boost the self-esteem, don't we? Wow. A breast augmentation as well oh, as an abdominal plastic to really maximize Lorraine's full potential. Dr. Yanni, then there's the obvious childhood trauma of her mother telling her that she was worth nothing. You know, it's such a deep-seated wound. It's also starting to and happen you aren't in her marriage where she doesn't feel it's truthful when somebody says something positive to her. We have to change that around in order for her to feel good as a person. And you think and once, a week, a once a okay, week? Once a week? let's recap her plan. Oh, God, here we go. Okay. Lorraine's swan transformation begins with her face. She will have a nose job, brow lift, a mid-face lift, fat transfer to her cheek folds and lips, a lip lift, liposuction of her chin and neck, and a chin reduction. Wow, that is a lot of facial surgery. Of her chin and neck, and a chin reduction. That, that, my loves, is a lot of surgery to have on your face. In May, I'm having four procedures done on my face for facial feminization surgery. I'll be having my brow reduced, my nose straightened, my chin done, and a tracheal shave. 
but it is shocking to me to see a cis woman go through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven procedures on the face in one go is a lot. She is going to be so swollen. She's going to have such a huge recovery. Her body's going to be like, what on earth has happened to me? And they're going to put her on a 1200 calorie a day diet and two hours in the gym after recovering from this much surgery just on the face. Lorraine's dental work will be extensive. Oh, and the dental work. titanium implants on both her upper and lower This jaw, is not cosmetic. And that will anchor a new set of permanent teeth. For her body, Lorraine will have breast augmentation, a tummy tuck, and liposuction of the knees and hips. She will also be fitted with a diva hearing aid. To move past Diva her work. childhood, she will undergo weekly therapy and coaching. Weekly therapy is not so enough start for this. Okay. It's absolutely not enough for this. Disgraceful. That's the one, girls! Los Angeles, I've and got Lorraine, Gans. The 12 week swan program begins okay. now. Oh, right. wow. Oh, they've got the same couch as that was in Queer Eye for the Straight Guy the other day. Oh, ochre. Everything is ochre. Her competitor Lorraine hopes to heal the scars of a difficult childhood. The women quickly learn rule number one of the Swan program. Ooh. No mirrors. Oh no. My God. All the mirrors oh. are gone. Oh. For Lorraine and Elisa, oh. the thought of being on their own for the first time. I've got the Swan curriculum just over there, my loves. A book that says, this is what you're going to say. We're going to read some in the Where Are They Now. Right. Dear Mom, I can't believe you made it this far. It's like a dream. I Aww. couldn't be more proud of you. This letter means so much to me. It's gonna um, give me strength and carry me through this. Remember, you can never be as beautiful on the outside as you are on the inside. Oh. <laughs> this is my new beginning. The first wow. step in Delisa's transformation this is a heavy begins with a visit to her plastic oh, I've got surgeon. Goosebumps. Overall, Delisa has a really nice shape, but she has a lot of body fat. So my goal is to really feminize her. So let's go ahead and take a look at your body, all right? Okay. All right, now, your tummy. If you're willing to accept a scarf, it will look like this. It'll be worth it. Sounds awesome. That's a flat stomach. So we'll do a breast lift, all right? And then we'll do some liposuction of the inner thighs, okay? So let's talk about the things we're gonna change about your face, okay? A brow lift would be really nice on okay. you. Freckles and brown spots. Uh, okay, so the way that he said there that it would like open up the eye, I can understand that. After talking to Dr. Gary Linkov and understanding that a lateral brow lift might actually be like better in most cases, and you don't need to leave like scars fully in the hairline where you're gonna experience like hair loss just for a full brow lift. I don't know, I don't know, you know, I'm still not sold on the idea that everyone gets a brow lift and that there's no real change in that brow lift. It's just one type of brow lift for everyone. I don't, don't, da, 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 ba, ba, da, da. Easy to get rid of. We're gonna do photo facials after surgery, as well as a mid facelift. Oh, rotate and a lift the lady. Lift. Okay. You really Ooh. look amazing. They cut that out there. She, they, they, he didn't say that to her in the office. I wonder why there, Dr. Dubrow said that they were gonna do a lip lift and a mid facelift. Uh, not to her in the chair, but over this overlaid section. I wonder why. Did you reckon he maybe didn't say it and then changed his mind like an hour later or something and was like, Oh, actually, no, I think this would also really benefit you girls. And that's why they've done it this way, because even the tonation of the voice sounded overlaid there rather than he had actually explained to her when she was in the chair. I wonder how this is going to turn out. You're really going to look amazing, okay? So I look forward to doing this, okay? All right, Captain. Okay. <laughs> Let's do this, all right? Yeah. Okay. 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 I could have okay. danced and sang in the office. He's awesome, and I'm ugh, so excited. While Delisa is overjoyed to shed her masculine military image, oh, get the a foundation grip, Amanda. of Lorraine's physical transformation begins at the dentist. Okay. I've had dentures for about 13 years now. You can't really enjoy your food. You can't bite into anything like apples. I have to cut everything into pieces. Let me explain the process of the implants. Okay, I'm interested. An implant is basically a titanium screw that's stuck in your bone uh -huh. that we then put teeth on. So once we get the implants in, there's about a five week healing period there. And then after that five week period, we put your teeth in. They will look 100% natural. Yes, I am They'll so look excited. really incredible. Okay, all right, five you okay? Yeah, I'm good. Five weeks of healing before you put the teeth in is quite, I didn't know that. I didn't know that there was, you do an implant and then it's five weeks of healing. So do you have temporary teeth in that five weeks or do you just literally have like titanium screws as teeth? 
fascinating. And we know that Dr. Sherry Worth is a complete falsification lady when it comes to explaining the dangers of veneers. So I wonder if there's any particular downside to implants that she's not telling Lorraine here. Anybody who's had dental implants in the audience, please let me know if you ever explained like any side effects and if they've changed your life for like, are they a most amazing turn of event scales? Because I would like to know. I would really like to know. Today I'm collaborating with Dr. Moody, who's an implant Dr. specialist. Dr. Moody. Oh. <gasps> Lorraine does not have very much bone. Oh. She has been without teeth for so long that the bone has worn away from her dentures. This is the most work I've ever had to do on a swan. The bone has worn away Today, from her Lorraine dentures? received 18 titanium implants. I'll have to see her more than a dozen times before she's ready for her permanent teeth. A dozen! And she has to stay on a liquid diet. This is a only the beginning of a challenging transformation for Lorraine. That sounds so challenging. A liquid diet, five weeks of healing, 12 dental appointments, 18 implants. Wow. That, my loves. That, to me, that's the most dramatic like overhaul we've seen in the swan so far i know that on laurie's episode they said that laurie received the most surgery but that this what we've just seen is so intense even just this one thing of like giving her a great swan smile with massive teeth that are pageant ready is just so much already that is so much work and it's not cosmetic at all this is the only time in which i'm like yes this level of work should have been done. Meanwhile, Delisa faces her first oh. hurdle, the swan diet. So tell me about some of the Look foods that you woman. feel that you're craving. Sweets. Uh, you're sweet. Giant sweet tooth. Okay. I have to have dessert after lunch and dinner. But I try to eat just little small portions, like a bite or two. Jump up on the That was shade. I tried to eat little portions like a bite or two. And then we cut to her literally eating like a full pint of ice cream, I guess. And the fact that then they were like, oh yeah, no, she even licks it off her top when she spilt it everywhere. And we're just about to weigh her now. Just about to weigh her. The, I don't like this Nutrisystem lady because she's so, it's clearly a pyramid scheme. Clearly. Jump up on the scale. 152. You do have 22 pounds to lose. That's no easy feat. 22 pounds? That's not the most dramatic we've seen. And in three months, you could probably, could you get close to a healthy weight loss is between one and two pounds per week. How many weeks are in three months? 12. But you also got to account for like surgical healing. So let's say two months. That is quite a lot to lose for two months, but I wouldn't say it's necessarily impossible. But do you think that they filmed all of these nutritional system segments on the same day? Because this lady has the same take flight massive seagull collar that she's had every single episode that we've seen her in so far. The magic of television, girls. I've never been able to stick to a strict diet. So that's going to be the hardest part for me. Delisa learns she has her work cut out for her. Low and slow, sis. While Lorraine meets with Works her every time. surgeon. While her gums there are healing, go. Lorraine can't wear dentures. This is going to give me a true sense of how... I want your gum patients. tissue. How are you? I started aging really fast, like around five years ago. Hey, we have to reinvent your oral area. You're complaining about your witch's chin. Now, this is partially because your jawbone is resorbed so much. Mm -hmm. You don't have any support to all your lower face. To correct that, I will do a chin reduction and a lip lift. Okay. I'm going to look at your body issues. So look how loose it is. This is the classic example of wearing the ravages of motherhood. To rejuvenate your body, I will do a breast... The ravages of motherhood. Wearing the ravages of motherhood. Wow. Wearing the ravages of motherhood. Again, Dr. Hayworth, who surprisingly decided to make an appearance this episode, has such a way with words that makes me just kind of go, well, your mum went through the ravages of motherhood to have you here. So why would you say it like that? Wearing the ravages of motherhood. Oh, it's just gross, isn't it? Oh, I've had lipstick on my teeth this whole time. Uh, Wearing the ravages of motherhood. Get a grip. Augmentation, Get a real job. Tuck and liposuction in two areas. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. It's the night before surgery and Delisa's failing marriage is weighing heavily on her mind. They absolutely love this light shot in this hotel where like one light turns on and it's like, oh, she's awake at night thinking above her Davenport about the life she could have lived. Like, it's very that, isn't it? Like, this is a weird segment to have. And then Amanda's like, her failed marriage, their failed blah, failures, fail, fail girls. Uh, I guess I'm having a little bit of a hard time tonight because I was told I could have a phone call. 
but I don't really want to call my husband. He told me he'd talk to an attorney, and I guess that means he really does want a divorce. So I just feel a little bit isolated and lonely today. There you go, see, like, turn the light off, like she's died. Meanwhile, Lorraine's pain is keeping her up. Oh, it was the same Still shot. With no teeth. We probably have about another five weeks to go. Oh. And that's really hard. Oh. It's hard to not be able to eat solid foods or bite in anything. Okay, tomorrow I have surgery. I'm excited about that. I do find it weird that they've given her subtitles. The next morning, like, Delisa's army spirit kicks in. I don't think in. she's difficult be brave. to hear. Right, the okay, the army spirit. The glamour into the soldier. We're gonna do the tummy tuck and some inner thigh liposuction. Yes. Okay, and the facial surgery is gonna be a brow lift, lower eyes, and we're gonna do some chin liposuction. Okay. Oh, dear. You are marked. Right. You are ready. Let's oh, do dear. it. Bye bye, old Delisa. I'm looking forward to the new me. Just go ahead and put Delisa's stomach. Liposuction will help her take it to the next level and make her body look really great. Okay, let's get started on the brow lift. Shaving the lady. This is the coolest procedure on the planet. I really think it's gonna open up and brighten her eyes. The coolest procedure on the planet. No wonder where we've got our answer as to why everyone gets one now, haven't we? The coolest procedure on the planet, a full brow lift. I think we understand why now. Dr. Dubrow loves his brow lifts. Hmm. Okay, we're done. Oh, oh. A Delisa stripper. Had pretty extensive body surgery today. The rest is up to her in the gym. Oh, thank you so you're much. You're welcome. Oh, you're the best. It's so worth it. Oh. And I haven't even seen myself yet. <laughs> she already must got feel a, a bit different. Attitude, and that will help her through a difficult recovery. Across town, Lorraine is feeling anxious to get her procedures underway. Lorraine, guess who I brought? Dr. Worth! I fabricated a simulated set of teeth so that Dr. Hayworth has a framework to do a spatial surgery around. Good luck. You're going to do a great job. And um, thanks. Thanks so much. Okay, have a nice nap. And you're going to wake up a swan. As the one goes. Yeah, we've installed the wings now. and the beak. Lorraine's chin. Oh. You can see the difference already, just putting the stent in going to add fat to bring some more weight to her lower jawbone to give her more of a, an appealing look. Oh, an appealing Perfect. look. Not exotic and sensual, no, just an appealing look. Okay, Dr. Hayworth. What I'm now doing is uh, starting her tummy tuck. Lorraine okay. has had four children, and she has a lot of loose skin four around children. her abdomen. Four children. Okay, we're going to close her up now. The ravages of motherhood, Everything girls. Everything went simply splendid. We did a lot of work on Lorraine today. The lower half of her face has been completely rebuilt and it's gonna be a tough recovery. Yeah, it is. That's a lot of work to do. That's the one, girls! Oh, Los When Angeles. we left our swans, uh, Delisa, an swans. army captain on the brink of divorce, had undergone several difficult procedures to soften her facial features and feminize her body and came out in great Hi, spirit. She did, actually. So... Worth it. She could have been like Our anesthetic high Lorraine though. has endured brutal dental surgery, extensive facial reconstruction, and is suffering severe headaches because of oh. all the surgery. Oh, severe Hi. headaches. Good morning. I hear that you're not doing too well today. Huh? Oh, I had a rough night. Where's your pain? Right there. Yeah, that's right where the mid face is. It's going to be a really difficult recovery for Lorraine. She's had extensive facial surgery on top of radical dental work. She may not heal in time for the pageant. I don't give a shit about the pageant girls! Shoot some pain medication through these drains before we pull them. Okay. That should help you. Okay. Okay? And I'll break the cycle of the pain. Thank you. Delisa, too, okay. is suffering from one of the hardest parts of the SWAN program. That seemed like it was actually quite a moment of humanity for Dr. Hayworth there when he was kind of. But he did kind of say it in a way that's like, yeah. Yeah, we'll give you some, uh, we'll give you some stuff for that, girls, yeah? Oh. <sighs> Disgusting. Like, it was very that, wasn't it? Oh, I will never do that again. That has taken me to a place I feel disgusted about. Right, what's happening with Delisa? Recovery. It just kind of sucks having your face beat up. I got so nauseous. Feeling like you're going to throw up every couple of minutes. Ugh. Mm. It's a completely 
new experience for me to be kind of at someone else's mercy. And actually, it's part of why I became an officer. Hey, I don't really like being told what to do too much, so I just had to kind of swallow it and go with it. Well, yeah, well, but that's Delisa exactly what this kind of is. Through, struggles to pull Lorraine's through. Lorraine's gums are still healing from surgery, so she must remain on a liquid diet. The inside of my mouth is like all cut. It smells <gasps> like hamburger meat. Ooh. I felt like I was gonna die. Oh my for god! Today I just had milk with a smashed up banana. That sounds repulsive. It's like being in a convalescent home and feeding like 80 year olds or something. There's food going everywhere. Mm. I really don't want to eat this anymore. <laughs> Meanwhile, Delisa is. Wow. I feel so much for Lorraine here because unfortunately with something like implants, like it, as I said previously in this entire episode, it's a medical procedure rather than necessarily a cosmetic or a plastic surgery. In fact, I would probably say it's more plastic surgery, isn't it? Because plastic surgery is about the reconstruction of something, whereas cosmetic is about like the change. All cosmetic surgery is plastic surgery, but not all plastic surgery is cosmetic surgery, my loves. Did you know that? The more you get. Meanwhile, Delisa is faced with a day she hoped would never come. The arrival of her divorce papers. Oh. This is urgent for you, okay? Okay. Thanks. Oh, you had to be there to film it. Yeah, great. Of course you did. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, everything changes in black and white. I was expecting it. I knew it. But that's eight years in 11 pages. Oh. This goes here and that goes there and it's all neatly done. Our swan coach checks in to see how Delisa is handling the news. Can I come in? She's I going so to eat relate. you. I really don't. I've been oh. there. I really know what it feels like. Oh, is she it's having a painful. human moment it's as very, well? very, very painful. Okay. Oh. But he's gone. He's obviously awful. Awful. Goodbye. No time for hateful men. I thought I was poor. It hurts now, but you're going to flourish. You're going to show them all. And that goes for anyone in the audience struggling with something like this as well. It may hurt now, but you're going to flourish. I thought I was more ready for this. You you're know. never ready. <laughs> Delisa just broke my heart because there's some things you can't coach somebody through. You just have to let them feel it. She's always in charge. She's always tough. So when someone like that lets her guard down, her pain is just immense. And it touched me. It really did. What? Was so Are we having a human episode of the swan? Are we having a human episode of the swan? I cannot believe there. My heart went out a little bit for Nelly Galan, the creator of this entire madness. And I'm like, oh, oh, that is a shame. It just made one of the hardest things in my life a little bit easier. Wow. That's it. The ring is in the drawer. She's on the game. Meanwhile, Lorraine calls home looking for some emotional support. Hello? Hey, what are you doing? Jimmy's here. Ricky's upstairs and we're watching TV. Yeah. Well, it sounds like there's a big party going on over there with everyone hanging out. Either every time I call on Sunday, everyone's all over the house. I'm not there. I'm over here suffering. Did you miss me? Do you? No! Get I'm in the bed! Right now. I don't want to say nothing. Babe. I wish you could really understand what I go through. Whatever, oh, I have to go. Get over it. Yeah, what you go through. All right. They probably don't miss me. Everyone's just hanging out at my house. Because... She has teeth there. She has teeth. Are they? Do you think they're the they're the temporary ones? I guess right. They must be. But ugh, the idea, the idea that her husband is just like having parties while she's away seems very nefarious to me. They're just having a good old time. I'm really angry. The rain is frustrated. The separation from her family is bringing up issues from her past. Oh, here we go. Lorraine is still dealing with a lot of pain from her childhood, so she easily feels angry and rejected still. Her mother was very abusive, physically, verbally, emotionally. I'd like to help her confront those issues with her mother by using a role play exercise. Okay, right, yes. You still not sure how I feel. You me second best. And I felt like you didn't want me. So you made it hard for me to be a strong, well-rounded adult. You made me scared, timid, afraid. So I want to try to make things better. Oh, gosh. Good. How's that feel? While Lorraine confronts her past, Delisa heads into therapy to work on her future. Oh, I just... Delisa's marriage is over on paper, but emotionally she still needs closure. So to get that, I've asked that she write down her feelings in a letter to Jason. 
I don't know how we can cut. Like, I've got goosebumps again. I've got. I've had swan pimples twice this episode, my loves. We all gotta die of something. <laughs> I do not like the idea of therapy being televised. I think it is a huge invasion of privacy because there's going to be some things that you just don't want to say because you know it's going to appear on TV. So how deep and how helpful can this therapy really be if the client or the patient rather, should I say, is going to be naturally wanting to hold things back because they don't necessarily want all of their dramas aired on TV because you know the production is like, oh, we're just waiting. We're going to wait for you to say something we can just exploit girls and be like, oh, yeah, well, her failures. <sighs> it's a lot, isn't it? I'm not sure how much sadness or hurt I feel yet. I do know that we've been headed down this divorce road for some time now. Mm -hmm. I guess it just felt like a parting blow. One last snub after nine years full of them. I fear we both wasted a lot of years settling. I'm not sure we'll actually remain friends, as you mentioned once, but I'll always respect and admire you. Oh, I wouldn't bother. Please. Bye. Trash I takes itself out. And I have a new sense of self. Good. Delisa is making progress. Hmm. That was it's the very morning quick. It's Lorraine's final dental surgery, and oh. she's paralyzed with fear. <gasps> Our swan coach arrives Hi. to lend support. When I went to the dentist, it was very, very, very painful. So I'm like really terrified and oh. I don't think people realize how devastating it is when you lose your teeth, what you have to do to get teeth back. Yeah. But I'm so glad to be here. Like I wanted oh. to come here, I wanted to do the program, I wanted to be strong. So I, I'm just gonna... Like, I don't have a problem with cosmetic work and plastic surgery, I do not. What I have a problem with, as I've said multiple times before, is the idea that this goes through a reality TV competition. This isn't for the benefit of these women, this is for the benefit of a pageant to make money as a franchise of television shows. Do you know what I mean? Like, if this hadn't have stopped at the end of season two, this would have gone on and on and on with all different kinds of people, men, children, women, babies, the swa- the gosling girls, and it would have- the signet girls, and it would have just gotten so out of control, and so many- and it's- the thing is, it's like, so much work is done in such a small amount of time. It's so extreme to the body. If this was done over the course of 18 months, maybe I'd feel a bit different about this show. Do you know what I mean? Like, maybe if this was, like, a whole team of people came in and just really coached you through how to completely transform your life in an actual meaningful way over 18 months to give you everything to be a real success story, imagine how incredible this show could be. But no, this show is glamorizing shortcuts and kind of putting this lacquer over it and saying that like the shortcuts are the way that the world works and that's not correct at all because these women after they finish the swan program and the pageantry and blah de, blah de, blah they go back to their lives they go back to their lives with no aftercare and then we saw in the last season that beth lay had ended up putting on a little bit of weight and she felt so deflated from that because she just you know, without choice of her own, she'd gone back to her life because that's what this show says. This show kind of invites people in, gives them shortcuts to fix everything, and then pushes them straight back into their life with their normal habits, the normal people around them, the normal surroundings, the normal work life. I don't know if that, I, I don't agree with that. I just don't, I don't, fu I fundamentally do not like that. I do not think it works. If you're going to do a show with this, make it an actual experimental show that takes years to complete and not months. I want to be strong, so I, I'm just going to tough it out and take it and get it over with. I just can't wait till it's done. Remember, nothing that is good in life is, it's, it's, it's always a lot of work and it's hard. I must say, though, this brow lift, I, maybe I spoke too soon because I love this kind of like, upswing snatched look she's got going on. I think she's gonna look incredible. With new determination, Lorraine faces her fears at the dentist. It's gonna hurt and it's gonna be strong. Hi, Lorraine. Hi. So when you leave here today, you're gonna have a full set of teeth. Oh my God. So you can just sit back and relax and go ahead. Right. Open She's got lovely hair as well. Right, what's this? Lorraine, we're so getting permanent a cement ready and I'm gonna go ahead and put your teeth in permanently. <gasps> Okay, Lorraine, these just have to harden. We're all finished. Feel good to have teeth in there? Okay. Thank you. I think it's been 13 years since I've had my real teeth. This is awesome. It's very great. It's just, I'm, I'm emotional with everything. It's been oh. a really hard road. 
I wonder if cleaning dental implants is the same as cleaning your own natural teeth. Because I'm actually, it kind of looked like she put like a whole row of teeth in in one go there. So I'm assuming there's no gaps between them, which means that maybe flossing isn't necessary. I, like, but like, how can you be sure that like underneath there isn't going to be like, I don't know, like things are getting underneath the implant. I don't know. I don't know. How do dental implants work? This is something I'm going to look into. Across town, Delisa, the army captain, Thanks. is losing the Battle of the Bulge. I knew it was going to be a bad week. She heads to the gym to work off the last crucial pounds. It's been almost two Angel years City since I really worked out hard. Hi. Delisa tells me she's tough, and I guess I'll find out just how tough she is. This is the first They're time we've seen, like, an actual gym thing. Oh, yeah. So, come on. Crank those legs. Come on. And we're gonna have to really waltz with up. surgery. That's it. That's it. That's what I'm talking about. Push it. Ugh. In a public gym. <laughs> the mirrors are covered. I think Look her in the background. Challenge is gonna be cutting out those sweets because she has such a sweet tooth. Hey, it's crunch time and sugar's my enemy. So I had to throw the dessert bars out. I just have to kind of rein myself back in. On the Swan. The Swan Girls. Everyone will make it to the pageant, girls. Okay, here we go. Oh my God. We're here. Jeffree Star's house. Well, not anymore, so... <laughs> Welcome back to the swamp. Ooh. Now, it's been a month since we've seen Delisa and Lorraine, and three months since they've seen themselves. It's a long way... I don't know if I like this dress, but she is firmly caressing the banister this week, my loves. She is fully made up. She's back in the relationship. The banister's back from the farm. She is fully together. I, I don't know if I like this dress. I'm un... Undecided, shall we say? It is nearly over. She hasn't got a necklace on. In just on. a moment, we'll finally see the Why results not? of their transformations. Ooh. But before the big reveal, let's check in with a team of experts who okay. radically transformed these women. Okay. Experts. Now, Delisa is a captain in the Army Reserve who was served divorce papers while she was on the SWAM program. Absolutely How did she unhinged. cope with that, Dr. Yanni? I think Delisa was surprised by the level of intensity and the emotions that she still had remaining about her marriage, but she worked through those and we were able to help support her while she took her first few steps to independence. And Dr. Dubrow, okay. did you help her find her feminine side? Oh, I think so. Delisa's femininity was just below the surface and it took a little bit of chipping away to bring out a really feminine and beautiful sculpture. Well, we'll see the transformed Captain Stars in just a few minutes. Well, right, are the we time ready? has come, experts. Here she is, the brand new Delisa Styles. Delisa Styles, come on, open the gateway, man servants. Oh, plunging glamour! Oh my gosh, her hair looks lovely. Actual curls. Oh my god, it looks like she's wearing lenses. She does oh, look cool. a little older, though, here, I think. Let's get a chat. You look absolutely stunning. Thank wow. you. How are you feeling? Oh, Your face is so butterflies, small. but oh, terrific. Yeah? Oh, it's been... A that is hair done right, although it does have a bump it in. Bump it up with Bump It. Get that salon style look fast and easy. But I think this is one of the nicest hairstyles we have seen on this show, full stop, actually. An amazing journey. Um, I feel uh, her like her eyes are a lot more a open. Whole person. What was the turning point for you? Um, I think after my divorce papers came, um, her skin I kind of realized really I had even to as well. do something Difficult for myself to tell with makeup. And, and get focused and take this opportunity because it'd never come again. Well, yeah. talking to you now, I can tell that you're kind of dying to see yourself. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Delisa, take a deep breath. See that curtain? Behind it, there's a mirror. And when you're ready. We'll pull back the curtain, you'll be able to see yourself for the first time in three months. Off you go. Okay. okay. Here we go, girls. Here we go. Da, da, da. Illuminati! Uh, 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 uh. Disgusting curtains. A horrible lamp and a bub bu bubbly is disgusting. Come on, girls. Okay, this is it, Delisa. You ready? Come on, Delisa. I'm ready. <gasps> Oh, I'm getting emotional. Oh! Where am I? Get a grip. Wow. Oh. My goodness. It's amazing. No manly body now, sis. 
<laughs> Tell me you're happy. Oh, so much for the strong army girl. <laughs> I can feel wow. more girly. <laughs> I feel great. What's the favorite part of your transformation? I really like the subtle changes in my face. I love my eyes. Well, you've this changed on the outside, and you've also made time. a dramatic change on the inside, too, Delisa. Congratulations. And Thank you. Everybody here, I think, wants to give you a big hug and say, well done. Wow. Delisa came here like a guy in the army, and she's leaving like a... Nelly Galan, you look like a guy in the army now. <laughs> <laughs> Grandma from the dinosaurs. I knew Delisa was going to look really good. I didn't think she looked that incredible. Possession. I mean, she's a babe. Jeff Star. Right, okay. Right, now it's time for Lorraine's reveal. Okay, that was emotional. Goodness me, girls. We just saw Delisa's big Ooh. reveal. The other woman striving to move on to the Swamp Pageant tonight is her competition, striving. Lorraine Norris. Well, Team Lorraine presented some unique challenges. Dr. Worth, you managed to reconstruct her entire mouth, but what challenges lie ahead for I just for wish it wasn't Dr. Lorraine Worth doing it. Lorraine came to the Swan program Scam. with no teeth, so she was functioning with nothing in her mouth. Mm. Now that she has a full set of implants Who's that and woman? teeth... Who's that? Who's this woman on the edge with the, with the fringe and the MySpace hair? Who's that? Who are you, madam? And there's a woman in a power suit next to her. Who are these people? Who are they? She has a full set of implants and teeth. Who's extras? She's learned how to laugh. Talk, Paris eat, and most alike. importantly, take care of a new smile. And Dr. Hayworth, how important was it for you to orchestrate your surgical plan mm -hmm. with Dr. Worth? Well, Lorraine had a collapsed mouth. No lips, no teeth. So it was vitally important that no I lips. worked with Dr. Worth no so teeth. that she built a foundation mm -hmm. of beautiful teeth, which I then framed with a set of sensual lips. Well, oh, we'll see the results. He did give her sensual lips. It was just me and my mother. They love that shot, don't they? They're like, oh, Zoom! We're going through the TV. Right, here we go. Okay, team, it's time. Here she is, the brand new Lorraine Norris. Oh, come on, Lorraine. <laughs> Open the gateway. Oh! She's got a highlight. Not a hateful shoe in sight. But well, I can't really see her yet. How are you doing? Is she a bit overwhelmed? Come on, let's have a chat. Oh, Ooh. Lorraine, honestly, I can safely say you look absolutely nothing like your former self. So when you came to Is the Navy program, dress? what were you expecting to get out of it? I just felt tired and ugly and old. To actually think I'll like what I see when I look in the mirror is going to be amazing. How do you feel on the inside? I wonder if she's having a bit of difficulty adjusting to implants. Do you need, like, speech therapy after you have something as dramatic as implants, dental implants? I wonder if you do, and they haven't provided that here. I have self-confidence and self-worth. I feel like I look beautiful. You look amazing. Thank you. Well, Rain, I know mm. you really, really want to oh, see Oh, I love yourself. an off-shoulder moment. See that curtain up there? Yeah. Behind it, there's a mirror. So I'm gonna mirror. ask you to step up, and then when you're ready, we'll let you see yourself. You okay? Come on. All right, Lorraine. Come on, Lorraine. Off you go. Good luck. Oh, they are some piano highlights, girl. Oh, Illuminati pianos. Why have they turned her mic up? Okay, Lorraine, this is your moment. That Are was you ready strange. for it? Punch it, go on. Yes. Smash! Come on, Lorraine! Sold the curtain budget! Oh my god! Oh my god, I don't even look like me! Oh, look at those teeth! Oh my god! I can't believe it. <laughs> oh. oh, God, I look awesome. Oh, my. You guys are genius. We wouldn't go quite that oh, far. Oh, Lorraine. Oh, my God, I look totally different. I, I don't look like me at all. <laughs> I look like a stranger. But a, a gorgeous stranger, right? Oh, my God, I look awesome. My husband is going to freak. Oh my god, I love it. I love it. Oh, thank you so much. You guys, guys awesome. come on in. Oh, I 
was very pleased with Lorraine's results. She was an extremely difficult dental transformation. Wow, that is quite... And now quite... she's smiling and she feels good about herself. That is quite intense. You look beautiful. Oh, you look so gorgeous. Oh. Lorraine's results exceeded my best expectations. Sherry's work in combination with my lip work produced an amazing result. She's got a very buxom woman, isn't she? Wow. Right. Just before we move on to see who's going to go to the pageant girls, I just want to talk here about those two reactions there because those reveals and reactions I feel were positive. I genuinely got a feeling of like positive outcome there. The first reveal, Delise's reveal, I thought I I felt was much more of like a an emotionally overwhelming positive. You know, with that kind of like she kind of like it felt very much like a crescendo of emotions has happened, but they're all positive. And actually the same with Lorraine, although I feel like Lorraine's was a lot more like a, a shouting level of excitement, like a yes, thank you so much, rather than like a, <gasps> do you know what I mean? But I, either way, both of those are such positive outcomes. The last couple of episodes, we've seen really positive outcomes. So I'm actually, I'm very thankful that there is positive outcomes because we all know there are also less than positive outcomes on this show. Here we go. The pageant, the gown. Welcome back to the swan. Well, tonight we've hello. seen two women truly blossom. And we are. Now we'll find out who our judges in consultation Get with our experts pageant. have chosen to go to the swan pageant. Will it be Delisa or will it be Lorraine? Before we bring them out, let's take one final oh, piece. And here they are now. All right, here they are, girls. Reveal Gentlemen. the tarot doors. Manservants, actually, Amanda. Why is there that bush outside now? Oh. They look very, Amazing. like, similar styling, don't they? Absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. But only one of you can move on to the pageant with a chance That's to be crowned the swan. Mm. Now, the along swan. with that title... The swan. To be crowned the swan. Sorry, it's just hit me again. This whole thing is called the swan. <laughs> <laughs> to be crowned the swan. Comes cash and prizes worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. Worth absolutely oh. nothing. <laughs> You've been judged on beauty and poise Great. and of course overall and resting transformation. Bitch face. This envelope, ladies, contains the name of the woman who will compete for the title. <gasps> okay, this is it. Are we ready? Are we ready, girls? Are we ready? Oh, a square tip French nail. The name of the woman who will move on to the pageant tonight is... Is... I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I think Delisa? Delisa Styles. Ow! 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 Congratulations. Ow! Ow! Why is this? Why is this painting in the background? Sorry. Why is this painting? Is this a woman just being like... I'm going to beat you with my farmer's beat. Good heavens. Delisa made to the pageant because she's changed internally and externally in the she's most marvelous way. She's got nine bumpets way. in. She just looks fantastic. And she does, that's true. I think Lorraine is probably okay with not making it to the pageant because I think she really got what she came here to receive. You don't to have to compete in that much more absolute confident nonsense. And more open to being a healthy partner. Good luck. Thank Still you. not beautiful Delisa, enough for the pageant though, girls. While well, I say goodbye to Lorraine. Oh. Mm. Lorraine, you are, as you know, absolutely gorgeous, and you've made such an incredible transformation. Yeah. You must be so proud wow. of yourself. Yes, I am. I'm very happy. And you have that gorgeous new smile to go home with. Oh, I'm so excited about the whole thing. Before we say goodbye to you, there are a few people who want to see the brand new you uh -huh. oh. and the brand new gorgeous smile that you have, okay? Come over here with me. Oh. Gentlemen. Oh, the music. The piano. Oh, it's you! Parties in the house, making me feel sad. Oh, why am I so emotional? What is this? I don't have emotions, I'm dead. My wife looked great. When I walked out there, I was blown away. I oh. didn't even know what to think in my head the first time I saw her. I'm so happy to see you. You look great. Oh. oh! Not children. Oh, don't do it. I'll die. Again. My mom looked really young. Her body was awesome. Her hair was awesome. Oh. She is. <laughs> I thought she was like a whole different person. 
Oh, she's put her I'm lipstick on your cheek. I'm excited I've become since I've been here and who I will be when I get now home do the husband. in my future. Now do the I husband. Like I have a whole new beginning to look forward to. Delisa, congratulations, girl. Thank you. Oh, well done. Oh. Thank you. But we're not done with you yet because you oh. are going to the pageant. How do you feel? I feel great. Yeah? yeah. Tie you up in the well, base. Good luck, okay? <laughs> Next week, the transformations continue as two more women compete for oh. a spot in the most original pageant ever devised. Oh, there's another Who will episode. Be named the Swan. That's the one, girl. That is quite a side boob we're getting there. Oh, goodness. Wow. Next week on The Swan. No. Wow. Wow. You can really dance. I've got a lot of opinions to share, my loves. Right, I'm going to take up my... Oh, hang on. I've pushed my laptop away already in preparation for this. So, my loves. What an episode that was. I feel like I may have felt very affected by the things I've seen today in this episode because of this masculine body storyline. And I am still kind of fighting with my aspects of my body that I consider to some extent masculine, even though, um, oh, I was about to reveal something there that I didn't, I'm not ready to reveal on the, on the internet just yet, my love. No, not going to reveal it. No, probably never, actually. I feel so emotionally... <sighs> roller coastered today, my loves. I feel like they were two very overwhelmingly positive outcomes. And I do find it very unbalanced that the woman gets to go away for four months and have this like process happen and just return back to just this guy who's just the same as when she left, but is still just as opinionated. And I don't mean that about any specific person in any of this show. I just mean that in general. Like, that's the vibe that I get is that this the woman is always expected to be the most glamorous, most like processed version of beauty that she can possibly be by being on this show. And then goes back to the man who's just like, all right, yeah. Oh, you look great. Oh, just me with my belt. Like, it's just a bit much, don't you think? Well, my loves, let me know what you think about what we've seen in today's episode, because I'm I'm going to go away now and think about what I've done. <laughs> I'm going to go and get some tissues and have a moment by myself. Not like that, you slat. And you can probably still hear in my voice that I am still recovering from Miss Rona, girls. Miss Rona, get away. I don't want you anymore. Goodbye. You are evicted. So, my lovelies, aside from that, I've just been resting, really. I've just been resting. If you've been catching up with me on Twitch, occasionally I've been streaming because it's kind of a little bit difficult to keep a legible thought process going. Absolute bimbo. This, made, this, this, this has made me a bimbo. There is no thought in my head, my loves. Talking about no thoughts, why don't we have another episode of The Swan Girls? So, in the last episode of The Swan Girls, we saw some interesting choices with uh, teeth and some information about implants that is potentially quite damaging and incorrect, actually. So, you guys in the comments actually really sounded off. And you guys let me know that five weeks is not enough time for the bone to heal around the implant screw. So, once again, my loves, cutting corners for the sake of reality TV? Who could it be? Oh, I just don't know. Dr. Dubrow. Time for a brow lift. Oh. <laughs> With that being said, my lovelies, today I believe is episode seven. Episode seven. We are speeding through this season, my love. Speeding through. So I actually made a bit of a boo-boo last time. We don't have just this episode. We've got today's episode, another episode, and then it's the final. Uh, what's happening? I can't wait to see how this turns out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's getting scary. Oh, no, that's really scary. What am I going to do without my swan fix, girls? I'll have to just go to the local pond and emulate Janice, but also be like, I'm a swan, girls. It was a perfect fashion moment. So, my lovelies, every single one of these episodes, especially this season, it's like they're trying to outdo each other every single episode. The producers are like, there's not enough drama. Quickly, we need to manufacture some extra drama. Plastic surgery is not enough anymore. Which is a really weird concept to actually scream at the top of my lungs because the more I think about it, the more I think it just kind of like says that you can just leave your family behind for four months and go off and get lots of plastic surgery and your life will be fixed. Whilst plastic surgery is a tool that can be used to help alleviate some things, it is not a one size fix all, shall we say. All right, my lovelies, that is enough waffling from me today. What's gonna happen? <laughs> today, I may not be driving the struggle bus, but I'm definitely 
a passenger. And with that, my lovelies, it is time to pop in the Ochenger. One and two. And you might be excited to know I will be releasing some merch for the final. Some swan merch. And it's time for episode seven of The Swan Girls. Tonight on The Swan. The Swan! Oh, I Sylvia Cruz is a woman trying to overcome a lifetime a of woman. broken relationships. Oh. I would have liked him to just tell me the music. this was not going to work out and let me go. But when her new boyfriend drops a bombshell, I can't oh. believe he did this. Oh. She has the determination to fully complete her transformation. What do you mean? To me, I don't She's trust anyone. It's not that easy. Pass and away. Marshall Metalberg is a young woman paralyzed by a oh, negative shit. self-image. I oh. might be invisible. And an embarrassing physical problem. I feel completely unbearably disgusted with myself. But will she have the strength to stay in the program? I'm doing more than I ever have done in my whole life. Nothing's happening. Oh! Who will join Jennifer from week one? Oh my God. Gina from week two. Erica from week three. Hey! Harry from week four. Cinnamon from week five. And Delisa from week six. Delisa go! And take spot number seven at the Swan Pageant. The Pageant! Tonight. The Swan. The Swan Girls! Right, pause, pause. Oh my goodness, I always forget just how intense that like, what is it? Just over a minute long? That kind of like trailer for the episode is so, the way they edit it, it's like, and the music does that thing where it just like, climbs in like uh like drama and it just crescendos into this like tonight on the swan as if it's the most important thing that's ever happened on television ever before i think we're in for a bumpy ride in today's episode my lovely oh i can't wait all right come on amanda what are you wearing this week good evening i'm <gasps> and welcome oh to the my now, gosh Oh, stop speaking and let me look. This gown is a bit of me. This halter neck moment. I'm not quite sure about this like glittery ridge under the bosom, but you never know. And a slit all the way up to like the pussy <laughs> is so gorgeous. Oh, I didn't hear a word she said. Come on, Amanda. Oh, and look how bronze she is. And welcome to the swan. Now, as is that you a hateful know, shoe, our though? program culminates every year in a beauty pageant like no other. So far, six women have qualified and only two spots remain. Hmm. Tonight, two more women will oh. undergo the transformations of a lifetime. Oh. Only one will make it to the pageant. Make it to the pageant. To be crowned the swan. The swan goes. Snubbed the banister. The banister's been snubbed again. She's only touched it once in the last like six episodes. Unbelievable. I just want to say that little like belt detailing across this gown was in a really weird place. It kind of like cut her like halter neck effect off. If it was like sparkles that followed the like shape that was going down her chest, that would have looked so much more elegant and expensive. And you know, I'm all about that. Uh. <laughs> it's fashion. <laughs> God, Bob, don't look at me. Imagine trying to vogue to this song. You can throw your hip out, all eight of them. That's one count. Right, let's see. Good evening, experts. Ooh, let's good meet evening. the first of our two competitors, oh. Sylvia Cruz, an account executive from Chicago, Illinois. Oh. So I, what's an account executive? What do, what do they do? Like sometimes you come across these like job titles in business and I don't mean to offend anyone who may have one of these job titles, but they're very vague. You know, like she's an accounts executive. What does that mean? You manage the accounts? No, because that would be an account manager, wouldn't it? So an account executive, are they like, an account executive manages the managers of the account management team. <laughs> What does it mean? Let me know. Maybe I'll hire eight of them. You can come executively manage my accounts. <laughs> Sylvia, you've been chosen to be a swan. Oh my god! Accosted in your own car. <laughs> oh, that's oh a good reaction. Lord. I think. Is it? I've been through so much, and I'm only 27 years old. My right, father here we go. left us when we were very young. We were okay. not raised with the love of a man. I got married to a man who was my high school sweetheart. Oh, that's your first so problem. I was so in love. I got pregnant. I lost the baby. <gasps> oh no. After that, he really changed. Oh, really? That relationship ended really bad. Oh. I was not expecting it. I would have liked him to just tell me this was not gonna work out and let me go. Oh. Rather than making me believe, like my father made my mother believe that he was gonna come back or that things were gonna work out. 
they never worked out for my mom and my dad, and they were never gonna work out for me or him. Oh, oh, gosh, this is heavy. We're only three minutes in and we're already like, come on, girls, get the tissues. Make sure you've got a good bottle of rosé nearby. This one tastes like crap. First of all, I mean, I'm preaching to the choir here when I say this, but communication is so important in relationships when it comes down to like what you both like, what you both enjoy, what kind of foods you like, all the way up to like where your life decisions are going to lead you. Sure, this might be a case of maybe he thought there was a way of continuing the relationship in a way that would make him happy and it just didn't manifest. You have to give people the option to make their own decision. You have to. You have to be honest with how you feel and honest with who you are. I started dating Michael in November. My. He's a great guy. Oh. I know her difficult past and that's tormenting her from accepting that she is a beautiful woman. Right now, intimacy, uh, not much. Not much. Because of what I went through with someone else, I have problems trusting him. Okay. If I could do Understandable. anything that I want, I would fix my ears. Oh, but Growing I up, love your ears. They would ears. always make up these names, Dumbo, and she always hated it. Oh. My sisters, they're gorgeous women. I can't say I look at myself and think, wow, what a gorgeous woman. No. Oh. But I would like not to have such big thighs. It's always been a challenge for Sylvia to stay in shape, and it's simply because the Latino community, when it comes to uh, food, here at home, I do Latin food. That's called an elote. It's corn, butter, cheese, and mayonnaise. <laughs> I love my dessert. And maybe there I might have a problem. <laughs> I'm not sure quite how I feel about them laughing at, like, the idea that she likes to cook. Um, food from her culture. The reality is there's only one thing on this planet that makes your um, body, let's just say, react a very specific way to what you put into it, and that is food. And you do kind of have to, once, you, once you're not a teenager anymore, and once you're like in your 20s, you have to really pay attention to what you eat and how much of some things you're eating and your health for longevity in this life. So I myself have had that journey and it has smacked me in the face multiple times. I think that only now, into my 30s, am I really quite understanding what I can put into my body to get the results out that I want. Honestly, I feel like a lot of the problems in this show would have been great if they'd taken these women and maybe like incorporated into their life over a year, like a nutritionist, dietitian expert, exercise expert, and then maybe had like a couple of spots of plastic surgery if they really wanted it. And that could have been beautiful. Instead, it's all about cutting corners. And we're gonna see this Nutrisystem lady in this episode come in and be like, what you need to eat is granola 28 times a day. Which is just, not feasible. It just isn't. I think in all honesty, to have a good body, whatever that good body looks like to you, requires actually quite a lot of effort. And I think we as like a Western society in particular have kind of forgotten that like, if you put effort into something, usually good things come out of it and you can enjoy that. So whatever a good body looks like to you, my lovelies, remember you have to kind of like put aside a little bit in your mind to be like, okay, this, doing this activity or doing this action will give me the results that I want. And I feel like it's very easy to forget that because when we're teenagers, especially this is for me, this is my opinion, and I think that some people can relate to this, is that hardly anything required any effort because you're always getting an outcome that's kind of like favorable, I guess. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. I don't feel happy. I need to really deal with these feelings of not being able to trust because I really want to let go. Hmm. Gosh, that's a task. And a brow lift well, is not going to do it for you, Debbie, girls. Something tells me those desserts and Latin food will not be on the menu at the Swan program. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said it. I am going to have to immediately put her on a low fat, low calorie diet. She's got at least 30 pounds to lose. So I'm going to have to put her on a really hardcore program with cardio six days a week and kick it really, really hard. Dr. Yanni, she keeps thinking that if she doesn't mm. trust, she's going to stay safe. The more mm. she doesn't trust, the less she's actually going to get somebody to be present and available because she's pushing them away. And Dr. Hayworth? I didn't get that. I didn't get that, Dr. Yanni. I did not get that from that little, like, intro we saw there. I didn't get that at all. Did you guys get that? I didn't. Right, come on, Dr. Hayworth. I want to suck your blood. Time for a brow lift. It's not just about her ears, but she does have a rather bland bone structure to her face. What I would do bland! for her is to put in cheek implants as well as a chin implant. We have to straighten her nose, give her a more feminine look. 
not to forget about her body. A lot of liposuction. Hopefully, that'll inspire her to get on the program with Debbie. What about you, Dr. Worth? What do you mean liposuction will inspire you to get on the program with Debbie? What does that even mean? You shouldn't be getting lipo to inspire yourself into better shape. That's not how it works. A lot of surgeons will not do liposuction on you unless you are in a goal weight territory. That is obscene. Even after Dr. Hayward does oh, Dr. chin veneers. her Debbie. teeth are way too big for her face. So what I'd like to do is do some veneers on all of her front teeth and make her mouth look a little smaller. The question is, will she be pageant ready in... What are you gonna- are you gonna shave her teeth away? Oh my god. Shave her teeth away? Surely not. Sure- surely. Surely Sherry Worth is not going to say, I don't want your gum tissue. I want your teeth, girls. Three months. Oh, yes. yes. I think so. Oh, Let's have goodness. a look at her plan. Sylvia Swan plan will begin with her Sylvia. face. She'll receive right. cheek implants, a chin implant, nose job, fat transfer to the face, mole removal, ear surgery, and a brow. My issue with this nose job, if she really wants it, fine. Absolutely, perfectly fine with me. You know, do whatever you want with your own face. What I have a horrible feeling, though, is that Dr. Hayworth is going to try and take away some of her features that make her face work for her. That's what I feel like is going to happen. Especially when you team a nose job with cheek implants and a chin implant. Like, the contours of her face are going to look completely different. And if she wants that, that's fine. But if she's just kind of been selected to have that pushed upon her by a surgeon, different story. Lift. For Sylvia's body, she'll have okay. liposuction in five different areas. Oh, Jesus. Dental procedures will include bleaching, a lower retainer, veneers, gum recontouring, and a thorough cleaning. Why gum reach contouring? Did you want to make a mouth smaller? Calorie a day Nutrisystem diet ah. and concentrate on weight training at the gym. Nutrisystem, to get help the bin. Sylvia work on her trust issues, she will undergo weekly therapy and coaching. It's not enough. Okay, That's not our enough. next competitor tonight is a young woman who has been hiding herself from the whole world. Meet Marsha Metalberg. Marsha Co. Right, okay. I'm Marsha Metalberg. Oh, I'm what's from Pickens, South Carolina, and I'm 23 years old. 23. I want to be invisible. 23. 20. 23 years old, 23 years old and going to have extensive plastic surgery. Okay, let me just tell you something. At 23 years old, I wanted to fade away and disappear from the world. Sometimes you just don't want to be an extrovert and sometimes you really enjoy not having to fuss with, you know, attention. In my humble opinion, you don't have to take this as fact. I think that you should wait until 25 for cosmetic surgery. I think there's an asterisk there though, like if you need certain types of reconstructive procedures, of course, do them whenever you can. But I do think that like extensive cosmetic surgery like this, you should wait until you're 25. I really do think. I just don't want people to notice me. I don't want people to see me. What is this weird, what? I don't look at people in the eyes. I look at the ground when I'm walking. Who oh, are these same My people? Weight. Did you see? <laughs> They, clearly some producer has been like, what we need to do is demonstrate the fact that you want to disappear. So we're going to put a filter on you being like, teleport like an X-Men girl. Did you see in those like three scenes there, there were all the same people just like, okay, miscellaneous interns, go over there and stand around with your cups. And ignore the lady walking past. Ignore her. I do not see. I simply do not see what is. she's on the swan, girls. What was the budget for the B-roll in this entire series? It's so weird. And my nose makes me feel uncomfortable with myself. Mm. I've got hair and that is one of the reasons why I don't want people to notice me. I have arm hair too, which I normally try to cover up. I feel completely unbearably disgusted with myself. Oh, it makes me feel really unfeminine to have to shave my face every single day. Oh, I've been I, called that is sir. And I've been asked if I was a boy or girl. It, it was devastating. She doesn't have the... Wow, okay, that was a bit close to home, even for me then. Do you know, I used to get asked that question constantly when I was a teenager, because I had lovely long blonde hair. Not too dissimilar to what I have now. She doesn't have the high esteem that she should have. There's things that she's been self-conscious of that's oh. held her back. She hasn't reached her full potential. I attend Clemson University. I'm not social at Clemson. Normally, I'll meet guys on the computer. I don't trust Ooh. men, and I don't really feel like I'll be able to find a Overlaid. Normally I meet men on the computer. Wow, what a very um, interesting insight into the past there, because clearly 
I mean, where do you meet men now? Dating apps. It's the same thing. It's except the computer is now this big. <laughs> oh, Roly's just text me. No, not today. I don't know who you are. <laughs> Do you know what? My eye today, my lovelies, is like, do you know what? Let's become the Thames. Can we get a shot of you on the bus, please? My Thank biggest you. fear is probably being alone. Not You're 23. 23. I always felt like a misfit. I'd give anything. That's to relatable. Not be invisible, not want to be invisible. Oh. Okay. I honestly think that watching a few like style makeover type videos, like where you learn to do a little bit of like makeup techniques, you learn to dress for your body shape, you learn like what kind of music you like, like music really influences fashion, those sorts of things. So like, I'm sure if like, she's not in any way, shape or form an ugly duckling. I hate that phrase. I think it's disgusting that the swan is even trying to use it. But like, if she did a little wave in her hair, was wearing a band t-shirt, some black jeans and converse and wore her backpack over one shoulder, of course she's gonna get like people being like, oh, she looks alternative and fun. And that's just a really basic idea I'm coming up with right now. People back in the day, it was tough because where did you learn these little style tips and tricks? I don't even know where I learned them, to be honest. I've been an absolute weirdo from the start. Well, Marsha is only 23 years old and she Way wants to be young. invisible. Dr. Yanni, she's crying for help. How are you going to do that? I think it's not something that you can actually get over. She's got to do some healing and resolve that pain. I hope to work through the social anxiety and that feeling of isolation and help her feel much You more can't work capable. through social anxiety. You have to main manage it. Of, of course, that's really affecting her is the hair on her neck and her arms. I mean, laser hair removal is a very common practice today. Can that help her, Dr. Dubrow? Oh, absolutely. In addition, she's just very masculine. Face, body, basically everywhere. So we really need to Where? change her body with a lot of liposuction, breast masculine. augmentation. We really need to feminize her face by doing a brow lift, rhinoplasty, take the fat of her cheeks and her chin. She really deserves to be in this program. Oh, without a doubt. Debbie, mm. this is Vultures. gonna be so tough because first of all, she's never been in a gym. So I'm not sure if she's gonna make it or not. Wow. Debbie, I'm really gonna help you with that because I think there's a lot of hope for her and she just needs to be pushed and motivated. We really because I do nothing at all, Nelly Galan. Yeah. That's one. Let's have a look at her plan. Right, okay, here we go. Are Marcia we ready? Swan plan features several procedures, starting these, with her face. Underwear they she will choose. have a nose job, brow lift, liposuction under her chin, lip augmentation, fat removal from her cheeks, and reshaping of her lower eyelids. Um, For her body, okay. she'll have breast augmentation and liposuction on her abdomen, hips, and inner and outer thighs. At the dentist, Marsha will have zoom bleaching, deep cleaning, and da Vinci veneers added to her upper and lower teeth. For her fitness transformation, Marsha will I mean, what more can I say? What more can I say? And concentrate on cardio and weight training to lose 37 pounds. To help Marsha heal and overcome... 37 pounds in four months whilst you're having all this cosmetic work done as well. What more can I say? I feel like I've almost said everything in this entire two seasons that we've watched because... What more, what else is there to say? Like, this is deeply unsettling, deeply unsettling. The first thing they should do for Marsha is do a blood test to check where her hormones are at. That's the first thing they should do. But do you know what they're gonna go straight in and do? A brow lift, ah. Brow lifts do not fix hormone imbalances. Social anxiety, she will undergo weekly therapy and coaching. Well, I can't will. wait to see this transformation, so let's get started. Great. Right, here we go. Oh, close your books. That's the one, girls. For Marsha and Sylvia, the 12 oh. week long swan program starts today. Oh. Hi, hi, Marsha. I'm here for the swan. Marsha entered the I'm program here for the swan. to overcome her extreme shyness swan. and leave behind a humiliating daily ritual. It makes me feel really unfeminine to have to shave my face every single day. The, the people so, in this like color grading editing department are really going wild. Like, why did they make her look like this? Why have they like made the sunflowers yellow and the mirror like colorful and she's got a gorgeous tan, but also like her real world is black and white, girls. What are you doing? Why? Why is this an editing choice? Weird Sylvia color came with hopes of regaining her trust in men and fixing the ears she's been embarrassed of her entire life. Oh, I like her ears. My sisters, they're gorgeous women. Do you think they said, oh, can you can your sisters dress up all nicely whilst you are in just like a t-shirt and sweatpants basically and we'll just get you to walk around the streets see how you feel her sisters here have been like through the glam squad and she hasn't yet so like if it doesn't make any sense it's not a correct comparison the women will undergo extraordinary Ooh, a transformations but in a will tiny not apartment. see their reflections until they revealed no mirrors oh, girls mirrors. well 
No mirrors. Oh, what's this music? A Sylvia I've got gout. No mirrors. Who gout. is it? <gasps> Security. All rules will be strictly enforced. We're going to need to secure uh, luggage. Security. Including what no are you going to secure? Surfaces. You're not going to find oh, anything. Oh, disgusting. They're just sunglasses. Disgusting. They just left with a pair of sunglasses. That's how ready I am for this pageant. The commitment begins now for both of our competitors. Dear Asha, welcome to the SWAN program. We have chosen you to undergo a life-changing transformation. There's oh, no she seems really turning excited. Back. I can't wait to begin. OK, well, the time is now, girls. Sylvia's swan plan begins with a trip to her plastic surgeon. Oh. Oh, so yeah, that says gout. Goiter. That need addressing. <laughs> I never understand why he does this. He's like, oh, yeah, that's the goiter. Put it in there. Like, it's such a weird little selection or section in this show that... They, they try and do like loads of B-roll to make it seem like this is how it usually happens. When actually, we don't even really see most of the consultations. You can't just have one consultation and then you go into surgery. Usually there's a few, depending on what it is that you're having done. So that's weird. Once again, this show just kind of like cuts corners. I think it's got some interesting features that need addressing. Interesting you, features I can give that the need that she needs to change her body and change her life. features. Okay, why don't we have a look at you? Tell me you don't want to do anything with your breasts. I don't want to do anything with yeah, my breasts. Go. Now this <laughs> it's not okay. a good thing. Mm. We'll be liposuctioning all the way up underneath the breast here. Uh -huh. So we'll be getting this portion, this portion, this portion, this portion, this portion, this portion, and finally these portions. Remember, liposuction <sighs> is not a license to eat. So now that we've finished your body, let's talk about your face. You are concerned about your ears. What we want to do is to cut a little crescent down mm -hmm. and suture back to your um, bone. I'm going to be performing a number of procedures to bring out Sylvia's beauty, but her ear refinement will really have a huge impact on her facial transformation. I like her ears. I'm looking forward to him fixing but okay. my ears. I understand. I can't wait till surgery day. Just for that. Sylvia is ready Just to for say that. goodbye to a feature she's been teased about since childhood. Just for that, that's what she Meanwhile, said. Meanwhile, Marsha visits the dermatologist, eager to be rid of her okay. own source of embarrassment. Hi, Marsha. I'm Marina. The nurse Marina. is going to be doing your laser treatment today. I'm ready to go. Okay, let's get started. I can't tell you how excited I am about They asked her. They asked her to grow out this um, facial hair here. They asked her to do it because they want the shock of like how good it is to razor an area and then laser it. This is why you can't really, can't really compare before and after one laser treatment because you have to shave for that laser treatment. So you can't compare that. What you need is like the day before laser and then you need like a six weeks after your final laser session photo so that you can actually see the amount of hair that's been permanently reduced. Even though laser hair removal is not technically a permanent form of hair removal it is a permanent form of hair reduction it doesn't get every hair but if you keep going with it eventually it will right she's gonna I shave have her to shave the area first in order to prep the skin but she has quite a growth how often were you shaving marcia it was like getting to like every day every day but that was quite no. some growth Marcia for every day so that's they would have asked her she's got thick coarse black hair here we go there's a little heat that you're gonna feel Oh, the laser is painful. We're all done. What does it feel like? It's but that's because you've been shaved. You can take from five to six treatments to get the best results. More than I that, really sis. I hope we can get it done in time for the pageant. The first step of Marsha's... So she won't. So you need a laser hair removal session once every four to six weeks. And if this is only a four month process, then she's probably only going to have four or five treatments. And that's not going to be enough to completely rid her of facial hair, sadly. She'll need more than that. I've always found, no matter who I've spoken to, it's always been, you need more than what they recommend. They recommend four to six treatments. Like, I've known people to go for like 12, 18, and then they're seeing dramatic results. So it's just like, I don't know what, who these practitioners are saying this for, because that's not the case. Feminization plan is underway. Right, her plan is underway. Sylvia's next appointment is at the dentist, and she's the in for a surprise. Oh. You're getting braces today, are you excited? Braces? Not really, but... I'm not excited. Braces? You're going to put braces on me. No. How is she going to have braces for four months? We're going to zoom bleach her teeth, and then I'll prepare all of her upper teeth for veneers and put braces on her lower teeth. Oh. I'm not looking forward to braces, but I'm excited at how I'm going to look afterwards. 
We're all done. Oh my god. You're awesome. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> Good. And that's why you're awesome, because I'm okay. <laughs> Do not agree. She's not awesome. Sylvia's positive attitude will help her make it through the rest of the program. Into that pageant, girls! Meanwhile, Marsha right. is confronted with her oh. first challenge. Oh, here we go. Jump up on the scale. Okay. Oh, wow. 187. That's the most I've weighed, like, ever. You're going to lose 37 pounds wow. in order to reach your goal weight of 150. With Nutrisystem, everything is pre-portioned for you, and yeah. you will lose the weight on the Nutrisystem plan. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of okay. weight to lose, but, you know, with this program, it sounds pretty easy. Marsha's optimistic about her weight loss plan. Well, weight loss is straightforward. Once you have like a good plan that you can stick to, the best diet is the diet that you can stick to with consistency. That's that's the tea girls. The tea girls! But losing 37 pounds in four months whilst undergoing plastic surgery is not going to be easy. So I do feel like it's very sad that Marsha felt the need to say that then because clearly someone has told her, oh, it's very easy. Yeah, you go through the program and you'll lose all the weight. No, that's not how it works. No. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Marsha's optimistic about her weight loss plan. Now it's time to learn the role plastic surgery will play in her transformation. Okay. Good to see you. Marsha's a tall, big hey, boned versus... woman and she feels very self conscious about the masculine Depressed. appearance. I'd really like to go have a more feminine face. Yes. And that is deeply relatable, sis. Okay, really open up your eyes. Then we're gonna... I don't think she needs a brow lift. Look how, like, wide open her eyes are. She's got so much beautiful lid space. I think what she needs is a visit to, like, someone who really understands what they're doing with eyebrows. I don't think she needs a brow lift. Like, a brow lift is a really dramatic procedure for this. Don't you think? I think half the people on this show didn't need a brow lift, but that's just my opinion. I mean, I'm actually getting a brow lift, so there we are. <laughs> then we're gonna narrow the nose. Let's go ahead and talk about the body, okay? We're gonna do a breast augmentation to a full D. We're gonna do a lot of liposuction. Stomach, flanks, outer thigh, inner thigh, the area below flanks. the buttocks. Knowing that you're gonna take it to the next level in the gym, work out really hard, right? Otherwise, it's not gonna work. When I walk in a room, I just want people to say, wow. This surgical plan oh, is that's... a crucial step in bringing Marsha out of her shell. She has a gorgeous little smile there at the end. That was such a moment of like, Oh, I just want to be, like, loved and appreciated and for someone to go, wow, when they see me. And uh, to be honest, I think every single person in my audience here watching this video right now will be able to sympathize with that. I think we've always, uh, everyone has wanted that one moment where you just kind of feel a bit like, wow. Or someone has that response where they're like, <gasps> wow, who is that? Do you know what I mean? Like, everyone wants that at least once in their life. So it's understandable. Again, it's understandable. I just feel like this show is a little bit aggressive and predatory in the way that it does it. If this was a different concept for this show, if the show actually took time to make meaningful change in these people's lives, I'd feel very different about it, but it's not. It's just shocking overhauls done for shortcuts. And that's gout, girls! I want to talk to the manager, girl! The day of surgery has finally Ooh. arrived for this, I feel like this is going quick. This is the last day that I look like this. How are you? That's Excited. true. It's Mark a lovely time, hairnet. You just make a statement these years. Tell me about it. All my life. Oh, oh, here we go. Ready? Yeah. Say goodbye to your ears. Bye. Oh my god! Straight into it! Oh, yeah, Hoover, Hoover the turkey girls! I don't understand! Service some liposuction. Lipo. Now I'm going to pin back her ears. Sylvia's ears are pinged out like folding doors. So we have to take out folding some cartilage doors, from behind the ear and then pin them back. Ooh! Ooh. I'm extremely happy the way the ears came out. Okay. Now we're on to the nose job. I had to cut out some cartilage from her ears. I'm now transferring this cartilage as a building block to help refine her nose. Wow. Okay. Wow. That's absolutely stunning. Oh my goodness. Perfect. Sylvia, hon. Hey, how are you? Oh, she's Surgery shaking. Surgery went extremely smoothly today. I was very satisfied. Wait, I'm sure shaking? Sylvia will be thrilled oh. with her transformation, too. Wait, why is she walking? Why isn't she being like wheeled out? Oh, there we go. With her surgery complete, Sylvia heads to the Privé Recovery Retreat for a few crucial days of healing. The Privé Recovery Retreat? Is that the first time we've heard the word spoken? Is that the first time we've heard them ever name where they're healing? Is that the first time? Privé, girls. I feel like I've said that before, though, so maybe not. 
I don't know. It's a difficult day to day, girls. I just don't quite understand what's happening. Now it's Marsha's turn in the OR. Marsha, go. Spotlight for once instead of being in the shadows. Marsha has a very masculine looking phone structure. So the goal is to bring out her feminine side. Let's talk about what we're uh -huh. going to do today. We're going to do an endoscopic brow lift. Mm. We're going to do your breasts and we're going to do a lot of liposuction lower yeah. body area. Okay. And the way we're going to do the nose is we're going to take the bump off and refine the tip. Right. Ooh. Oh, that's going to be me. Relatable. Bye really bye to the old me. All this fat here. She got the typical liposuction oh, we actually do on a man. Okay. Why are they saying that constantly? She's got the tip. Like, that wasn't needed to say. You didn't need to say there. She's got the typical liposuction we need to do on a man, girls. Like, the whole point of this show is to increase her levels of femininity and comfortability with herself. When she watches this back, or when she did watch it back, and they were like, oh, this is what we usually do for men. Is that going to build her confidence? Or is that going to potentially give her another complex about something? That, to me, doesn't sound like an uplifting experience of being like, she, they, he could have said anything. He could have said, she'll look lovely after we've done this liposuction. No, he didn't say that. He said, this is the kind of lipo we do on a man. <laughs> Like, why? 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 Why say that? It's so unnecessary to say that. So we're finished with the liposuction. Now we're going to do a breast augmentation to balance and feminize her body. Okay. You know what? Sometimes big things come in big packages. Is that how they arrive? <laughs> That's funny. It's a bit like takeaway food or something. We've really achieved what I think is a feminization of her body. And we need her face to match. Right. We're going to raise the brows, take fat out of the cheeks and jawline and under the chin. Oh, yes. Surgery went really oh, well. No. Marsha's got a great attitude, but oh. she's gonna have to do the work in the gym to make it pay off. Poor Marsha. Oh look. No oh, well, she looks better there. On the swan. That's the one, girls. When we left our swan, Sylvia had undergone several procedures to enhance her smile. She did. I'm not looking forward to races. Marsha was ready to enter the spotlight. I just want people Ooh. to say, wow. She took her first step toward leaving behind a humiliating daily ritual. What does it feel like? They're really like laying out and thick, underwent aren't extensive they? surgery to contour her masculine frame. Two okay. days after surgery, Marsha is keeping a positive attitude. Oh, Hi, Marsha! Marcia. Do you feel okay? Uh -huh. Post surgery is not glamorous. Fine. I feel wonderful. You're cruising. Okay, Ooh. sweetie. Awesome. I'm gonna kick some butt. Marsha's healing is on track. Her final surgery will help bring her transformation into focus. Hey. Laser! Marcia, I'm pleased to let you know that you're an excellent candidate for the LASIK procedure. Did they say this? They I'm didn't say this. <gasps> Did it. Oh, oh, laser yeah. is scary, you isn't it? You are awesome. Marsha sheds yet another aspect of her former self. She doesn't need her glasses anymore. Meanwhile, okay. Sylvia has been working on her inner healing since the program began. Right. Sylvia has trouble trusting men, which I think relates back to her childhood and her parents' broken That's marriage. That's relatable. I'm hoping she can address those issues by having a conversation with her father through a role play exercise. Oh, I don't like televised therapy. I don't know what it was to be loved because I don't, I never felt it from you. I couldn't get close to anyone. Mm -hmm. And when I did find someone, I held on to that for dear life. And when that man left me too, it destroyed me. This is too much for television. Sylvia needs to go through the grieving process before what she can What is your hair home. doing, Dr. Iani? What is that? Sil your entire head is just full of flyaways. Okay, that is a bit much. I'm not sure I enjoy watching therapy on TV. Again, I think I've said this every time that we've seen therapy, it does feel like a little bit of breach of privacy because how can you expect legitimate healing of the soul through therapy if your therapy, if you feel like you want to slightly hold back in your therapy? Because you're not gonna want everything to appear on TV. That's ridiculous. Go through the grieving process before she can move on. I'm mad. Okay. I'm extremely mad. Week five. I'm scared of trusting again. Sylvia's having a hard time letting go. Letting Meanwhile, go? Meanwhile, Therapy isn't letting go. Right, here Your we go. face is hot. I know, it's hot. Come on, just push a little bit harder. You can do it. I'm so tired. Marsha's really struggling in the gym, and she still has a lot of weight to lose. I wonder why she might be struggling. I wonder why. We're just going to check to see where you're at, okay? Looks like you're at 172. 
Taking off these last 22 pounds is really frustrating. She's her. lost an incredible the amount of weight already. I never have done in my whole life. Nothing's happening. I mean, how is that? I feel like I'm stuck I mean, in a rut. Happening. While it Marcia happening, struggles sis. with motivation. Shush. So it is very difficult when it comes to um, active weight loss because sometimes you do feel like you've hit a plateau and then you're like, nothing I do is working. I'm so stressed. But she has more than enough reason for this like plateau to be happening because she's literally in the gym working like through post-surgery like healing. Of course, she's allowed to say my face is hot. I don't have the energy. I just need to take it down a notch. Of course you do. You don't need to like, ex you don't need to become exhausted every single day in order to make a meaningful impact on your life you don't have to i don't know where this thing of like work hard and see results comes from because also you don't have to work yourself to the bone to see results you just don't have to some days even pigeon steps are progress you know sylvia is caught off guard by an unexpected package from her boyfriend michael babe you know you mean the world to me oh and i couldn't imagine my life without you oh and at this moment i would love for you to accept this gift oh Adam. Oh! Oh! oh. <laughs> Sylvia, will you marry me? Oh! Oh my god, I can't oh. believe you did this! Oh, that's quite sweet! I miss you. Oh! I'm so nervous! I'm getting like. He's spoken about marriage and how he wants to, you know get married and things like that but I've I mean I probably wouldn't have done that I would have probably done it at the pageant at the very end and been like she's gonna marry me girls I've never met a lesbian that does seem like quite loving vibes doesn't it I don't get like a mean streak like we've seen with some other husbands and partners in this show shall we say I feel like that's actually quite a legitimately lovely little thing to see in this like ocean of madness that is the swan girls or should I say the lake of madness because swans why aren't you making it to the pageant I am oh. very overwhelmed right now oh Sylvia is still dealing with trust issues and is unsure of her feelings our swan coach pays her a visit to discuss her surprise proposal. Oh. I know you don't completely trust your boyfriend, right? No. After what happened to me, I don't trust anyone. It's not that easy. That's mm. huge. That's marriage. So yes. Yes. But haven't you been working on that since you're here? Forever. That's forever. That's how I look at well, that forever. And I don't want to get It's not hurt. really forever. Sylvia, listen to me. You can't be afraid to love again. While Sylvia oh, contemplates off her a sentence. major life decision, the Swan sends Marsha a surprise visitor for some much needed inspiration. I'm just here to tell Marsha ah! if she can do it. She's a lot like I was, you know, oh she's my tall God! and she has a lot of weight to lose. Rachel from the first season of The Swan struggled with her own weight problem. The Swan Girls! But she persevered and was crowned the ultimate Swan. Oh yeah, spoilers! <laughs> hey Marsha! Oh my God, Rachel, you look amazing. How do you feel about everything? I've never really worked out. I'm fast at positive. You're reminding me like so much of me. I'm looking at you right now. I see me six months ago sitting here just like you six know what? months I ago. Do this. I gotta make a change. And I lost 35 pounds and I six months ago. So they filmed this before the reveal of the first pageant. No, that's where I was six months ago. Oh, maybe not. Maybe it was like six, maybe she means six months after the pageant. How weird. How weird. Oh, isn't it weird to see Rachel? Even in my, like, research for what happened after the Swan Girls, I didn't even know that Rachel had reappeared in the Swan season two. Didn't even know. Couldn't find it anywhere. So that is kind of strange. I don't like what they've done with her hair, though. It just looks like there's so much, like, bronze banding. Do you know what I mean? Interesting. And also in the gym in a full face of makeup. Of course she's going to look great. Hmm. I, I know that you could do it, too. Mm. I want to do this for me. I don't want to go I like and be down with this and feel like the pudgy girl. I want to feel good about myself. Marsha's spirits are lifted. What a weird little... Sylvia's oh, are they? Lifted, she's all better. Devastating news from home. Oh, my God. Now what? Sylvia. Ryan! Hey. What's I just, up? I, I just got a call. There's been an accident. <gasps> Boyfriend Michael's been in a car accident. No! Let's go. If Michael is very ill, yeah, I'm gonna go home. My heart is pounding so fast. Hello? Michael? Michael, what happened? My car got hit so bad. I did a 360 two times. What happened to you, your body? How are you? My left leg is 
pain and whatever. Are you are you being serious oh, or are you, is there more and you're not saying? Don't lie to me. I'm traumatized. My mind clutches. The car is totaled. Oh my god. And I'm thinking of you and how you're missing a lot of things. Oh my god. Here. I'm sorry. What are the I chances? Something in the hole. Now Sylvia's yeah. biggest. Okay, that did actually sound like. Not a hugely serious thing, although I know that his, he mentioned his mental health there and he also mentioned a leg injury, but it's not like he's in hospital like and needs immediate urgent care. Do you know what I mean? So there is some level of safety to that, that she can feel safe in her decision to stay with the SWAN program. But isn't that strange how we saw like a behind the stage, behind the scenes kind of moment there where we followed the producer, tapped on the door. It wasn't just like, there's been an incident. It was just like, hello, Marsha. There's been an accident. Like, they really tried to hype that up, didn't they? She must have felt so horrible until she spoke on the phone with him then. Oh! Production. A very strange episode we're watching today, my loves. Very strange language used, both in the... In terms of, like, body shapes and sizes and types, and also the language used around, like, shocking someone into making good TV. Challenge will be focusing on the programme. Okay, focusing Marcia on the program. Marsha and Sylvia are only one month away from their ah, reveals. One month already! The Swan Girls! Oh, we're already here at Jeffree Star's house. Welcome back to the Swan. <gasps> There's now, the banister. It's been a month since we've oh, seen Marsha and Sylvia. Outfit. And nearly oh. three months since they've seen themselves in a mirror. It's hard to oh, imagine, isn't it? You look it? so good but tonight, Amanda. in just Amanda. a moment, we'll finally see the results of their transformations. And before we do that, Ooh. why don't we Illuminati. check in with our team of experts who have worked around the clock with these Oh, women. let's not bother. Team, Marsha <laughs> came to us claiming that she wanted to be invisible. Oh. Dr. Yanni, do you think she's still going to want to hide from the outside bing, world? Bing, when Marsha got here, she was extremely socially Are they anxious, revealing Marsha first? Isolated, but she's worked hard in therapy, and I think she knows now that not only does she deserve to be respected, but she's ready to be seen. Oh, Dr. she's Dr. got Dr. a bump What was in. your plan to bring out her beauty? I think Marsha felt invisible because you really couldn't get a good feel for her features. So the idea was to make her more distinctive, just really bring out her inner beauty. Well, we'll witness the results in just a moment, but first let's flash back to the Marsha. No, we I've already seen it, girls. Here she is, the brand new Marsha Medelberg. Oh, here she is, girls. Open the door, man servant. Tarot cards. Ooh, what's this? She's been on Pretty Little Thing and got a two-piece. Oh no, it is a dress. Is it a dress? Oh, I'm not sure. Oh, I don't know. I wouldn't have picked it. Lovely hair. Love a side Marcia. moment. Oh. <laughs> She's just very athletic build. I am in shock. You look out of this world. Come with me. Oh. Let's... <laughs> Marcia, tell me, how are you feeling right at this moment in time? I'm feeling good. What about your emotional transformation, Marcia? Because you came to us, you were so shy and you were so reserved. I feel beautiful now. I believe in myself. And nobody can take that away. I think this is the best uh, hair we've seen so far. Like, there's some, like, layers, but it's anymore. not... I don't know. <laughs> there's some layers, but it's not, like, overly layered where I'm like, oh, what a horrible haircut. Like, I said, well, maybe there's a little bit, like, a little bit going on up here that I'm not a huge fan of. But otherwise, this is actually quite an acceptable hairstyle. Dare I say it? Oh, my goodness, what's happening to me? Maybe, maybe the COVID's addled my brain, girls. Oh, I've cracked the code, girl, girl. girl, she's got a degree. I don't know who the old Marsha is really? anymore. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. <laughs> don't say you yay. You have yourself for, um, for quite a while. Mm. I'm excited to now. <laughs> that time has finally arrived. I can't wait for you to see yourself. Behind on, that girls. curtain over there Illumina is the they... mirror. Now, the mirror of gout. Step up to the curtain. And when you're ready, we'll let you see yourself. I'm ready. You are ready. Good. <gasps> she time. looks so, like, happy. Good luck. Oh, I love happiness. <laughs> Illuminati girls! Curtain. Budget. Increase. Expenses. Taxes. Okay, Curtain. Marcia, this is the moment right, we've we been waiting for. Come on. Are you ready? Take your heel off and smash it. Beat! Oh. Come on, Marsha, come on, come on. <laughs> no way. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, I could get used to looking at a mirror. Oh. 
Oh, she looks. I just want to go out. <laughs> okay. Something tells me you don't want to be invisible anymore. No. Marcia. <laughs> I'm ready for this. Marsha, I mean, I think you're incredible, and so do these guys. Come on in and say congratulations, everyone. Welcome. Okay, I need some massive hug. When Marsha walked through those doors, wow. Brand wow. slam. I was blown away. She looks yeah. incredible. She does. Marsha came here hiding from the world, and now she's got a spark and a fire, and it shows through her eyes. Gorgeous fake tan as well. Oh. It's Jeffrey's time. Right. Pause. No, don't you dare. So let's just have a little moment there to talk about Marsha's reveal, because that reveal is quite possibly maybe even the best, like, positive reveal we've ever ever seen on the swan there wasn't any like <gasps> it was just kind of oh i'm gonna cough after that one girls there was it was just like a lovely reveal of emotions and happiness and the first thing she said was like oh i feel so happy like there was genuine light in her eyes and in her smile from that and i feel so positive having seen that because that doesn't make me feel like they took loads of shortcuts with her, even though they did. Okay, let's watch the second reveal. That's the one, girl. Ah, that's the one. Ah, oh, that's the one. We just saw Marsha's fantastic we did. reveal. And there's one more to come. It's her competition, Sylvia Cruz. Oh, Sylvia Plath. Team, Sylvia came to us embarrassed about her physical appearance, but also to heal from a very painful divorce. Yes. Dr. Hayworth, what was your plan for Sylvia? Well, yeah. In addition to total body liposuction, I wanted to bring some harmony and elegance to Sylvia's face through some key surgical maneuvers. You want to make her sensualness? And Dr. Okay. Yanni, what were the important lessons that she had to learn in therapy? Sylvia had to learn to let go of the pain from her past so she could learn to trust bumpets. again and open herself up to loving and to being loved. Okay. I mean, the thing is with Dr. Iani, everything she says, kind of, well, maybe not everything, actually. Hold your horses, girl. There's been a few times where I've been like, absolutely not, don't say that. But she says what people want to hear. She says things that are like, well, she spent time, you know, overcoming this problem in her life and she's come here tonight being a gorgeous woman ready for the runway. Like, she says kind of stuff like that that's like, fluffy nonsense language that doesn't actually mean anything it kind of gives this idea that like therapy is just kind of a bit wishy-washy unnecessary whereas actually over time therapy can have real world benefits she doesn't use the language that denotes that she uses language like get over move forward from like leave behind and it's like though all those things that happen to you mentally they don't get left behind they come with you and you gain the management skills to be able to minimize maybe the pain that they have on you in your day-to-day -day life there's no just like get over it as such this is why the phrasing i really don't like the phrase that it happened to janice dickinson's modeling agency like you can't break someone down to build them up you're just breaking them down and giving them extra baggage. That's all you're doing. Well, tonight we'll see just how far she's come, but first let's get a glimpse of what she looked like. No, let's not, Amanda. Right, here we go. It's my honor to reintroduce the brand new Sylvia Cruz. Come on, Sylvia girls. Open the door, man servants, and reveal the gorgeous woman on the go. Oh, I hate this dress. No. Lovely necklace. That is not a figure flattering dress. A bustier. Oh, wow. Lovely underwear. Oh my god. Sylvia, well, it's good to see you. Do I like the hair? Come on, let's have a chat. Um, I'm not sure about the question. highlights, but I love what the curls. What did you do with Sylvia? <laughs> I'm not saying that. It's a very good thing. Believe me, you look incredible. That's it's good. It's a very good That's thing. Nasty. It's a very good <laughs> thing. <laughs> thing. How are you feeling? Very, very excited. Today I feel brand new, from the inside and out. I also okay. believe the congratulations are in order, because I heard that your boyfriend sent you a video message about something. What was that? I got engaged. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what did he say? Oh, they would have Will loved this. Will you marry me? <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, oh. he hasn't been able to see Annabelle. you yet, right? Oh, yes. What do you think he's going to think about the new Sylvia? Wow. <laughs> That's oh, let's thinking. hope so. <laughs> well, you know, you haven't seen yourself for three months. Was that hard? Die. <laughs> I want to see. I want to see what her lower teeth look like because she's had braces, and I bet you they aren't fully healed yet because this is only months. You can't treat an entire jaw of teeth with braces for just like a few months, right? I don't know. Well, maybe you can actually. Dent I'm not a dentist. Dentists in the comments, let me know. Okay, Sylvia. Well, I have some good news for you. 
the time has come. Oh. Okay, because behind that curtain there's a mirror. Oh, now here we go. To step up, and when you're ready, we'll let you see yourself. Okay. Oh. Okay. Here we go, girls. Good luck. Off you go. Da Illuminati go. Oh, come on, Sylvia. Look how ominous those curtains are. That is the gate to hell. Abandon all hope, all ye who enter here! <laughs> okay, Sylvia, I'll focus on it. the diamond. Are you ready? Hideous lamp. Who is that woman? Yes, Who I'm is ready. she? Come on, girls. Come on, Sylvia. Can we get a two for two really positive reaction? Come on! <gasps> Twinkle, twinkly, sparkly ladies. Oh! Oh yeah, her ears! My hair should have been off! This is beautiful! <laughs> yeah, you Dr. tell that hairdresser. Hayward. Thank you so much! <laughs> oh yeah, I'm loving it. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna be here for a while, guys. <laughs> yeah, she's in the mirror for a while, isn't she? Wow! <laughs> oh, my God. oh, Sylvia. How exhausting is this, Thank everyone? Thank you so much. Don't you look incredible? Yes. It looks good. Come on, guys. Oh. oh my when those doors first opened and I saw Sylvia, she represented not only the best of beauty, but also the best of charisma. Oh, what really? a lovely thing he said then. I am really happy with Sylvia's result because she worked really hard. She has a great personality, and she surrendered to the program. Surrendered, surrendered, surrendered to Nelly Galan. Jeffrey Chan. Right, okay, let's talk quickly about Sylvia's reveal there. Another positive reveal. At the, at the, although I will say at the beginning there when she had that like shrinking violet moment, I was a bit like, oh no, what are we going to see? But then immediately overcome with emotion and so happy with her outcomes. If this was always the swan, it wouldn't have had all this like negative press and stereotypes around it because they're, they're, it gives you a positive feeling. Yes, it's really dramatic and over the top and they do cut corners, but in the end, it gives you that uplifting feeling. And that is kind of what reality TV does and should do. But it also in a bad, in a weird way is a double-edged sword because it makes out that this show is a positive show and it is not a positive show. What's that phrase? Even manure has uses. On the swan. Oh, the swan. Oh, tell me about the swan girl. Oh, here we go. Swan. Swan about girl. Goiter. Welcome back to the swan. Right, here we now, go. Now tonight, you've seen two women who've made tremendous strides both inside and out. Yes. Now we'll find out who our judges in consultation with our experts have decided to send to the belt swan that is. pageant. Horrible. Marcia or Sylvia. Before we bring them out, let's take one final look at their transformation. Here they are now. Right, here Gentlemen. we go. Gentleman servant. Oh. Oh. Clickety click. Go. Oh. Oh, she's so tall and elegant. I have no Sylvia idea who's going to the pageant. Hello. How are you both? Although, in the last episode, sorry to pause it here, I know it's at a cliffhanger, girls. In the last episode, someone wrote in the comments, I've noticed it's always the first girl called to the mirror that goes through to the pageant. So in this case, it will be Marsha. Place your bets now, girls. We'll have a little vote. Well, maybe not a vote. That's a bit much, isn't it? It's a bit much in the comments for all this. Hello. How are you both? Oh, slam that door! Good. You both look absolutely incredible. Are you feeling okay? Yes. Off spoke. Right. Okay, ladies, the time has come. Only one of you can move on to the pageant with a chance to be crowned. They could have given Marsha such a long, elegant, like dress to make her look long. Now, with that title comes cash and prizes worth hundreds absolutely of thousands. Absolutely nothing. Of dollars. They're worth nothing, girls. Now you've been evaluated on beauty. And poise, and of course, poise. overall transformation. Poise. The envelope I have in my hand. I don't know. I guess Marsha. I'm going to I'm gonna predict Marsha. Forward to the pageant tonight. You guys ready? Da, 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 Good luck to you both. I got the girl. Okay. The name oh, of here the we go. Going to the pageant is. 
Hemst! Hemst! Marsha Metalberg. Ow! Congratulations! Marcia. Whoever you are in the comments, you are a psychic prophecy woman! When I saw Marsha walk through the door, I was breathless. I think she's had one of the most drastic physical transformations we've had on the program. Have you cracked the code, girls? <laughs> Sylvia came to the program needing a lot of help, both physically and emotionally, and I think she came out of here beautiful inside and out. Well, at least she gets to meet her fiance, I guess, now. Sylvia. All right, go and stand over there in the naughty corner. Well, you know what? You should still be so proud of yourself, because look at you. I am, I'm very proud of myself. Right? This was awesome. Her lips are lovely. The most incredible three months. Yes. Is it three months or four months? What is this? Oh no, the pageant's four, isn't it? It's gonna be, yes. There are a few other people who are oh very proud God. of you too that want to see you and congratulate you. Oh. Okay, my dear, come with me. <laughs> Gentlemen. Who's it? Who's it going to be? I wonder who. Oh. 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 My cold, dead heart is a degree warmer. Oh. And he's like? worn a black suit. Black on black. Gorgeous. She's beautiful. Her results are amazing. I'm very excited that I'm going to be marrying her. Yay. Oh, well, we can put you on the swan You're next. <laughs> I'm speechless. Oh. Oh. So, oh, no! Children! <laughs> oh, oh. My God. And the gorgeous, glamorous sisters that she was like, I don't, I don't look like them. When I walked in and seen my sister, I was like speechless. I didn't know what to say. Oh. She looked like she's beautiful. Oh. <laughs> this was quite oh. a journey for me. It was wonderful. I would do it all over again. Oh. <laughs> oh. Marsha, come here, girl. <laughs> Congratulations. By the naughty oh. step. How are you feeling? I'm just really shocked. <laughs> I can't believe it. Well, you better believe it. You know why? Because the next time we see you, you're going to be up on stage. On the stage. The How do you feel about that? Doing all the I choreo. <laughs> I really can't wait. Well, we're excited for you. And She's you should be so proud of yourself because we are too, Marsha. Well done. Marsha's so you. precious. Okay, next week, two more women will reveal their new transformed selves in the ongoing quest to be named. Gosh, is it the end already? The Swan. The Swan Girl, sir! Oh. Next week no. On well, my loves, I've got some thoughts. I've got some thoughts about that. Well, my lovelies, I'm going to pop away my laptop there, take out my Ochinger. Let's have a little talk about what we've seen today, have we? So at the beginning of this episode, I thought they were going to set it up for like Sylvia had some sort of like really devastating news and it was all going to go wrong and there was going to be some sort of like horrible reveal. Like he was in a car accident, but it wasn't mentioned ever again. I thought when he proposed to her and she got that VHS, VHS, I'm never shopping in VHS again. I honestly thought that it was going to be some like awful reveal that would just make me feel like, oh no, oh no. But it really didn't. We really saw a great example of love there. And I don't even think that it was like, it wasn't, it wasn't that he wasn't doing anything special. He just wasn't being an asshole like some of the other guys that we've seen throughout this entire season. Weird. And Marsha's results, Marsha's results were actually quite lovely to see. I can imagine that she did feel so feminine and so gorgeous. And that is a really relatable thing to me is that it's just like to be given that chance to align yourself with how you feel is actually quite magical to watch. I just wish they'd put her in a better dress at the end. That like a strange like was it like boat neck dress? I don't know about that. I just don't know about that. She needed something that was like maybe even halter neck, like a wider halter neck, like full length gown. Interesting. And also to the person who said that the girl revealed first always goes to the pageant. That's an interesting thing that we're going to have to now like watch for the last episode because I never really clocked onto it until just now. So it's like, I wonder what's going to happen next girls and to another absolutely scorching hot day in london today i have no idea if susan will like me wearing this outfit but you know what who cares <laughs> we all gotta die of something 
So, my lovelies, it's time for another episode of That's The One, girls. So, a little update in my life, my loves. I am moving. I will be moving in literally two weeks and three days from today. And I'll be living in the same building as Roly. We will be neighbours. So, I cannot believe. I can't believe it's happening. I can't believe it's happening. I'm so excited. I've been waiting for this for months and months and months and months and months. Finally, a place came up and I snapped it, girls. But that also does mean that a few days after I move, I am going to Marbella for my FFS. So, the reason why I have super white blonde roots now is because it's probably going to be the last time I'm going to be able to do it for months. Oh, come on, girls. Let's get nervous. Uh, so, my lovelies, in the last episode, there was a lot that we saw. So, we saw the youngest ever contestant on the Swan program. And I just, I just, I just don't know how I feel about that. I think I made my, uh, my feelings perfectly clear in that video. You can go back and watch it if you want. But there was a top comment left on that video. And I just want to share it with you guys because it could actually explain a lot of the things that Marsha was going through. So, Shannon Staley has written, Marsha clearly has... PCOS. Getting on the right birth control and getting my hormones regulated helps so much with extra arm hair and facial hair. It would do her a world of wonders. Now, I'm actually really quite shocked that a lot of you guys shared the opinions in the comments that you haven't had blood tests before going in for surgery. That, to me, just sounds a little bit wild. Like, I think when I had my appendix out, I didn't have to have a blood test. But any time I have had elective surgery, I have had to have a blood test to make sure that a, I'm not carrying any like blood diseases and B, that I'm actually in a fit and healthy state to be able to go under surgery. So it is kind of a surprise that you guys haven't, like some of you guys haven't had to do that. I don't know. It just seems really strange to me. Maybe I will come across a surgeon or a surgery at some point in my future that will say, no girl, we don't need a blood test. But I might just have one anyway, just to make sure I'm okay. Aren't you clever? Thank you. It's been brilliant. So my lovelies, this is the final episode that we are watching today. The final Swan episode before the pageant girls the pageant only one will make it to the pageant girls a dead body who remembers the pageant do you remember her problematic lady on the go it feels like we're coming to the end of an era honestly it does i will be filming the finale with roly in upcoming weeks ready to go live when i am away so it's just kind of like oh the end of the swan girls and then of course as i did with season one i will be filming a where are they now what happened after the swan girls why don't you pop in your oh hanger i today i've spiced it up a little bit spiced up your life every boy and every girl you've got gout i have decided to be on the monster blue today so this one tasted a little bit like do you remember i don't know british people might know this so in the tuck shop when you were like a child you used to be able to get those like fizzy blue bubble gum like really naff like fizzy drinks like re they were like seven pence or something ridiculous like that absolutely appalling for you kind of tastes a little bit like that and i'm very into it not sponsored sis although monster if you would like to reach out i'm very available oh and i guess it's time to find out if it's a scandal girls tonight on the swan it's That's the, the final two competitors <gasps> the final two amy williams is a single oh. mother who feels i'll like drive the baby nowhere. i had to move back in with my mom and dad and i just felt like the biggest loser can the SWAN program help her recover years of physical neglect? She has one of the worst infections in her mouth I have ever seen. Oh my goodness. And Dory Weber is a woman who has struggled for 10 years to She's have a, a child. I was rushed She's a woman to the on hospital the edge. where they told me that I lost the baby. Oh. I just feel like I have a broken spirit. Can the SWAN experts help put her life back on track? I'm hoping that going through this program Nelly will Galan is not so qualified. that I don't go to sleep every night crying. With one mm -hmm. spot remaining, who will join Jennifer from week one? Jennifer! Gina from week two. Gina! Erica from week Erica. three. Carrie from week four. Carrie! Cinnamon from week five. Cinnamon! Delisa from week Delisa six. Delisa go! And Marsha from week seven. Marsha go! To take the eighth and final spot in next week's swan pageant. Ooh, to actually become a real life swan. Tonight on The Swan. The Swan Girls! Okay, wow. First of all, we are in for an episode tonight, aren't we, my lovelies? How on earth am I going to brand this video without having to delve into the realms of the unacceptable? I do wonder. Good evening, I'm Amanda oh, Byram. And I can hear your shoes. Now, we're uh, only one week away from our grand finale. Look at the state of that seam. Oh, Amanda, you have not only turned the pageant. Look, looks like she's got one, two, three, four, five, five little tiny penises <laughs> maybe it looked better in the studio but like what is is this ochre is this ochre is this a sateen ochre a sateen oh nice necklace and just one spot remaining tonight two incredible tales of transformation She's are going about over to unfold here. come on but please caress the banister forward with a chance to be crowned the swan do you know i never listen to what she's saying is she gonna trust about it pissing banister piss oh my god here we go <laughs> 
imagine the orchestra that they had to get involved for all of this. And there's a guitar. There's a 17-piece string quartet. No, I don't know the. I don't know orchestra words. <laughs> oh, Jeffrey Star's house. Already? What's happening? What's this? Oh. <gasps> What's, what's a deliberation? Evening Executed. Experts. Let's meet the first of our two competitors tonight. Amy Williams, a single mother from Texas. We haven't seen that before. That was different, wasn't it? We never, we literally never see them like going into the room, except the first episode where they're like, I think that we have cast out the woman on the go. Some nonsense about them being doctors excavating the sensual beauty of the inner self or some nonsense like that. It almost felt like they were going on Dragon's Den and Deborah Meaden would have been like, I'm out. But please give me a brow lift. I'm Amy Williams. Amy. From a little northwest suburb of Houston, Texas. Tex. I'm 27. I'm a mom and a waitress. 27. My dream is to just sing, to be a performer, oh. to just stand in front of a crowd of a thousand people and be happy with how I look. It's maybe hard to understand. I think she's got a great singing voice, but Amy definitely does not think she's beautiful. She does have a self poor self-image. Oh, that's I relatable. Back because I was told I had a face for radio. <laughs> it did stop me dead in my tracks and it made me think I could have already been somewhere in my life. No, sis, what they don't tell you is that actually all the faces you see on television are lies. They are wearing pounds and pounds and pounds of specific TV-ready makeup. If you go onto stage, you have to wear stage-style makeup. That's how it works. The thing is, even the men, even the men on their TV shows and probably podcasts now. Men do a lot of podcasting, don't they? Oh. <laughs> I have a podcast myself, so I can't say that, but there we go. Oh! Shopping in BHS again! As a oh, disgusting save! I, I can't believe all this! You've mugged me, girls! I feel like they wear so, 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 so much makeup, and you might be saying, Luxaria, but you wear a lot of makeup. Uh -huh. I don't wear a lot, I just wear good makeup. And there is a difference. No pan stick for me! Not that I have a problem with pan stick. I could have already been somewhere in my life if I didn't look like this. <sighs> About four months ago, when I had to move back in with my mom and dad, I just mm. thought to myself, you know, here I am, this 27-year-old single mom, waitress that can't make it on her own. And I just felt like the biggest loser. Oh, but sis, that's not your fault. That is the economy's fault. Because guess what a universal millennial experience is? Moving back home with your parents. That's great, isn't it? We've taken longer to move out of our parents' homes. And occasionally we have to move back in order to survive. There is no fear or problem in saying that, even though it does feel pretty naff when it happens. Do not think that it is the end of the world because yes, although it's nice to have your own space and live in your own place, sometimes the situations don't just manifest like that. And especially with the skyrocketing costs of living now, it's not the end of the world. Just make sure that you have a plan in place to eventually be independent. That's all. There's no harm in the plan taking a few detours to get there. Absolutely none. And I just felt like the biggest loser. Mm, don't say the biggest loser. When I look at the mirror, I see get you. a big nose. I got hit in the mouth with a baseball in fifth grade, busted nose. my lip and broke my front tooth. Ooh. It's kind of embarrassing at times, especially when you wait tables and you're smiling and talking to people all day and they're looking at your mouth and you know they're thinking, what's wrong with their teeth? Mm, okay, really but that's not your fault. This chin right here. This Aqualix. chin that I have. I can do this one, which is kind of fun. <laughs> I just don't like that. I want it gone. My stomach is just a lot of loose skin and stretch marks. Ten and a half pounds worth of kid really loosens up the stomach. <laughs> oh, thank Pregnancy you. Pregnancy permanently changes I think the your body. Part would just be being away oh, from my daughter. Blonde. <laughs> thank you, baby. But Do you remember those? Remember those making those in like primary school? Those massive like what do we even got? A gondola? No, Gar uh, garland? Is that what they? Gondola. <laughs> <laughs> gone but not gondola a dead body it was like paper garlands when it was someone's birthday you'd be like ah oh, we made you this tat happy birthday oh god what even was school what even was that nothing was taught to me in school that has prepared me for life at all but my dream is to be happy with who i am <gasps> how i look relatable how i feel about myself i want relatable. to be the person people look up to and say she's been through that i'm going through that she, she made it through, so can I. Oh. I don't know how you would have done that back so in 2000. It's sad that that age-old joke five. of a face for radio could have such a bad impact on somebody's life. Dr. Yanni, how do you help build up her self-esteem again? 
she's like underachieving in every way. You can see it in her career, you can see it in her perception of herself. It's gonna be important to do some exploration and find out exactly what it is that she continues to do inside her head that sets up that behavior pattern in the world. And Dr. Hayworth, she really feels that she's not pretty enough to pursue her dreams. What's your plan for her? Amy presents a surprisingly very challenging case because she doesn't have one single facial feature around which I can build a surgical plan. So you can't now, do where it. Where do I begin with a case like this? Yeah, well, so you can't I'll do definitely it. Definitely start with a rhinoplasty. Follow that up with an endoscopic brow lift. Oh, what a surprise! What I'm going to have to do is this tricky operation where I put in mandibular angle implants around her jaw. Once oh, that's, that's done, a first. I think then we can just focus in on her body. Liposuction, a simple breast lift. She'll obviously have a huge improvement in terms of body image. Dr. Worth, huh. can you salvage her teeth at all? Oh, she looks like she's about to burst into tears. So, with what Dr. Hayworth said there, I felt like if I was in a consultation and someone said to me, you don't have a feature that I can work around, so what I'm, I think I might do is a rhinoplasty and then maybe a brow, I wouldn't be like, oh, you've come to a conclusion and giving me a real uplifting confidence thing. I would not have gone to Dr. Hayworth if that was the case. If he'd have said any of those things to me in a consultation, I'd have been like, oh, well, that's naff. I'm going to go somewhere else then. Because I don't think that to be told not any of your features at all are a good place to start with. When Amy smiles, you see black everywhere. And that's decay. Amy's going to okay. need a full mouth reconstruction, and I'm going to have to pull in probably three or four different specialists to get Amy's mouth healthy wow. again. Between you all, it sounds like an awful lot of work and only three months to do it. Yeah, in, so that's wrong. Plan. That's wrong. No, shush, be quiet. If you're a dentist worth any amount of like money or any amount of like worth in your industry, oh, Sherry Worth, there's a shocking revelation, girls. I would be like, right, clearly this is unethical to do a full mouth reconstruction in three months. If she truly needs to get three or four other specialists in, how is she going to do that in three months? Impossible. Impossible. She needs to spend a year, 18 months under very specialist care to get the best outcome that will last for the rest of her life. She doesn't need quick fixes that are going to cause problems down the line. She certainly doesn't need Da Vinci veneers. Amy's swan transformation mm, begins with her face. She'll have a brow lift, lower eye lift, a okay. nose job, an upper lip lift, a chin Ooh. implant, and Amy will be the first swan to receive jaw implants to give her face a more defined look. Now we she would use filler, wouldn't we? She will have eye surgery to correct her vision. Oh, her okay. Body, she will have a tummy tuck, breast lift, and liposuction in four areas. Oh. Amy's biggest challenge will be at the dentist. She'll have extensive tooth reconstruction, 10 root canals, laser bone and gum surgery, da Vinci veneers and crowns. For her fitness transformation, Amy will be put on a nutrient. 10 root canals in three months. 10 root canals in less than three months, realistically. I'm just gonna leave that with you. 10 root canals. But um, not even in, not even in counting the other rest of what they said they're going to do to her teeth, but 10 root canals in less than 3 months. Mm. <laughs> oh, we wonder why everyone. And we wonder why everyone slated this show when it came out. For her fitness transformation, right, okay. Amy will be put on a Nutrisystem diet to oh, lose 25 pounds 25 and pounds. will spend 150 hours in the gym to tighten and tone her body to improve her poor self-image and learn how to set goals. We've never been told like an hourly count like that before, have we? 150 hours in the gym and the Nutrisystem diet. God. Like, to be honest, any amount of exercise will help you achieve your goals, no matter what your goals are. If your goals are like, oh, I really want to be able to walk a little bit further. Wonderful. Do more walking. Eventually, you'll be able to walk further. Do you know what I mean? You'll be able to improve your cardiovascular health. There are so many things you can do. And to say just 150 hours in the gym doesn't really make much sense. It's a weird, that's a weird choice for them to phrase it like that. Like 150 hours in the gym. Yes, but doing what? Are we doing, are we doing some of this one? Are we doing deadlifts? Are we doing Olympic lifting? Are we throwing a shot put? Are we swimming? Are we javelin? Are we fencing? Do you know what I mean? Like, it just doesn't make any sense. Beep, beep. I've got gout. poor self-image and learn how to set goals, Amy will undergo weekly therapy and coaching. Weekly. It's okay, not good experts, enough, our next competitor is Dory Weber. Now, she is dealing with the after effects of years of fertility treatments and a heartbreaking Ooh. miscarriage. Fertility treatments aren't fun, are they? My name is Dory Weber. I'm 40 years old. <gasps> Look at your hair! We're contractors and we live in Las Vegas, Nevada. I don't think I have very much self-esteem today. Oh, but you When I was young, hair. I was teased about my nose. There were some boys in my class who started calling me parakeet and banana nose. That was the beginning of my low self-esteem. 
as Harakia I got older, and I banana to nose. Off, but I think deep down inside, it really hurt. You just get those boys by the scruff of their head and just smash them into the tables. That is disgusting. Don't bully people about things they can't change in 30 seconds or less. In fact, don't bully people full stop. As I got older, I tried to laugh it off, but I think deep down inside, it really hurt still. I met my husband on a blind date, oh. and I truly felt inside that he was just doing it to be nice. She's actually probably one of the sweetest person you'll ever meet. And I oh. thought she was attractive. My whole goal in life was to get married and have children and start a family. For the past 10 years, I've been trying to have a child. I've been oh. on a fertility program, which required me to give myself nightly injections. Uh -huh. I did get pregnant. Everything oh. went fine. And then after 12 weeks, I woke up one night and I was rushed to the hospital where they told me that I lost the baby. What? Don't, don't put this music over it, sis. And it was probably like... the most devastating day of my life. We've spent so much money on trying to have a baby. And so when we looked into adoption, it was something my husband really didn't want to do. I try not to think about not being a mom because if I did, I don't think I would make it through each day. This is so heavy. This is far too heavy for when Dr. Iani and Nelly Galan. All that is taken on my body for the last 10 years. And I just feel like I have a broken spirit. I just started giving up on myself, the way I look. You don't need to pinch I'm your arms like that, way. sis. Your arms? But I would arms? like my 40s Not to be a new chapter in my life that I can okay. be more happy in. That's understandable. I'm <clears throat> going through this program will help me to be more accepting of my situation. They're just so going to give I you a brow lift and send you on your way. Every night crying. Wow. Okay, that was a lot. That's such a sad story. Let's reconvene. Dr. Yanni, I mean, obviously, her major issue is not being able to have children. How do you help her to cope with something like that? I think there's a couple of levels of loss that she has to grieve. One is that she had a miscarriage, and two is that it may be too late to have another baby. Okay, Debbie, obviously fertility treatments have made her put on quite a bit of weight. Now, is that easy weight to shift or not? Not really, because it really has messed up her metabolism. So I'm going to get her in the gym six days a week and really hit it hard. She needs overall work. Dr. Hmm. Worth, when I look at Dory, her teeth are really pushed back to her tongue. Okay. We're going to bring her teeth out significantly with veneers, but she'll need the support from the chin so her teeth don't look like they're out here and her chin's back here. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Her chin is very recessed. It really needs to come out. A chin implant will do that. We're going to mm -hmm. do a nose job, really define her nose, improve the tip. She needs breast augmentation. She needs a lot of liposuction. Ideally, you do a tummy tuck. But children, it may be a possibility. You won't, don't want to do that because it would basically undo the tummy tuck by stretching out the skin. Yes. Do you think then her 40s are a new chapter in her life? Like 40s is a new chapter for all oh, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Let's review her plan then. Okay, right. This is a weird Dory's one. plan includes several procedures oh, starting hair with her gorgeous. face. She will have a brow and upper eye lift, laser guy surgery, a nose job. Is an upper eye lift, is an upper eye lift a blepharoplasty? And I do not mean acanthoplasty because acanthoplasty is what we call like the fox eye look where it like tilts up the outer edge is it blepharoplasty i'm going to google that quickly because i don't want to be spreading misinformation girls a blepharoplasty is a type of surgery that repairs droopy eyelids and may involve removing excess skin muscle and fat so i guess that is technically an upper eye lift right that sounds that sounds pretty much like what it is right okay all right lazy guy surgery mm. a nose job Back transfer to her lips and cheeks, mm. a chin implant, and liposuction below her this chin. This is a lot of For work. For her body, Dory will have breast augmentation as well as liposuction in three areas. Dory's dental plan That's will not as much work as I thought bleaching, they were going to say. sculpting, da Vinci veneers, and deep cleaning. I want your gum tissue. For a weight loss transformation, Dory oh, will be hair is so a 1,200-calorie-a-day diet and will spend two hours a day at the gym focusing on cardio and muscle toning. Right. Okay, hang on. They say three months, don't they? So what's, what is three? So, uh, hang on. So 150 hours, wasn't it? 150 hours the other girl got. Please calculate that. Two hours a day times 90 days, which is approximately three months. 180 hours in the gym. But obviously they're going to be recovering for, from surgery for some of those weeks. I would hope so anyway. Not just push them straight off the operating table on, onto a treadmill. Meal. Walk for me, sir. Walk for me, sir. Walk for me, sir. I'll see you after the function. Yes. To help Dory overcome the pain of her infertility, she will undergo weekly therapy and coaching. So let's get started. Coming up next on the Swan. That's the one. 
It's the first day of the SWAN program, and our two competitors arrive in the Los Angeles apartment they'll now call home. Oh, look, it's actually Dory not too ochre. Those doors are very skinny. And come to terms with her longings to be a mother. Longings. I try not to think about not being a mom, because if I did... I don't think I would make it. They love this, like, black and white, but pop of colour, don't they? Man changed the face that set back her singing career. I held set myself back, back her because singing I was career. told I had a face for radio. Ooh, Both she's are become Swans safe. will undergo radical transformations, but it will be Ooh. three long months oh, before no they mirrors, see themselves girls. at their final reveal. That little, like, wow. wing okay, is so I'm unnecessary. No From day one, they learned the rules of the programme. I will stick to a Underground strict diet. Berlin. I will work out six days a week. I will go to therapy once a week. Is this daily Dory affirmation? Finds strength once and a week. Words from home. And it's Stand filmed. Stand tall and proud. And show them what a champion you are. Oh, that's but nice. But Amy's in pain as she thinks of the family she's left behind. Oh. Can you read this right now? I'm crying. Too hard. <laughs> so we're going to zoom in on you and make it worse. Commit. I'm a swan now. Program begins As the one. now. Gout. The mysterious passage Amy's of time. Amy's <laughs> transformation starts with a trip to her plastic surgeon. Oh, just, Amy just off to the plastic face. surgeon. Her bone structure is weak and it really... What did you just say? Plastic surgeon. Amy doesn't have a feminine face. Her bone structure is weak and... Well, Dr. Hayworth, I don't think you have a masculine face. You've got a weak jaw and a weak chin. Her bone structure is weak and it really... She looks so good look. there. Sorry, how dare you say this woman does not have a feminine face. Look how... Absolutely gorgeous. She looks there. I, uh, what? What is he talking about? She's got lovely, actually, uh, 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 some visceral viscera came out then, my loves. Connective tissue hoomst. Her bone structure is weak and it really gives her a plain look. Hey, Amy. Oh. Dr. Haywood. To give Amy's face a more angular and defined look, I literally have to build up her jaw and chin. I'd love to have a jawline. It's one of my biggest dreams. <laughs> Amy's going to be the first one to get mandibular angle implants, which very few I surgeons wonder, do because it is such a technically demanding procedure. I wonder, yeah, I wonder. incision inside the mouth, and we want to fit these things huh. on the ledge here. The one issue, though, with this surgery, there is a higher risk of infection. Oh. Okay, let's go on to your body now. We've got a lot of extra skin here, combined with a lot of stretch marks. Mm -hmm. We're Gosh, infection in the mouth. Here to here, and tighten this up. Okay. okay. Motherhood has taken a real toll on Amy's body. Correcting that won't be hard, but her face is going to be the real challenge. I'm really anxious to see how dramatic her results will be after the surgery. Thank you so Any much. Any mention of the pageant? Why not? No? Amy's eager to get started. While is Dory she? takes her first step towards a new look. Come on, Dory. The treatments have really wreaked havoc on Dory's body. She's Reaked gained a lot havoc. of weight and has a lot of loose skin. Havoc. I want to feminize her and find the beauty under that hard hat. Havoc. Look at a nice face, but the chin's a little short, a little what we call recessive. So we'll do a chin implant, a little chin liposuction. One right. of the main things I want to do is take care of my nose. So you basically want to reduce the size and maybe feminize it a little bit more, yes. right? So let's talk about what we're going to do to your body. And we don't really want to do a tummy tuck because you never know. You might... There's a way that they open these gowns that just makes me feel very much like, oh peep inside do you know what i mean it's very that motion isn't it like i can just imagine him with a s what are they called speculums and being like oh gape that is disgusting <laughs> disgusting doctor do gape do your body and we don't really want to do a tummy tuck because you never know you might get pregnant Okay. Right. And pregnancy could undo a tummy tuck by stretching out the skin. So I think liposuction Bird. is the way to go. All right, so why don't you turn around? You just need a lot of working out. Most of this mm. work is going to be done where? In the gym. Okay, at gym. least you Very told young. her that, I, I guess. I came to the swan to get a complete transformation, so that's what I'm here for. Dari hmm. has a positive outlook. And Amy can't that wait to take her next positive. step in the program. All oh, right, here's a the dentist. A long dentistry. overdue visit to the dentist. Just really excited about Ten. being able to smile and laugh and not. But this is a shortcut, and you don't Amy's know because they're not being honest right with now. you. I'm going to have to extract numerous teeth. I won't know the extent of the damage until I really get in there and see what's going on. Oh. This is Dr. Marion. He's going to be putting you to sleep today. Ooh, good wow, night. got a lot of decay here. Oh my God. The destruction is so bad. I don't even know how she function on a day to day basis. This tooth is coming out in little tiny pieces. I may have to extract this one too. I'm refraining from putting my shoe on her chest to get this tooth out. Got that. Okay, here's the last little piece. Great. 
I extracted four decayed teeth, recontoured her gum tissues with laser surgery, and prepared her mouth for temporary veneers. Oh. I worked on her for about five hours. That was a workout. Wow. Then I called in a specialist, Dr. Bon Cristiani, who did five root canals, and he still needs to do five more. I have never seen a 27-year-old girl with this much decay and destruction in her mouth. Hi, Randall. How oh, are you? I was on the gosh. phone with Dr. Hayworth immediately today. Amy has so much infection in her mouth, he may have to postpone her facial surgery. She has wow. one of the worst infections in her mouth I have ever seen. I don't know about putting those jaw implants in right now. When do you think you're going to have a handle on this infection? Probably about two weeks. That's obviously going to change my plan of action. Amy's surgery was scheduled for tomorrow, but due to the infection, See? it has to be postponed for two weeks. See? See what I'm saying? You can't fix this. This You can't fix this in three months. You can't begin to teach people like life affirming ways of looking after themselves after so long of neglect due to whatever the whatever the reasons are, whatever they are. You know, life just happens sometimes. And unfortunately, sometimes as a result of that, we neglect ourselves. That's just a fact. It happens. It happens to the best of us. But as I was saying earlier, you can't fix this. You can't fix this in three months. Like she had so much work done then and she's still got more work to do. And because of the level of infection in her mouth, she can't have the next surgeries, which are going to be happening tomorrow, apparently, according to this time frame. So it's like, no, this whole show needed to be like 18 months or a year in order to really make make a positive effect in these lives. One thing done, let it heal, assess the situation. Another thing done, let it heal, assess the situation. It's almost like they're building, they're not even building the foundation of which the house is gonna be set on. They're just kind of like building the house and not like creating a good solid foundation that means that there's no shortcuts and that it's gonna last a lifetime and that it's gonna be beneficial for mental health in the long run. That's why I have a problem with the Swan Girls. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Amy's transformation has been put on hold, but Dory is ready to move on. Tomorrow right. she heads into surgery. Does she? Oh, I here we go, the balcony girls. About the surgery tomorrow. I think it's more anxious feeling. Yes. For the rest of my life, I'm gonna be somebody new, which, um, is very exciting for me. I don't know if I like that. I feel like that is a misplaced phrase because plastic surgery doesn't make you a new person. It gives you a tool to increase your quality of life. It doesn't make you a better person or a more improved person or blah, 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 blah. Those will all come from your mental fortitude between your ears. So that to me sounds very much like an old advert of like, get this product, it'll fix your life. Do you know what I mean? And I feel like that's kind of how cosmetic surgery was advertised to the public for such a long amount of time because only really celebrities used to get it. So it was obviously like, oh, get this plastic surgery, become someone new, like someone new that people will love to talk to and give a career to. Like, it's very that, isn't it? And if you're getting plastic surgery for those reasons... you're probably going to be more disappointed with the results. It is very exciting for me. Right. They Next love this morning, sky shot, Dory don't they? Dory is ready for her physical transformation to begin. Right. Fertility drugs have really taken a toll on Dory's body. Taken a Today toll. I want to feminize her and really sculpt her body. We're going to do a lot of liposuction in various areas. So we're going to do your nose. <laughs> and redefine your chin bone with a chin implant. Oh. Welcome to the SWAN program. Let's do it, all right? Oh, okay. Oh, yes, okay, so wait. Okay, so the left upper thigh. Do oh. not do this at home. Boy, if she doesn't like being in a bikini now, I'd be shocked. Oh, it's very Hoover okay, the turkey. Okay, onto the face. One of the keys with Dory surgery today is to bring her nose and chin into balance. We're gonna round nice. it out by giving her a nice chin implant. Okay, chin implant, chin liposuction done. One the, last this, thing, the nose. I did actually say this a few weeks ago in one of the other episodes, but this season is so much less graphic, so much less graphic than season one. And actually, Dr. 90210 is the most graphic plastic surgery show that we've seen so far on my channel. This feels almost tame in comparison to season one, and I wonder if that had something to do with the ratings drop from season one. But then again, like, I suppose you just couldn't put, like, huge graphic surgery on TV back in the day because it would probably put people off. But that was part of the shock, I think, of why people tuned in was to see what these women were actually going to go through because it's very different, I suppose, going through the process because you're technically, you know, out of it. So you don't see what's actually happening to you. You just kind of get, like, the start and the finish 
or rather, well, of the surgery, not necessarily of all the recovery and everything. Hmm. I wonder if that had an actual impact on the ratings by them not showing as much of the surgical procedures. Right. Story has a one millimeter ah. bony hump What's that we're going to take down using a power rasp. Ooh. Oh my. Let's close. Nose is done. Heidi, done. what do you think? I think we nailed it. Yeah, we nailed it. Thank you, Heidi. I don't know who you are. Life. She's been called parrot nose, banana nose, but I think she's going to be very pleased. This is going to help her transformation tremendously. Okay. Oh. I'll see you at the pageant. Actually, she looks quite well. Two weeks well. have passed. Tomorrow, it's finally Amy's turn in the OR. A Outside of from the home balcony. provides a bit of comfort. I've got gout. Oh, oh look. Oh, a little frog. I definitely couldn't miss pressing Oh, she couldn't have her surgery, could she? so much already. I've got a lot of pictures on my wall of my little girl. Looking at them, that's what's really keeping me going. So this is a nice thing that they didn't do for anyone else. After a restless night, Amy arrives ready for surgery. Right, did you really need to film them overnight to have that 0.8 of a second <laughs> shot in there? token from her here. It's just a comfort thing, you know, it's just like a security blanket. He needs a mini tummy tuck, that's why I brought him in today. Oh, I see. The infection oh. in her mouth is cleared up, so I can finally put in her jaw implants. Okay, It could take right. a lot of time in the OR. Peace, I'm out of here. In order to maximize Amy's potential, she's going to need a lot of feminine sensuality invented into her face. Why don't you get some masculine sensuality and shut up? <laughs> to give her more of a model look. A model. Perfect. One side has been done here, oh. whereas this side is Wow. Now huh. we're on to her tummy tuck. What I did with her was tighten up her muscles just below her breastbone all the way down to her pubic bone. Beautiful. Wow, that is the full surgery front. today. And she's going to be in a lot of pain. Yes, she is. My biggest concern <gasps> is that those jaw implants could get infected. It's going to be a really tough recovery. She is so swollen. She looks so Next much. Swan, Amy's grueling recovery takes its toll. Oh. The swelling's going to get worse before it gets better. And Dory's emotional progress hits a stumbling block. Poor like thing. Else is having a baby I think that's what I'm going to look like. <laughs> Right, here we go. Oh. To the average person, she looks shocking. It looks like she's been through 10 rounds in a boxing match. That's what I'm gonna look Let like. Your evening wasn't too fun. Oh. These mandibular angle implants are associated with a lot of swelling. The swelling's gonna get worse. You should have told her that better. at first, Generally, maybe. it's worse the second and third day out. And that's one of the advantages of not having any mirrors around. If Amy saw herself now, she'd be horrified. Mm. Just remember these words, this too shall pass. Oh, no. Thank you. Take care, sweetie. Oh. I know this is tough. Two days later, Amy is strong enough to return home, where she'll have round-the-clock care. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. Oh. I need a cheeseburger. <laughs> yeah, how are you going to do this on a diet? Or a cow or something. I've got stitches on the inside of my mouth where my jaw implants went in. And I can't chew it, it hurts too bad. Just fight a lot of Oh, that is a lot, isn't it? That is a lot. Meanwhile, Dory's recovery is progressing smoothly. Okay. If I looked in the mirror right now, judging by when I just touching my face, I'd probably look like Frankenstein. So I don't want to see a mirror. <laughs> I refuse to. Interesting that they've seemed to have asked them, or there's lots of emphasis this episode about how do you feel about not being able to see your reflection kind of thing. It feels like in this episode that they're kind of like bigging up the decision to be like, no mirrors, girl. The reason why they want no mirrors is not for them in recovery to make them feel better. It's so that they get the shocking moment at the end. Be under no illusions, my lovelies. It is not for their own mental health and sanity. It is purely for TV ratings. So the idea that they're actually putting sentences being like, and how would you think about like looking at yourself in the mirror? Hmm? Tell, tell Aunt Sim, like, say, babe. That's not what they're, no, no. Like, get in the bin. I refuse to go into depression or okay. let myself feel the pain. Just telling myself, you're gonna heal, you're gonna heal, you're gonna heal, and then I don't feel anything. Such lovely, long, thick hair. a long way for Dory. But Amy's struggling. Not only is she in physical pain, she's also suffering the emotional loss of being apart from her young daughter. So bring the therapist in and let's have a therapy moment, shall we? Hi, baby. This is the issue. Ah. 
This is so much harder than I thought. I don't know if I can get through this without seeing my daughter. You'll have to, sis. I love you. Oh, piss off, As pianist. Amy misses the little girl she left behind. She didn't leave her behind. She abandoned her. It's a oh, birth announcement of my friend's grandson. Why have they sent you so this? Cute. <sighs> I mean, I'm so happy to get these announcements for my friends because I love babies. <sighs> but it seems like everybody else is having a baby except for me. This is weird. Why would you and ever send this? It to... feels like a party I'm not invited to. It's yes, just... exactly. Like if you, if I had friends, let's just say, okay, so. I don't know. I'm going to pick a really random situation here. Let's just say I stopped drinking. And let's say that my friends are like, we're going to have a lovely drinking party. We've invited you, specifically you. We've sent a letter to your house saying, please come to our drinking party. Even though we know what's going on in your life, please come to our drinking party. Do you think that would be in any way, shape or form a good thing for friends to do? Now, I don't know whether producers have like had their little, like, disgusting, wormy fingers in this pie going like, Oh, why don't we massage out a lovely baby somehow? Like, I think that is a really unacceptable thing for friends to do. Like, friends should... Friends shouldn't do that! They shouldn't put you in a situation to make you feel horrible about something that you can't change. That's not friendship. <sighs> what a hideous baby, anyway. And it's hard. It feels like a party I'm not invited to. It feels like... I'm a excluded from this club and I'll never know what it'll feel like to be in this club <sighs> oh. Dory hopes to work through her pain in therapy mm. I really want to help Dory come to terms with her miscarriage and her long what struggle a horrible with shirt we've been working on this in therapy since the I day she arrived in the program right but First you've been telefil would be like filming to do it. some grief work about the miscarriage Okay. It, this isn't appropriate. My whole family, every, I have four brothers and two sisters. They all have children. I just wanted one. It's just not fair. Do you know what the best thing you can do for that baby is? Let go? Yeah, and forgive yourself. And I know, I know, as each month goes by, the less of a chance of getting pregnant. Yeah. Are they trying the to make this could. like... Not, for whatever reason, it has not worked. I just want to look forward to a better future. Are they trying to make this like a moment? the last 10 years. Exactly. Dory can't change the situation, but she can change how she deals with it. And I think she's getting there little by little. Ugh. Dory is making progress healing emotionally. But Amy has a long way to go before she recovers physically. It's week seven of the SWAN program and she's right. still on a liquid diet. I'm still Week having seven. to puree all my food. That I looks disgusting. Chicken pasta parmesan. Last night, I pureed meatballs and tomato sauce. There's a really high risk of infection with the jaw implants. Yes. So I've had to rinse out with hydrogen peroxide a lot and yes. make sure that I keep my mouth really clean. Yes. I can't rest my glasses on my nose. I have to tape it like this. Oh. I can't wait for the day that I don't have to wear glasses. I hope this is all oh. worth it. Oh, oh wow. Well, your lips looked incredible then. Meanwhile, Dory's got a head start in the gym. Okay. Dory, crank those legs. Come on. Dory is working she's so being shouted hard at on in the gym, but she still treadmill. has 15 pounds to lose. Fertility Stamp treatments after. have slowed down her metabolism, and that's going to make it really hard for her to lose the weight. Mm. That's it. That's it. That's what I'm talking about. Push it. Four. Get it at the bottom. Two. Last one. All cardio. All the ways to go. <laughs> and Maybe apart from legs. Hard to transform her body. Amy's eager to complete her final Did surgery. Did you hear the audio clip I've been then? With glasses. Since right. I was third Basic. Day. I can't see anything that's more than an inch from my nose. <gasps> wow. What we'll be doing for Amy is actually adding another lens to her eye. Oh, corneal implant. Her vision is so bad that LASIK just wouldn't get her enough vision. Ah. The lens that we're going to put in is called the Verisize lens. Amy will be the second person in the whole country that's having it post FDA approval. Open as oh. wide as you can. This is going to be an amazing change for me. Oh. No, not it's about eyeballs. a third of the size of a contact lens. Fits inside the eye and it's invisible to the naked eye. It's hard to believe that this tiny piece of plastic Ow! is going to transform her entire life. No, stop! I'm going to have you sit up. Okay. Put the clock up on the wall up there. Yeah, I see it. 
What time is it? 11.38. Congratulations. Ooh. Are you ready for your hug? Yeah, I'll take it. Oh. Right, okay, that was a bit much, actually. Oh! We're already here, my loves. We're at Welcome Jeffrey Dow's house. Oh, the banners. It's been a month since we've seen Dory and Amy. I love how gothy. Three long months since they've looked at themselves in a mirror. The Hideous over, dress. Ochre. We will finally see the results of their transformation. It makes her skin look really pink. Reveal, like, really, 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 really pink. Team of experts dedicated oh, let's to not bother. These women. Who's that? Team. Amy Sharon came Osborne. to us saying that she felt like a loser. And Dr. Hayworth, she was very cruelly told that she had a face for radio. I mean, what would you say to that today? That she underwent a number of very difficult surgical procedures. She today is saying, "Look at me now." Dr. Worth, Amy had wow, some thank you so much. didn't she? Amy's a singer, so her smile is very important to her. When she came to the program, she had severe infection and decay throughout her mouth. So we did a full mouth reconstruction to give her that natural, healthy smile that any singer would be proud of. Okay. Right, we'll get to see oh, that is a gorgeous a necklace, moment, though. First, oh, man, that. Let's take a glimpse back at the Amy. Let's not, actually. You might wonder why I skip so much of these episodes. It's because literally it's about every five minutes they give like an entire recap of everything we heard at the beginning. Like they they really do milk their, their I was going to say sob stories. It's not a sob story, but you know, every single woman that comes on this show has like a backstory that's not filled with happiness, shall we say. I think that's an understatement, but I think I can leave it at that. And they just constantly replay it for that real like, oh, isn't she sad? Look at her now. Isn't she sad? Look at her now. Like, oh, 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 roller coaster effect. And it's just unnecessary at this point. But they really try and hammer it home that like, if you're sad, surgery girls. And that's, that's, that's not how the real world works. Well, I know you can't wait to see her, neither can right, I. Come Here on. she is, the brand new Amy Williams. Open the gateway to the beyond. A white dress for a wedding. Everyone's just like, oh, she does look lovely. I, have they darkened her hair? They've given her low lights. I'm not sure I like that. I'm not sure. You look hot. Thank she you. Does. Oh, it's good to see you. Come with me. Let's chat. Okay. Whew. I don't like how the makeup artist hasn't matched her face to her neck. She's got a really like pale, ethereal face and just like tan everywhere else. That doesn't make sense. Like, why make that choice? Look at Amanda. Amanda is tanned as hell, but the, her makeup artist has matched her face to her neck. Amy. You have been through a lot of physical pain over the past three months, am I yes. right? Yes. What was the worst part of the transformation for you? Probably the jaw implant. Just having yeah. those and having to learn how to open my mouth again. And she needs her hair like back. I want to see. That was probably the hardest part of it. Do you remember once saying, Amy, that your dream was to be happy with who you are, how you feel? I do and not how you like look. what they did with her Does hair. Does your dream come true? And I know you really want to see yourself, right? Good hair extensions, okay. though. Well, right, here we go. Come it. on, girls. Time, time to bleed. There's a mirror. I'm going to ask you to step up to the curtain, and when you're ready, we'll let you see yourself for the first time in three months. Okay. Off you go. I cannot vogue. <laughs> Illuminati girls. Time to bleed. Goiter. A dead body. Oh, rotate the lady. Okay, Amy. This is your moment. Your perfect moment of gown. Yes. Right, come on. This cello. <gasps> oh my god. <laughs> oh. It's. I have a waist. Oh. <laughs> oh, Amy. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh my god. Her lips are so voluminous and luscious. Okay, we can see. Oh my God. Ooh, he looked frightened, awesome. didn't he? <laughs> Why have they put you in this dress? Thank you guys so much. Oh my God. Thank you. Aww. Don't you look amazing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see, Amanda's wow. nipples. What's the thing that surprises you most about yourself? Uh, yeah, the whole package just... Bam, you know? <laughs> what? Bam. Yes, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> wow, my teeth are amazing. <laughs> oh, yes. Amy, your ambition oh. was always to be a singer, but you've been holding yourself back for years. Oh, she could. Not anymore. Could the she, yeah, I yeah. see. 
But the thing is as well, what I said earlier is like if she had a great skincare routine and like staged makeup or makeup that's good enough to go on stage with, that is that is like 90% of the look. A lot of the surgery is kind of unnecessary, but she does look really lovely. And I really hope that it did improve her life. <laughs> I do have a group of people juicy, here behind me that really lips. want to just give you a big hug and say well Thank done. Thank you so much. You did it, girl. Thank you. You did it. Oh, my God. <laughs> no. I was ecstatic with Amy's results. She came here with a mouth full of destruction, and now she has a gorgeous, healthy smile. Really? Ooh, look at those Amy bad looks extensions. Like a rock star. What can I tell you? A rock Who star. is that blonde woman we keep seeing? The one that's not Sherry Worth. This lady on the left here, she's got like short hair up to here and then just extensions all the way down. Who is she? Who is she? That is Jeffrey. Right. Next, Next on the gout Jeff. is more gout. Next. Time to bleed. On the swan. <laughs> here we are, girls. We just saw Amy's big reveal. We did. Will she move on to the swan pageant? Will well, she? It's time to meet her competition, Dory Webber. Competition, Weber. competition. Experts, Dory came to us at a crossroads in her life. Dr. Dubrow, what was your goal with her? The goal with Dory was to preserve that exotic Polynesian look and turn back the clock many years to rejuvenate her face. And Dr. Yanni, what mm. issues did she have to tackle in therapy? She dealt with two major issues. One was grieving a miscarriage that she had had recently. And secondly, she created a game plan so that when she goes home, she and her husband can work out choices about their future family. Okay, well, we'll get... Really? I didn't get that vibe? Right, here okay, we go. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here she is. I hope they didn't cut all her gorgeous Dory hair off. Weber. Come on. Open the gateway. Oh! They've cut all her gorgeous hair off. Oh, look at those breasts. What a gorgeous outfit. Transformation. Yes, necklace. Yes. Oh, I don't see a genuine smile, though. Bit Valley of the Doll. Stunning. Mm, so good to see you. Come with me. Oh, she's a bit overwhelmed, isn't she? How do you she? feel? I feel fabulous. <laughs> wow. Okay. Talk to me about the last three months, Dory. What have they been like? The last three months have been really difficult but it's also been exciting at the same time because i knew Ooh. i'm doing something about my life now well uh, we all know that you had a lot Nelly's of like, don't it. say difficult you said that you had a broken spirit what has mm. this one program taught you about yourself to um respect myself and take care of myself and that way i can become a happier person what was the hardest part of the entire three months Ooh, she looks I like she's gonna therapy, be like just letting go oh. emotionally and letting go of everything now i feel like there's a weight that's been lifted off of me Are you able right. to turn the page now i'm ready to turn the page now well, I won't let you wait any longer then. Okay. Behind that curtain over there, oh. there's a mirror. Now, in just a moment, I'm going to ask I you to step up to the curtain. I feel very weird about this episode. When you're ready, we'll let you see yourself. Here we go. I'm ready. Go step up to the curtain for me, darling. Good luck. Illumina, there you go. Go. Look at that curtain. That is, that is abandon all hope or ye who enter here. <laughs> okay, Dory. The moment's finally arrived. Come on, Dory. I'm ready. Mm. <laughs> That's a reaction. Wow. Instantly to the hair, you see? <laughs> oh, look at my teeth. Oh my goodness. Possession. This is incredible. I love my hair. Oh, at least she likes it. <laughs> I could wow. stay here all day. <laughs> Don't you look amazing? I feel like her smile has changed. I feel amazing. Oh. I look 10 years younger, so. You do? Oh, yeah. I start my 30s <laughs> over again. <laughs> exactly. Wow. Well, you have yourself to thank. You should be so huh. proud of yourself. Congratulations, thank Dorian. You. Everybody here behind me oh, wants to come and say a big congratulations to you. Come on in, guys. Dory really underwent a tremendous number of surgical procedures and she, she did. just breezed through the recovery. She's my hero. I would I like to so be able to do that. I am so happy with Dory's results. She worked so hard in the gym. She pushed herself each and every day That's and it. never complained. And she looks great. I mean, okay. Out the window, girls. It's Jeffrey Gout. Right, let's find out who's gone to the pageant, girls. 
violin swan. Welcome back to the swan. dead body. We just witnessed two life changing transformations. We did. And now we'll find out who our judges in consultation with our experts are going to execute. Here they are now, gentlemen. Right. Okay. I feel like this is where you can see how tall they are. A bustier. Ooh, ooh. They got hateful shoes. I love. Dory's necklace, like right in the the booby the booby hi, necklace. Hi, Dory. <laughs> hey, you both look absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. <laughs> well, as you right. we know, only one of you can I move on to the pageant. I don't know who they're gonna the chance choose. To crown the swan. Along with that title huh. comes cash and prizes worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. <laughs> it's not though, is it? You've been judged on right, come on, then. beauty and poise. Overall transformation. And who gets to kiss the boy? In this envelope is the name of the woman who will be chosen to move forward. You ready for this? Twinkle, twinkle, little bat. Who's like got gout? Okay. The name of the woman who's been chosen to move on to the pageant tonight is. Who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? Who? 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 <laughs> Nearly hit myself in the eye. Who? Amy Williams. Congratulations. Oh, so the lady in the, the white because dress. Because I think she really deserves a chance to be in front of a crowd of people feeling confident and comfortable for the first time. You do? Do you? <laughs> do you? <laughs> Dory worked really mm. hard, and she's a magnificent woman who is leaving with a lot less weight on her shoulders. Amy, well Don't done. Say that. You stand over there for me while I say goodbye to Dory. Hey. Yeah, go over there to the naughty Ooh. corner. Well, this has been an incredible journey for right. you. Yes, it's been great. And you must be really proud of yourself. I'm proud of myself. Mm. Yeah, you should be. Before we say goodbye to you, there's a few people that want to congratulate you. Come over here with me. Uh. Gentlemen. Oh. Don't, because the husband was all right, I guess. Ow! Hello, sir. Oh. oh. Is that the first oh. run and kiss we've seen? I would describe the way my wife looks now as gorgeous, elegant, beautiful. Oh, oh I, I'm extremely happy. I'm to take so my wife happy back for home. your intonation. <laughs> I'm delivering you this baby. Oh, what's that? Oh, is that cute little? Oh, look! It's a little. Because she's happy, and that's what I want. I don't to know what be. they're called. Oh, it's happy. Oh. oh, I miss you, Daddy. That's lovely. <laughs> I'll remember my time on the Swan always. You know, I've accomplished so much while being here, and I'm just looking forward to starting the rest of my life now. Amy. Oh. Well, Come that's there, an excellent way to end that little oh. like section. Oh, you're oh. going to get to see your family at the pageant, because that's the where you're going. pageant! <laughs> I'm so excited. Oh, can you believe it? No, it's been... The pageant is oh, next! What? Journey. I'm really excited. I'm really excited. Remember you the said the pageant. that you wanted to be able to stand on stage in front of 10,000 people and be comfortable? You're going to be standing on stage 10, in front of a lot people. more people. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Are you ready for it? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, it's a long next section. week it's the show you've all been waiting for. The grand the finale, The Swan Pageant. Tune the Swan Girls. Who will be crowned the Swan? What a horrible lighting section that is. Oh, my God. <laughs> No, don't. No spoilers. No. Next Monday, she's got gout. Right, my loves. I have some thoughts. And we are going to have a little bit of a talk there because the reveals there were kind of a little bit... I didn't get an overwhelming sense of happiness. I also didn't get an, o o an underwhelming sense of anger. Can you say that? Is that what it is? I just kind of felt like they were soft reactions, should we say? Soft reactions. It sounded like both of the contestants really enjoyed their outcome. I didn't particularly get any negative feelings. I just didn't get like an overwhelming sense of emotion either. I don't know why I just didn't get that. Did you get that? Let me know what you think in the comments. I don't feel like Dr. Iani's little like way of saying like, oh, she's healed from this thing that she's gone through regarding Dory and her infertility story. I don't feel like that's that should be televised on a show like this in a therapy context. I mean, maybe it would have by being put on TV shown um, families going through a similar thing that they're not alone, but there are better ways to do it than be like, once a week you get a bit of counselling and then we sort of just go, she's cute. Like, I don't feel like that was a great 
choice for this show to put the way that they did, put it across the way that they did. Do you know what I mean? Let me know what you think about that. Also, I really didn't like what they did to both of the contestants' hair here. Amy had such a good hair type that if they wanted to put a couple of highlights in, she would have gone like platinum instantly. They put low lights in and somehow made her look, made her hair look like darker and heavier rather than like lighter and more ethereal, which I don't know. That doesn't make any sense to me. Let me know what you guys think in the comments box below. And I guess, are you all ready, my loves, to watch the final of The Swan Season 2, my loves? I will be filming it with Roly in the next coming weeks, and that will be coming out soon. I'm going to do exactly what I did last time and have a whole week dedicated to two episodes of The Swan Pageant. Because The Swan Pageant is like two, two and a half hours long. And that makes about four hours of content. And then I need to like squeeze that into two videos. So it's going to be a ride, shall we say. And don't forgive those who trespassed against gout. Hello beautifuls, welcome back to my Chanel and today we have an extra special guest. We've got the Swan Season 48 winner, Rolish we are due. They changed me so much I transformed into a man. Let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Transvestite of the bride? Today we are kind of saying goodbye to an era in a really strange way. It'll I know! The last ever episode of The Swan. Today we are watching season two's Swan Final Pageant the Girls. Pageant the Girls. Pageant Girls! Only, Only one will make it to the pageant! Only one will make it to the pageant girls! So this video is going to be particularly long, just the same with season one. I'm going to split it into two videos. So today we're going to watch like the major first part of the pageant, and mm -hmm. then on the next video upload we will be watching. Watching the ultimate finale of the Swan Girls. Why aren't you making it to the pageant? The Swanish we are do. I've got such mixed emotions about this. Don't cry. End of the era, but also how fantastic that I've managed to get it all done before I swan myself. I'm still healing. My swelling has gone down a lot and my bruising is minimal, but my energy levels are still low. Thank you for all your wonderful messages of love and support. I, I was, <laughs> I've been so excited to be able to watch the finale of this. I was like, can you hurry up and release three episodes, please? We can do it together. Yeah, can you hurry up, hurry up, lads, hurry up, lads. So, I actually want to read a comment from last, uh, from the last episode that we watched here. It is by Fawn Soul, and they say, I feel sad that your swan commentaries will be done with. It's my guilty pleasure to watch these, but good luck with the surgery and the move. I'm excited that you have so many awesome things happening. Yes! Thank you, my lovely. You're quite right. It is a bit sad that this is coming to an end. I do, however, want to reveal a little bit of interesting information. She's detransitioning. No, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> <laughs> so Rachel Love, the winner of the Swan season one, actually slid into my DMs on Facebook and I'm going to be organizing a, an interview expose styly thing where we talk a little bit about the behind the scenes. Now that is gonna be incredible. That is, I cannot wait for that. But saying that my loves, oh my goodness me, are you ready to watch The Swan Girl? Oh, what's happening? I can't wait to see how this turns out. A dead body. <laughs> Tonight, Ooh, the very nice um, comes to a swan life. <laughs> swan life. Nine women. The pop, the xenomorph, xenomorph hatching into swans forever, going through the most radical transformations <laughs> ever seen. <laughs> Only one will make it to the pageant. The number one pageant on television is back. It's the culmination of a dream. This is as what one of these stages. lucky women. Yeah, yeah, yeah don't sound like they're doing eggs. The swan. The, you should eggs. get eggs. You should get eggs. The swan. The swan. The swan. America's obsession with the swan. The swan. Oh my the swan. god. <laughs> a big hit show. Fox is the swan. That's what it is. The swan. Maury did the swan. We did the swan. We did the swan. We did the swan. And we should. This season, the swan received. Hundreds of thousands I'm of sorry, there's more than sorry, there's, sorry. There's sorry. a different version. There's so many different versions of the swan. Maybe you haven't seen the last oh. of the swan after all. I had no idea there were so many <gasps> different versions. Oh my goodness. Quickly, we oh. have to go to Amazon and buy every single one. I am never going to financially recover from this. It's from women who wanted their own shot at the transformation of a lifetime. The guinea pal. Underneath, I'm really, really pretty, and I just wanted to come out. And after a nationwide Guy. search, we Guy. chose 16 competitors desperate to transform inside and out this is i feel the most completely show disgusted ever. with myself inside i'm dying i want to feel good about oh. myself for once in my life our world-class team of experts took lies, on even lies, greater lies. challenges 
Nelly I'm Galan is not world class. Of implants on the right. Can you imagine? This is the hardest nose I've ever done. The he hard said that about everyone. everyone. Yeah, yeah. Mandibular angle implants in. Do you know how defensive you get? I know that you probably think I'm defensive. Keep pushing it. That was shady was editing. Ready. Really was. Un unfair editing. Why is she quite? Uh, it's my struggle. It's all about me. You ain't my mother. Yes, I am. I can hear Ronald's voice. And one light. It's cancer. Oh, I can't believe yeah, that was unacceptable. That is not a no. swan pattern TV moment for that. All of our competitors to their yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We have cancer. I hate it here. But some would stop at nothing to win. Got that string bikini hanging in front of me like a Twinkie on a stick. And then, after three months with no mirror. Well, what? Oh, I want that string bikini hanging, like hanging a, from me like, like a Twinkie, Twinkie on, on a stick. stick. Yeah. We're chosen to compete in the pageant. That. Is that a Our transsexual joke? Twinkie? Is that, that, that like cake thing that's in America? Pushing their bodies to the limit. No. And gaining the confidence America. of pageant contenders. Oh, we've upgraded the photo shoot. The swan. Will it be Jennifer Patton from Mesa, Arizona? I actually don't know who it's going to be, to be honest. From Daytona Beach, Florida, Gina Davis. I actually also have no idea. Wasn't she more blonde? From the center, Washington, Erica Moore. It was like a year ago that episode came out. So yeah, I know. Right, yeah. From Placentia, California, Carrie Bravada. Placenta. Placenta goes. From Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Cinnamon Smith. Cinnamon. Toast From crunch. the colony, Texas, Delisa Styles. Delisa goes. From Pickens, South Carolina, Marsha Metalberg. Marsha Girls! <laughs> From Houston, Texas, Amy Williams. Amy Girls! <laughs> Our judges' wild card selection. Oh my god, wild card! What about the wild card? From Los Angeles, it's the exciting finale of the most unique Is it all white ever. again? The Swan It all very white. It's and very now white. Your host, yeah. Amanda Byron. Amanda Byron Burgers. She's not going to cover it. I didn't even realise that the last no. episode is the last time we would ever yep. see a banister being caressed. Maybe the German version, she caresses the banister. Oh, let's hope so. Caresses Ooh. a nice sausage. That's a... Bratwurst. That's a nice garment. Oh, it does look like she's wet Good herself, evening, though. Welcome to the Swan Pageant. Welcome Ladies to the piss I can tell finale. You, it is my honour to be here for what is certain Pick to queen. be an incredible evening. Oh. The women competing here tonight have already shocked the nation, and needless to say, themselves, with the unbelievable so transformations they've made during this season. But just wait until you've seen the progress they've made since then. Oh, yeah, because they've they, yeah, they, 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 they an extra month. Yeah, an extra month, But I can honestly say that all nine of these amazing competitors are already winners. Oh! Lies. Clap. Clap them. Uh. <laughs> now, they will be competing in a variety of events, including bathing suit, evening gown, and in... And sausage wear. <laughs> <laughs> and hot dog. And hot dog, yeah. yeah. Focus only on beauty and poise, our judges will also what take... poise? I think it's just like how compliant you are oh, with yeah, what they yeah. want you to do. Basically. It is time to meet the five people who've accepted the truly oh, difficult these? job of judging the competition Jake this Jen evening. Hall. From Us Weekly, the nation's hottest celebrity magazine. Disgusting. Please welcome West Coast... It looks like he swallowed a shoe. <laughs> there wasn't no lady who lifted a shoe. Ken and Baker. Ate it. <laughs> and <then> ate it. <laughs> Modeling agency LA Models. This woman oh, was going to be Dickinson. Dickinson. And her corporate clients include Gucci, Chanel, and Christian Dior. Oh, a dead body. For Chris decides Clayman. Oh, lovely. Now, was she in the, in the last one? I feel like she was in the last one. I, I, I actually singer, don't remember who the actor, author, and mother I've to seen be. her before. A shining example of self. She's from The Shining. She's, yeah, she's, the yeah, Shining. She's, she's, one, of the, she's one of the twins. Come and play with us, Danny. Everyone will make it to the pageant, girls. Singer, actor, and author. Right, so why, why is she a pageant? Next for plastic is a surgery. top Hollywood producer who managed the careers of over 200 who is this stars, man? including Drew Barrymore and Cher. He's also written a new book called Shine, a powerful four-step plan for becoming a star in anything you do. Welcome, Larry A. Thompson. I do not know who you are. I think is he a bad person? I, I don't like know. Heard that name. But like, why is he? And as a former just why is he here? Universe, this is it like, oh, to hunt for new talent, girls? The pageant world. Please welcome gorgeous model and actress. Ooh, can you see the Diana heat coming off her? I mean, she's an actual pageant queen. Yeah. Like, she actually knows. A pageant queen. 
She knows what the tea is. Yeah. Thank you so much. All these other ones are like, I, 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 I read a book. This, the, the chairs remind me of Oblivion at Orton Tower. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's very like late 90s. <laughs> Oh, she's got a disgusting ago, shoe on. Mm. Hateful shoe. That's why the dress is always the force. You can't really see it. Ducklings. Mm. Well, I can tell Cross. you, no longer. Tonight, they are true all-around beauty queens. And they're about to take the walk of their lives in our evening gown competition. Oh, here we go. Our first contestant Time for a brow lift. Erica Moore, who came to us oh, evening gowns. A okay. crisis of confidence. Let's watch her crisis Erica of confidence, shall we? Program, battling dun, dun, dun. a lifelong weight problem and low self-esteem. I was always the, the chubby girl. I stood out from my class. Oh, relatable. I was always big and I was always teased. Emotionally... I remember when I, I commented on that shot being like, the uh, most artistic thing I've ever seen. I mm -hmm. could never understand what it was like to have a weight problem. Genetically, she will never be like a fashion model. And I don't think any... Cosmetic surgeries will. I that was a horrible that. thing to say. Yeah, that was such was a horrible thing to say about your own child. I was now a 22, and I just I lost it. Right then, it hit me. I needed help. Erica started the program having already lost 80 Hideous pounds, outfit. but losing the last 30 will become her clients. greatest no, challenge. Weather less gusset, 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 right up the gusset. God, I hated this like Along woman, this like Nutrisystem woman. Oh, it was a scam, just to sell scam, products. Scam, your girl. Literally a scam, just to sell scam diet products. Yes, Time to die! Time to die! Time to die. A sad face around your belly button. A sad face around your belly button. We're going to take my face off, Dr. Hayworth. But her weight would still be a major obstacle in her transformation. We have 18 pounds to lose. We are running out of time. Erica State committed. I hate the fact that they're framing it as like, we're running out of time for what? Like, this is just a pageant. Like, well, she's not gonna thing, yeah. die. She did look stunning, though. Yeah. <clears throat> I do like her hair. Mm hmm. Very it's 2000. Very 2000. I wonder what she's gonna look like now, though, because they've had an extra, like, month of healing, haven't they? They also wonder as well, like, when they get the photos. So they go. Don't smile, look yeah, like this. Yeah, they have to. Like, get your bad posture. They have a light, like, here. Like, no makeup, greasy face, greasy skin. Like, just like... Yeah, absolutely. So, they're in the afters, they can be like, pow! Yeah, yeah. Right in the kisser. Here we go. To kick off the evening gown competition, let's celebrate the brand new Erica Moore. I quite like Moore. her necklace. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see. Oh, why oh, do you have she's in an egg projection. Oh. Oh. May the best uh, win. Oh. oh, it's blue. She's... She's an underwater goddess. Ooh, Mermesia. Mermesia. Oh. What is... Oh, my God! I mean, she looks incredible. But she looks completely different to what we saw earlier. Oh, Ooh, look at that oh swan dear. duck. But that dress... Oh, she's kind of like stomping duck. Stomping down, down the, the runway. runway. But that... That... that I don't like this dress. No. It it's not fitted. It doesn't feel like evening wear. It feels, it feels like, a cock, like a dress you This is resort wear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Resort cocktails. The bottom half just looks a bit sort of like trashy, like yeah. a bit kind of like stuck on bits rather it's than like designed like Boulet it. Brothers at the beach. Wow! Wow! Everybody loved okay. it! Okay. All right, they did. Boulet Brothers at the beach! Yeah, you know, <laughs> they did that like, like make a sea monster. I'm surprised she had that score, actually, with that dress. Who was that man? Now, I'm coming to take you away. No Jonathan. Wife and mother whose childhood scars immensely affected We just moved her instantly life. on yeah, from Bye, that. bye. Her, her childhood scars, goodbye. Childhood scars, time to leave. Jennifer came to the Swan program struggling to overcome a childhood trauma. I find it so fascinating that like nearly every single one of these contestants has reached out to me and like shared extra about the story and mm -hmm. stuff because I'm just like watching this like wow I actually sort of know these how, people. How do you feel about reopening wounds for people? Gape. If she hadn't left me I wouldn't be Gape. Gape for me. I know that the doctors can't take away my scars, but just getting like my nose and my smile fixed, even those Can they do things, much for like totally uh, change how burns I now? Because it's this is such a long time ago. I genuinely do not know. I mean, I, 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 I hope that the, the industry the has been able to find some answers. With Jennifer's transformation will be her scars. I think we're going to just derm braid this, which is a sander. Jennifer's physical. A sander? Imagine saying, I'm going to sand your oh, face. Oh, we're going to derm braid this, which is a sander? Mm -hmm. Like, no, it's derm braiding. So I don't want my friends or family or anybody to say, oh my god, look at all her scars. Our swan coach stopped by to offer a helping hand. Nelly. You have to wear your scars like jewels. Easy for someone to say when they don't have it. Why Easy. do you cry when I say that to you? 
I sort of I know you're right. Agree with that in a strange way, in a way that's like not necessarily like your scar the jewels, but in a way that's like so. I have a history of self harm, and I wear them proudly. I'm completely mentally capacitated but capable now capable. mentally capable now but i still i don't hide them and i don't make any like they don't bother me as much as they used to so it's one of those things where it's like i wouldn't say my scars are gems and diamonds to be shown off but i also like don't allow them to affect me in a day-to-day mm-hmm. life so i do sort of understand where nelly is coming from there but also like read the room sis wrong but way also, to say the it. thing because of everything else that nelly has said anything she yeah. says i just don't think it's real yeah. everything yeah. she yeah. says is contrived yeah. everything she yeah. says yeah. is like yeah. she's an executive producer yeah. so how can you tell she's lying her mouth is moving girls so she's doing that game like i'm gonna make myself look really good in this shot so mm-hmm. i look like i deserve to be here and yeah. then she beats her with a stick yeah and then she's gonna be on stage being like i'm actually this one. Yeah, I am. I am the winner. Why are you making it to the panel? Emotional scars and achieved breathtaking results. Gorgeous. Gorge. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Love the dress. Oh, Ooh, a back shine. A back shine. A lovely shiny back. The sun shine out of my coach. Here she is. Ready to rock the runway. Rock Jennifer the runway. Ready to. Out. Right, come on, Jennifer. I hate they project their face on. Yeah, it's so like, <laughs> look who she was, and look at her now. This is an evening. Oh, well, it's another slit. Though. It's the same slit. Is this an evening? White. Is, is it a bit, white dress? It's white. It's very wedding. Oh, oh, and that's not too bad. Oh gosh, wow. wow. They're really bosom today, aren't they? They're, They're like, very oh. dressy. She looks completely different again. She does, yeah. I don't like the fact that they have the runway like tilted because it makes them like unable to walk yeah. like properly. Yeah. Like that's what the runway should be. She looks a bit uncomfortable. She does. That smile doesn't yeah. convince me that she looks uncomfortable. I think she's really nervous, yeah. poor thing. It must be really nerve wracking. Oh. Yeah, they do not like Jennifer. No. no. They're like, no! Hey man, like with all of your like old face around as well. That's such a weird concept. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Makes, don't you think? Yeah. But the question is, who is going to walk away with the crown? Stick around and find out because we're just Stupid getting adverts. started on the most... Oh, like, even the floor, do you see when she's walking? It like springs. Devised. It's just like perspex yeah. plastics. Welcome back. That's one go! That's one go! The guinea fowls! The guinea! Ghost girls! Amanda Byron. Burger. Without Welcome her back banister. to the only beauty pageant where it's not about what you're born with, but rather what you've earned. Now, each of the nine gorgeous you, women oh, here tonight is, that is a disgusting what a horrible sentence. To say. It's not about how you were born, it's what you've earned. And actually, it's not even about what people have earned. It's it has about no, no. how the surgeons could pre- prey upon you in yeah. a competitive setting. Exactly. And also, it's how, how much drama we can get from this. Oh, I do not like that sentence. Just think every, so every single person who has been on this show have had some kind of like really traumatic history. And yeah. that, it's not about what they've earned. It's what they... So what's happened is the producer's gone... Oh, oh, she was attacked or she was burned scared. or she can't hear and we're going to use all, all of, that of that to our advantage to yeah. make money girls yeah. but only one will be crowned the swan next up in the evening gown competition is Delisa Style Delisa girls who to our programme looking for her feminine side Delisa girls <laughs> Delisa I really like her name reserve. Hope that the Swan program could feminize a body made in boot camp. I often oh, have said that I'm rid- built more like a man than a woman because of the thickness of my frame. Mm, relatable and content. And sought help dealing with her crumbling marriage. I lost interest in her because this man we was hideous. As active, I mean, there was time that she was hideous. Like I lost interest because we, our now. bedroom was not as active. She's not physically attracted to me, so we don't have anything. She was really hurt by mm. that. Delisa and I mean, like, swamp. at the end of the day, I think, like, if you're not sexually compatible with someone, it is something that's, like, a big deal in a relationship. Yeah, no, but I to do. come on TV and be like, the reason why I'm not attracted to her is because our bedroom was less active. Yeah. And then she's, like, sobbing in the next scene. It's so, like, hideous way of saying it. It's yeah. just a no, hideous thing Completely to witness. Agree. Completely agree. The program could help her cope with a failing marriage and give her a Cope nice with a failing figure. marriage. No, it's a successful divorce! The series of extensive surgeries to give her a more feminine look. <laughs> the idea today is to put the glamour into the he soul. He is just hideous. Yeah. <laughs> 
Elise's positive attitude seemed to be a good sign, but she was dealt a devastating anyway. blow like when her onion. husband filed for divorce. Yay! It's Get like, rid of him! Lose 180 pounds by dumping your But also, husband. like, what a horrible thing to be like, we're going to do it on TV. Yeah, we're going to serve you And Nelly Galan's going to kind of be like, I'm I so, knew so, it. Stop. Uh, 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 is that a tear? And I then she like... leaves and goes, oh, scum. Thank and goodness for that. confident, beautiful woman. Lunged. That was quite a big transformation. Although it was. they make him look so much older. They always yeah. make him look older. The styling does make, it's just, it's just aging mm. styling. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to salute Delisa Styles. She comes out like an army dress. Yeah. Come oh. On. She comes out in just a parachute. She yeah. parachutes in. Yeah. Abseiling. She pisses when she farts. Looks like she's like, like a lacy A negligee. Tassels. Oh, oh, that's not an evening gown. Oh, wow. I mean, wow, she looks completely she, different. Captain Delisa Swan. They have definitely done more in the time Absolutely. between filming. To, she looks completely different. Like, in the first series, there was a slight difference, but, like, these so far have been, like, really, really different. different. Yeah. Ding. Oh, Delisa girls. I like her hair, actually. They haven't effed up her hair, which is nice. Oh! oh, oh they really fucking love her. Oh, that's tens wow. across the. <laughs> Tattoo. <laughs> ten. Oh, yeah. Ten. <laughs> that's a wide vagina. Now, on the police woman, our next contestant. They loved her what though. A wide vagina. <laughs> but let me tell you, things have turned around fast for Cinnamon Smith. Come on, Cinnamon Girls. Cinnamon Girls. Cinnamon came to the Swamp program as a tough bike cop desperate to uncover her feminine side. As a child, I, I hate that found desperate bitch. to uncover. Dead, yeah, she was a dead body. A, d a dead mirror, body. It was the right to the bed. Desperate to discover a dead body. Yeah. <laughs> my mustache, my thighs are the biggest they've ever been. Fix thighs, save lives. Mm. That was not what I was thinking. But it's finally hitting me that I'm not going to see my children for three months. Fix thighs, really make strangle me. Oh, well, there we go. What the guys Cinnamon's say. transformation started with an aggressive surgical plan designed aggressive. to feminize her body. So we're gonna do skin only tummy tuck, liposuction, then we're gonna go ahead and do your breasts. But restoring her smile would What happened to the tattoo? I was gonna yeah, we, we we maybe we'll see it in the bikini section. Yeah. This is what's underneath your crown. Oh, oh my god, I look like a monster. Teeth really bother me. Yeah, no, I agree. Really bother me. Physical really procedures, agree. but the separation from home oh, the would balcony. test her commitment the balcony to the program. I miss a kid. Disaster. I had to put their pictures away because it hurt me to look at their faces. Still, that is like emotional torture. Mm -hmm. And proved her competitive spirit. I think Greg's transition worked so well. Do you remember in the first season, Greg, and now it's this lady. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she, she's very she was on the swamp. Yeah. Oh my god! I'm so happy! <laughs> I love that dress. Mm -hmm. So good. It's lunged. Right. You Come on, Cinnamon Girls! For Cinnamon Smith! What's gonna happen? Oh. Oh. They're all wearing like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's at one point. One egg. I'll see breasts again. Everything's breasts. breasts. Oh, oh, I don't mind that outfit. Oh, she's so oh yeah, it's very like coming down. Oh, oh, what horrible hair! It's All the dresses though. have kind of been the same though. She's like she's slightly she different colour. Yeah, she did. Yeah. She's going, what's she doing with her hand? Oh dear. Oh. I wonder how much coaching they get for this. Like, judging by everything coming. else, they're just like nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. The music is so like. B -b 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 oh oh like, no! I didn't like her at I all. I like cinnamon girls. So crunch. That is a gorgeous outfit. Mm -hmm. That's the most evening gown. I think that's my favourite dress. I just so far. It's probably because the way she walks was like. Yeah. Like, no. No. Nah. Your poise is not Amy on point. No. An aspiring singer who was actually told she would never make it because of her appearance. Oh, exit stage left. Yes. Maybe Amy goes. Before Amy came to the Swan program, she lacked the self-confidence to pursue her lifelong goal. They're not introducing them My in the order of the episodes, are they? No, I don't think so. Not this definitely feels like a different way of doing it than the first it, season. It doesn't feel the same, does it? Yeah. I'm this 27-year-old single mom waitress that 
can't make it on her own. And I just felt like the biggest loser. I th I'm sure this was like the last one that I did, wasn't it? Because I mentioned something about millennials having to go home every now and then. And it's like, it's a relatively normal experience now to be like, still at home at 25, for yeah. example. Yeah. Back in this day, they, they tried to paint it as like, the worst thing! That was a workout. You, I, I said oh. this in the first time we did this, like, because you blur everything, like, actually seeing, like, teeth surgery now, I'm like, I, uh, uh, uh. I plans to give her more of a model look. But a painful recovery. Do those implants even work now? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. We still... still do implants, but a lot of it now is done by injectables rather than implants. This is what I'll be doing. I'll be having a soft serve mm -hmm. pureed weekly diet. Ooh, I hope gout. this is all worth it. Amy refused to let her dreams die, and she fought her way through. Biff! To smack her right in the pussy! Oh! Donald Trump is quaking! <gasps> no, don't say that! Disgusting! Right, now, uh, are we going to be able to recognise her now? She's going to look completely different again. And here to live out her dream is the very lovely Amy Williams! Amy Child. Amy, go! Amy Child. She'll be like, one. <laughs> <laughs> What's the claw? Time to bleed. Pass up. Just come down, just not saying bad relax. Uh, I mean, she looks she gorgeous, looks gorgeous but she's just crying. I don't like this dress. There's not been much variety with these dresses, have they? There's, There's like a and they're all a bit like that falls at a weird for an evening gown. Mm. That falls at a weird length. And what is with the spaghetti strap? Yeah. Oh, time for some bolognese. I'm going to cream. I'm going to cream. Uh, go, mum. Go, oh, mum. Go home. <laughs> oh. No, they weren't a fan. No. Again, like this top half of this dress is really boring. It's, like, it's just, just like a vest. <laughs> it's really dark. You're wearing it now. No. Hail Satan. Satan. More women will take the walk oh, of their lives the walk is shame. Just keep walking yeah. off the stage. And she just dies. With how far they've come. <laughs> the resurrection goes. The next test is who can resurrect yes. <laughs> the host. Yeah. The number one pageant in America. The pageant girls. Ooh, voice crack come, of the century. Welcome back to the Pujan. She likes just like no, walking about being yeah, like, hello, she's, she's, follow me this she's, way. She's, she's at a K-hole, yeah. In some of our secrets. <laughs> Since the swan has become an international phenomenon, we have received tens of thousands of letters from viewers around the world. And if there is other versions, I'm surprised no one has said it. I'm sure that someone said we have it in Germany, but it's not called the swan. So I'll have to like, it's investigaciones. The... It's called the scheiser. The scheiser, yes. <laughs> You're watching the BBC. You've asked us about the swan. <laughs> Number three, which of our swans have lost the most amount okay. of weight? Well, yeah, why is Last that? Last year's winner, Rachel Love Fraser, lost an amazing oh, 39 pounds. That is an incredible weight Who loss. Who are our top three losers this year? What a weird, this is yes. a very strange segment. Mm, very Gina 2000s. Lost 22 pounds. Delisa lost 25 Delisa pounds. Delisa goes. The Carrie was our biggest loser. I worked out and I dieted so hard. And lost an incredible 35 pounds. In that wow. short space of time. Oh, scary, scary, isn't it? question is, what part of their physical transformation do the swans love most? I can't, I can't pick just one. My eyes. My derriere. I love my side profile. I love my smile. I can sit down and my stomach doesn't fall over my jeans anymore. Can I be honest? I mean, Fashion. come on, it's me. How can you not love these? Girl. They're great. And the number one question you've asked us about the swan. Do swans really not see themselves in a mirror? There was really, really no mirrors. That's the whole idea of the show. Yeah, fact, like, why are you asking that chance. question? That's clearly yeah, obvious. Yeah. Well, no one asked they it. They're just like, this they're is just their like, own question. Can you believe no mirrors? Like, no one asked who lost the most weight. Like, yeah. no one. Yeah, like, that was just them. <laughs> Although, when they go to the doctor surgery, there is multiple surfaces on there that they probably would have been able to see the reflection on. Because they're not going to spray down the doctor, like, because that's where they work normally. So they, they're not going to spray all that shit down with the anti... To be honest, though, I don't know. Maybe that's something we can find out yes. a little bit later. Maybe I'll ask but Rachel what I will like, say there is really? like... Yes, some of the facial features you will be able to see, but like if you had your breast done, you had your bum done, you've had liposuction, like so much of it you would have actually been able to see. I guess maybe you wouldn't have been able to see how other people perceive you, which yeah. is a big thing. But like if you fill a sink with water, you can see your face in the reflection. Yeah. So I guess there would be little things that you could like get a hint about. Mm -hmm. That's 
one go. That's one go. That's one go. Well, that satisfied your curiosity. Now we have just a few contestants left in our evening gown competition. Every one of these women here tonight is a dead are proud graduates of a program that the corpse girls. changed their lives forever. Our next one is going to become Marcia a Melbourne. zombie. Body. The zombie girl. <laughs> First category is brains. Marsha came to the Swan program suffering from social anxiety. Oh, that's relatable. I won't be invisible. The, the, this, the, 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 uh, the editing Fade. suite people were like, look, oh, oh she's in Black the Matrix and white. girl. Humiliating daily ritual. It makes me feel really unfeminine to have to shave my face every single day. As you said, hormone balance. I feel yeah, it's, it's completely absolutely to do with the hormone disgusted balance. with myself. And I'm really surprised that they didn't even... Did they broach that subject? Did they, did they back then? Was it knowledge? Like, would people know this? Well, I mean, they're doctors. They should yeah, I know guess, it. Yeah. <laughs> Surgery would help give. Marcia's also, the most body unrealistic more form of shape. IPL because it doesn't just go after one session. Yeah. It's because they've shaved the procedures her. Procedures were successful. It's smooth all of a sudden. It's like I've just been shaved. shaved. Challenging than she expected. So tired. The winner of last year's Swamp Pageant dropped by to offer encouragement. Rachel girls. Rachel girls. Thirty-five pounds, and I, I know that you could do it too. With her hopes renewed, Marsha reconnected. That was such a weird, like, quick segment as well. She said one sentence to her, and they were like, "Yes." But well, it was like she's it happy. was like in the first one as well, when the the one they were trying oh, to yes. do the angry black woman edit. <laughs> yeah. They made the other other contestant come in and be they like, did. "Just do as you're told," basically. Basically. She does look so good. Yeah. I wonder what she's gonna look like now. Stuntishra. Stungina. Forget invisible. Instead, let's shine a spotlight on Marsha. Oh, puns go. Spot hat. Oh, I don't know the like this one. What's this one? Oh, I don't like the hand. Perfect. Is a yet. Ah, uh, ooh. It's not it's an evening just a gown. Bit boring. She looks so good. It's not an evening gown. I mean, she looks stunning, yeah, but the maybe this just was evening gowns in two thousand and what? Maybe, four? yeah. I guess we're kind of judging it by like now, standards now, yeah. It just doesn't look very... Like, it's just a black dress with, like, a, 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 a sequined thing around the bosom. A sequined statement belt. A say something. Uh, yeah, it's just a bit boring. I'm supposed to drag race now. The yeah. outfits are so yeah, humorous. Literally, and just... you're like, what is this? Oh. oh. That's that, so it's the, that second. Was it the second girl? I feel like the second girl was... That she was, got that two was like tens, the, didn't like she? The, yeah, like the ten, ten, ten. Ten, 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 ten. ten, 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 ten. ten. So I think two, two. Two. they get rid of six, don't they? And then they're left with three. Yeah. So all her huh. life. I don't think Gina any, goes. I think anyone that gets like an eight is probably not going to make it through. Gina came to the Gina goes. to heal from a painful childhood and build her self confidence. I find it so weird when they did this one, where they didn't like make any real point of like giving her hearing, like yeah, hearing. Was it hearing aids or yeah. they gave her like a surgery and they, they kind of just like brushed past they it? Did, brush, brush right at the end. They were like, oh, how how wonderful. Move on. Mm. And I'm not a bear as I might have to be. But when I look in the mirror, I feel handicapped because I don't feel confident with my stuff. Gina's fit. I, they would have asked her that question. I don't think she would have just freely said that. Yeah. I feel like that was a very. Oh, everything in the, everything question. everything in this is very much like we want we we know what we want you to say. Yeah, so we're gonna ask you every variation of the question to get you to say what we want. Yeah. And, and then a hurricane happens. I'm stranded. I wish I could help that, but my mom, she wanted me to stay here. She wanted me to She must have felt so home. horrible in this moment. Mm -hmm. Despite the obstacles, Gina rededicated herself to the SWAN program. The sw everyone the involved in the SWAN should have been like, we're sending you home possible. and we'll bring yeah. you back. The yeah. is now on. And how is the volume? For the first time in my life, I can hear my own voice. Great. <laughs> In the end, Gina's hard work paid off, and her trans. I hated what they did with that her hair. hair is, it's oh too scarecrow. God. It's very scarecrow, isn't it? Oh my Who curls hair like that? Yeah, it's it's, it's too much. Let's project the horrible photo. Oh yes, come on, girls, time to see what horrible woman you were and what horrible woman you are. Oh, I know that. Gina Davis. Gina, girls. Comes out on the unicycle. Ooh. Ooh, What's elegant. with the fingers again? The fingers Ooh. are a bit like claw like. La la, no, no, la la, I've, I've got scout scout. <laughs> <laughs> An 
elegant woman. An elegant Ooh. woman. Change her hair. Oh, well, she's like waving her arms around. Ooh. Her hair is a bit bumpy. It's very bumpy. <laughs> bump it. <laughs> bump it up with bump it. Get that stuff off. You. Oh, bump it up. This is not an evening gown. No, it's not. It's a resort wear. Resort it wear. also doesn't fit her chest. Just. Oh, she looks a bit frightened. Yeah. <laughs> See you in a headlock, I hope. Wait, did they make... Uh, do you think they would have made adequate... Um, what's the word? Like, adjustments because of her disability? Maybe. I wonder. Huh. Her score was kind of good. Yeah. I feel like she might make it through. She's been on one of the now better sides. Yeah. Next yeah. Carrie Bravada, who was struggling with a weight problem when she auditioned for the program with her sister, Gina. Oh, yes. The oh, scandal. Yeah, sister, and sister. I really wanted it to be like a double. Yeah. I wonder if she'll come back for the wild card. Maybe she'll be the wild card, yeah. Maybe. Sister. But sisters who hated together. Hated how they styled her sister's the hair at the reveal. It was just like her hair was eating her alive. Her. Eaten by an escalator. She had no Part two. Idea. The Gina Dyson goes wrong. Joining the program with her. Does she know? No, it's a secret. <laughs> no, it's Carrie a secret. came to the Swan hoping Lies. to overcome Lies devastating body image problems. When I first started high school, I was very active and I was happy with how I looked. She All was of a sudden, dumb top. I show up my sophomore year <laughs> as this woman. I was 16 I years am old woman, with hear me roll. breasts. Dancers aren't built this way. Every night it's something four. that you love. Oh, it's like being taken away from you and you can't what? control it. The, the transformation. transformation. Jumpstart Carrie's girls. physical transformation. I'm going to give you He's a He's really like, no. hello, like in their faces. He's so aggressive as a doctor. ...and was put on hold when she had difficulty coming out of anesthesia. Oh, that's this terrifying. terrifying. This, this is terrifying. Carrie? So I don't know if it's going to be possible. I'm glad they didn't like pretend that she flatlined and like coming up next. Yeah, literally, a, a bridal plastic that she just died. Ridiculous. I laughed so hard. It was so, so deranged. <laughs> that edit of just Alison died. Like, what? She stayed committed to losing the weight. And when it came time for the reveal, all her hard work paid off. She did look really good at the yeah. reveal. And I actually don't mind her hair. It's very 2000s, but it is. And I love the 2000s. Yeah, it's actually like one of the better hair extension yeah. examples. She does look gorgeous. Glowing. Glowing! I mean, I liked it before as well. I think she looks really sweet. Before. A lot of the things, a lot of this kind of stuff, just it, makeup style and techniques can is, quite clearly yeah. change a lot of the things that you, people are uncomfortable yeah. with. Yeah, a lot of the secret to the transformation is like the cosmetics department. Yeah. What's it's a blue dress. It looks like the same first one, same dress as the first one, just without the, like the ruffles at the bottom. It's more like it's literally this the same. It was a bit Eurovision. And she <laughs> looks identical to the one at the first one. <laughs> literally a clone. But this dress is exactly the same as the first one, just not with the ruffles at the bottom. It's I flat. actually prefer this dress a bit more. Right? Yeah, I do. It's a bit yeah. more elegant. She's kind of walking a bit strangely though. She's got a bound. Boots, bounce, bounce. I hate this hairstyle. The one that she had at her reveal was so much better. Just do a reiteration. That hairstyle is very 2000. Because like, you can really though. see where the extensions end. Yeah. If you see, like, she's got a layer here where her natural hair ends, and then just like loose curls underneath. Oh, okay. That's the second. That's the second best. Mm. Okay. Second boost. The quatrieze. Wait, her. There's an elastic, There's an elastic band, band in my solage. Amazing, right? No one's gonna get that reference. No yeah. one. So far, we've seen eight of our beautiful I would love Amanda swans just to go like smack on the floor. Oh no! She's the I one need my banister. To be added to the pageant as the wild card. Oh! Who do you think it might be? Me. I am the wild oh. card. Oh. When I was twelve years old. Yes, exactly. <laughs> we gave you a brow lift at yeah. twelve. Oh, please do. Time for a brow lift. Oh. I'm oh, no. Can I also get a Red Bull? Now, the woman who is named <laughs> the Swan tonight not <laughs> only wins the title, she'll also receive the biggest prize package ever awarded Worth on a beauty absolutely pageant. absolutely nothing at all. Right, I wonder how different it is. Oh! pageant winner will become a national spokesperson for Nutrisystem. A what a surprise! The Swans lost a remarkable amount of weight using the Nutrisystem weight loss program. Join Nutrisystem today and you too can lose weight like a See, swan. See, MLM, was, pyramid it was scheme, all, pyramid. It was all a ploy to promote that product. Well, I knew it was going to be. I bet, could see it. I bet the producers or someone on this actually owns it. Yeah, and it's like, absolutely. It's, it's, it's going to be like the husband of Nelly Galan. Yes. It's like, yes, I actually yes, own yes. Ninja's. Yes. Yes. Airways International. 
International will fly the winner to exotic Thailand, where she and the guest will relax in luxury at the Meredith Sweet State Tower. Right, Bangkok okay, so you get a nice holiday. That's kind of... Six day guided tour in six and around days? Bangkok, courtesy of the Tourism Authority four months of having surgery for six days away. She'll one of a kind custom evening gown by House of Thai Silk in Hollywood. To help okay. maintain her new figure, she and her family will be awarded a one-year gym membership complete with personal training sessions. To keep her figure, did they say? Leading luxury health club. And family. To further enhance her beauty, tonight's winner will receive a one-year supply of mesoesthetic medical skincare products. Right. She'll also enjoy a weekend extravaganza in fabulous Las Vegas as a guest of Rio All Suites Hotel. Okay. For her continuing transformation, the Swan will receive a ten thousand oh, dollars personal coaching fake. scholarship from Anthony Robbins Master University. It's not even a university. Did you hear it was all a scam? Was it? It's all a scam. Wait, what is it? So he was like someone that would give like life coach advice, and apparently it was like, "Come to my university," and it's just like him in a room being like, "You need to do better in your life." Like it's a complete scam. Complete scam. Plus, the winner's significant other will receive a thirty-five thousand dollars smile transformation provided by Dr. Sherry Worth in partnership with Da Vinci Studio. Oh wow! Oh, wow! Think... To the woman crowned the Swan. So they give like the partner veneers as well. I also but feel like Sherry the... Worth isn't a doctor anymore. I do think the first series had better rewards. Yeah, yeah, I think so. will be given the chance to compete as our wild card. Well, the, the wild cards never win. Made, I don't know why they bother doing this. It's weird. They, they, they never win. Just... Let's review our wild card. They candidates. should have done a double with the sisters. Yeah, that would have been so cool. Kim Wilborn from Cleveland Heights, Ohio. Well, they hate her. They They're really didn't like her. Laurie Arias from Corona, California. Christina Ozuna, Christina Washington. Didn't we find out the wild card before the pageant in the first series? Uh, I swear it didn't happen like this. We already knew what it was. I swear we did. They were in the normal work room. They were. And they both came in. Work room. Work yeah, room. the reveal they, room. They, they were. were. Yeah, you're right. I wonder if... I don't remember it happening like this. I don't remember it quite happening the same way. But I also don't... Like that... The, the swan pageant that we watched last time was such a fever dream because we had no idea what we were even yeah, watching. That's true. I'd never even seen a pageant before. No, I was so no. overwhelmed by all of it. <laughs> They, I don't like her hair on. Gina Bravata from well. Lamarada, California. That hair is awful as well. It's like Becca Bean Queen. Patty Shadowan from Pass New Jersey, Texas. Pass the cake, Pass the cake, Bakers. Dwayne Norris from Clinton Township, Michigan. Sylvia Cruz from Chicago, Illinois. Illinois. And Dory Webber from Las Vegas, Nevada. I can't believe they cut all her hair off. She had such gorgeous hair. They're like, no. I don't know who, I actually don't know who it's going to be. I have no idea. And the woman it would make sense for it to be the, the sister. Yeah. Is no one. Gina Bravada. Yeah. See? But also, you're right. It's not done in the same way. Yeah. You mean, I knew it would yeah. be. Yeah. Knew yeah. it would be. It had to be. I don't know why they didn't just do the gag in the episode. Of the millennial. Gag of the millennial. Now, as you can just imagine, it was an extremely difficult decision. She turned it down. Gina was selected because she was of like, her no, amazing I don't want to. transformation no. and her dedication to the program. And we couldn't think of anyone better to give Gina the news than her sister Carrie. See? So it was already produced. It should have been a moment. Though. I'm so excited that Gina made it to the pageant. Hello. She had the hugest surprise for me. Oh, you didn't tell me you were here. What a wild so today I get to do it back Imagine going on this is like I have sister. a surprise for you. Oh no. You have been chosen as the wild card. Are you serious? But she's glamorous on her doorstep. Like, Congratulations. Yeah, what is she going to think is going to happen? Yeah. I'm not coming out on like, a Reveal. Yeah. Like, uh, I know. A bogey. You know? <laughs> bogey. <laughs> they would dress the same. Having a big chest ruined a this lot of things for me. Mm. You know, I was 12 years old getting hit on by 18 year old guys. That is After I quit unacceptable. I, 14, I started gaining weight. By the time I was in college, my sister and I were both struggling with our weight. We each weighed over 170 pounds. We've had a lot of hard times. Gina's the physical transformation will be jump started by surgery. Oh, what's the <laughs> number? I don't know. I was you like, very, I was like, oh, on it. <laughs> to reduce them. What we should do is put you into the lower D range, knowing that when you lose the weight, that'll put you into the C range. Okay. See, this is um, Gina's biggest challenge would be keeping the secret. How would you know that? I found, well, you, the thing is also in the comments, lots of people were telling me about their own experiences with like breast reduction surgery. Yeah. And apparently, which I now makes a lot more sense that I've read into it, is that like breast tissue isn't just 
fat. It's mm-hmm. made of lots of other different types of yeah. um, tissue. So the idea that when you lose weight, your breasts either shrink or grow is kind of irrelevant because it's not all just fat tissue, like adipose yeah, tissue. Yeah. So well, the that, idea that he why... gave her less of a reduction is very much that Dr. Ray person in 90210, Dr. 90210 being like, we need to make it bigger because there's breastless women everywhere. Gina's biggest challenge would be keeping the secret that she was also They love making the a pun on like, the biggest The biggest, yeah, the biggest. Like, oh, she's like, the you've biggest. Big tits, big breasts. Yeah. You want to say hi to her? Yes. Talk to her. I think this is where she like, Roxy. emulated Roxy. a dog. Despite the pressure, Gina kept her focus. The result was an outstanding transformation. Outstanding. <laughs> there, look, her hair is like swallowing her shoulders. Oh my god. My the strangest I hairstyling. <laughs> the thing is, rather, and they're like, they're like outstanding transformation, but we didn't actually pick you to begin with. No, her. exactly. This is the best option, though, is to have the two sisters, like, yeah, yeah. Compete, like in terms of, like, drama and reality TV. Wild card, Gina Bravada! Look at this horrible photo. Oh, she's like, Ooh, reach for, for the gal. gal. Day off. <laughs> Look at the galaxy behind them. Oh. oh, my goodness. This is not an evening gal. No. This is, like... Hello. Belly dancing at the women's club. I don't know where you belly dance. I've never been a lesbian. The women's club. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Why is she like dancing? She's got but... the bounce in her. Uh, they won't like that. No, they're, they're gonna be like, stop doing all that. Stop doing immediately that. in prison. That's not poise. That's pony pay. <laughs> She's got good. Uh, look at those arms. Look yes, at the arm muscles. A strong woman. Pick me up and throw me around, mummy. Oh, oh, no! I wasn't expecting I that. Was, I was like, it's when I, a four. When I saw the walk, I was like, they'd be like, no, nice. stop being stupid. She's got, like, no clothes on. That's not an evening gown. No, that's I not do not evening. agree. Now, when they came to the swan, each of our contestants... In was way, also a swan. Was also a swan, yeah. But already tonight, they have proven their sceptics wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Who's my skeptic? pleasure to present our it's nine like watching swan paranormal no, 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 yeah. contestants. Sceptic. But we did say they were going to resurrect Sexist. her from a Ouija board. Yeah, that's so. true. Oh my goodness, full circle moment. Yeah. Event building. Is that everyone? That seems quick. Oh, time for a dance routine. Remember the first time we watched the first time? Everyone was like, like, well, like this, yeah. The choreo is on Ket. That guy had, that white guy had a sign down there saying luckiest guy. Oh, disgusting. Get a grip. This is very the witches three. Witches. Oh, look at the twins, the blue dresses oh. together. Collision. They all look the same. Mm-hmm. Look at those them. two. Are oh, like, why did they identical. choose to put those two like together? Weird. That is a weird choice to have those two come together. Identical. At least make it like mirrored or symmetrical or something. Like, don't make it look odd. Yeah. I. I so weird. And again, we've and with the seen... music that's like, this could be your dream if you come on the Swan next year. It's stupid as well because like we've already heard that how they don't get to pick the dress. It's all yeah. contrived by the judges anyway. Yeah, be like, absolutely. no, we want you to be in that dress because it's not as nice. And they don't get as much time like backstage to like fix outfits and things. She's the pungent. I really hate the Bump hairstyling. It. And now it's time to execute three women. Three ladies, <laughs> That's right. It is a bathing suit competition. Oh, oh. we're going to see bathing some nothing go. Coming up. Coming Not, up. Me. Like, bitch, me too. The fuck? Oh, look at this lime green. Chartreuse self. Disgusting. Ugly ducklings who came to the swamp. That is a horrible t- that is a in a hit, Like, like are we going to green screen her out and put her on sort of like a spider? A yeah. swan. A swan. A banister. But how the heck am I going to get there? Well, ladies, mission accomplished. And here's how they trained for tonight's big event. Oh, here we go. So oh, right, here we go. Here's the backstage tea. Our contestants hit the dance studio. Okay. We're going to work on everything from your expressions to... They love that green colour, don't they? Do their job disgusting. to master the all-important pageant walk. So here we go. But walking like a beauty queen oh, is as easy as it looks. Oh. My dancing ability, oh, not good. Oh, but yeah, two fight. Two later, it's coming together. Want to see my walk? <laughs> <laughs> it's 
It's like I can understand because it's oh, very um, down is down. The 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 it's very like take the piss out of modelling rather than actually modelling. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Tyra is quaking here. Yeah. Yeah. Exercise with that. Breast exercise. Yeah, breasticle. Along the way, they've collectively lost more than 200 pounds. Good job. Now it's time to exercise that was so their voices. My name is David Corey. Good job! And I'm going to transform your voices today. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. When you're asked a question, take your time. Overpronounce every syllable. Risk sounding weird. I feel like that's a bit disrespectful as well. Fuck. To make the most of their newfound beauty. Hi, I'm Valerie. We're going to do makeup lessons and teach you how to look beautiful every day. And look like leather face. Anything that's hollow you want to bring out and make light. I like that. Horrible blending. Blond. Thank you so much. Oh, makeup artists from back in the day are so stuck in their ways. That's all they do. One look and that's it. Yeah. Let loose during an outing in Hollywood. Oh, Coco Montreal's the best. Oh, yes, the best. Ah. They got there in the end. Finally, it's time to relax and get revitalized. Welcome to La Jolla's Farm D. You're this is like all in the same day. Really yeah, this nice is such a weird segment to be like, just going to show been, all never, this. Never, oh. never been to a spa before. Seizure warning. Massage, Have a nice stone. Let me rub these rocks on you whilst you eat strawberries with a plastic fork. Ooh. Glamour. Fuck the turtles. All in all, a busy few weeks. Oh. Kick her in the face. Beat. Beat. <laughs> the swan goes. I can't wait to see how this turns out. You should move on. That was a long time oh. ago, Luxa, for God's sake. It's just really difficult. Yeah, it is, yeah. The swan is over. No. And now we're going to watch the guinea fowl. The guinea fowl. Here's Carrie. Here's Carrie, Carrie Bradshaw. Lovely. Hello. Oh, Hello. is this bikini girl? Oh. What a horrible bikini. <laughs> That does not go together at this all. This isn't a bikini! That does not go together at all. Why are they, why are they like... Why are they like... That choreography is awful. I don't like that at all. I don't like that. Why are we... Look, was there meant to be scores there? Maybe. Yeah, we didn't get scores. They put the screen up there. We didn't That's didn't... weird. They forgot her scores. No, like, she was like, no, she got like, See, this actually looks like a bathing suit. Look, they're going to do the same thing. Nice. Stupid bitch. Oh, look, she can't see the tattoo. She's put that on. Ah, there. interesting. That's an interesting styling choice. I'll be ready. No scores. Ne never no scores again. you score me. I'll be ready. Oh, oh shit, I'm going this way. No, actually. Forever and always. This is the fastest, Next, like, the speed round. Lost the pounds and made a stunning transformation. That's a nice face. Okay. Yeah, America. that one's okay. Silly old, old bitch. bitch. Oh, oh no yeah. way. <laughs> <laughs> has she got tights on with this baby suit? I think she has. Why are no those scores? scores? We don't know. We don't, they... Good luck, everybody else. Why have they done that? That's so weird. Maybe they've forgotten it. On UV light. Yeah. <laughs> Invisible <laughs> ink. Wow. Okay, that's the first, like, bikini we've seen. Yeah, yeah. Silly bitch. Silly old bitch. Ow. Go ahead. Go my ahead. My bump it. My bump it goes. I like to go the bump it in the beach. <laughs> <laughs> my perfect beach body has a bump it. A bump it. Her breasts are very round, they, they are. They've really got I love that, that big shape. Round. I want that big yeah, round that titty chain. Very, very glam model. Very glamour model. Very glamour model. Why are they giving this like awkward oh, I don't like, like I don't like that one. Do you not? No, it looks like a licorice all sort. It does a little bit. You know? I do like the band idea though. But the the thighs need to cut up higher, I think. Nelliga band. No score for no you. Score, no score, no. Immediate execution. A oh. dead body. Shot on stage. <laughs> she used to want to hide when she. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't put it past no, no, she would be like, You look prettier than me, bitch! Shot on stage! <laughs> shot on stage! It was shot at first sight. She was in public, oh. but now, oh. check out Jennifer. Snake skin! Oh, it makes it. That's not a flattering pattern. No. Bow! Bow, 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 bow bitch! 
That is, I don't like that one either. Snake skin. No. I'm a serpent. I don't. So if you're gonna have snake skin, it has on a bikini. It has to go down to give you that shape. Otherwise, it makes everything look wide. Why is there no scores? Weird. Did they forget to edit the middle? I something? think so. I think maybe because this is from the DVD. I wonder if they were like, no, no. no maybe because they don't want us to know it's a secret. James. But it's already aired by the time you have a yeah. DVD. Oh, she's very bouncy. Three vines. I quite like the cut of this bikini. Oh, silly old bitch. She's very swagger. She's got long legs, such long legs. That's horrible lighting. We salute you, Delisa girl. She used to hide her smile, and now she's, now she's a man. She's dead. <laughs> For Amy. <laughs> oh no! What's all that? She really looks like her sister, though. Yeah, She's very similar. Like a man. Yeah. <laughs> no scoring. No. no. Not allowed. None of these. That looks like, more like underwear. Though, yeah. None of them. They're not like the cut rise for bikinis. Oh, no but it's the early 2000s, isn't it? It's yeah. was low rise. She is such an athletic figure. Yeah. That is gorgeous. exactly the figure that I want. Billy, our bitch. Billy, bitch. My new life as a man. <laughs> <laughs> we need to stop making transphobic jokes now. Mummy will get upset. I no score for you. I love her tummy. Gorgeous. Oh, a little pirouette. Ooh. And her hair's not eating her alive. And That's nice. Oh, absolutely she must be. <laughs> Once again, you're not <gasps> a contestant. Was that everyone again? Okay, right. Who's going to go? This is so much faster. It feels really quick, doesn't it? I got down, down, down. Right. Who do we think's going through? Not the one with the patchwork underwear. I think the two one in the blue dresses were going through. Mm -hmm. I think. I'm not sure. I have no idea who's going to win. No. No idea. Okay, then. The time has come to find out who are... The Who's going to the guillotine? Oh, the next five. Here we remember. go, girls. Our contestants are being judged on beauty, poise, and overall transformation. Whew. May I have the envelope, please? No, you can't. You must eat it Thank from the you. floor. Like a little Ladies, guinea pig. are you ready? <laughs> okay, right, here, we go. here we go. In random order, the first <laughs> semi-finalist <laughs> tonight <laughs> is... Okay. I can't grab hold of you, can I? I can. Erica Moore! Oh. Oh. Erica, girls! She that was, was in that blue. Was, that was, that was, 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 was a blue lady. There was a blue lady. Blue lady. A smurf. That was the smurf. <laughs> I actually said I didn't mind that one. That was mm. the best bikini we saw, I think. Our second semi finalist tonight is. Delisa Styles. Delisa oh, Girls! Delisa Girls! Delisa Girls! With the vine. I actually said yeah. I like that one. Oh. Very vine whip. Bulbasaur uses vine whip. Chikorita Girl. <laughs> the third woman moving on tonight is... Moving on from her husband. A dead body. Carrie Bravata. Oh! oh! That's one of the sisters. Yes. Girls. It's the sister. I wonder if they're going to pull the other sister through the wild card. But surely they would, right? Maybe? I don't know. Yeah. I didn't think she would go through. These three that's ladies disgusting. will Bikini. also be joined by... Yeah. Gina Davis. Oh, it's made it really hard. Oh! Because we didn't see any scores for the second round. Oh, we don't it's know. It's really hard we for us really to really judge who's going. He's like, he's like yo, Satan. Satan. Long, go, go, Satan, go. Gina, it's gorgeous. Oh, that is a horrible bump it. Why they bump it? Bump it up with Bump It. Get that salon style look fast and easy. And the last woman <gasps> with the chance to be, to be executed to be the this sister is Susie. 
Regina Bravazzo. I knew it. I, I had a suspicion. Did. I knew it. Oh, they're going to make it those two against they're, each other. They're they're gonna gonna be, gonna... They are. They are. They're t- they're, I can see through it, girls. Yeah, they're going to be like, oh, you're... It's Alyssa versus Tatiana all over it again. Is, yes. Tenderly down to the other. Oh, my God. Oh. And the rest of you executed right to the guillotine. Hung on stage. Nisha, <sighs> through the Amy, floor. Jennifer, through the floorboards. You each look absolutely amazing and you've made incredible But you're still ugly you're, suckling. Yeah, you're still not good enough for the swan. No. Thank you so much for being here. Let me glad just come on and execute them. Eat them alive. Eat them alive. Right. My goodness. Well done, 2004. Semi from Watley. Wow. Let's do the shots again. Are you okay? <laughs> What's all that about? Oh my god, my lovely. So I don't know about you, but did you? I don't know, but I've been told. Oh, I've got gout and a mighty cold. Um. Anyway, did you think they were gonna go through? Did you think pretty much? I thought the sisters kind of had I, to. The thing is, when I didn't think the wild card would get through to the final because the wild cards never win. But when the yeah. first sister got through, it's like it was clear the wild yeah. card was going to. But be again, the because we because we didn't see the scores in the second round, it was really hard that to. That was a weird thing. It was it? really hard to sort of make a judgment because on the first series we watched, they gave us scores each time, so we could kind of work out a little bit. Why bother even giving us the scores on the first like round? Yeah, then I don't know. I think it must have been a, a mistake. That has been error. That has been error because we yeah it made it really hard for us to kind of like judge who was going through. So I had no kind of like oh, no I, I idea yeah really weird i then the pacing of this pageant is so different to the one we saw before fast. It's this so is fast. really fast i feel like when we were filming the first one it kind of like it felt like we were filming for hours and hours yes, and yes, hours yes. and hours so my lovelies make sure you stay tuned for the next episode which will be coming out on my next upload day <laughs> <laughs> hello beautifuls welcome back to my chanel and to part two of the swan pageant season two <laughs> I want to say a massive welcome back to the Swan Season 28 winner, Laxaria. That's me. I've just touched your tattoo. Moron! So, in the last episode, we saw how many? Was it five? We, we Five got, five five got through. through. So, today we're going to find out who is the winner of Season 2. I'm a little bit, like, nervous. Yay! A little bit excited. I would be really interested to know what the other international seasons of the Swan are like. Like, yeah. how similar they are to the US version. I'm going to have to do some internet sleuthing. If anybody out there in the comments would also like to assist me in the internet sleuthing to I find sus- out. That is so good. you? Clever. What all these other? Oh, she's a DJ. Oh, she's in the matrix. Wibbly wobbly. I've got goiter. And with that, my lovelies, because these videos usually take a little while, <laughs> why don't we get straight into it and ask, who's gonna win the pageant? Me. All that and more. Why is she dancing? Swan, I'm dancing. I'm dancing. If I'm dancing, scout. She's recording. Good. Mm. Thank goodness for that. Right. That's how I went. <laughs> the pageant the of the Swan Girls. I cannot wait to hear you. Never say never that again. Yeah. Never scream the spot. Oh, she's, oh, she's in an outfit change. She's, she stole the dress from the evening wear. Change your like, costume, Mimi. Yeah. Change it around. Yeah. Voted number three. I could not believe it. Season one lo- swans! Season one swans! Oh, I didn't look then. I wasn't paying attention because I was looking at you saying I've been lavoshed. These are evening gowns. Yeah, this is this is evening gowns. Yeah. Who is that woman? Oh, is, this is the this is the designer of the gowns, isn't it? Yeah, she bloody that. Hello! Give me the gift certificate! Oh, he was buying it from me! It's Delisa, Delisa girls! That's a really nice pink dress. It is, yeah. Pink! I don't hate that. Pink makes the voice break. Very elegant. YOLO! Oh, are they different dress designers this mm. time? Then? That is a go- I would wear that. Well, it's a bit plain on top. Yeah, it's a bit, yeah. It's a bit Nobody likes a plain top. No. I'm going to cream. Do the work, bitch. Oh, as a pirate from the Caribbean. I swear they put the girl in that, the wild card in that in the first series. There was like a blonde, the blonde girl. Yeah, like, she wore, right. she wore like very similar very to that. Very similar. And that is a very gown. Though. Does she still have bump it in? I didn't look. Yes. Still got the bum in it. Let's say something midsection. Trini will be pleased. Yeah. Daytime tweed with an evening chiffon. Ooh, an elegant. Don't an elegant. Style. Gorgeous. Lesbian. An elegant lesbian. I've never met a lesbian. Pink. Horrible hairstyling. A bump it. A bump it. She's still got the bum wash tears. 
you were wondering, I'm in a gown by La Femme. We Nobody don't cares. cares. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't ask. Just Nobody cares. Stupid bitch. Why did you get that? La Femme. Because, yeah, she was, I'm Femme. I'm, Dumb. I'm a lipstick lesbian. Mary loves dick. Yeah. Each of our contestants blouse. will randomly uh, blouse. select an envelope containing the name of one I'm a doily. of our judges. That judge will then Ooh. ask one question. That man is awful. He looks rabid. Yeah. seconds to answer. Erica Moore, you're up first. Pick an envelope, please. Thank you. What's this? There's like, there's, there's, there's like a question. Like, yeah, question though, they're like... This has obviously been a life-changing experience for you. Who is Erica today? And what are your plans for the future? Oh, how dry. When I came to the Swan Pageant, I had no self-confidence. Now that I've gone through all these transformations and I've had a lot of help from God the life sake. coach and from all the doctors, I am leaving here a very, very confident, strong woman. The future is so bright like and nothing's going to stop me now. But they're very of the amazing. time. Though. I look amazing and... <laughs> She, everyone's I'm had a brow proud. lift, but I don't feel like I'm those brows have been lifted Thank you. properly. No, yeah. like they need to be like snatched. Yeah. Again, like what a vapid question. Yeah, really vapid question. Nothing was said of importance. Who are you when you came, and who are you now? We can yeah. see. Oh look! Now suddenly we've got, we've got scores again. Oh, uh, CS Clayman hated that. She yeah. was like, no, no, bitch. execute. Let's hear it again for Erica Moore. Walk that way. The guillotine yeah. is <laughs> Please fall down this trap door. Bye, guys. Uh, Lisa. It's your turn. Delisa go. <laughs> There's just something about her name that makes me want to scream it. Thank you. I want this one. What's your favourite food? Do you have gout? <laughs> Beautiful. Thank oh. you. You were obviously caught off guard by the end of your marriage. Um, how would you say the swan has prepared you? See, this you is so, no, so, so stupid. Pick randomly who it's gonna be. And then he has a question directed to her about her wedding and yeah, her marriage. Yeah, literally. Like, it's literally, all so fake. It's, it's, it's fake. all fake. Fakery, girls. Um, how would you say the swan has prepared you for what comes next? Well, after a divorce. <laughs> During the course of the swan... Getting a brow lift really made me feel better about yeah. losing my husband. Yeah. Like. Program, I learned that true beauty is inner strength. And I was found in that knowledge She's with wonderful so friends and an excellent support system and even though i was caught off guard and the world was witness to that i think i'm a strong can you imagine being served divorce papers on a show the, the producers world were probably like it. yes bitch yes they yeah. were absolutely creaming their gussets creaming their gussets gussy wussy okay judges right time to record your scores for us please See, of all, because it's, it's, it's all fake. Like the, the way that they asked that question, that question was so much more. Yeah, like it was directed at. It Thank was you, for her. Yeah. Yeah. That question for was Delisa for her. Styles. Not just who are you when you came. Yeah, where did you go, Cat and I, Joe. Oh look, the expert mm. cackling his fanny out. Yeah. It's your turn. Don't say fanny. Okay, time. Please pick an envelope for me. Let's see. Thank you. Because they didn't. Krista Clayman. And she's like got eight questions that they can ask one of these. Felt that your body kept you from following your dreams. How do you think the transformation will change your life? Oh, so just a vague nothing. That my body stopped me from doing a lot of things that I dreamed of doing. And after this what amazing transformation, I just feel like more it's all confident contrived. and I'm more secure with myself and more comfortable. And I can do anything I want to do. There's a whole world out there waiting for me, and I can't wait to go enter it. Huh. I mean, sure. very safe, sensible answer, but, like, that question was so... The pointedness of, like, your body stopped you okay, from judges, living your life. Your scores. Mm -hmm. So she's second place so uh, far to the... Uh, it's weird that, like, she kind of just has to... Hey, what are your scores? She's judges. like... Because she has no idea that if we don't stand and smile. Yeah. Huh. It, to me, it's such a weird, pointless way to do it because, like, if they don't see their scores until what one, until the show's aired, like, what's the point? I don't know how pageants work, though. I don't know if you do know your. You just have to always assume you're doing the best, I guess. She's in such an elaborate costume. Barney Wilson. Hi, Gina. You're adorable. How would you compare the person 
who started the program four months ago to the person who stands here today. That's the same Again, question. Again, like it's literally the before the transformation. My old dog was lost. And I thought I have no future because my disability would give me a hard time. And I thought, you know, I have no future at all. During the program, I learned so much that my disability is special and that I do have the future ahead of me. And my goal is to help other disability that we need to make their life a bit different. And I hope that you know, all the changes that I went through will help them, that we are special and there is hope for all of us. I mean, that's, that's lovely. lovely. That's a beautiful lovely. answer. Yeah. If anyone votes her less than 10 for that, like, what is wrong with you? I don't know whether they give the second goal a completely different need. Eight. Eight. Ableist. Is the the bump it kind of look look is that sixties or is it seventies? I think it's just disgusting nineties, if I'm honest with you. But there no, was but there, there, there was, was like, like an a, era when the era where everyone was like, yeah. and it was like housewifey. I think it was sixties. Yeah. It might have been late fifties, early sixties. But oh god, I hate bump it's disgusting. Bump it up with bump it's get that salon style look fast and easy. Okay, thank you. Give it up one last time for Gina Davis. Huh. Hi Gina, we love you, girl. Oh, that bump it. it, bump it. And last but by no means least, it's your turn, Gina Bravata. Okay, so if she does better than her sister, we know that she's going through, I guess, because they'll whittle them down from five to three. Three, I think, you. yeah. It is indeed Larry Thompson. Hello, Gina, Larry. congratulations to both you and your sister. You've been the caretaker in so many of your relationships. What have you gained? by finally focusing on yourself. Again, see, it's a... It's, a it's the same thing. I it's... have always been the caretaker in all my relationships. Oh, and in coming here and being on my own and learning to take care of myself, I've learned that I'm worthy of the attention. That by putting the attention into myself, I'm not being selfish. I'm helping myself live a more productive life and make me more able to help others. Because if I'm confident in myself, I'm going to spread all that confidence around to other people. Like butter. And I'm mm. going to feel stronger, and other people are going to benefit from my strength. I mean, again, a very sensible answer. Yeah, but I, it's, I feel like it's not going to get a high score. I don't though. think it is. I think... Finally, would you please record your from reality TV, you? they should have done. Okay. That they, that's exactly what I was just about to say is they should really have the two sisters and a third. That's what they're going to do yes. from that scoring. That's I was actually do. surprised. Yeah. I'm surprised that, that did better. I'm surprised that that did better than Gina's answer. Yeah. Oh, uh, other Gina. In just a few <laughs> minutes, we'll Gina show you how our swans did in their first ever fashion photo shoot. And right a photo shoot? America's Next Top Model Girl. In our lingerie competition. Ooh, lingerie. Oh. Ashley's. She's got a sexual She's intercourse. She's got a degree. Oh, what a horrible outfit. We are now yeah. down to five semi-finals. A drowned wench. Through an incredible this is the outfit I wear to, to hold space. the stairs of my castle. A dead body. Wailing in the lobby. Amanda, come down the banister. She just falls. Yeah. A dead body. Is Amanda here? No. Oh. <laughs> Sexy lingerie on national television. Slut. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I call confidence. But first, we wanted to see how their That's new attitudes translated in front of the camera. I can't believe it's, it's not, not gout. gout. <laughs> a photo shoot with fashion photographer and Sabra. Now our judges will issue a combined score for both the photo insane. shoot and the lingerie competition. So, let's kick it off by checking out how Ooh, Erica that's did not swan in her ready. first no, it's not. ever fashion but shoot. But it is Rowley's ass already. <laughs> <laughs> that was a moment of like yeah. we're missing the photo shoot. Oh. Like, I hate all of these photos are terrible. Like a nipple, then all of a sudden. No, they, like yeah. that's not flattering. There's a, none of these photos are flattering. Why? She looks so much nicer in her candid. Yeah. And what was the point? Yeah. What was the point? Was the point? Here's some photos. Filler. Filler. That's right. Make. Is she gonna? Ooh. What's this? Evening nightwear, isn't it? Oh, but yes. A daytime tween a or an body. evening dead body. Oh, no. Oh, I don't like that. No, don't do that. Take a little squat. 
Oh, look. Oh, they look brought it back. back. Yeah, hello. Silly old bitch. The music is so like church bells. We're in the middle of the interdimensional rift. Oh, executed. Photo lingerie. Are they being judged on the photo on the as photo. well? They, again, they picked horrible photos again, last it's not, time. Again, it's not true with them because they're being told what to do with the photo. Yeah, absolutely. So everything's contrived. It's like, we go this way, you go that way, look that way. It could have been a really anxiety-provoking experience. All these people around, cameras, flesh. That makeup is not... But what is it with the half-closed... Like, he's I gone to ask them to happened. blink and then yeah. taken a photo. Gondola. And all the hard work is really a pretty picture. Oh, God, it's very Janice Dickinson, isn't it's it? It's just boring. That was an okay photo, yeah. I guess. Ochre. Ochre. That was an ochre photo. Don't you start talking about ochre. I'll have a breakdown. I'm never shopping in BHS again! As I was disgusting, I can't believe all this! You've mugged me, girls! Ooh, this is very, like, Reach. father sense you have to... It's very Anastasia. Ooh. She's got some stocking Oh, girl. my goodness. Now, that really is long today. She got to do a little squat as well. Oh. Oh. Laundry people to see a strong, confident person. Oh, here we go. Inception. I wonder, Bye, guys. Yeah, silly bitch. Who, I wonder who came up with that idea of like editing. Like, we're just going to green screen you onto the stage at the end. That. They're just like, we have the money. Oh, that's Delisa Ghost. Delisa's winning have Ghost. Had, have we had two tens? I, I think the think first yet. The blue the lady got two tens. No, it wasn't blue lady. It was, just, it was she was in a black no, dress. Because the blue lady came yes, in the first second. Right, yes. I've got a degree. Yeah, I also can't remember anyone's name. No, neither can I. For reason. Oh, oh emeralds. Oh. Here we go down the Marbury bush. Horrible. I thought it was going to be a lot harder. Go. Ah. Really good. And Kind of tells you what to do. Maybe, maybe like what, are you okay? We've been filming for a long... It's been a long day. Do you miss that? You do miss home. Um, and when I say home, I, I mean really bosom. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. How dare you? Oh, tit delicious. Awesome, you can see her pads in yeah. her dress. <laughs> oh. Oh. Okay. Oh, now she's messed up her parting. Oh, I don't know This I... isn't lingerie. This is 90s clubber. Yeah, yeah this is like... I look good, oh. I feel good, and I can't wait to show it off. Oh, I, I don't, don't like, like the this. choreography no. that they've given no. her. Wow, she really did have a big chest. Yes, she did. I don't feel like chest reduction surgery is a cosmetic surgery. I feel like it's like an actual plastic surgery. Okay. This is going to be close. Third place, though, I think. Mm. I think it's third place. So she's one of the sisters, though, isn't she? Yeah. So, to find out how Gina Davis did in her fashion. If I was the producer, I would do sister, sister, sister versus sister, and then a third. That's what, what? What have they done to her? They have not styled her hair correct in the slightest. That's... Excellent, excellent. I feel so good about myself. Can you stop showing us the same that was the same the horrible three noise? Times. Stop with the noise. That horrible. is not... That is so quick and insane. No, no. I feel like I'm being assaulted like my is, senses it, are being like assaulted. Well, I don't know why, but on every one of these shows, when there's anything to do with fashion, they're like... <laughs> <laughs> Back with a bump it. And a choker goes... Oh! <laughs> Of anyone here, I feel like she looks like she's having the most fun. Yeah, she I looks like agree. she's having the best time. Yeah. It's such a, it's such a weird moment. Mm. That bumper is still staying in. Bumper. Bumper cars. Bumper to bumper. I really like stockings and suspenders. Maybe I should start wearing. They are. They are. That's oh. quite high. I, oh, it's just a seven. Oh, it's a maybe. seven. Yeah. That's the first seven we've seen. Mm. Thank you, Gina. Gina, Gina. Gina. Now, let's Those see are hip pads, right? That can't be her hips. I don't know. Her hips don't lie. She's here, right? She does have Shigella. <laughs> Shigella is quaking. Absolutely amazing. It was baby, when you eat like... glamour. What don't you say guys? such <laughs> things. No. Gorgeous. <laughs> I just feel really sexy and glamorous. Stop with all this, like. It's really so intense, these sections. 
That was that a looked good like Yvette Fielding. Uh, Yvette Fielding, but also Pete Burns. And yeah. Finally, here she is. Most haunted plastic surgery edition. I want your ghost. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Scattering petals at a wedding. I do think this. Oh, little sh- leg shimmy. Sliding. Oh. Oh. I don't the like the I, I, I think this is a little dull, to be honest. This little section I'm not hugely fond of. Why has she got like a, an arm? Um, they're trying to be like. She's got a great. <laughs> she's got a great tummy though. She does. Mm. She's got nice legs as well. It's why they're always like, oh, you look like you got a man bill. Oh, you look like a man and stuff. It's like she looks. Gorgeous, yeah. like that, genuinely yeah. gorgeous, breathtaking. 8.5, mm-hmm. you must be a cut. Now, let's take a look at our fabulous five semi finalists. Okay, finalist so this is like. I, that time. dress is not flattering like her at all. No, I don't like it. Oh, they're coming directly from the hell! <laughs> Satan! Right, what's the tea? I, do you know, I don't really like any of these. They're not. The best examples of lingerie I've ever seen. No, and it's kind of lost on me to be honest because I don't. I'm into like female lingerie, like yeah. You're into masculine lingerie. Yeah, naked and afraid. Mm-hmm. Being broken into. Burglary <laughs> <laughs> girls. Haunting. Event fielding <laughs> and docks after. Must be that like haunting. Uh, yeah, don't dock. No. no. I do like those stockings. They're fun. A box on the. Why is she off? Like she's, she's. She's. Oh, I guess. Oh. This is what is there at accessibility. Yeah. I yeah. hear the music properly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure. I. I don't know. You know. She. And I think Gina would have had a much more of a difficult time compared to everyone else. Yes. 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 Oh, here we go. Oh, three finalists. Oh, go finalist quick. Going to. How far these women have come. But how far will they oh, go? Right up Gina's nose. Hello. Hello. I can see your brain. Oh. Oh. There's only one brain cell oh, today. Oh, Stop. Stop. Here's your host. Right, here we go. Oh, they're actually going into hell as well. Look at the fire. How does the floor Stand look like on the fire. Oh, anything phallic is that? Yeah. 300,000 applications from across the country. What were we saying earlier? 16 of those women were chosen. Santa's going out of business because of abortion. And nine of them made it to tonight's... And he transitioned and yeah. became the swamp Amanda Byron. <laughs> and in just a moment, Hello. we will Hello. reveal the judges' final Hello. three. They all look the same. Yeah. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, here are your semi-finalists. Okay. Right, who do we think? I think Gina and the two sisters. Yeah. Now remember, the swan pageant is unique because it's the only... Which contestants are judged not just on beauty and poise, but also on their on plastic overall so transformation. Stu- yeah, it's the only one Ladies, in the world. Um, There's a reason. Arrived. Yeah. <laughs> are you ready? Right, here we go. I have here the names of our three finalists in random order. Oh. Good luck. Da, 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 da. Our first finalist tonight da, 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 da. is. Delisa Styles. Delisa Styles. Okay. So are we? Are I, I think our plan might be failing. Mm, yeah. Maybe they get rid of, nice Maybe they'll get rid of both sisters in this Maybe one. they will. Our second finalist tonight is Erica Moore. Oh. oh. Get rid of yeah. sisters. Fargo. Sister, sister. She's got goiter. <laughs> oh, lesbian. Oh. Yeah. You always say that. I used to be like, oh, I love a little kid. Lisa, there is only one. I think I've left my left, lesbian face. Ladies. Have you? Yeah. yeah. I'm not into the mint anymore. No. You don't drink from the phone. Party list. Party list. Oh. Is. Great American pie. The wild Ooh. messed up my three. The wild cards, like the no go. The wild card. Oh, I'm scandal. surprised. I am surprised they didn't have like a battle out between those two. Yeah, I would have planned that. If I... Oh, you're very close. Am I alive? <laughs> That's. I'm really shocked about that. 
achieve what many thought was absolutely impossible. You've been an inspiration to us all. I'm really genuinely surprised. Yeah, I am. I'm tired. You're like, oh, I'm sick of it now. I'm fucking sick of it. few moments when we crown one of these three ladies when we crown, the swan. Give it I'm up crowning. again for Carrie and Gina. Please, one of you is just moments away from being Execution. crowned the swan. One of them's going to be the swan. Who do you think is going to be the I think Delisa. Um, yeah. Delisa, Delisa girls. Delisa girls. Selves. Although it wasn't easy, the courage, the strength, and the perseverance that it took to get here tonight is really what the swan yeah, is I all think about. Yeah, I think it's Delisa. Before we can crown yeah. a winner, there is one final test. It made it look really the old, judges though. would like to hear from you one last saying? time. Yeah. So, you each have 30 very seconds youthful. to tell the judges why it is you think oh, you this deserve bit's always to be a bit crowned cringe, the swan. Isn't it? Like, why should I win? Okay. Because I didn't shit in the Delisa, toilet. You're up I should. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I deserve to be crowned the swan because during the course of this program, I actually became I've a swan. learned my strength, <laughs> my I'm beauty, an animal. Yeah. and my place in this world. I've learned that the only limits we have in this world are the ones that we place on ourselves and how not to do that anymore. <laughs> The world is a wide open place and I just hope to be able to take this knowledge and use it and hopefully others can use me as a model and use it to better their lives as well. Thank this you. little wind chime they put on when they're like, you're talking Yay! too much. Time to gape. Time to gape. Oh. Mum and Robert. Oh. 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 Mom. 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 Yeah. I mean, that was an okay answer. Yeah. It's like very... Um, they're, they're, each of them will give the same answer. Yeah, basically very standard. I should win. I feel that I deserve to be the swan because I have gone through a constant transformation in my life. From day one, I have always been transforming. And when I came to this program, I just, I, I really had no confidence. I used to weigh over 240 Lisa pounds. And Erica. this whole Erica. program has just brought so much joy to my life. I have realized Erica's that... Bulbasaur. True inner beauty is what really matters. And I have met the most incredible women here, and we all have the most incredible Be beauty. Be quiet! Talking. Be quiet! <laughs> I mean, I feel like she kind of went off script a bit there. I sort of got the idea of what she was saying, but I feel like she yeah. maybe got a bit overwhelmed. And her mum was in the audience going, You'll still never be good. No, you'll never be a model. No. Before coming to the Swan program, I had completely given up on myself. Her makeup so artist I focused has done all my attention on others. Job. This program has given me a true sense of self-respect and taught me that I deserve to put time Ooh, and energy. Oh, this is a bit genuine, mm -hmm. actually. I can be, both inside and out. I'm gonna For get all emotional. Well, don't life, cry. I know. And I believe that I can accomplish anything. And I would be honored to represent this program so that I can tell and inspire shut all up, shut women up. to embrace that swan deep inside within them oh. and spread their wings Gerbling. and fly. Thank you. <laughs> that was actually a beautiful answer. Gina B! Gina I mean, B. I mean, say Gina G, it's Gina B. Gina B. She's made of bees. Yeah. Release the bees! Your journeys with us these past four months. Okay, I actually well, really liked um, Gina minutes, B's answer. Although she went over time. Like, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. cancelled. We'll be crowned the swan. Oh. I think Delise is going to win, but I quite like Gina. The exciting conclusion of the world's most yeah. unique beauty pageant. I thought it happened. Do you know what's got the background? The yeah, there's like, this like this fire. fire. Welcome back to the exciting That's conclusion the one, of the swan pageant. It's the last time we're going to yell it, so I might as well get it out of my system. Only one will make it to the pageant, Only girls! Only one will make it to the pageant, girls! Why aren't you making it to the pageant? One of these That's three women the is about to be crowned the swan. That's now, the swan! Now, to properly commemorate the occasion, we brought back it's all of tonight's much, contestants. Like, let's, come on now, it's been two years in the making. Yeah. It's the swan, lads. It's the swan, men. This is more than Banner. just a pageant. It's a celebration of the spirit and the determination of everyone of plastic who's surgery. Of plastic surgeries. by our program. Of disbarred Already? dentists. Delisa, I want your gum tissue. I want your gum tissue. It's down to you. 
Here we go. The winner will not only be crowned the swan, but will also receive the biggest prize package in pageant history. Take a look. Oh, I know nothing about pageant Next history. No. The winner will receive an amazing array of cash and prizes, including a $100,000 nutrition contract. Ooh, they get to go on drag. $50,000 educational... I was about to say on drag queen. Yeah. And action-packed Las Vegas. They get to eat drag queen. Oh, delicious. Mm. Some of tonight's swan contestants will also receive a $15,000 evening gown. Did you hear that? Why some? some? Them. Why some? Some of Why them. Why some? That's interesting. Skin Medica cosmetic products to maintain a flawless complexion, mm. and a complete line of Epicurean advanced skincare products. I wonder if any of these companies are still around. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder. I mean, maybe not because like, how's people like someone like Swan that like, we hate? Yeah. We don't want you. We don't want to support someone who supports the Swan. Yeah. System courtesy of Precor. Precor. Oh look who it is! Greg's transition. Honestly, this one feels a lot more spawny than the first one. Like we did this to get this. And it's all the people that are involved with the shows anyway. Yeah. Paradise, courtesy of Travel Wizard and Pleasant Holidays. Travel Wizard! On top of the transformation of a lifetime. I wonder if Rachel's oh. gonna have to give her the crown. Oh, that would make sense, wouldn't it? Hey! Hey! Oh let's jump! Winner of this necklace called Victory. What's this? Who's this person? Oh, it's Rachel. Brilliant diamonds worth over one hundred thousand dollars. Excuse me. Thank you, Jonathan, for dueling all of the swans and myself. And now, before we crown our winner, there is no way in hell that I would wear anything that was a hundred. Thousand dollars. I'd be speak for yourself. I, I would. would be terrified. <laughs> would you? Going, I'm like, I'm about to be killed or mu but like mugged, uh, shot, uh, shot on stage. Hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, I would. No, I absolutely would. Winner, let's remind you of the staggering transformations. <laughs> let's not. You horrible, horrible girl. Now joining us to present the crown to the new swan is the winner yeah. of our inaugural pageant. The Rachel, Rachel girls. <laughs> Oh, she did look great. It must have been such a wild experience. Mm. Especially because they had no idea the pageant was going to happen. Yeah, that's true. That is the biggest gag, I think, from last season. Yeah, that's the nice dress, actually. She's got a scepter, mm. beat her around the head with it. A soup tire. Wait up. There's a soup tire in my soulage. I could also smell gas. I used to wake up every day in a rut. Now I feel like I can take on the world. Okay, interesting soundbite they chose to use there. Like, why? Why? Right. I can feel like I could take the on the season one swans, girl. Let's take away the. I feel like I could take on the world again. again. That, that, that's not what you say now. That was what you said before. Yeah, it's like you would say, right, maybe one they one just hand, literally the used the same thing or something. Final decision. Right, here we go. Delisa, Erica, and Gina. This How's is it. it gonna be, girl? Good luck, ladies. Neither of you. Here we go. Huh? <gasps> Our second runner-up tonight is... Different music. I know. Erica Moore. Oh! <laughs> so, we say it's about Lisa versus Gina Girls. Her mum's like, of course you didn't win. Yeah. I Which told her, I told her. <laughs> disgusting Gina. pervert. Now, you will be our first runner-up. And the other will be crowned the swan. Just announce the swan. It's weird. Like, weird, why it? not? Get, oh, it's so weird. Is come on, music, Gina. Music, music. Come on, Gina. 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 Gina Bravata, which means Gina. Oh, 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 girls, for a second, oh, I got confused. See, why did they do that? Why did they do that? Stand off. Wait, like the turn off. The the light 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 turned off. <laughs> well done, Delisa girls. Delisa girls. Oh, I knew it. You know, we, we yeah we did kind of say that, but I would have been happy if Gina I would have won. really have liked Gina to win. Yeah. But Delisa also gorgeous. Oh, I feel well like done. The stress has yeah. left my body, yeah. a dead body. They couldn't afford real fireworks. Like, Sparks behind the screen. screen, green screen fireworks. Uh, here she comes, walking down the gout. Oh, look at the confetti! Oh my goodness! But the planet. Oh, bless her. But also, like, why do you want to win this one? She was she was the the army lady. Mm -hmm. 
I'm assuming she didn't wow. go back to the army after doing this. Like, yeah, she did, like, all yeah. this plastic brand, brand new face. <laughs> Time to go to warfare. <laughs> Well done, Delisa girls! Delisa girls! Delisa girls! Delisa girls! Delisa! Delisa! Delisa girls! Delisa girls! Delisa girls! Delisa girls! Delisa girls! Oh look at her, she's a mess. She's got confetti in her hair. Delisa! Congratulations to the women of the Swan. Oh my God! My ears just popped open. I'm so like sweaty and exhausted. Delisa girls! Girls. It's always such a weird ending because it just feels kind of abrupt. Like they win. Like, that's it, bye. The end. Nelly Galan. Oh, Nelly Galan. Oh my Lisa. goodness. Do you think they filmed two? Do in case someone leaked it? No, I don't. They would have done that back Not then. Not back in the Not day. Not back now, no. Delisa girls! Delisa girls! Congratulations to Delisa, Delisa, Delisa girls! From like, what, 19 years ago? Yeah. 18 years ago? Congratulations, well done, Delisa, Delisa girls! girls. Oh my goodness me. I can't <laughs> believe the level. There's something about Delisa's name that just makes me want to like scream it at, with visceral mm -hmm. anger and beauty. beauty. I don't know what yeah. it is. The beauty and Delisa! Delisa girls! I feel all sorts of ways about this because it's it's, it's a strange thing because it's like. It's a bit bittersweet, I must say. For you, like, from. I'm, I'm talking for myself, it feels sad that like the, the iconic series on your channel is over. Yeah. There might be international seasons and then it kind of starts again, but we don't know that for sure. Yeah. But for you, it must feel very different because this is like what made you blow up on YouTube. Yeah, so, so between it's... this and America's Next Top Model, mm. my reactions are kind of like, this is this is literally like the start of my YouTube career yeah. in this phase of my life. Yeah. So it is very strange to be like, that's it. We watched the pageant. Congratulations, Delisa. That was a much faster pageant than the last one that we watched. This is going to be two very specific, distinctive videos on my Chanel girl. I feel like the first one, actually, the episodes were like an hour long each. I feel like this was. I thought like even the episodes felt shorter. Yeah. The, so these these episodes of this uh, pageant were like forty three minutes each, I think, and I feel like they were like fifty or fifty five yeah, last time. Yeah. So there was that little bit extra. But oh my goodness, did you think that Delisa was going to win? Because when we started the pageant I didn't think Delisa was going to mm -hmm. win I honestly thought they were going to do like sister versus yeah, sister yeah I thought they would too and have like a moment of reality TV gold there I don't know what the executive I don't know what Nelly Galan was doing not doing that that would have been so perfect maybe they were smart and thought we thought you were, we were going to do that didn't you Nelly bitch Galan so maybe smart I don't think Delisa goes Delisa Delisa goes Delisa well my loves that is the end of the swan mm. on my channel at least the end of the US swan I am absolutely going to be doing a where are they now now, I'm currently away from London, so I don't know when that's going to be, but keep your eyes peeled because it will be coming out, I guess, in like a month's time. Yep. I'm going to miss screaming all of these like meme moments at the top of my lungs because there's no more swan. We will keep the swan girls alive. Yes, we will. We must scream it at in inopportune moments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I do actually want to ask you as well, you guys in the comments, if you know of anywhere I can possibly have access to the international versions of the swan, let me know because I would love to see the differences. Yep. Compare contrast yep. and see what the tea is. Yep. And with that, my lovelies, I'm going to say goodbye. Au revoir. I want to say a massive thank you to all the Patreons who made this season and this series and all of the videos on my Chanel possible. You guys are absolutely amazing. If you want to join the Patreon, please check out the link in the description da. box below. Hello, beautifuls. Welcome back to my Chanel and welcome to an extra special dose of the Swan Girls. Why aren't you making it to the pageant? My goodness me. Have I had some funny stories? stories about this video my loves this video this video this video has taken me a very long time to research and so I hope that you are truly ready for the juicy gossip that's about to be spilt all over your pussy. Originally, I was going to title this video The Swan Season 2 Where Are They Now? But Actually, a better title for the reasons within this video that you will see is actually The Shocking Aftermath of The Swan, the most extreme plastic surgery reality TV show ever. That's kind of a long title and I might actually make it a bit better than that. Right, so where do we start? Where should we start? Where do we start? I'm gonna start with the very fact that there is no reunion episode in this season. <gasps> the reason why that is is because this show was not renewed for a third season. Now that makes it kind of difficult to really understand what exactly happened to each of the contestants after the show because the reunion for season one was actually the first episode of season two. Because there is no season three, we do not get a reunion of these contestants. 
I, for one, I don't know about you guys, but I, for one, I'm kind of glad that this wasn't reiterated for a third season because I have a feeling if Nelly Galan and the other producers got their little mitts into it longer than they needed to be, I have a feeling that we would have seen maybe like five, six or seven seasons, very much like Extreme Makeover, this kind of thing that just keeps going on. So the social commentary climate around the swan was generally very controversial. Most of the media around the Times was actually writing negative pieces about the show and its ratings were suffering because of that. So weirdly enough, this show was made around the time that internet forums were really the biggest way of sharing your opinions of something online. The social media that we did have was not anything like we would assume it is today, which is kind of micro sneezing into the void. <laughs> And we don't need any more of that, do we? No. Because of the controversy surrounding this show and also the drop in ratings, actually media interest in the contestants of season two wasn't actually that big. It wasn't like people didn't go on and do loads of talk shows, loads of interviews. They didn't go on to like Dr. Phil or Fox News and talk about their experiences on the show. This kind of thing just didn't happen in season two, which is in stark contrast to what we see at the end of season one. This new show, The Swan Girls, everyone's going wild on it. The buzz around it is incredible. 300,000 people applied to be on it. And this season, season two, we just sort of see all of that information, all of that excitement around the show fizzle out and actually turn into this is a disgusting show that should not be renewed and we shouldn't be putting these women through these processes. We as viewers of TV shows are generally very much a product of our uh, generation, shall I say? And I don't think it's like far-fetched or extreme to suggest that most of the viewers of The Swan would have probably applied to go on season three if that was open. If I was an adult back then, I probably would have applied. Being on TV back in this day and age gave you a level of infamy and actually quite often transferred into fame. Nowadays, with the rise of social media, it's not quite the same, but people that were early outs in this season kind of have faded into obscurity. And that actually reflects itself in my research for this video. I found it exceptionally difficult to find anything on the contestants from season two, except one. And we're going to talk about her in a moment. I think actually from reality TV in this specific time frame, aside from people posting on Reddit being like, I had this obscure fever dream that there was this show. Was it real or was it fake? Somebody please answer me. Outside of these posts, we generally don't hear of anyone or anything really talking about this show. There was one throwback, like where are they now style newspaper article, which I believe was by the New York Post in which apparently they got lots of the previous contestants to come back and talk and like share an interview. But that interview is nowhere to be found except for a couple of lines on their website. And I believe it's from 2013. And I mentioned it in the last, where are they now? Apparently they did go on TV and do interviews after their episodes and after their season finished, but none of those episodes can be found now. And none of the information of the interviews have been even bothered to be transcribed to put online. There was so much more information available from each contestant in season one. In season two, there isn't much at all. So why don't we start the Where Are They Now section with Cinnamon Smith, who she had a total of one article written about her online. And it is from Temple News. Now Temple, I think is a place in America. I'm not entirely sure. Shall I just Google that quickly to make sure I'm not completely lying at you through my nunny. Don't say nunny in a video on YouTube, Luxario. What are you doing? Disgusting. Temple is in Texas. So there we go. Temple police officer gets TV makeover. This article is a little bit of like a, a little bit of a recap of the episode itself without actually saying a lot more about Cinnamon's life after the show. All of the links to every single piece of media that I am talking about today will be in the description box below so that you can go and read the full articles and watch the full videos if you want to. So in this article, they go again to state things like, under the rules of the swan, no mirrors are allowed during the entire three month project. Now, you know my feelings on that. I think we've all come to that conclusion together, my lovelies. Contestants must follow a strict diet, exercise, and therapy program. Ironically, it's not really that strict of a therapy program. One hour per week is not really a lot, is it? No. Charles Leone, deputy director of the Temple Police Department, supported Cinnamon Smith's decision to appear on the show. In mid-August, Leone explained, Leone? Leone? 
Leone explained, Smith tried out for a new show in Center City and received a callback where she was eventually chosen as a contestant. Cinnamon Smith, who was currently on leave when this article was written, explained to Leone that appearing on The Swan would be beneficial for mental, physical, and spiritual reasons. She thought it would be a positive change in her life, Leone said. We thought this would add to her self-esteem. Oh, my necklace was back to front from all the excitement. Oh, unhinged. Smith wanted to shed her tough cop image for a more feminine look. The episode revealed that she had not been to a dentist in 10 years and she had to undergo serious tooth reconstruction as a result and experienced a breakdown when she saw the extent of her tooth decay. Then the article goes again to describe kind of how her reveal goes by saying, oh my god, I'm so happy, she shrieked while staring into the once forbidden mirror. I quite like that, that's very this. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest one of all? Famed is thy beauty, majesty, but hold Gats. She was thinner, blonde, and wore a form-fitting black gown with a plunging neckline. Oh. <laughs> For a second, I was like, are you describing me? Thinner, uh, blonde, uh, plunging neckline. No. A far cry from her former self-described tomboy attire. This is interesting, though, because they have just explained here that almost the surgery wasn't actually the focal point of this makeover. Literally, they've said thinner, which we can kind of substitute as on a fitness routine. Blonde, that's hair bleach, and wore a form-fitting black gown. That's literally like, what not to wear? Daytime tweed with an evening chiffon. A far cry from her former self-described tomboy attire. Sure. I didn't recognize her, said Eileen Bradley, captain of special services. It's gonna take some time to adjust her. We thought she was pretty before, Leon added. After the surgeries, Smith, along with another contestant, Patty, competed for a chance to win a place in the Swan Pageant final. Now, we know this. We saw this. We saw the whole thing play out from start to finish. In the end, the judges chose Cinnamon Smith to go on to the pageant because she worked hard and had an incredible outlook on life. We actually, watching these episodes, have kind of picked apart a few more things. It's never just like the person that's got a lovely outlook on life. It's usually the more traditionally considered all around American beauty, I think, that goes on to the pageant. <laughs> Everyone will make it to the pageant, girls. Everyone has a way of feeling good, said Leone. I don't want people working here to be upset. Sure, Jan. Is this not about a police precinct? No? Okay. It's hard to differentiate between home life and work life. <sighs> Gagged at the pageant. Me too. Leone added, a happy home life will reflect on your job. This will give her a new beginning, said Bradley. She's our temple star now. This article was written on the 30th of November 2004. Oh my goodness, we're nearly coming up to the anniversary. What would it be? Oh god. Like 18 years or something obscene. So this article kind of feels a little bit more like a summary or a recap of her journey, of Cinnamon's journey on the show, but not actually really saying anything new from Cinnamon. It's kind of like they've gone to the police department and interviewed her boss about why he thinks it, it, she's had like a good makeover or something. Like that's a really unusual, really weird way to conduct like journalism. Why would you not ask the reality TV star about their life after the show? I mean, sure, it's kind of interesting that they have asked people who would be on the peripheral of Cinnamon about like her experience. You'd also think that there would be a lot more articles about her experience on the show from her own mouth. And there just isn't. This is it. So when I was searching for information on the story of like, where are they now? What happened? after the swan from the former contestants, I was actually genuinely gobsmacked about how much judgmental nonsense is kind of thrust upon these former contestants. Listen to this Reddit comment right here. Jeffrey1313 says, I remember the show and after looking at that before and after, I can't say I find a single one of them attractive. Yes, they are no longer ugly, but nothing to write home about. Seems like most of them could have just done with the makeovers like What Not To Wear does and they would have been fine. I'm sorry. What not to wear? Daytime tweed with an evening pussy. This was kind of indicative of how people responded to the concept of extreme plastic surgery on reality TV shows at the time. This was eight years ago, so this is a good still 10 years after the show has aired. Why does this Jeffrey person feel the need to be like, I don't find any of them attractive. Yeah, they're not ugly, but nothing to write home about. Like, why does that need to be shared? I know this is an anonymous platform in which you can share anything you want, really, on Reddit. It's kind of like sharing your inner demons, your intrusive thoughts. But still, 
It's just kind of gross. Next up, we have Gina Davis, who was actually one of the more successful makeover stories on The Swan, and she made it all the way to the pageant where you stop sending me emails. Oh my God, in other news, Claudia from Janice Dickinson's modeling agency has accepted my follow request on Instagram. Now, if you can remember, Gina Davis lost her hearing at the age of three and was actually quite teased about it in her school life. So, Gina Davis has no mention anywhere on the internet ever, except for one thread on a website called alldeaf.com, and it is from October 2004. And basically, this doesn't shed any light on her life after the show, it actually shows that the deaf community is very excited about seeing representation on TV. And I think it's one of those things, again, that we forget. All representation from all walks of life matters on TV. There is only 11 comments in this forum thread, though, and that is the only mention of Gina Davis after The Swan. Next up, we have Delisa Girls, the winner of The Swan Pageant Season 2. The only reference to Delisa Girls that I have found on the internet is this one here, which is a lovely photo of Delisa Girls at the American Idol season four top 12 finalists party in West Hollywood, California. That's it. That's the only mention of Delisa on the entire internet. <gasps> no. This is where this video is going to take a little bit of a turn. There is actually a lot of information on the next contestant that we are going to talk about. Her name is Laurie Arias. Now, both Laurie and her son, Brandon, have very kindly actually reached out both in the comments of that video and sent personal messages to me on Instagram. So I want to thank you guys so much for allowing me to share your story through this show and also learn a little bit more about the situation afterwards. So there is a number of articles surrounding Laurie's post-show story. We're we're gonna start with the Huffington Post. This article was written by Lauren Duca in October of 2014, and it is titled, What it's really like to get extreme plastic surgery from a former Swan contestant. This is what it's like to get extreme plastic surgery. So I have a feeling that this reporter may have seen the reaction of people to Renee Zellweger's new look, considering it extreme plastic surgery, and then maybe reached out to Laurie about her story of being on the most controversial plastic surgery reality TV show show that ever existed. To be honest, I can't even believe there's more than one, but here we are. Remember Bridalplasty? Bridalplasty! Stab! Oh, I haven't said that in like two years. <laughs> the article goes on to say, 10 years ago at age 34, Laurie Arias underwent approximately $300,000 worth of plastic surgery. In 1995, she lost 150 pounds and in 2002, her husband passed away. And in 2004, she became a contestant on The Swan. After losing a significant amount of weight, the then police department volunteer auditioned for the show in hopes of getting a tummy tuck. Arias was frustrated that she had worked so hard to get healthy and still had so much extra skin. As a result of her sad story, the selection committee chose her for the show. That is a little bit of backstage tea there. I feel like a lot of these contestants were perhaps picked because of the kind of plastic surgery that they wanted on the show. Even though we've heard from Tonya's book that actually... Some people were even picked to have more plastic surgery than they wanted, which is kind of what we saw on the show anyway. It seems like some of the more transformative, relatively more straightforward cases were picked to go on the show, shall we say, just so that the show could get like the most from zero to 100 shocking value in both transformation and plastic surgery technology at the time. I feel like there I've said an apt recap of the kind of show that the producers wanted to create. A decade after appearing on the show, she told HuffPost Entertainment that she is depressed, bipolar, agoraphobic, and believes she continues to suffer from body dysmorphia disorder. She has regained the weight she lost in 1995 and refuses to leave her home, save for trips to see her therapist every few months. The language used around this time is not very inclusive, shall we say. Sometimes people's mental health needs to be treated a little bit more delicately than just slapping a label on it and being like, well, that's it. That's what you've got. Bye now. There is relatively little research regarding the psychological fallout from plastic surgery, both because extreme alterations are rare and it is not in plastic surgeon's best interest to participate or fund in such studies. Now, this is, there is a nugget of truth in here that's actually like shocking that this actual mainstream media article has suggested that it is not always in a plastic surgeon's best interest to report on cases in which the plastic surgery has not really gone to plan or it hasn't necessarily fixed or addressed 
people's issues with why they went to a plastic surgeon in the first place. I am a true believer in the idea that plastic surgery is not a silver bullet. It is a tool to help on the ladder of self-improvement, shall we say. And even then, improvement is very much like in this sort of, what's this called? Air quotes, because improvement is very subjective for each individual person. I can't imagine that psychological evaluation back in 2003 slash four was actually very good before going on reality TV. And I do wonder here about the power imbalance of this show and for someone like Laurie going on it. So Laurie states here that she believes she continues to suffer from body dysmorphic disorder. There is something about that sentence that makes me kind of go, why did these plastic surgeons on this show invite you in to get more surgery than potentially you wanted without really acknowledging that plastic surgery is a tool to help manage something like body dysmorphic disorder and not a tool to get rid of it. I do wonder if maybe this language didn't really exist at the time or perhaps that level of counsel was just not given to the contestants before they went on the show. There's even a little link to an article here and basically it's about the ways in which unrealistic expectations can lead to disappointment following a cosmetic procedure. That's very true. For example, I had uh, some lip filler go a little bit wrong about two, no, gosh, over two years ago now. It must have been 2019 that it went a bit wrong. And that actually led me to being a bit like, oh, that's my real, my, maybe I, maybe it's sad. Maybe I did have unrealistic expectations. I managed to go to a new practitioner, get it dissolved and refill to a point where I'm actually very happy with my lips now. But that's not an isolated incident. And it's definitely not the end of the story because Imagine if that was with something a bit bigger, like actual surgery leading to disappointment and actually effectively adding more complications into a already complex situation, especially when you start bringing in mental health. The article goes on to say here that after appearing as a contestant on The Swan, Laurie faced a lot of negative reactions from those who knew her before the surgery. You get a lot of crap, she said. Laurie felt that some friends and family were jealous and that others were uncertain of who she had become. The latter group included the eldest of her two sons who at the time said she doesn't look that much like my mum anymore. Now, this was something that I actually said during the show, that basically very young children were involved in the reveal process of this show. Now, I don't know if maybe science hadn't quite gotten to the point where it suggested that, you know, children need to spend time with their parents in their developmental years of between zero and what, seven? Is it seven? I'm sure I read somewhere that it's pretty much seven years old is like when you've really started to solidify who you might be as a person for the rest of your life, like some of the interests you have before you're seven years old, that kind of thing. The very fact that there is a direct quote here saying, she doesn't look that much like my mum anymore. It's kind of disheartening, a little bit shocking, and kind of sad because we saw that happen in real time on this show. We saw the kids' reaction being very sort of like difficult because it was meant to be this big thing of like, mum returns back to the family. And a lot of the kids were a bit like, uh, who is she? It kind of gave that feeling of maybe they've just seen someone who's a little bit uncanny valley of someone that they used to know. And I really don't know about the like long-term implications of what that might mean. He has told me he felt afraid, Laurie said. That makes me feel guilty because I realized that if the shoe was on the other foot, I would have freaked out too. So Laurie strikes me as someone who's actually done quite a lot of self-reflection and actually has like quite a lot of empathy to understand that people might be a bit surprised or shocked even, uh, for use of a more strong word, about her going on this show. I do feel like we as humans, are entitled to self-improvement, no matter what that self-improvement looks like to us. We're entitled to develop and progress in our lives. What I think was wrong about this show is that it took these women out of their lives to do it. Instead of actually bringing everyone along for the journey themselves, this is where I kind of feel like this show varies from things like Extreme Makeover. On the Extreme Makeover episodes we've seen where there is a partner involved, we've actually seen that the Extreme Makeover team kind of gets the partner to come with them or do some sort of like transformation in the same process. Obviously you can't do that with children. It is unethical to put a child on a swan program, let's be honest. Time for a brow lift. Oh. <laughs> Nick girls. No. It was only on stage that Laurie was given access to a mirror. She reacted with quiet surprise, only losing it when the cameras were off. I was screaming for an executive producer, she said. I was screaming. I want my face back. That's how freaked out I was. Intelligently, I knew that was impossible, but it was so weird. It was like looking at someone else, but it was you. This is where 
the mirror like covering was the most unusual form of psychological cruel and unusual torture in my opinion yes these women had agreed to go on this show and sort of understood maybe the vague outline of what this show was but actually to be told there's no mirrors and you're going to go under this extreme makeover this extreme plastic surgery dietary full body makeover and you're not gonna be able to see your face for it she further goes on to say that feeling has become less difficult to reconcile over time but laurie was happier before the show i've had self-esteem issues all my life she said but before i was functional then i go and have all this stuff done that people would give their leg for and i'm confined inside and i can imagine that just suddenly being released back into your life caused a little bit of like a shunt of growth because there's like you've gone off and done this incredible transformative journey but your life is the same when you come back to it and you can't progress in yourself and your surroundings also not progress at the same time because that leaves you in this kind of limbo situation so i can totally understand how during that limbo situation other problems and other concerns might manifest. So continuing on Laurie's story, I actually managed to find an interview by the Ageless Sisters here on YouTube, and it's titled Exclusive Interview with Laurie Arias from Fox's The Swan. Now, Laurie is in this video, and these are going to be all of her words, so we're going to watch a few clips from this video. I'm not going to put the whole thing in here because I don't think that that is correct. If you want to watch the entire interview from start to finish, the link will be in the description box below. Oh, I haven't said this in a while in a swan video, my loves. Time to pop in the orange. And let's watch this exclusive interview from the Ageless Sisters with Laurie Arias. Oh my god, sorry to interject, interject immediately before we've even started this interview. That music, that is such a throwback of YouTube. What is that? Wild. That was, I remember watching What Style Is To Nickel with that music. Anyway, Hello, serious. Hello, my name is Cynthia Rowland. I'm one half of the Ageless Sisters. And today I'm interviewing Lori Arias. And Lori was one of the contestants on The Swan. The Swan so Girls. Welcome. Thank you for having me. My absolute pleasure. You have quite a story to tell because I realized that. Kind of unusual for an interviewer to put their hand around a guest, but this is YouTube and not formal. You um, wanted something new in your life after your husband passed away. Your son actually recommended that you contact the television show, The Swan. Yes, you did that. You were chosen. And then all of a sudden, you began to have lots of plastic surgery. That is yes. very true. Lots. Lots. Let me just ask you a couple of questions. Are you happy with your results from your cosmetic oh, surgery? Oh, straight in there. I'm, I'm happy-ish with it because um, I've had some complications. Mm -hmm. And mentally, it's done a number on me. So this is part of a conversation that didn't actually happen on The Swan and there was no real talk about potential complications of plastic surgery. Because I see everything now. I see things in other people now. So it's, it's, um, I don't know, it's just a little mentally, mentally challenging. Okay. When you began the, to work with the people on The Swan, you were sequestered, I suppose, somewhere. Yes and you were not allowed to see any of the results that they were creating for you. Exactly. And you told me earlier that you started with your lips and then what, and they, then your chin. Yes. Wow. And then what else did they do? Um, that was the first surgery. Oh, oh, okay. That was the lips, the chin, and the butt lift and the thigh tuck. You had a butt lift too and a thigh lift? Oh my goodness, yeah. okay. Yeah, so. How can you sit down with that? Um. I just did. Can I just say, I'm finding this interviewer a little bit strange. She seems like overly invested in the idea of like, oh my God, how exciting you've got plastic surgery. And to me, the point of this interview should be about Laurie's experiences, not what Laurie had done. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. I did. I had a geriatric toilet. Yeah. <laughs> a high right. rise toilet. Right. And um, my roommate actually had to help me in the bathroom. Oh. And so... Um, Thing. So you're probably all bandaged here, bandaged here. Yeah, I was okay. bandaged here. I had a the the elastic headgear, and um, I was bandaged all the way around. It's like Lori's they cut my body in half incredible. and put it back together. Mm -hmm. And the scar run, ran down through the groin, up toward the butt. Mm -hmm. So it's just a whole a whole uh, a whole lot of uh, 
stitches. Scarring and stitches. Stuff, yes. You still have a lot of scarring. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Especially on the back. Yeah. This is something that's never talked about on the show either, is that all of these plastic surgeries will leave scars. You have scars after you have plastic surgery. Did we get any mention of any scar? Like how to manage scar tissue on the show? And on my left hip. The... And don't you have some problems there right now with it... your back and hips and things? Yes, my, my left hip, um, the skin has grown so thin that if it, if it continues to ulcerate, because it, it does from time to time, mm -hmm. it's almost against the bone and it can just rip open. I actually saw a picture of that somewhere on tele or online, and it was amazing that you're able to actually function and walk around having an open abscess like that. It is. Um, I don't. I don't do much because of the um, the pain. Mm -hmm. so sometimes, oh my so, god! Um, but I just try to. Live through it. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That was actually a really heavy moment there. So this complication that Laurie is experiencing is di in direct relation to a plastic surgery that she got on an extreme reality TV makeover show. This is in no way Laurie's fault. And I know that there are going to be some people in the audience here that are like, well, they all decided to go on this show. They all volunteered for it. They went on, they signed the release forms, blah, blah, blah. It's all about informed consent. If I was told that one of my surgeries could potentially lead to me having such thin skin that abscesses will happen on it and it potentially could rip open and expose bone, I would seriously, seriously reconsider what that surgery meant. But I bet that that was not explained in a way that made it seem like a viable threat that might happen. What was the next thing they did? And how long was were you healing before they allowed you to have another surgery? Oh, well, um, I was the only swan in the history of the show that was a, a, a that had three parts. <gasps> and I had the most surgeries of any. And um, wow. so it was every two weeks, every two weeks you'd go under and have multiple surgeries, seven, eight, nine hours. Um, that is some shocking tea. Imagine having seven to nine hours of plastic surgery every two weeks. I knew this show was extreme. I had no idea it was that extreme. When we hear about these procedures and the way that they show them with that funny little infographic of the lady that spins and then they're like, a brow lift, da Vinci veneers, a tummy tuck liposuction goiter. <gasps> That is, it's never explained exactly how much time under anesthetic that means or that is or how many times they have to visit an operating room to get those things. The idea of going under seven hours, seven to nine hours of cosmetic surgery every two weeks for three times is just such a mammoth amount of surgery. That's not even just a mammoth amount of surgery. Think about the amount of morphine you have to be given, the amount of anesthetic, the amount of like saline, the amount of medication, the amount of like other things that happen to your body. That is extreme. So the second one, I'm trying to think, it's been, it's been a while. I believe it was a facelift, the brow lift, and the eyes. And the eyes. Is that a painful is extreme procedure? As well. um, it is, it's uncomfortable. Yes. And the nose job, that's uncomfortable. Wow. And so did they have you sleeping, sitting up for those yes. first few days that you had had that facelift and nose and all of that Six done? Weeks, isn't well, it? we were lucky enough for the first two days after surgery to um, be in a penthouse at the W Hotel. And, wow. um, <laughs> and so we. That is never shown once in the show, is it? That they're in a penthouse suite. It's kind of inferred that they just kind of go back to the retreat, whatever that little strange retreat apartment is where they've g glued up all the windows. That's not what they do. They spray deodorant on the TV so you can't see your reflection. Glued up all the windows, girls! <laughs> and so we had a nurse 24 hours there. But once we got back to the pond is what they called the it. The pond? Um, what was the pond? <gasps> the pond. The pond. Oh my God, a swan joke. The swans that live in the pond. Why aren't you making it to the pond? Wow, Nelly Galan, sis. What is she doing? What was the pond? The pond, the swan. Pond. Oh. <laughs> yeah. oh, I see. Where they kept you regularly. Oh yeah, then swans then, in training or whatever. Then we really had nothing. The nurses would, would come in every once in a while, but it wasn't, um, my roommate wasn't around the took clock. care of me more yeah. mm -hmm. than their nurses did. Mm -hmm. Roommate? I even um, had some, uh, my um, drains fell out. 
it unstitched and came out, and they're like, you just have to deal with it till tomorrow. I'm like, well, infection can set in, you know? But they didn't. Okay. Yeah. But you, you came out without any infection, though, right? I Except did. for your hole in your side. Yeah. And they have very... So many years later. So, let me get this right. So, they had you in counseling. You were talking about these things that had occurred to you. Right. But you never felt there was any resolution? No, because each visit was a different part of the show. I see. So they would just film that, and then you're left hanging with your right, feelings. Right, exactly. And then nobody's finishing their job to help you uh, deal with all of that. Exactly. It was unethical and devastating. Oh, my gosh. So Laurie has just basically said there that each of the times they went in for therapy, it was for a different section of the show, not actually for talking about what's actually happening in the swan's life at that moment or potentially things in the past that are coming forward or potential issues that they need to work through. This goes to show that that therapy section with Dr. Iani could not be considered therapy or should not be considered therapy actually because it was just spill your feelings in front of a camera for use on TV. The aftermath of this show is so shocking. The more I learn about this show, the more I am like, how was this even allowed? So what do your sons think about this transformation? Have they been really supportive still for you? Um, now they are. At first, um, they were terrified of me. They were terrified. We saw this. My little one um, was still little enough to, to be clingy, but my older son, said our dad died now they took our mom <gasps> yeah and i couldn't change it i couldn't reverse it i mean um i tried at reveal at reveal um on the swan um as soon as the the taping of that was over i screamed and i ran and um i demanded my face back <sighs> the old one and um had to talk to a psychologist from fox and all that and um and my son didn't like it of course, now they do. Wait, so she had to actually talk to an extra psychologist afterwards, provided by Fox Network, in order for her to be able to adjust to her new face. That goes to show that the therapy given on the show wasn't therapy at all. I am surprised that not more of the contestants have come forward and said that this was actually, like, a bad experience for them. And were there any men on the television show The Swan? How many people went through this? Um, there were 16 shown, two were completely made over, but they didn't get a show. They didn't get put on TV. Really? They were told to say that they've never, that they never <gasps> was on the swan ever. The secret swans? And, um, so they, from Reveal, were sent home. Hmm. Have you been in, in, in touch with any of these other contestants? Oh, definitely, definitely. I'm still really... I want to know more about these two secret swans. Who are they? They must have come out now, surely. The show is like nearly 20 years old. I wonder if NDAs and things have all gone now. Surely they must have. I'm really gagged about that. If you're out there watching, please get in contact. What did you learn about yourself, too? Um, well, I learned that, um, the stuff from my childhood was really... It really got me worse than I, than I thought. I didn't, I didn't, I thought I was dealing with it well until that, until they exposed it. And um, so. Have you been able to resolve some of that? No. No, I'm on, I'm on medication. Mm -hmm. You should go to therapy though? I go to therapy. therapy. I've gone to therapy for four years and um, a psychiatrist for a year. I think this is the misconception with therapy. This lady here kind of said like, but aren't you in therapy? In a way that kind of inferred that therapy is a fix. Therapy is not a fix to issues. Therapy is a maintenance. Therapy is a management system. It is not a fix. Broken people can't be fixed. They can just manage their conditions and manage their lives. This is the whole idea where it comes down to, I'm gonna break this person down and rebuild them. There is no rebuilding. You just have to manage the breakdown. And you cry because you're sad or because it's cathartic or you miss your husband or what is it? What makes you so sad, Lori? I miss my husband a whole lot. Yeah. It's fun to be married to somebody so wonderful, isn't it? Well... Stop! Beautiful woman. 
and you have such a heart, a sweet, tender heart. Thank you. Yes, it's sweet. And you know, we what will just keep you thing in to our say. thoughts and our prayers that everything sorts itself out for you. And I just want to thank you for being so brave and so wonderful to come here. Well, I have some thoughts, both about that interview and also about Laurie's story there. Firstly, what was that interviewer doing? I feel like that was a little bit of a awkward thing to watch that actually felt a little bit um, unprofessional in a sense. And you know what? I'm not gonna go for another YouTuber. They might not have the experience of interviewing people or things like that, but I am very surprised at how that interview went. So with that, my loves, I am going to take out my Ohrhänger and thank Laurie for sharing her story, both with the Ageless Sisters and also reaching out and commenting on my YouTube channel. She raises some excellent points in the very end of that interview there about maintenance costs. Plastic surgery is not necessarily a forever thing. When it comes to something like a rhinoplasty, it can be considered a permanent change, but if there's ever anything that needs to be changed in the future, you have to go back into surgery for that. And the same thing with breast implants. Breast implants do expire and they do need to be changed. And that is absolutely something that needs to be explained and also considered in the future, that you will have to pay for breast augmentation potentially more than once in your lifetime. But my loves, now we are on to something absolutely unhinged. Yes, the Swan Curriculum Book, written by Nelly Galan. <gasps> this is the official Swan Handbook, written by Nelly Galan, life coach for the Foxes, the Swan Girls. Now, I believe that this was released before season two actually aired, because there is no pictures of the season two cast in this book. All of us dream of how wonderful our lives could be if only we could look, feel, and perform our best. With the premiere of The Foxes the Swan, 15 million viewers tuned in to watch 16 women embark on this journey of self-transformation with the aid of a troop of specialists from therapists to cosmetic surgeons. Now in the Swan curriculum, Nelly Galan, the show's creator and resident life coach, reveals the step-by-step -step process by which you can initiate the same remarkable changes in your own life. Shall we have a read of this ridiculous book? Yes! Create a spectacular new you with 12 life-changing steps in 12 amazing weeks. That sounds a little bit like a rip-off of the 12 steps, doesn't it? Weirdly enough, a lot of what she says in this book is actually kind of applicable to life. For example, the very basic forms of saying things like, if you want to change your life, you need to begin to change your life. Sure, Jan. Things like, in order to make real lasting change, you must be willing to take risks and hold yourself accountable. This is very basic information. This is not relevant to the swan. Stay strong. The swan Christina underwent a struggle after her painful surgery and repeatedly said she wanted to go home. She missed her family terribly and worried that she'd made a mistake. But despite her pain, Christina held course and look at her now. She wound up in the beauty pageant. Wow. Crazy. The book starts with six swan promises, each called swan promise and then their number. So the swan promise number one, for example, is I will not give up. Commit to the 12 week plan and accept fear as part of the process. Swan promise two, I will stick to my routine. Turn the new you into the everyday you. No. And then in a very strange turn of events, during these swan rules, there's like these pages here, like for signatures, there's little areas here. And she's like, I am willing to acknowledge I need assistance and will not hesitate to seek it out. So sign here. So in this book, you have to like answer various quizzes and then you put your signature as a kind of like manifestation of being like, I'm going to invest in myself, signature. A lot of this information in here is freely available self-help information that is available in multiple different styles of self-help book. This is however, kind of framed in the idea of alongside working on yourself, you can also completely change your life with $300,000 worth of cosmetic and plastic surgery. It talks about mantras such as, I deserve to be the best woman I can be. I deserve to take time for myself every day. I deserve to make changes to my life and my body as I see fit. I deserve to be beautiful. I deserve to be happy. I deserve passion. I deserve love. I deserve to be fit. I deserve to be indulgent sometimes. I deserve the same time and energy that I afford my job, my husband, and 
and or my family. And then there's lots of blank pages where you kind of fill in the rest yourself. What do you want to do for work? And what do you do to make money? And then it gives you like this tiny area here to write about all the things you've ever done to make money in your life. And then it starts to become an exercise book as well because it says here, Review the worksheet and make a small check next to each box representing a part of your life you feel is not a problem area. And then you have to write a list of all the things in your life that aren't a problem. But at the same time she's writing a list of like all the things that aren't a problem, she self inserts herself here by saying, I've had a brow lift, I've had liposuction and a breast lift, and so can you if you do this curriculum. Electric chair. I feel like the swan was kind of like Nelly Galan's form of beauty that she wanted to inflict upon the world. Because if we really think about it, she had work done by Dr. Dubrow and then created a show at Fox using Dr. Dubrow to kind of manufacture a very similar style for all of these women. They all came out looking a very specific type of beauty and a specific type of way to make it into a beauty pageant. The idea that this book here says on like working on yourself and improving your life is kind of irrelevant because the whole point of then going and putting these women through extreme plastic surgery makeovers and making them compete on a pageant kind of removes all that self-worth and just purely makes it about how much surgery someone can go through to be considered beautiful. And then we have HD photos of all the women from season one. So not only are you reading a book, writing down the areas in your life that you're failing, the areas in your life that maybe you haven't had the best opportunity to work and make money, you're then also faced with HD pictures of if you do this, you'll somehow look like this which is impossible without $300,000 of plastic surgery. Interestingly enough, at the bottom of each photo, it actually has a little caption of them from the show as well. Like Cindy Ingle here says, Cindy was a self-proclaimed witch. A witch. After a nose job and some in-depth work on the curriculum, she left as a gorgeous, confident woman who finally feels good about her decision to be a stay-at-home mum. Cindy Ingle was a lot more than just that. Then, in a bizarre twist, another bizarre twist to this book, more twists than Game of Thrones, she says here, finding your muse, coveting thy neighbor's success. Who are you jealous of? Write their name down. And this book is also filled with quotes from people like Tony Robbins, which if you noticed was actually part of the winning prize package for Rachel who won the swan, but also the subject of lots of controversy because he doesn't really run a university or a degree or anything like that, but just takes money from people under the guise of self-help and entrepreneurship. Successful people ask better questions and as a result, they get better answers. Do they? Do they? <laughs> section is titled The Green-Eyed Swan. Make a list of 10 people who make your eyes glow like emeralds. You can list anyone, a movie star, a historical figure, or even a neighbor. Don't stop to analyze your reasons. Just make the list and move on. Is that green with jealousy or is that like, I just want to be my neighbor, Kathy. She's got lovely bins. Thank you very much. That's much better. Good. Now look at the names you've come up with. Return to your list. Jot some things down you envy about these people next to their name. For example, their beauty, their relationship, their career, their confidence, their poise, their hair, etc. Mary has had surgery on her vagina to gain what she calls the fattest vagina in the world. Is this helping? Is this helping to sit down, read a book that's actually based around extreme cosmetic plastic surgery and reality TV competitions to then say, look at your neighbor, compare yourself to them. Why are you envious of them? Do they have better hair than you? Have they got better relationships? Have they got a better car? It's very capitalism under the guise of spirituality and trying to better yourself. That's not what this book is. This book is not gonna make you feel better. This book is gonna make you hate your neighbors. <laughs> Converting jealousy into inspiration. Next, compare your habits to Kate Hudson. What? How are you going to compare your like average consuming book reading, reality TV enjoying human beings experience to a multi-millionaire celebrity? My habits. I wake up and I leap out of the window and die. Death. She even then here perpetuates an absolute ridiculous lie here that I'm really shocked about. And she says, I know what you're thinking. Of course Kate Hudson can afford to do all these things. She's rich. While you're correct on that front, the truth is that you too can afford all of these things if you prioritize and find services offered at a price that works for you. $300,000 of plastic surgery 
is not a price that works for the average human being. On page 22, just ask yourself loads of questions about your life and then have a very small area for your answer because you're probably really sad and want plastic surgery. Maybe a brow lift. Time for a brow lift. Oh. <laughs> then, my loves, we are presented with a really odd fictional situation. Well, I would consider it fictional because who the piss would behave like this? Listen to this. What do you like about your work? I was talking to a blackjack dealer who complained about the long hours, low pay and repetitive nature of her work. Nothing, she said. Not a thing. I suppose she thought that would be the end of it, but I don't let anyone off so easily. Do you know how to count numbers really fast because of your job? She agreed that this was true. And do you know how to size up a client really quickly because of your work? She admitted to being an unusually keen judge of character. What about fringe benefits? She mentioned something about free massages. In fact, before we were through, she'd compiled a list of about 20 bonuses she'd initially overlooked. This didn't mean she liked her job. It meant she was beginning to recognize its impact on her life. I am not here to convince you to remain in a job you hate. This chapter is about looking at the larger picture, about fact finding, not resolution. Sorry, why would you ever go into a casino and be like, excuse me, Mrs. B Blackjack lady. Do you hate yourself? Could I interest you in $300,000 worth of plastic surgery and the chance to compete in a pageant about swans? No. In a nutshell, don't buy this book. The best thing you can do is sit and actually self-reflect on some areas in your life that you know that you can make small progress within. Even little pigeon step progress is progress nevertheless. Don't compare yourself to others because the only person in your life that you should be competing against and definitely not jealous of is your own self in the past, my loves. Now, that concludes the absolute ridiculousness of the Swan curriculum in the bin. <laughs> Death. Now, my lovelies, the next part of this tale of the shocking aftermath of the Swan is absolutely unhinged. It's one of the most unhinged stories I have ever, ever heard relating to a plastic surgeon. Are you ready, my loves? Buckle in, buckle up, and get ready for the scandal, girls! In an article written in 2018 for Yahoo Entertainment titled TV Plastic Surgeon Randall Hayworth Accused of Drug Use and Watching Porn During Surgery. If that isn't the most scandalous headline, Randall Hayworth, a Beverly Hills plastic surgeon who's appeared on TV shows like Fox's The Swan, has been accused of illicit drug use and watching pornographic movies depicting violent beheadings during his surgeries. What? What? According to a proposed amended complaint filed in Los Angeles Superior Court on Friday, this was in March 2018 by the way, Hayworth regularly played hardcore pornography and videos showing extreme and graphic violence such as beheadings on a monitor in the background during some of his surgeries. Laura Day, a former patient who first filed a malpractice lawsuit in January 2017, also claimed in the new filing, based on recent deposition of Hayworth's former surgical consultant, that the surgeon failed to disclose he was having issues with his eyesight, particularly depth perception, following treatment for an eye tumour. The new court filing also accuses Dr. Hayworth of regularly and unlawfully using the painkiller Percocet, including before and during his performance of surgical procedures. The new complaint is also charged that he regularly used other illicit drugs such as cocaine, MDMA. Imagine trying to do cosmetic surgery off your tits on MDMA. Not to take away the severity of the accusations, but unhinged. In addition, the new amended complaint accuses Dr. Hayworth of forging patient consent forms in order to keep his medical accreditation and charge that he routinely bullied unhappy patients who complained about his work. Reached by phone, Dr. Hayworth denies the accusations and calls them preposterous. He goes on to say, They might as well say I killed John Bonet Ramsey, Hayworth told the rap. He declined to elaborate further about specific accusations except to say the truth will eventually prevail. Hayworth, a Beverly Hills plastic surgeon to the stars, has a roster of clients that reportedly includes Real Housewives of Beverly Hills star Lisa Rinna. She pisses when she boards. Sometimes she shorts. Weirdly enough, there's actually another case of Dr. Hayworth going to court over a former patient who is very unhappy with the results of her plastic surgery. There is actually a Supreme Court copy of the entire 79 page like transcription of the entire case. So much information is in this specific dossier. It is a little bit unhinged. Let's just say that. So the plaintiff in this case is Laura Day and the title of the entire thing is Laura Day versus Randall Hayworth. And it is about medical malpractice, breach of contract, breach of royalty and medical battery. And also to include fraud, fraudulent concealment, fraudulent inducement, intentional 
infliction of emotional distress and unfair competition. Now, this document is 43 pages long. I am not very versed in reading about legalese, like reading about how these sorts of things go ahead and the outcomes. Interestingly enough, though, Dr. Hayworth released a statement on his website, and I'm going to read that for you now. It is titled, Crime, Lies, and Vindication, an open letter to my patients, colleagues, and friends. For over 25 years in private practice, I have had the profound privilege to create and lead an incredible team of hardworking and dedicated professionals singularly focused on delivering the best comprehensive care in the aesthetic medical arena. As many of you are aware, this all changed when I became the unwitting victim of a former senior employee and likely co-conspirators who coordinated a series of malicious attacks to destroy my reputation and practice. Finally, I am able to reveal the truth. Let me explain. Approximately three years ago, at a time when my practice and professional life were flourishing, I discovered that an employee was embezzling large-scale funds from my practice. More shockingly, the same person was also illegally trafficking in prescription narcotics while working as a manager of my trusted team. Discovering this left me angry, frustrated, and with a deep sense of betrayal. This employee was individually... This employee was an individual whose professional development I had supported and encouraged for almost 14 years and in whom I had placed considerable trust. I terminated the employee and immediately notified all relevant authorities of their criminal activity. I also sued this criminal for the untold damages to my practice. He then goes on to state that the attorney that was used in this case has also previously filed a preposterous lawsuit against him. So on his website here, he has multiple links to different documents that suggest this former employee really did file an absolutely preposterous lawsuit against him and that none of the accusations, especially in that article we've just read, have been truthful. And that the frivolous lawsuit by this former patient, former employee, and co-conspirators was dropped by their lawyers after she fired them. What an interestingly bizarre situation this is. Bizarre. Once again, it's one of those things where a media storm creates the most unhinged titles. Everybody clicks in and listens and then actually someone's livelihood is at risk here. He finally finishes this this article by saying, while I wish that no one else ever finds themselves in a situation where another person's false accusations cause personal and professional damage, I know that there will always be people in our society whose actions injure and tear down the lives of others. This concept is deeply antithetical to my core beliefs as a surgeon, and I have devoted my life to actively building up and improving the lives of others. And Dr. Hayworth released that statement in June 2020. So what a wild three years that must have been for him, my loves. But once again, we find more scandals associated and in the peripheral orbit of the swan. And with that, my loves, I guess it is time to hang up the very end of the swan season two. Wow. What a wild ride this has been. I potentially have some more Swan content coming out soon, so keep your eyes peeped for that, my lovelies. But please let me know what we have discussed in today's video in the comments box below. Let me know about any extra things that you have managed to find out about the Swan contestants, the show, Nelly Galan, all sorts of nonsense. And as a little Christmas treat, I will be putting all of the Swan season two in a super cut for you whilst I am recovering from my own plastic surgery. <laughs> and you know what I wanna say a massive thank you to? The Patreons you can see scrolling past on the screen right here, my loves. It has been a mammoth journey covering this show from start to finish. The amount of scandals, life-altering decisions, shocking information we found out. And it is just, it just goes to show that plastic surgery reality TV shows are something that shouldn't really exist. What I have a problem with is the reality TV competition aspect. It's really shocking, isn't it? And of course, I also want to say a massive thank you to my top tier Patreons. Aloria, Laura Ali, Luke Peterson, Steph Utech, Orko Samoji, Beebles32, Camille Sara, Shell Herman, Christy Crownover, Christina Kyle, ContraPoints, Danielle, Danny Smith, Dr. A, Elizabeth Stone, Eric Castillo, Jen Martin, Jennebeth Herman, Jenny Hendricks, Laura Jane, Laura Jane again, Les Banana, Min Min TM, Moriah Sherman, Nixie Tricks, Paolo Rivero, Rachel C. C. Biscuit, Ryan Vita, Sexy Texy RN, Slampire Queen, Travelful Tromo and Victoria Corella. I really would not have had this success without you guys, the viewers, and you guys, my Patreons. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your continued support here on the Chanel. It is interesting to kind of put this to rest and be like, that's it. That's it now. That's the end of the Swan season two. And you know what, my loves? I'm going to leave it on the note of even small amounts of progress in your own personal life, no matter what it is that you're working on, is still valid progress. And with that, my loves, I will see you in the next video. <gasps> yes.